In the depths of the unexplored Antarctic, scientists discovered a giant mech frozen in ice. After repeated testing, scientists finally confirmed that this mech had been frozen for thousands of years. However, what's strange is, the mech was developed by humans less than 200 years ago. So where did this mech come from? With doubts, the Human Federation government unanimously decided to use the world's most advanced laser weapons to melt the ice. Its power is equivalent to 100 atomic bombs exploding simultaneously. The result is predictable. However, what surprised everyone was, a weapon capable of destroying the earth only melted a small part of the ice on the mech's chest. The exposed surface of the mech inside was incredibly smooth. Such a powerful attack didn't even leave a trace on it. The metal is the god of war. I don't know who said such a thing, but everyone fell into a deathly silence because of this sentence. God of War. Unquestionably the strongest power in the universe. Since humans flew out of the solar system and entered interstellar civilization 500 years ago, the term God of War is like a mountain pressing down on humanity. At that time, humans naively thought they could coexist peacefully with other species in the universe. However, when the spaceship carrying 12 God of War mechas landed on Earth, humans realized how naive they had been. Fortunately, the catastrophe did not come. Another powerful civilization in the universe, the Alia civilization, came to the aid of Earth and imparted knowledge of mecha manufacturing to Earth. Since then, humanity has entered a wave of mecha manufacturing. However, after 200 years, humans still haven't been able to create a fighting god. The core reason is the lack of a substance called reverse metal. And now, the fighting god that humans have longed for is right in front of us. How could this not make one's heart race? But just at this moment, a metallic clicking sound came. Everyone looked up together. The armor on the chest of the crimson mecha suddenly opened. Then a boy of about 18 or 19 rolled out from it. A height of 1.75 meters. No ugly face. No pointed ears. There were no angelic wings on his back or extra heads and limbs. The only item on his whole body was a bright red earring on his right earlobe. Seeing this scene, the soldiers beside didn't need any orders. Bullets are already loaded. Stand in a line. Raise the cold muzzle and aim it at the just awakened boy. No one is allowed to get close. Do not harm her. A blonde, blue-eyed woman hurriedly spoke out to stop them. And at this moment, the boy actually stood up slowly. Then he walked unsteadily towards the blonde woman. A man over two meters tall hurriedly stood in front of the blonde woman. Is this guy a monster? Frozen for thousands of years. He can still move. But she was still a step too slow. At this point, the blonde woman had already walked towards the boy's direction. Annie, come back quickly. The man was about to step forward again. Don't come any closer. But fate turns towards the boy Annie who walked out of the mecca. Deeply exhale a breath. Is important. Hello, I am Annie, a fellow at the Earth Federation Institute of Science. No matter where you come from, Earth welcomes you. And at this moment, I have already staggered to the woman's side. But one careless move almost fell to the ground again. Fortunately, the hand in front of me grabbed the woman's chest in time for support. 336 feeling the fullness in his hand. I slowly spoke, hearing this familiar language. Annie shuddered, the language of Earth. Earthlings don't care about their own situation. Still being grabbed by the boy, Annie gently comforted and said goodbye. If you have anything to say, just say it. And at this moment, my senses are gradually returning, feeling the surging sensation in my left hand. When I couldn't help but exclaim, 361 is really loud. Annie looks excited, hastily turned to look at the man who had just stopped him. All right, incompetent, quick. Take note of it, look back and check what it means. However, as soon as these words were spoken, everyone present had a hesitant look. The man called Shing Incompetent awkwardly scratched his head. No need to check, I might know what this means. Shing Incompetent scratched his head again as he spoke. No matter how you listen to it, this sounds like a chest size, and it's exactly the same as when I peeked at the records on your health card. Upon hearing this, Annie was suddenly stunned, then clenching both fists tightly, with a fierce expression. No change, couldn't hold back any longer. Annie raised her hand and slapped me. Just as I regained consciousness, I, who had no resistance at all, was slapped away four or five meters. Then, my consciousness became blurred. What do I do now? A researcher carefully walked up behind Xing Wunung. What else can we do? Quick! Find someone to take that kid to the medical department. If he's already dead, then just send him directly to the biology department for dissection and research. Consciousness returned. I curiously looked around. But before I could think further, I heard a crisp voice. You're awake. Look towards the sound. I was suddenly scared. I was a little embarrassed that the one speaking was actually my 1010 billion sister from yesterday. Scratching my head awkwardly, I asked, where am I? 
Don't worry, you're not dead yet. This is Earth. Annie walked straight to the bedside, saying, leaning down, let's not talk about these for now. Let's talk about you first. Who are you? Remember not to lie. We've just given you a comprehensive examination. Your genes match 100% with those of Earthlings, as long as we know you're not an alien. We won't be involved in any interstellar diplomatic disputes no matter what we do to you. Naturally pushed up the gold-rimmed glasses on the bridge of the nose. Annie's appearance is as terrifying as a demon. My name is Mingji. Yeah. Age? What year is it now? 3057. What's wrong? Listen to my question. Annie is a bit puzzled. So now I'm 1019 years old. I smiled faintly. Annie looked thoughtful. So that means, you were only 19 when you were frozen. Annie said. Her tone suddenly turned cold. You need to answer two questions honestly. Otherwise, I don't mind letting you experience the methods of humans 1,000 years from now. Why were you inside that mech? Why were you frozen for over a thousand years? You made a little mistake and got frozen by aliens. Listen to my perfunctory answer. Annie's face grew colder. The second. Is the mecha you're riding powerful enough? It's not that I didn't consider answering you directly, but you've already sat half your butt on my invention to interrogate me. You're lying. We've tested that crimson mecha. All metal parts are made of reverse metal. Is there such an ordinary mecha? Annie grips the folder in her hand, clasping it into a fist. The snake isn't what you said. Having a full-body reverse metal structure doesn't necessarily make it a god of war. Stop telling me nonsense. Don't think the Earth hasn't joined the interstellar trade. We are just farmers. The key to being a god of war is the red dance system. Annie smirked. Have you found the red dance system on the snake? I glanced at Annie calmly. Then I stopped talking. After a moment of silence, Annie turned and walked away. Trust me, I have plenty of ways to make you speak. Indeed. She indeed did not find the red dance system on the snake. But she is not so easily giving up. And the next day, I understood the meaning behind Annie's words. Looking at the familiar yet unfamiliar backpack in my arms, I widened my eyes. Don't tell me, you are planning to make me go to school. Annie smiled and nodded, saying, See how nice I am to you. Do you want to thank me, sister? I looked angrily at Annie. Are you a demon? When I was abducted by aliens back then, I was still celebrating the only good thing was not having to study. I think you might as well just force me to go back. Annie stretched lazily, sighed and said, Since you're so unwilling, forget it. I heard that there are many beautiful girls in this school. Done. I love to read. Followed Annie to the classroom. I was a little disappointed immediately. The whole class has 50 students, 25 girls, but most of them can only be described as pretty. Far from being beautiful. There is even a pair of twins less than 1.4 meters tall. And just as I was about to turn and run away, I suddenly saw a girl in the corner, with long black hair, shoulder length. Her rationality is adorned with a touch of gentleness. A breeze with an eastern classical aura brushes by. It lifts the disobedient bangs in front of his forehead. I can no longer control myself when I see this. Saliva gushed out like a broken dam onto the floor. You've got a sharp eye, kid. Lingshan is a joke in our school. If you cooperate with my lesson today, I'll arrange for you to sit next to him. Annie leaned over and handed me a hand. You better keep your word. I changed seats as if it were planned with the boss. I took the handkerchief and wiped away the saliva. After reaching an agreement with Annie, I finally became Lingshan's deskmate as I wished. And from Lingshan, I found out Annie is actually a teacher at this mecha academy. Just then, Lingshan's clear voice came through. Classmate Mingjie, the teacher is starting the class. Do you have the textbook? Which textbook? I don't know either. I'm a bit busy. Then let's share. Lingshan reluctantly opened her own electronic screen. The whole class is nearly three hours long. And it's all about the basic theory of Mecha. I felt a bit bored and touched Lingshan's thigh. Slippery. Really slippery. However, just when I was enjoying it immensely, an untimely voice came through. Classmate Mingjie. I waved my hand feeling a bit annoyed. I don't know. Find someone else. Have you forgotten how you promised me? Hearing Annie's threatening words, I instantly snapped out of the gentle town. The Earth's Mecha, if I were to say it in just two words. Fragile. The Earth's Mecha uses a metal skeleton as internal support. Combined with a large number of drive shafts as the body's moving joints and batteries as crucial heart components, connected to transport tubes covering the entire body. Through special energy conduits, it also transports drive energy to various parts, then adding metal armor on the outside for protection. No matter how you look at it, 
the mecha looks like an enlarged human body. As long as the energy symbolizing blood vessels is destroyed, the transport tubes, even in fierce mecha, will quickly lose combat capability. Moreover, the outer armor of the Earth's mecha is not completely covered. Some parts have exposed tubes, like blood vessels growing outside the human body. Mech suits are more prone to malfunction. What nonsense are you talking about? A voice of rebuttal came from the front row. Unable to bear it any longer, it wasn't Annie who stood up. It was a blonde boy. His fair skin and blue eyes indicated his European heritage. You are the first boy in this class that I've curiously observed. Get to know him, his name is Miller. He is the class monitor. He is also the best student in controlling techniques at the Thunderbolt Mech Academy. Annie started to figure him out in her head. The exposed hoses you mentioned on the mech's exterior. It should only be the part exposed at the joints. The designers have already made the calculation. Even if the mech stretches to the maximum extent, the exposed unit area is only 0.1 cubic meters. In theory, when manipulating the mecha, no one can subjectively and accurately hit such a small unit 100%. Miller's mind is full of contempt. Is it as difficult as you say? I can do it. Long-range sniping is also possible. Medium-range shooting is also possible. Close combat is even simpler. I don't care, I said. Annie on the podium had a smug smile on her face. Then let's give it a try. Let's see whose theory is more accurate. Use the simulator for a 1v1 battle. I glanced at Miller. Casually spoke. Okay, but what's the benefit if I win? The winner can get Ling Shan's obligation. Annie blinked at me. Wait, how can the teacher do this? Ling Shan blushed and protested. Aren't you and Miller lovers? No matter who wins in the end, I'll heal you. Annie's naked combat. I looked at the blushing Ling Shan in astonishment. Do you have a boyfriend? Ling Shan blushed and lowered her head. Falling in love with a mecha pilot won't end well. After all, we are destined to die on the battlefield. No more talk. I leave my seat. Walk towards the podium. Arrive at the mecha simulation arena. Miller provocatively glanced at me. Take out your data card. I'm using the assault mech. Mimi stands with one hand on her hip. The other hand swings a white memory stick. What's this data card? Stares at him. You're joking, right? If you're scared, just say Miller laughs. Mange yeah, you're really forgetful. Wasn't your data card dropped in my office? Turns to look. I saw Wunan walking forward with a black memory stick. He handed it to me. Now I casually looked at the fresh thing in my hand. I looked at you, students, enter the simulator. Students, the Miller vs. Ming Jian match is about to begin. Annie announced excitedly. Many students quickly took their seats in the audience. Miller then stylishly jumped into the center of the venue. A black simulator, huh? The first activated simulator instantly started moving. Lifted the 2 meter diameter metal cockpit. Wu Nang and Annie naturally walked into the control console, opened the massive electronic screen above. You're really amazing. I really don't understand what magic you used to make that kid show his mecha control skills so quickly. Wu Nang stood behind Annie, sincerely admiring her. It's simple. I'm just saying, whoever wins Ling Mountain gets a kiss. Smiling Annie opened various instruments. Put on the communication headset, Ling Mountain's kiss, or I'll let that kid come out. I'll pilot him. Inept began to lift the white coat on his body. Do you want to die? Annie turned back and glanced at Inept, then immediately and honestly closed his clothes. When the cabin door is closed, the lighting in the cockpit lights up. Ning Jie, can you hear me speaking? Holding a communication headset, Annie called softly. Very clear. Do you have any advice for me? I answer that the data card in your hand is a copy of the military high-level mecha prepared by Inept. But the one used by Miller's students is completely different. The computer-assisted system used by students can allow his mecha to exert power under the control of about 30 times per minute. But if your speed is less than 50, the mecha will be like a clock without oil. Every step is particularly difficult. Annie said with an evil smile again. I knew you didn't have good intentions. I sighed and inserted the wing. Don't say that. You should know that in space, the most basic surgical procedures are performed about 80 times per minute. You should be fine, right? I couldn't respond. I don't know if there's a problem. It's my first time piloting the Earth's mecha. And I only learned the control methods when I was just teaching. It's not surprising to lose. It's okay. I believe you can create a competitive stage for yourselves now. Annie excitedly pressed the start button. In front of many classmates, a clear image appeared on the giant screen in an instant. But when I saw the screen in an instant, the classmates all took a sharp breath in. Simply because the created scene turned out to be a vast expanse of yellow earth. Not even a hint of hills or trees. Two sturdy mechas face each other, their imposing height reaching 25 meters. Blue edge stripes, pure white base color. The bright red pupiled mecha belongs to Miller. This is the number Miller one from the annual exam. It's the pride of the first mecha division of Thunderbolt Academy. 
In front of him is a completely black mecha with golden-eyed pupils exuding a powerful aura. Although it also belongs to the standard assault type, this mecha is a full half head taller. Especially when the classmates saw the rough red text on the chest of the black mecha, they were all stunned. The uncontrollable trembling of the overlord spirit mountain. Is this the proud mech of the Earth Mech Defense Army's first mech division? Miller was surprised, gaping inside the overlord mech. Miss Annie, are you serious? Let me fight the overlord. Sorry, it seems like the incompetent teacher took the wrong data card. It's too late to change now. Just consider it as him having a little advantage. Giving a little advantage now. Annie smiled and frantically started typing on the keyboard. The virtual scene between the two mechs rapidly shortened the distance, frozen at a distance of 500 meters. The Miller mech instantly erected a huge armor, as big as a missile launcher, as small as a timed grenade. As long as it can be equipped with mech weapons, you can find everything here. And by the side of the Overlord also erected a magnificent weapon rack. But there is only a small tactical dagger on the rack. Are you satisfied now? In the headphones, Annie's gentle comfort. Okay, thank you, teacher. Miller awkwardly closed the communication. How is this finding balance? Let students pilot the mechs of the army. Still increasing my advantage in weapon equipment. It's simply bullying. It seems the teacher also doesn't like this arrogant transfer student clamor. Simply familiarized with the operation of the mech. I control the overlord, its golden eyes flashing. The raised arm tightly grips that metallic dagger, as if hearing the call to battle. Miller quickly picked up the assault rifle from the rack, started running sideways. The heavy metal footsteps accompanied by the continuous gunfire were deafening. The gun muzzle, flickering with fire, aimed firmly at the warlord not far away. Within effective range, Miller's shooting was without any deviation. The metal bullets struck the warlord. The jet black metal armor sparked with flashes of fire. The powerful impact made the warlord stagger a little. And with only a small knife, I couldn't do anything. I could only raise my hands to protect my head, contracting the body as much as possible to avoid gunfire. But Miller, running in a circular motion, was like a moving guided missile. The angle of attack was changing every second. Why don't you make a move, transfer student? Did your major deliberately slow down Miller's shooting rhythm? I didn't react to the loud mockery of the Overlord. Miller is getting closer to the Overlord's body. Suddenly, at the moment Miller circled behind the Overlord's body, I actually dropped the gun in my hand. I drew the tactical dagger, just like the Overlord, and rushed up. The knight-like pride and dignity made Miller pursue a more equal duel. In that idiotic control room, Annie clenched her teeth in anger. Opportunity couldn't help but make a sound. The overlord, who has always been like a timid turtle, the body, which is a full size larger than Miller's mecha, swiftly turned like the wind. The tactical dagger swung and stabbed directly at Miller's mecha's neck, targeting the weak spot of the mech I mentioned before. On Miller's screen, the jet black body seemed to instantly overshadow all the light. This is definitely not something a student can handle. The mech is moving. Miller immediately closed his mouth. There's no time for any remedial action or evasion. A head-on confrontation. The overlord has an overwhelming advantage. For a moment, Miller even thought he was going to lose. But at the moment when the two mechs intersect, the mighty overlord strangely fell to the yellow earth in an instant. Miller, missing his target, struggled to stop. What is this? Miller looked down at the overlord beneath him. You win. I can't keep up with the speed of this mech. Looking up at the mecha in front of me, I sighed and released the metal controls. Miller waved the dagger, mercilessly plunged it into the warlord's throat. When the screen in front of me turned completely black, I smiled after losing the duel. The ending was unexpectedly swift. Amidst the cheers of many classmates, Miller kissed Ling Shan. Incompetent. The warlord's reaction just now was probably a result of not keeping up with the mecha speed. Why couldn't that alien mecha pilot from a thousand years ago even control Earth's mecha? I'm really disappointed. Say something quickly to comfort me. Annie shook her head and took off the headphones. Is that what you think? But I think the warlord's final reaction was a bit strange. The helpless look is complicated. Until nightfall, helpless still sits in the cockpit of the mecha, skillfully tapping the computer in his arms. And he is not the only curious researcher. In the distance, in the darkness, Annie, wearing the same heavy coat, walks over with a cup of hot coffee. How's it going? Have you found any useful information? Annie takes a sip of her cold coffee. This is called the Snake Mecha Program. It has a strong self-defense capability. I have already used the Earth Federation's largest computer system to break into it. But there has been no progress so far. Helpless regretfully pursed his lips. But the movement in his hands didn't stop. Don't bother. Let's see how Ning Jia performs today. It might be true, just like he said. This mech is not the god of fighting. He's just a regular guy abducted by aliens. 
Annie's eyes reveal indescribable sadness. Creating the god of fighting was his lifelong dream, but now, the only clue has also been cut off. This time, it's really going to disappoint you, tapping on the keyboard helplessly. Casually threw a small memory stick to Annie. What is this? Ning Jie's operation video inside the Overlord. There was indeed an occurrence of human and mech operation being unable to communicate, but the one unable to keep up with the speed is not human. Are you Annie suddenly became spirited again. That's right, it's the Overlord who can't keep up with that kid's speed. She once again began attacking the snake system firewall. Wu Nung lifted his head. Is it possible? Overlord is Gao Ao's mecha, his instant speed can reach 120, and the Overlord can also react accurately. Even saying that Gao Ao is the god of fighting on Earth is not an exaggeration. Annie couldn't believe it. I am responsible for debugging the Overlord, so of course I know how powerful it is. Not to mention 120 moves, even if it's 150, it won't have any problem keeping up with the operations. But, in the instant when Jing Jie turned around to counterattack, his operating speed reached 400. Wu Nang's burly body trembled. Can you imagine? 400 moves per minute, an average of 6 to 7 corrections per second, there probably aren't many people in the entire universe who can do such a thing. Wait, if Jing Jie really has such terrifying control, if this frozen snake is his mecha, that means, this mecha can adapt to his 400 moves per minute and react accurately? Annie stared in fascination at the mecha encased in ice in front of her. The good news did not end there. While Wu Nang and Annie were still marveling, the computer in front of Wu Nang finally displayed a screen that was not unable to access. A set of special data appeared in front of Wu Nang and Annie. Is this the language of a Rall Star? Is this mecha a product of a Rall Star? Annie grabbed the computer screen. Wait, let me translate. Wu Nang frantically typed on the keyboard. When everything turned into Earth's language, cold sweat appeared on the foreheads of both Wu Nang and Annie and the sweat had already turned into ice before it fell. These are the combat statistics of the snake. Annie trembled. Hmm, it shouldn't be wrong. Like a car's odometer, these data reflect the entire life of this extraterrestrial mecha. Wu Nang nodded. But, can you imagine? From the first activation to the cessation of operation, there was only a three-year period, but its total combat duration was 21,900 hours. And the longest recorded battle lasted for 100 hours? Wu Nang, what is the longest battle record for us humans? That was created by Gao Ao, fighting continuously for 48 hours. That should be the limit for us earthlings. Wu Nang's expression became serious. The limit? Then tell me, what is Jing Jie? He is just like us humans. Annie laughed self-deprecatingly. I don't know. I don't know if this snake is really the legendary god of fighting, but based on this data, Jing Jie can be considered a humanoid god of fighting. Let's continue collecting data. We need more information. Annie dropped the coffee that had turned into ice and turned to leave. What are you doing? Are you planning to interrogate Jing Jie? He won't say anything. I know, but now, our breakthrough is not just Jing Jie. Don't forget that Aral Star is the only planet we have diplomatic relations with. I'm going to make an exquisite invitation letter and invite them to have some coffee or something. Annie pushed her glasses up her nose and smiled. The next day, a new sun rose with the opening of the school gate. Miller, in a cheerful mood like the weather, chatted with his classmates as they walked into the classroom, but a sudden foul smell made him pinch his nose. With a furrowed brow, Miller quickly ran to his seat and saw a pile of disgusting miurda on his desk, with the words a gift from Jing Jie to Miller sir, you look so alike. Engraved with a laser pen. Jing Jie. Miller roared. A Rall star, located in the center of the distant Milky Way galaxy, 3,000 light years away from Earth, has an area 3,721 times that of Earth and a glorious civilization evolution history of 6 million years. The excellent technology and superior environment that surpasses Earth have made Yalai Star one of the most brilliant planets in the universe. What makes others envy even more is that the Yalai Star system contains the most abundant antimetal mineral resources recognized by the entire universe. Legend has it that as long as the antimetal of Yalai Star is fully developed, the wealth obtained is enough to buy half of the galaxy. It is precisely because of this enviable planet that, in the six million years of civilization, it has never been touched by invaders. This is only because Yalai Star's massive military power cannot be described as shocking. The interstellar fleet and the quality of mechas rank among the top three in the entire universe. Of course, Yalai's battle god is also an intimidating presence. Unlike those planets with scarce anti-metal resources, Yalai's battle god adopts a replacement system. Whenever a new battle god pilot is selected, a dedicated craftsman will tailor a brand new battle god mecha for the pilot. 
This ensures that the quality of the battle god Mecha is always at the forefront of technology and never outdated. It is this strength that has made Yalai Star one of the five permanent chief justices in the Starfall Universe Alliance. However, what the leaders of Earth cannot understand is that Yalai Star actually established diplomatic relations with Earth 200 years ago, and actively and voluntarily went to various member planets of the Starfall to lobby for help in joining the Starfall. In fact, according to the rules of joining the Starfall, Earth is still far from qualified. But Yalai Star has never given up hope, and even within the rules of the Starfall, it has provided the greatest technological assistance. Honestly, it feels like Yalai is repaying a debt to Earth. When Wu discovered that the frozen Ningjie and the alien Mecha were products of Yalai Star, Annie had already vaguely understood the source of Yalai Star's goodwill. In the night when everyone was asleep, a formal invitation letter was transmitted through the dedicated communication channel between Yalai and Earth to the other end of the galaxy. The content of the invitation letter was very simple, basically explaining that Earth recently accidentally discovered a peculiar frozen mecha, which was red in color, and invited Yalai Star's technicians to study together. According to past practice, Annie would receive a reply from the other party within three days. But this time, when Annie had not left the computer for communication, a prompt banner for the reply suddenly appeared on the electronic screen. Excited, Annie quickly opened the reply, and the content was even simpler, only confirming the list of personnel who would visit in the future. But Annie couldn't help but tremble when she saw the first two names on the list. Yalai's 30,009th generation emperor, Her Majesty Euphina. Yalai's 30,008th generation battle god Dante. The new day at the Thunderbolt Mecha Academy was a busy day. After cleaning the seats with gloves, Miller's eyebrows formed the word hate on his face, and his neck was like a spring, turning his head to look back from time to time. Unfortunately, Ningjia has not appeared since the early self-study, and no one knows where he went. Annie, who came to class, didn't care either. She smiled all day and was in a particularly good mood. However, Lingshan seemed a bit anxious, always looking at the class schedule displayed on the electronic screen at the back of the classroom from time to time. If it were usual, Miller would definitely know that Lingshan was worried about the mecha flight class in the afternoon. Unlike the assault mecha driven by Miller, the requirements for his flying ability are not difficult. Basically, as long as he maintains a speed of 200 km per hour and travels between cities, it is fine. Shaolian and Shaolian, who drove the heavy cover type mecha, even exempted them from exams. Only Lingshan, coincidentally driving the light reconnaissance type mecha, had the weakest firepower and assault ability, but the requirements for flying were particularly strict. The basic rule is to proficiently navigate through many obstacles at one. Five times the speed of sound to pass. In fact, Lingshan has never told anyone that she has a slight fear of heights. Although knowing that it was training with a simulator, Ling Shan's feet still trembled uncontrollably whenever she looked down. Regardless of her unwillingness, the lunch break bell rang. Ling Shan, feeling wronged, walked shyly to Miller's side and said, Miller, aren't we supposed to have a flying class in the afternoon? I was thinking, we can talk later. What's the matter? Miller stood up with a deadly look, avoiding Ling Shan. Now I must find that bastard, Ning Jie. He dared to skip the morning class and defecate on my desk. I have to kill him. Watching her boyfriend walk away, Ling Shan's eyes revealed a sense of loss. She picked up her lunchbox and walked towards the rooftop platform along the decorated stairs. Normally, no one would come here, but whenever she was in a bad mood, Ling Shan liked to come here and enjoy the breeze. She pushed open the door to the platform, and the sunlight generously shone on the rooftop. The blue sky, white clouds, and gentle breeze made it a great lunch spot. Ling Shan sat on a bench facing the sea and put her lunchbox aside. Worried about the flying class, Ling Shan had no appetite at all. She closed her eyes, raised her hands, and tensed her body, simulating the actions of flying, repeating the maneuvers of climbing, diving, and sliding, but she always felt uncomfortable somewhere. It wasn't until sweat beads appeared on her forehead from practice that Ling Shan remembered her lunch. She turned her head and saw that the lunchbox was gone. Ning Jia, who had been missing all morning, was sitting next to Ling Shan, eating her lunch with an indifferent look. That's. That's mine. Ling Shan became anxious as she watched Ning Jia bite her chopsticks. Your flight training movements were too stiff. Your right hand was clearly zero. Two seconds slower in response than your left hand, causing the aircraft to always lean to the left. Didn't you notice that the mecha kept hitting obstacles on the left side? Ning Jia chewed with a mouthful. How did you know I was practicing flying? Ling Shan was shocked. After all, only a mecha instructor could know what someone was doing just by observing their movements. Don't ask so many questions. Close your eyes, and let me take you for a flight. Finally finishing the last bite, Ning Jie smiled and sat behind Ling Shan, his broad chest fitting snugly against her slender back. 
What? What are you doing? Let go. Ling Shan struggled, her face turning red. Hey, I really want to help you. Consider it a thank you for treating me to a meal. Do you want to be known as the wall bumping princess? Ning Jie unexpectedly became serious. After calming down for two seconds, Ling Shan took a deep breath. Okay, but let's make it clear that what I'm asking you for help with must not be told to anyone else. Got it. Now let's begin. Close your eyes. Ning Jie gently lifted Ling Shan's hands from behind, and each finger accurately overlapped with the other. Ling Shan's heartbeat involuntarily accelerated, as if she had truly taken flight into the blue sky. Close your eyes. Now let's set the scene. It's sunny, with a temperature of 24 degrees Celsius and 73% humidity. There's a light southeast wind. It's a comfortable environment, can you feel it? Ning Jie softly whispered in Ling Shan's ear, like a hypnotic murmur. Does it feel real? Ling Shan smiled with joy, as if she were in a simulator. Now we're starting. Initial one-fourth of the speed of sound. The aircraft will vibrate a bit, but it'll be fine. Ning Jie smiled and vibrated his body, leading Ling Shan to take off from the ground. Now, we've reached an altitude of 3,000 meters. Can you see the tiny buildings below? Ling Shan's whole body trembled in fear. Sho, are you afraid of heights? Then don't look down, look up at the blue sky above. Are the clouds white? Yes, like cotton candy. Ling Shan closed her eyes and lifted her head, starting to relax. Do you know? What is the most enjoyable part of operating a mecha? Ning Jie gently rested his head on Ling Shan's shoulder. That would be flying. We don't have wings, so we always look up at the sky. Mechas allow us to glide alongside birds. Is there anything more wonderful than this? We shouldn't be afraid, we should enjoy these moments. So, let's begin. Your obstacle flight. What obstacles are you worried about? Ling Shan furrowed her brows again. All right, there's a cliff ahead, at one. Five times the speed of sound. We only have a hundred meters left. What do you do? Ning Jie also closed his eyes. Nervously, Ling Shan's ten fingers began the complex maneuvers. The process was the same as before, but strangely, Ling Shan didn't crash into the cliff. She flawlessly maneuvered around it and continued soaring in the blue sky. Did I make it? Did I really make it? What happened? Ling Shan exclaimed. He, remember the feeling just now, don't forget it. Ning Jie quietly withdrew his supporting hand, not planning to tell Ling Shan that he had subtly corrected her zero. Two second error with his fingers. Continue soaring, enjoy your flight. When Ling Shan realized the warmth behind her had disappeared and turned to look, Ning Jia was already gone. At that moment, Ling Shan finally realized how close she had been to that man just now, and her face turned red as if smoke was about to come out. After her mood calmed down a bit, Ling Shan strangely discovered that when Ning Jia leaned against her shoulder, she seemed to hear a beautiful song. In the afternoon, the flight class proceeded as usual. Ling Shan received an unexpected A grade, and the teacher patted her shoulder praising her significant progress. However, Ning Jia was still absent, not showing up. Finally, before school ended, Miller found Ning Jia in the open space behind the playground and beat him up with a group of people. Through the gaps in the crowd, Ling Shan saw Ning Jia lying on the ground. Even though he was covered in footprints, with his hands covering his head, he had a faint smile on his bloodied lips. Ling Shan finally confirmed that Ning Jia was a boy even stranger than she had imagined. While life on Earth continued to be peaceful, in the vast universe, a massive white battleship was rapidly performing space jumps. The golden cross on the bow of the ship indicated that it was a battleship of the Yalai royal family. In the middle of this battleship, in a luxurious room, a slender girl sat on a large windowsill, leaning her head against her knees as she looked out the window. The scenery outside the window had turned into silver lines. The girl on the windowsill had silver-white straight hair that even reached below the windowsill. She was wearing a pure white, gauzy dress. In the reflection of the light outside the window, her face was so beautiful that it could stop time, possessing the power to make any man kneel before her. However, at this moment, a man stood beside her, as firm as steel. Despite his youthful appearance, he had a sharply defined face, with a height of only one. 75 meters, he was exceptionally sturdy, with muscles that resembled bricks forming his physique. He also had silver spiky hair and an old-fashioned aviator-style eye mask on his forehead. Your Majesty, is it necessary for you to go personally? The man said with a serious tone. After all, for the past thousand years, we have received countless reports about him, but they all turned out to be false. The chance of finding him in the vast universe is extremely slim. Dante, don't forget that he created a legend with an extremely slim chance. Who could have imagined that with just one person, he would defeat over half of Yali's military power at the time and even defeat the ice soul fighting god, recognized as the strongest in Yali's history. 
The girl on the windowsill leaned against the cold window, a sweet smile appearing on her lips. According to the legend, the hero of Yalai Star, the flame soul fighting god, the snake mecha master, Ning Jia. If it's true, I really want to meet this amazing character. Dante trembled with excitement. You, who have already become the god of war leading the entire army of Aral, aren't you satisfied? The girl laughed. Of course, no matter how many people I defeat, as long as I haven't fought against Jing Jie, the people of Aral can never give me the title of the strongest god of war in history. Dante unconsciously clenched his fist. Have you heard? They say that this afternoon, the Aral envoy's warship will land in the city of Morninglight. I heard. I heard. It seems that the Empress of Aral, Euphina, and their god of war, Dante, will both appear. So exciting. If I could catch a glimpse of that Empress, it would be worth dying for. They say that Aral is a hereditary monarchy. Each generation has a female Empress, and each Empress looks exactly the same, incredibly beautiful. I wonder if it's true. All day today, the entire academy, no, the entire city of Morninglight, and even the entire earth, were discussing the same thing. Everyone was excited like they had gone crazy. The streets were adorned with the most dazzling light effects, and cheerful electronic music played without a second of interruption. Numerous television stations from around the world gathered in this floating city by the sea. And all the nobles and authorities from around the world rushed to take the first charter flight, keeping the reception units of Morning Light City busy. Lingshan, look at this. Miller walked to Lingshan's position with a card in his trembling hand, smiling. It's the invitation to the Aral VIP reception tonight. Where did you get it? Lingshan also became excited. Did you forget that my dad is a diplomat? It's not difficult to get an invitation. Miller showed off proudly, but his contemptuous gaze fell on Jingjie, who was sitting next to him. Poor Jingjie was rubbing the bruise on the corner of his mouth with a cooked hot egg. Isn't it just an alien? What's so special about it? Jingjie yawned lazily and peeled off the eggshell. Shut up. You want to get beaten? You're mean, I'll give you guys the seats. Chewing on the egg, Jingjie walked away wisely. Leaving the classroom and entering the corridor, Jingjie clearly saw in the distant sky, the giant warship, which was kilometers long, slowly descending through the clouds. The familiar golden cross emblem made Jingjie sigh. Ah, just woke up and have to meet them again. They never give people a chance to breathe. His gaze returned to the spaceport of Morning Light City, a wide platform where hundreds of people played Scottish music with ancient bagpipes. Thousands of representatives from the business, political, and scientific communities filled the spaceport. Annie, standing in the crowd, changed into a black suit and a one-step skirt. Even the most sloppy Wu Nang was forced to change into a suit and wear a bow tie. The smell of cologne wafted from his armpits. Annie? How much longer? I need to pee. Wu Nang couldn't stop trembling. Stop calling me, if you dare to leave now, he will definitely cut off your little bird. Annie straightened her clean white collar. Still talking about him? We're here pretending to be sculptures, but he doesn't even show up. Clearly, he's just being lazy. Wu Nang's sweat started to flow from enduring. Shut up, the warship is landing. Annie didn't have time to deal with Wu Nang, the idiot, and immediately stood up straight. The white warship landed smoothly on the runway of the spaceport. The open doors turned into floating stairs. Without making others wait, a sturdy figure walked out first. It was Dante, dressed in a black suit, with a neatly draped cloak hanging from his shoulders. The majesty of the god of war allowed him to scan the entire venue and convey it to everyone. After confirming that there was no danger, from the open cabin door, Euphina, the Empress of Aral, wearing a white strap dress and a wide-brimmed sun hat, walked out. Even if they were separated by a hundred meters, when Wu Nang saw the smile on the Empress's lips, he was completely stunned. Her skin was as smooth as jade, her amber-colored pupils slightly upturned at the corners of her eyes, and her straight and high nose. She had the same structure as a human, but no human could be as beautiful as her. She looks so young. If she doesn't speak, who would know that she's already 170 years old? Annie exclaimed sincerely. Wait, is she really that old? Wu Nang swallowed his saliva that was about to flow out. That's why I told you to read more information. The average lifespan of the Aral people is 300 years. The current Empress Euphina is only considered middle-aged, Annie explained. Wow, that's amazing. Can you take care of yourself that well when you reach middle age? Wu Nang's words were met with a sharp elbow strike from Annie, hitting him right in the bladder. Gracefully descending the stairs, Empress Euphina bypassed the Earth Federation president who came to greet her. Under Dante's protection, the Empress bypassed numerous politicians and celebrities and went straight to Annie, extending her friendly right hand. Are you Professor Annie? Hello, I'm Euphina. If you like, you can call me Nana. Euphina smiled sweetly like an ordinary friend. 
H hello, a flustered Annie shook the hand in front of her. Well then, let's not waste any more time, Nana maintained her smile, but her grip on Annie's hand suddenly tightened. Take me to see it, the thing mentioned in your invitation. So, you are indeed related to that thing. For a moment, Annie forgot her identity and reverted to her researcher instincts. The splendid fireworks, the street parade of floats, and the grand chorus of thousands of children, all the carefully planned welcome events became unnecessary. Annie, Wu Nang, Dante, and Nana rode in a car and drove directly into the underground laboratory in the center of Morninglight City. Walking through the familiar metal corridor, when Annie skillfully opened the metal door, she noticed that Nana was trembling uncontrollably. Was the Empress nervous? The bright searchlights made the frozen mecha in the center of the experimental field particularly conspicuous. At the sight of it, Nana even covered her mouth, feeling somewhat dazed. Dante quickly supported the Empress's shoulder, but his pupils never left the crimson mecha for a moment. Finally, we finally found it. It's the snake, Nana, standing upright, took off her sun hat and walked quickly towards the ice crystal. Your Majesty, be careful. The cold from the ice crystal is too intense. Getting too close will cause frostbite, Annie quickly stepped forward and stopped the Empress 10 meters away from the ice crystal. Where did you find it? Dante clenched his fist and stopped beside the Empress. Near Mars, it was found by one of our monitoring ships. At first, we thought it was an iron ore, but who would have known? Wu Nong loosened the uncomfortable bow tie around his neck and took a deep breath. If I'm not mistaken, this mecha should have been manufactured by the Ural Star. But why was it frozen and drifting in space? Annie had many questions she wanted to ask. This is the cruelest punishment of the starry sky. When a certain mecha pilot violates the laws of the starry sky, and the circumstances are particularly severe, the starry sky will convene a grand trial, where all members will vote, and then the five permanent judges will cast their votes. Once the vote is unanimous, the mecha pilot and the mecha will be subjected to the punishment of being frozen in ice, and then let the ice crystal drift aimlessly in the universe. The sentence only ends when it is discovered and thawed by a civilization other than the starry sky, Nana explained, her eyes moist as she looked at the mecha kneeling in the ice crystal. How is this different from a death sentence? The chances of being rescued are terrifyingly low, Annie awkwardly smiled. But you really found it, and I'm really grateful to you. Your Majesty, they have already partially thought it. The cockpit is empty. Dante suddenly looked at Annie as if he had gone crazy, where is he? The person inside the mecha? Who are you talking about? Annie was a little scared. Who else could it be? Jing Jie, the mecha master of the snake, the fighting god Jing Jie. Dante almost shouted. He he. As expected, it's confirmed. This mecha and Jing Jie are the fighting gods. No longer afraid or nervous, Annie suddenly couldn't restrain herself and burst into laughter in the most unrestrained manner of her life. Leaving the cold laboratory, the four of them, with complex emotions, moved to a spacious reception room. Although there were no windows here, at least they could find comfortable sofas, a flat coffee table in the middle of the sofa, and warm coffee on the coffee table. Nana and Annie sat facing each other, while Dante respectfully waited behind Nana, and Wu Nan, who stood behind Annie, smiled strangely and leaned against the back of her sofa. The atmosphere where no one spoke was somewhat unbearable, especially for Annie, whose head was full of question marks. Before we talk, please answer me one question. Will you take Jing Jie and the snake away? Annie's face was unusually serious. Academician Annie misunderstood our relationship with Jing Jie. He is not our servant, and no one can command him. If he doesn't want to leave Earth, this is his home. On the contrary, if he wants to leave and someone tries to force him, Aral will do everything possible to destroy all obstacles. Nana picked up the steaming coffee in front of her. Her simple explanation made Annie tremble uncontrollably, as if she had seen the destruction of the Earth. Be grateful that we didn't torture Jing Jie back then if they knew that we had tortured their hero. I guess what's coming now wouldn't be a battleship. Wu Nang muttered quietly in Annie's ear, his back soaked in cold sweat. Your Majesty, I can assure you that no one will force Jing Jie. But before you meet him, can you tell me about the connection between Jing Jie, a pure earthling, and Aral? Enduring her fear, Annie continued to ask. Actually, this is a secret that should not be told to outsiders. However, this secret is probably only unknown to civilizations as backward as Earth and the universe, right? Nana slowly put down the ceramic cup in her hand, her already beautiful face showing a touch of sadness, making her even more charming. Just a thousand and three years ago, the Aral civilization experienced a catastrophe that was almost annihilating. Really? Someone dared to invade Aral? Wu Ning opened his mouth wide, even a thousand years ago, your military power was terrifying. Indeed, but the one who invaded Aral was not an outsider. At that time, the fighting god betrayed the Aral royal family. 
As she spoke, Nana sighed lightly, our military power has always been entrusted to the fighting gods, but who would have thought that the sharpest sword would be pointed at its own throat? How is that possible? Wasn't there anyone who resisted the rebellious fighting god? Annie exclaimed in surprise. No one dared to resist because no one could defeat him at that time, the ice soul fighting god, Minglang. In Aral's history, he was the only one who defeated all the simulated data of the previous fighting god Mechas and was considered the strongest fighting god. Dante laughed, as if laughing in Annie's naivety, not to mention that he had a powerful army, even if he was alone, he probably had the strength to storm the palace and kill the king. Exactly, at that time, the empress was forced to escape Aral with only a few remaining royal guards in Mecca, aboard a battleship. According to the rules of the stellar tragedy, alien civilizations are prohibited from interfering in the internal affairs of other countries, and Minglang's rebellion was considered an internal affair. Therefore, no planet in the universe reached out to help the fleeing Aral royal family, and some even voluntarily provided the location of the Minglang royal family. Nana had long understood that the universe was a heartless place, but every time she thought about it, she couldn't help but show a look of hatred. I don't understand, what does this have to do with Jingjie? Annie didn't show any sympathy, she just kept asking her inner doubts. Speaking of which, I need to explain to you the process of the birth of the Aral Star God. Instantly calm, Nana smiled charmingly again. On Aral Star, everyone has the power to become a Star God. When the previous generation of Star God retires, Aral holds a grand ceremony. All the mecha pilots who participate in the ceremony will challenge the simulated data of the past Aral Star God mecha in the simulation machine. Only those who defeat the most opponents are qualified to challenge the previous generation of Star God in person. If they continue to win, they can become the new Star God. If they lose, the ceremony will restart after six months, and the cycle continues. What a cruel rule. Wu Nang could imagine how difficult the process was, but he couldn't imagine how the white-haired Dante on the other side could stand here with such a young Star God posture. This is just the beginning. When a new Star God is born, Aral will invite specialized Star God Mecha craftsmen to create a brand new Star God Mecha for the new Star God. Nana said, and Annie in front of her stood up excitedly. I know. It's the Ten God Artisan Clan. All the Star God Mechas in the entire universe are made by them, and only they can create the Macro Martial System. They really exist. Annie's eyes sparkled like a little girl. It seems that Dr. Annie has collected a lot of information in her spare time, huh? Nana smiled, covering her mouth, and Wu Nang felt weak just looking at her. I apologize. Annie blushed and sat back in her original position. That's right, the Ten God Artisan Clan really exists, and only the mechas they create are recognized as Star God mechas in the entire universe. And within the Ten God Artisan Clan, the Pachin family is the only one that has ever created Star God mechas for Aral. At that time, the patriarch of the Pachin family also discovered Ming Lang's uniqueness and made an exception to create two star god mechas for him to choose from. One is the Frost Soul Star God Dragon, with a macro martial system driven by the mecha pilot's coldness. Unexpectedly, his coldness is not only towards enemies, but also towards his own people, Nana said with a hint of anger. The other one is the Flame Soul Star God Snake, with the macro martial system driven by the mecha pilot's anger. Dante took over Nana's words and gently patted the trembling shoulder of the emperor. At that time, the fleeing royal family took the star god mecha that Ming Lang didn't choose. They hoped to find a mecha pilot who could activate the snake and become a weapon to resist Ming Lang. I don't understand. The fleeing royal family should have had guardian mecha pilots with them, right? Why couldn't they activate it? Annie was puzzled. To activate the star god mecha for the first time, you must first activate its macro martial system. In other words, the mecha pilot must have enough emotions to drive the macro martial system. Unfortunately, the snake was made by the Pachin family based on Ming Lang as the standard. The anger of an ordinary mecha pilot was completely ignored by the snake and couldn't resonate with it. Coincidentally, the royal family that was chased by one of Ming Lang's troops and forced to land on earth happened to land in a city in ancient China. Wu Nung. Annie didn't wait for Dante to finish speaking and knocked on the man's head next to her. Understood, I'll go check the historical records. Wu Neng quickly left the reception room. So, we met Ning Jie. Nana smiled, her happiness shining like a flower. No one believed that it was the anger of this 16-year-old boy that caused the resonance of the snake. He became the recognized mecha pilot of the flame soul star god and accompanied the spiritually uplifted royal family in a three-year-long counterattack. With just one warship, a few guardian mechas, plus a star god found on earth, they actually fought their way back to Aral. In the almost endless battles, Ning Jie truly became a true star god. When the final battle came, Ning Jie stood tall in front of tens of thousands of mechas and warships, with just one person, one mecha, and one sword, 
fighting until no one dared to approach him. And Ming Lang had no choice but to personally challenge the Scarred Flame Soul Battle God Mech. As you can see, Ning Jia One and our Aral royal family regained control of Aral's regime, continuing to flourish to this day. However, Ning Jia sacrificed everything in this battle that had nothing to do with him. In that earth-shattering battle, the woman Ning Jia loved was killed by Ming Lang. The heart-wrenching anger destroyed Ning Jia's thinking and self-control, and also caused his macro warrior system to break through the third dimensional liberation. Third dimensional liberation? Annie exclaimed excitedly at the new term. The so-called macro warrior system is a system that transforms the power of the mech into various weapons in an instant, driven by the emotions of the mech pilot. When the emotions provided by the mech pilot are pure enough, the macro warrior system will continue to upgrade according to the pattern. This is the theory. Dante calmly explained, at that time, the second dimensional liberation of the macro warrior system was considered the highest realm. But Ning Jie broke through the realm of second dimensional liberation and became the first mech pilot in the universe to achieve third dimensional liberation of the macro warrior system. Although there are now many mech pilots who can achieve third dimensional liberation, everyone in the universe recognizes Ning Jie's importance. I really don't know. He just looks like a lustful little devil, but he's so powerful. Annie's whole body was covered in goosebumps. But it was this hero who sacrificed everything for her all, only to end up being frozen and exiled. Nana lowered her head blue tears flowing from her amber eyes. Even though all the people of Aral consider Ning Jia a hero, but his identity as an outsider cannot be changed. What he intervened in was still Aral's internal affairs. After the Starry Sky tragedy, a grand council was held, and it took a month to finally decide that Ning Lang was guilty, and Ning Jia was also guilty. Both of them were frozen inside the Mets and exiled to the far reaches of the universe. As one of the judges who judged Ning Jia, you should understand the pain of the Aral Empress at that time. On the day she passed away, she enacted a law, as the descendants of the Aral royal family and the people, to never forget the grace of the flame soul battle god. You must do your best to find the whereabouts of the hero and repay the debt. Now I finally understand why Aral, such an excellent civilization, has been condescendingly supporting and assisting Earth. It turns out that you just want to repay the favor to Ningjia. Annie slumped weakly on the sofa. Thinking back, the end of the Earth's war the establishment of the Earth Federation, the advancement of space technology, everything was closely related to Aral's support. In other words, without Ningjia's help to Aral, Earth would not have the happy life it has today. Just like Aral owes Ningjia a favor, the descendants of Earth also owe him. In the evening sun, lying on the roof of the teaching building, Ningjia suddenly woke up from his nap, supporting his body with intense gasps, his clothes fitting clothes soaked with sweat. It was because he had dreamed of that scene from a thousand years ago again. On the wide street, a pristine white warship descended from the sky, tearing open the earth, raising a sky covering dust, and stopping in front of him. Before that day, he used to call himself Chinese, but after that day, Ning Jia no longer knew how to address himself. Earthling? Hero? Criminal of the starry sky tragedy? Mech pilot? Or battle god? The night quietly arrived, and the most grand event in Morning Light City tonight was the welcome banquet held by the Earth Federation officials for the Aral Empress. Unfortunately, not everyone could witness this grand occasion, only the privileged and the politicians could attend. Of course, having such relatives at home would also suffice. On the wide streets of Morning Light City, Miller drove the latest model of the Ferrari Magnetic Levitation sports car, heading towards the Goethe Grand Theater in the city center. In order to accommodate all the guests, the government had to convert the large theater, which could accommodate tens of thousands of people, into a banquet hall. It was considered the highest standard welcome banquet on earth. Miller was honored to attend such a grand event, and he had a smile on his face all night. He even specially wore a evening gown designed by a famous designer, and brought along his most precious watch and brooch. As for Ling Shan, she was happy, but not to the point of being nervous. If it weren't for Miller's strong insistence, she wouldn't even want to wear the evening dress that Miller gave her for her birthday. It was a strapless lace dress in a watermelon red color. A gift for you, Miller said. Ling Shan looked beautiful tonight, and Miller couldn't help but take a few more glances at her from the rearview mirror as he drove. He handed her a small box. You've already given me enough gifts, don't give me any more, Ling Shan said as she took the box. Don't worry, you'll definitely find it useful, Miller smiled and opened the box with one hand. Inside was a transparent glass bottle. What is this? Ling Shan carefully examined the bottle. It's the most expensive translation mechanical bug on earth, the sodium micron level unit which can work on biological thermal energy. There are a total of five bugs in your bottle. When you open it, two of them will crawl into your ears, one will enter your throat to the vocal cords, and two will lurk in your corneas. 
When you need to communicate, their artificial intelligence system can automatically translate the alien language of Aral into a language you can understand. The words you speak will also be transformed into Aral language due to the bugs in your vocal cords, and the bugs in your corneas can help you translate alien writing. If needed later, you can also input other planetary language versions. Isn't it amazing? Miller proudly showed off. I heard that such translation mechanical bugs have long become an important tool for communication in the universe. Unfortunately, Earth is just getting started and can only translate Earth language and Aral language for now. With this, you won't have to worry about not understanding the words of the Aral Queen later. When Miller arrived at the theater, the area outside the door was already filled with numerous luxury cars. There were at least a thousand of them, which made Ling Shan a little overwhelmed. After presenting the invitation letter, Miller generously took Ling Shan's hand and walked into the gathering place of Earth's elites. It was truly magnificent, that was Ling Shan's first impression. Whether it was the towering 30-meter-high dome or the banquet hall the size of two football fields under the dome, everywhere exuded luxury and nobility. Countless celebrities held various styles of wine glasses, standing together in groups of three or five, complimenting each other with the most sincere hypocritical smiles. How spectacular it was. So many people, and some of them are TV stars, Ling Shan felt a little uncomfortable in such an occasion. What are stars? They are just supporting roles here. The real important ones are the officials who govern the government, and elites like you and me, Miller said, shaking his dress at this moment. As long as you are here, can you tell me where the bathroom is? Ning Jia ran to Miller's side, holding his lower abdomen. You're here too? Ling Shan was pleasantly surprised to see her tablemate. Why are you here? Miller was only angry. Did I want to come? Annie forced me to come. Damn it, the wine in this era is too strong. I can't hold it after just two bottles. Ning Jia trembled in frustration, almost crying. Even though he was wearing a neat black suit and his hair was neatly combed, his twisted face still didn't give off a hint of gentlemanly demeanor. Ling Shan couldn't help but laugh, and all the tension disappeared because of Ning Jia's embarrassment. Ning Jia, why are you running around? Not far away, Annie, wearing a purple-black satin tight-fitting dress, walked through the crowd and hurried over, grabbing Ning Jia's wrist, afraid that he would run away. I'm about to pee. What do you mean, why am I running? Ning Jia can't stand the women around him anymore, but the feeling of her 36 e breasts pressed against Ning Jia's wrist unconsciously reveals a lecherous expression on his face. I'll take you there, you two can have fun on your own, the buffet table is up ahead, excuse me. Smiling, Annie led Ning Jie towards the restroom. Have you noticed, Annie seems to be particularly good to Ning Jie? Could they be in love? Ling Shan didn't dare to continue, her face turning red. Forget about it, this guy is really persistent. Can't believe I can still run into the stinky kid here. Miller pulled at his collar with a stern face and began socializing. It's not just Ning Jie who is uncomfortable in this hypocritical setting. Amidst the sea of elegant evening gowns, there is a sloppy figure wearing a dirty white coat, circling around the 50-meter-long buffet table. Wu Nong was overjoyed, it had been over half a year since he last encountered such a good opportunity to eat for free. In his hands were plates filled with the shells of high-end seafood, while the meat of these seafood had long entered his bulging belly. Wu Nong, what a coincidence, running into you here. Just as Wu Nong was secretly delighted, a big hand suddenly rested on his shoulder. Gao Ao, what are you doing here too? Wu Nong reluctantly turned his head. Surprised? You should know that I never miss an opportunity to wear formal attire. Gao Ao smiled, his middle-aged appearance well-maintained without any wrinkles in sight. His black hair was neatly combed, and his black suit accentuated his height of one. Eight meters. With white gloves, he looked like a gentleman, but who would have thought that he was the strongest mecha pilot on earth? Do you remember a few days ago when I asked you to maintain the overlord? Gao Ao's hand still rested on Wu Nang's shoulder, while his other hand casually picked up a piece of fruit in front of him. Didn't I give it back to you? Cold sweat started to form on Wu Nang's forehead. Yes, you did return it, but when I checked the data card of the overlord, I suddenly found a set of operation records that I didn't know about. Gao Ao asked while eating the fruit. Maybe it was left behind by one of the repairmen during testing? Wu Nang began to struggle, but no matter how hard he tried, he couldn't shake off the arm resting on his shoulder. Is that so? Your repairman must be very skilled, my overlord couldn't keep up with his operating speed? 400 operations per minute, is this guy still human? Introduce me to him. The gentleman put down the fruit fork, Gao Ao looked at the nervous Wu Nang. Damn it, you're really persistent. Wu Nang felt frustrated. All the hosts of the banquet had arrived, after Ling Shan introduced herself 37 times, Miller shook hands 56 times, Annie stomped her feet outside the men's restroom 6 times, and Wu Nang attempted to escape 40 times, 
while Gao Ao persistently asked questions 68 times. Finally, the awaited guest arrived. As the double doors on the second floor of the banquet hall were pushed open from the outside, dozens of spotlights shone together. The symphony orchestra played passionately, even drowning out the footsteps of the guests. Everyone looked up towards the magnificent staircase. Nana, wearing a pure white evening gown that resembled a wedding dress, adorned her slender body. The skirt's pattern, made of gold thread and gemstones, shimmered with a captivating light under the spotlight. But no matter how captivating the light was, it couldn't surpass the faint smile at the corner of Nana's mouth, and her silver hair cascading down to her waist. Truly beautiful women not only captivate men, but also astonish women. Lingshan was stunned, she admitted that she was beautiful, but compared to the queen in front of her, it was like the difference between a commoner and a princess. This difference was not in appearance, but in the indescribable noble temperament that couldn't be acquired through training. In comparison, Dante, who followed behind Nana, no longer attracted attention. Wearing a tight black suit that highlighted his muscles, he didn't bother to dress up for this banquet. Nana, who finally appeared after countless calls, did not greet anyone. She looked around under the spotlight as if searching for something rare. But when she held up her skirt, took off her shoes, and ran barefoot towards the object she was looking for, no one thought that the object, or the person, was anything special. Under the spotlight, Jingjie stood with his hands in his pockets, his suit still bearing the water stains from the restroom. He faced the queen with a calm expression. Nana couldn't control her excitement anymore. Her hundred-meter run made the queen pant heavily. Her disheveled hair ruined her beauty, and her unadorned smile also spoiled her beauty. But she was still happy. Finally found you, Nana said after catching her breath, and naturally leaned forward to the floor, a kneeling motion. Before everyone could exclaim, the silent Jingjie supported Nana, who was about to fall to her knees. If you don't mind, would you dance with me? Jingjie said seriously, no longer like a lecherous old man. It's my honor, a dance that I've been waiting for a thousand years, Nana said, placing her hand on Jingjie's shoulder. The melodious waltz began to play. The gentle piano music, no matter how long ago, never goes out of style. Nana danced the waltz skillfully to the unfamiliar foreign music. The closeness to her hero in her dreams intoxicated the queen as well, and the smile on her beautiful face turned into a flower that would never wither. The sight of a queen and a wolf dancing under the spotlight left everyone dumbfounded. Although they spun and twirled in sync with the music, everyone's gaze uncontrollably kept stealing glances at the two of them. Among these onlookers, Ling Shan's gaze was the most diligent, even though she was currently dancing with Miller. In this dimly lit ballroom, there were two people who couldn't blend into the atmosphere. Wu Nang and Gao Ao, holding glasses of red wine by the table, drank and looked towards a distant focal point. So, the person dancing with the queen is the monster that made my overlord unable to keep up with his rhythm? But no matter how you look at him, he's just a child, right? Wu Nang, don't play me. Don't forget that we were roommates in college. I've long known your talent for telling lies. Gao Ao tasted the wine in his cup. Believe it or not, all I can tell you is that kid is strong a character who can dominate even in the universe. Wu Nang down the contents of his cup. So, he's stronger than me? Gao Ao's grip on the wine glass tightened. He he, sorry, old classmate. Although I know you have a strong sense of self-esteem, if you were to compare yourself to Jingjie, the two of you are not even in the same world. Wu Nang patted Gao Ao's shoulder and turned around to continue eating. When the music reached its climax, Nana even hugged Jingjie's neck with both hands, pressing her whole body against his chest. Nana's swaying body in the wind was intoxicated, infatuated. But to Jingjie and Nana, it was just a whispered conversation that went unnoticed by others. Is this the decision you made after waking up a thousand years later? Nana leaned her head on Jingjie's shoulder and closed her eyes lightly. Actually, you don't have to worry about anything else. After enduring the frozen sentence, you are already innocent. I have the ability to let you smoothly join the Aral Star, where you will receive a thousand times more enthusiastic support than here. They don't understand your true value. Thank you for your kindness, but I think things are fine as they are now. I don't want to go to the battlefield anymore. I don't want to kill anymore. You all worship me as a hero, but do you know how many people I killed during those three years of war? Ningjie whispered in Nana's ear, 173,643 people. I don't even know what most of them look like or their names. Does Yalai really need a butcher like me? But staying here, it's likely that you still won't find the peace you want. Nana's words were filled with sadness. What do you mean? Ningjie tightened his hands around Nana's waist. Do you remember the chief judge sitting in the far right seat at the Starfall Judgment Assembly? I forgot his name, but I remember he looked particularly disgusting. Ningjie tried to recall. That was the high priest of the bug star, Hamet. 
Their civilization's history is not even half as long as Earth's, yet they became one of the five chief judges in just 500 years. They relied on the universe's recognized fastest evolution speed and the most terrifying instinct for attack. When they were just a group of bugs, some planets in the starfall were attacked by their home planet, but in the end, no matter how advanced the technology was, they couldn't exterminate these primitive creatures. On the contrary, they later evolved the ability for space travel and began a terrifying invasion. Almost in an instant, 50 starfall planets were annihilated by the bug star, becoming nourishment for their evolution. Among them, even the planet that was once one of the original five chief judges was swallowed by them. Everyone was afraid of their power, so they made an exception and allowed this vile bug star to join the starfall, even becoming one of the five chief judges. Nana leaned closer to Ningjie. So, is it true that enemies that can't be eliminated become friends? It's very similar to the theory that circulates in the universe. Ningjie sneered. Indeed, the bug star that became a chief judge did settle down and has always followed the law of no internal conflicts. However, since then, every new civilization that applied to join the Starfall was swallowed by the Bug Star. That's why for 1500 years, the Starfall hasn't added any new members. Nana trembled. In order to repay our debt, we worked hard to help Earth develop and even recommended them to join the Starfall. But it's like putting Earth's name on the Bug Star's menu. It's not your fault. Even if you didn't intervene, according to the pace of human development, Earth, which didn't join the Starfall, would still be targeted. At least now, with the help of you, Earth's military power and technology have become much stronger. Ningjie sighed softly. He truly seemed like a hero, even though destruction was imminent, his expression remained calm. I'm sorry, Ningjie. Blue tears welled up in Nana's eyes. According to the law, even if the bug star invades Earth, Yalai cannot intervene. I understand. How much time do we have left? The bug star's army set off ten days ago. They claimed it was an evaluation of Earth's qualifications, but the forces they send are enough to wipe out three Earths. That's why I came to Earth, to apologize to you in person and sincerely invite you to come to Yalai. Now, I want to extend the invitation once again. Will you come with us? Nana pleaded. A thousand years ago, your ancestors also invited me in the same way, but at that time, they asked me to sacrifice myself for them. But now, you invite me because you want me to survive? However, this time, I really don't want to leave anymore. No matter what happens to Earth in the end, this will always be my home. The dance ended, and Ningjie left Nana's embrace without any attachment. But there won't be peace here anymore. What will you do then? Nana was stunned. If there is no peace, then create peace. After all, I've already created it for you once, and I can do it again for myself. Ningjie's lips curled up slightly, and the hidden meaning in his subtle smile made Nana tremble uncontrollably. On this day, as the ball was nearing its end, Nana announced some exciting news that uplifted all the elites. Almost all members of the Starry Sky's demise had passed the Earth's application to join, except for the last insect star judge who was still hesitant. Therefore, the insect star would send an envoy to conduct a final inspection of Earth. If it passed, Earth would officially become a member of the Starry Sky's demise. Finally, a new era of interstellar trade could begin, and Earth would become even more glorious than it is today. After Nana announced this news, the cheers of the thousand people in the audience were deafening like never-ending waves. In the crowd of cheers, Lingshan once again spotted Ningjie. Compared to the great news, the man who had danced with the queen was no longer eye-catching. Lingshan saw Ningjie bypassing one figure after another and heading towards the exit of the theater. Lingshan didn't know what was pulling her heart, but she left Miller, who was cheering beside her, and followed Ningjie's footsteps. As they left the grand hall, the world suddenly became incredibly quiet. Ningjie sat down not far from the stairs, leaning against the wall, lost in thought. The deserted environment made the air feel much fresher. Lingshan was about to say hello when another person walked up to him first. Ningjie, how should I address you? It was Dante. Lingshan instinctively leaned against the pillar, her mind filled with question marks. He he, don't you already know my name? Ningjie didn't stand up, nor did he even look at the person in front of him. He just smiled casually. I mean, should I call you the flame soul fighting god? Or the savior hero overall? Or just Ningjie? who is nothing now. Call me whatever you like. You are now Aral's fighting god, right? Leaning back slightly, Ningjia looked up at the serious man in front of him. Aral's 30,000 and 8th generation, the steel fighting god, Dante, powered by the Hangu system. Dante remained expressionless, truly like a piece of steel. Why are you explaining all this? Actually, I don't care who you are. Ningjie was amused by Dante's seriousness. It must be explained because I want to fight you and defeat you, becoming the strongest fighting god in Aral's history. Dante didn't hide his desire, just like a child. 
Have you challenged the simulated data of the previous fighting gods? Ningjie didn't seem to dislike Dante's straightforward personality. It took me two years, a total of 30,005 fighting god data, and I have completed the challenge with a perfect record. Then you are already the strongest. I heard that back then, Mingling took two and a half years to complete such a challenge. Ningjia finally stood up and patted Dante's shoulder like an elder. No, among these data, there is no data for the flame soul fighting god and the ice soul fighting god. Your mechas were frozen, and I couldn't find your simulated data. So, if I don't defeat you, I can't become the strongest. At the very least, I have to defeat you, who once defeated the ice soul fighting god. Dante maintained his strong posture and bowed to Ningjie. Dante requests here, to have a battle with you. We can't fight. My snake is still trapped in ice. Even if I fight you with Earth's mecha, you won't be satisfied even if you win. Ningjie sighed and waved his hand. Others may not know. Do you think I, as a fighting god mecha pilot, am also foolish? Facing the ground, Dante's voice became deep. As long as you have awakened, there is nothing in this world that can trap the snake again. You have the ability to awaken the sleeping snake and fight me as a fighting god. Unfortunately, I'm not in the mood to fight you now. Continue to protect your queen. That's the duty of a fighting god. Waving his hand behind him, Ningjie climbed up from the steps. Whether you're afraid of losing or simply looking down on me, one day, you will definitely fight me. I guarantee it. Straightening his back, Dante remained resolute. As he reached the last step, Ningjie suddenly noticed Lingshan eavesdropping. Awkwardness made Lingshan somewhat at a loss, with various excuses for eavesdropping running through her head. But Ningjie didn't say anything, just put his finger to his lips and smiled foolishly, Shu. After the grand welcome banquet ended, the moon in the sky shone like the sun over Qingguang City. Wu Nang was still driving, Annie and Ningjie sat in the back seat, blowing the cold night wind. Ningjie yawned, tired. But Annie seemed unsatisfied, her clear eyes locked onto Ningjie. Tell me, what did you and Nana talk about? Mr. God of War, Annie couldn't help her curiosity anymore. Don't call me that, it scares me, Ningjie shivered. Actually, I just danced with her innocently. I don't believe it. It can't be that simple. Did she want to take you away? Annie pressed on with her questioning. By the way, trying to get away from Annie's interrogation, Ningjie suddenly leaned towards Wu Nang in the front seat. You must be a mech craftsman, right? The best on earth. Wu Nang boasted proudly. Can you help me build a mech? I'm in a hurry. I need it urgently, Ningjie flattered. I don't have many requirements, just not too slow. Do you like Earth's mechs? You're the god of war's mech pilot, aren't you? Leaning against the car seat, Annie sneered. You said you didn't have any requirements? I don't think it's easy to build a mech that can keep up with your speed when your reaction time is 400. Wu Ning's face twisted, no longer looking proud. Is 400 fast? I've already slowed down and cooperated with the data card you gave me, Ning Jie said, making Annie and Wu Ning break out in a cold sweat again. So what's your actual speed? Annie trembled uncontrollably. I haven't measured it specifically but when I go all out, it should reach a maximum of 620, right? Ningjie seemed indifferent, please hurry, because I really don't have much time to wait. Oomph, are you going to war? Why are you in such a hurry? Wu Nang complained. Ningjie didn't say anything, just turned his head to look at the distant sea. The next day, the welcome activities for Queen Yalai in Chengguang City were not yet over. After being postponed for a day, Nana finally cooperated with the hypocritical officials and began various visits, negotiations, and discussions. Meanwhile, classes at Xuanlei Academy continued as usual. You must be an alien. Just after the first class ended, a girl with shoulder-length red curly hair ran up to Ningjie's desk. Yes, you must be an alien. Her twin sister, with shoulder-length blue curly hair, also ran over. Hearing this, Lingshan, sitting next to Ningjie, became a little flustered, afraid that Ningjie would think it was her spreading rumors. Why do you say that? Don't I look like an earthling? Ningjie seemed unusually relaxed, supporting his forehead with one hand, observing the two little girls in front of him. Appearance can't deceive us. Big sister Xiolian hugged a white rabbit doll tightly, these past few days, we've calculated that you've attended no more than four classes. If someone else skipped class like this, teacher Annie would have kicked them out of school long ago. And although you drove the overlord that day, your reaction time with the machinery is too different. With that level, you can't even get into Xuanlei, little sister Xiolian nodded with certainty, holding a black rabbit doll. So we're sure that you're an alien, otherwise teacher Annie wouldn't be so nice to you. The two sisters said in unison. He he, you two really have wild imaginations. But let me ask, how can you, at the age of 12, sit in a high school classroom? Ningjie scratched his head. Because Xiolian and Xiolian have good grades, we skipped grades together the two sisters said in perfect harmony. For me, 
anyone with good grades is an alien. Ning Jie expressed his understanding as a bad student. Humph, trying to argue. Let's go, Xiao Lian, if the alien won't admit it, let's think of plan B. Sighing little love held little pity's hand and left. Little pity turned back and made a face. Ning Jie, are you really an alien? Ling Shan asked in a low voice when there was no one around. No, I am a pure earthling, Ning Jie affirmed. But why are you also the hero of Aral, the flame soul fighter? Ling Shan's voice became even softer as she spoke. A lot of things have happened, and I can't tell you right now. Let me think. Ning Jie started to feel a headache. I have a good way to prove it. He exclaimed. Without closing his eyes, Ning Jie suddenly leaned forward and kissed Ling Shan on the lips. Ling Shan, surprised, widened her eyes but forgot to push away the intruding pervert in front of her. How about that? Is it the same as a kiss from an earthling? Is it enough to prove my purity? Ning Jie smiled and released the stunned girl in front of him. Ning Jie, you beast. I'll kill you. Miller in the front row saw everything and jumped up in madness. See you later. Ning Jie also quickly jumped up and started a joyful escape. This happy campus life continued for three days. Three days later, at the Dawn City spaceport where the Aral warship landed, the Grand Reception welcoming team gathered again, even more impressive than three days ago. This time, even the Queen of Aral, Euphina, and the steel fighter Dante joined the team. Is it really this time, Nana? And had already become familiar with the friendly queen during these few days, and she had even gotten used to calling her that. Yes, we received a special communication from the bug star yesterday, and it is indeed this time, Nana confirmed with a smile, but her expression involuntarily showed sadness after she finished laughing. But the satellite monitoring center hasn't detected any ships yet, Wu Nang scratched his head in confusion. Here it comes. Dante suddenly looked up. In the cloudless sky, a black dot gradually became clearer, like a black star. This black star enlarged at an abnormal speed until it tore through the sky and fell rapidly. The reception officials were terrified and scattered in panic. Only Nana, Dante, Wu Nang, and in stood still without moving an inch. With a loud bang, the black star crashed onto the ground, causing the metal spaceport to sink into a twisted circular crater. The impact created a gust of wind that messed up many people's hair. The white smoke generated by the high temperature filled the air for hundreds of meters. When the panicked officials realized they were still alive, they remembered their identities and hastily reformed the queue. Is that the envoy from the bug star? And couldn't believe her eyes as she looked at the center of the crater, where there was an oval object about one meter in diameter. Yes, that is one of the judges of the Starry Sky Tragedy, the high priest of the bug star, Hammett. He was also involved in the trial of Ningjie, Nana's words made in gasp. Is it true? That happened a thousand years ago. How old is he now? Anne's voice trembled. Who knows? Just as they were talking, the black oval object started to move, and the surface cracked with numerous textures, like an egg. Suddenly, a figure broke out of the shell. This person was about one. Seven meters tall, bald, without eyebrows or ears. The skin all over his body resembled snake scales, emitting a green light. The humanoid features formed a sinister smiling face, and the crimson pupils stared at Nana. Long time no see, the queen of Aral is getting more beautiful. Hammett kicked and shattered the black eggshell, then walked towards them with big strides, his whole body covered in sticky mucus, with fragments of eggshell still attached to his shoulder. It's been years, but you haven't changed at all. You're still as ugly as ever. Last time, I asked you when you would die, but you didn't answer me. Not as approachable as usual, Nana displayed the majesty of a queen in the face of the approaching monster. Hee <laughs> hee, Nana, you really forgot, didn't I say it before? When you marry me, even just one day is enough to make me happy to death. Hamlet came to Nana's side, intending to gentlemanly kiss the back of the queen's hand, but Dante stood in front of Nana first. Marry you? Do you want me to bear a bunch of little bugs with you? Please, I'm about to vomit. Nana sneered sarcastically. Forget it, the focus of today's work is not arguing with you. Where are the people of Earth? Where is the person in charge? Is no one paying attention to me? Hamlet tore off the black eggshell on his shoulder, chewing on it while shouting left and right. Wuneng, I only realized today that there are creatures in the universe even more disgusting than you. Looking at the insect envoy in front of her, Annie's skin crawled. I don't consider that a compliment. Wu Ning also felt his stomach churning, almost vomiting. Fifteen minutes later, in the restaurant of the spaceport, Hamlet, now wearing a white cloak, finally sat at the table. Like a starving dog, Hamlet grabbed various delicious foods with both hands and tore into them voraciously. Nana and Dante, sitting across from him, leaned back intentionally so as not to be splattered with food fragments. And a group of reception officials, like eunuchs from ancient times, stood respectfully in a queue beside the table. Annie and Wu Nang were both unhappy as members of this group. Delicious. 
Earth's food is really delicious. I really don't know how they make it. Hamlet exclaimed while swallowing a lobster hole, shell and all. Eat, eat with big bites. After you finish eating, will your inspection be over? Earth is just like what you see, small enough to fit in a bullet, not even enough to fill the gaps in your teeth. Nana hasn't smiled since she saw this disgusting Hamlet. Nana, you're too modest. I actually think it's not bad here, except for its small size. The environment should be comparable to a raw. Hamlet's sinister smile paused for a moment. Especially Earth's mining fleet, ranked in the top 10 in the universe, giving this backward civilization some fame. Of course, speaking of the real reason why the name Earth is known in the universe, it's because of that arrogant kid, the Flame Soul Warrior. You also know that Earth is the hometown of the Flame Soul Warrior. I advise you to eat a little less, be careful that someone knocks out your front teeth after they wake up. Nana threatened. Nana, you're joking again. You probably forgot that our teeth are the most frequently replaced in the entire universe. This time, I just want to investigate one thing, and that is Earth's military strength. Show me all the military bases on Earth. Hamlet's sinister smile disappeared as he pointed with his greasy fingers at the person behind Nana. Although conservative, they were all seasoned politicians who had been in politics for many years. No one in the room dared to easily oppose the conditions proposed by one of the five grand judges. The restaurant in the spaceport was spacious, with a design of full glass curtain walls that allowed sunlight to freely shine in. Comfortable sofas and seats, combined with the skills of top chefs, were definitely a perfect combination. However, as a place to discuss the future of Earth, it was really unworthy. Faced with Hamlet's almost commanding request, Annie looked around and no official dared to step forward to answer. They were all old foxes who had been crawling in the political world for decades, each one a talented and versatile genius. Naturally, they understood the consequences of opening military bases to his race. But at the same time, no one dared to easily defy the conditions proposed by one of the five grand judges. They knew the serious consequences of opening military bases, and they were even more afraid of offending the terrifying consequences of the insect civilization. However, avoiding the problem wouldn't solve it. If this was a test that Earth had to go through on its interstellar journey, then at this moment, they needed an Earthling to face the ordeal. So, with a sigh, and, dressed in a black suit, pushed her gold-rimmed glasses up her nose and took the initiative to walk up and sit next to Nana, facing Hammett, who was dressed in green snake scales. Your Excellency, although Earth may seem backward and even unsightly in your eyes, it doesn't mean we are brainless idiots. The consequences of casually opening military bases are far more difficult to handle than the dishes after your meal. Of course, we do not doubt your character, but we need at least one reason that can convince me. There was a tone of respect in her voice, but Anne's eyes were filled with hostility. Interesting woman, do you have the qualifications to represent Earth in making decisions? Hammett laughed grimly. No, but at least among Earthlings, I am the smartest. As long as you can convince me, the other idiots will be easy to deal with. And smiled hypocritically, but she didn't see the ugly expressions on the faces of the idiots behind her. It's really troublesome to meet a smart person. Hammett rubbed his head in frustration, here's the deal, since you want to join the stellar tragedy, if you encounter an invasion from a civilization other than the stellar tragedy in the future, you should at least have enough strength to protect yourselves, right? After all, joining the stellar tragedy means that you will have trade with many other member planets, and we need to ensure their safety. Otherwise, when you are swallowed up by a foreign civilization, not only will it be a loss of face for the stellar tragedy, but also the interests of other planets. Is this explanation satisfactory to you? Although it's far-fetched, it's not unreasonable. And was surprised that the creature in front of her had evolved to such an intelligent stage. However, inspecting our military bases alone cannot fully demonstrate our military strength, right? After all, even if we were invaded, it would not be a recent event. You should observe our potential for development more. For example, whether our larvae are strong enough? Hammett started eating again. Here, we call them children. And suppressed her anger and continued, we can arrange for you to visit all the schools on Earth, including the Mecha Academy and the Military Academy, to see how our offspring are rapidly learning and growing, or... Enough, it's too long, I don't have that much time. After finishing the last dish, Hammett put down his plate. You want to prove the plasticity of your children, right? I'll give you a chance. Now, I'll choose an alien Mecha Master, and if your chosen child can defeat him, then I'll pretend I never said anything. But if you lose, according to my request, you will open the military base for me to see. If you dare to go back on your word, believe me, your development is not as promising as you boast. Deal. Although reluctant, and still extended her right hand. Straightforward woman, then I choose him as the one your children will challenge. Hammett shook Anne's hand with an oily hand, while pointing to Dante with his other hand. What is this? 
Dante is the god of war of Aral, how could our children possibly win? Wu Neng couldn't stand it anymore and rushed out. I'm sorry, but I came alone this time, I didn't bring anyone, and the only person I can choose is Dante. If you think the hope is slim, we can ask Dante to reduce his power to 20% and also prohibit the use of all weapons, purely close combat. If your children can last 5 minutes, then you win. Hammett had obviously already planned this arrangement. But, you should know that Aral has always been inclined to help Earth. Are you using my god of war as your bargaining chip? Aren't you afraid that we will go easy on you? Nana patted Dante's shoulder next to her. It's okay, I know Aral's god of war values honor the most in the entire universe. It would be more painful for them to go easy on us on the battlefield than to kill them. Of course, if Dante disregards his own face, I will also have no complaints if I lose. Hamlet's laughter echoed in the restaurant. Who do you think you're talking about? Dante's determination had already dispelled Hamlet's worries. After the rather rough agreement, Anne's expression, which had been calm, could no longer remain calm. On the way back, her brows remained furrowed and her face looked extremely unpleasant. The officials, as if they had finally found a target to vent their frustrations on, scolded and harshly. It was as if she had betrayed the earth. If it weren't for these hypocritical officials receiving a phone call at the same time, the blame would have continued. And, you took the gamble too far this time. Wu Nang glanced at his partner while driving. Do you think I wanted to? This is not my gamble, but the gamble of the future of humanity. Haven't you noticed the hostility of that green monster? Nana is clearly hiding something, and Ningjia's abnormal reaction after the party. Putting it all together, we might be heading into a big battle. Thinking of this terrifying future, and hugged herself and trembled helplessly. What do we do now? Wu Nang's voice softened, understanding the woman's worries. Go back to school. I need to choose the person who will challenge Dante. In fact, the face of that person had already appeared in Anne's mind. It was already lunchtime, but Miller guarded the classroom door, not allowing anyone to leave. The reason was that Miller received a call from teacher Anne, instructing the students to stay in the classroom. Not only class 3 to 2, but also most of the senior students in grade 3 stayed in the classroom, unable to go out. Xiao Lian and Xiao Lian naturally mocked and taunted the great demon King Miller again, while other students gossiped in groups out of boredom. Ling Shan also took out her delicate lunchbox, no longer hungry. But when Ning Jia saw the lunchbox, his eyes lit up. I say, do you still have any questions about the Mecca? Ning Jia swallowed his saliva. Do you want it? Here you go. Perhaps not very hungry, Ling Shan generously pushed the lunchbox in front of Ning Jie. Without waiting long, and in Wu Nan walked into the classroom with serious expressions. And was terrifying today, and almost instinctively, the classmates sat back in their seats, not daring to make a sound. Thirty seconds passed before and, standing at the podium, spoke for the first time. Students, suppose you were to fight against the 20% power output or all-star fighting god, who would be confident enough to win? The strange question stunned all the students, followed by disbelief and exclamations. Don't be nervous, consider it as a surprise test. Now, suppose you will fight against Dante, the Aral god with 20% power output, in close combat mode with mechas. What strategy would you have? Submit your answers within 30 minutes. I have assigned the same question to other classes, and the top student will receive a special surprise. And smiled artificially. The nonsensical test left the students somewhat bewildered, but students are like soldiers, obeying orders as if it were instinct. It didn't take long for many students to open their electronic screens and start editing their battle strategies. Only Ningjia continued to gaze at and on the podium, as if he could see through her thoughts. Half an hour quickly passed, and the students sent their test papers back to Anne's email in the form of electronic mail. But Anne did not immediately look at them, instead she looked back at Ningjie in surprise. Why didn't you write your strategy? Because it's simply impossible to achieve. Ningjie's voice was unusually low. Dante is the new generation of Aral God. Do you understand the implications? To become a fighting god, the number of defeated opponents and real data should not be less than 20,000, and the simulation battle should last at least 3 years. What's even more terrifying is the difference in performance of the mechas. The fighting god mecha, which can perfectly reflect the super high speed of the fighting god, is composed entirely of biologically evolved metal. Even if you use the most powerful weapons on earth, it is likely that you won't be able to harm him in the slightest. In terms of the mecha itself, there are no flaws in the fighting god mecha. With its immense driving force, even with just 1% power output, it can easily pierce through the strongest armor of Earth's mechas with a single finger. Everyone present was stunned, except for Lingshan, no one understood why this transfer student of African-Asian descent would know so much about the extraterrestrial fighting gods. But, if there is a war that determines the life and death of humanity waiting for you, 
Would you sit in the fragile earth Mecca and go to the battlefield? Annie's words were like a bloodstained flag, piercing into everyone's hearts, as if at this moment, they were all in the smoke-filled trenches of war. Ningjie stopped speaking, waiting for Annie to symbolically finish reading the student's answers, and then call out his name. For an unknown amount of time, Ningjie stood like a steel nail, after Annie quickly corrected all the exam answers. First place, Miller. Congratulations, you will have the opportunity to challenge Dante in such a state, which is almost every Earth Mecha pilot's dream. Annie smiled hypocritically. Miller couldn't believe it and stood up, then cheered excitedly. Many classmates expressed their congratulations, while Xiaolian and Xiolian sneered as usual. Only Ningjie, still looking at Annie on the podium in confusion. That's it for today, everyone can have lunch now. Remember not to run around. Soon, there will be a special car to take you to the arena to watch this battle of the century. Well, goodbye for now. Annie left the classroom hastily, just like she came. Ningjie couldn't sit still anymore and stood up and rushed out. What happened exactly? Ningjie caught up with Annie in the corridor and rudely grabbed her arm. You know Miller can't win, and you know who I am, don't you? Hamid is here. He forced us to open all the military bases for him to visit. Defeating Dante is our only hope to stop him. Wu Nang explained the reason on behalf of Annie. Then why not choose me, if it's me? At this moment, Ningjie suddenly realized how much he loved Earth. The home he left at the age of 16, Ningjie didn't even understand what the definition of home was, but after three years of fighting and loneliness, he finally understood the value of this word. Wu Nang misunderstood. Annie didn't break free, she let Ningjie hold her arm, even though it was starting to hurt. Defeating Dante is not our only hope. You are. Compared to opening the military bases, I don't want Hammett to see you so soon. He should know you, as the one who judged you back then. If the bug star really attacks, the sudden appearance of the flame soul fighting god will be our savior. He is the hero of our all, the one who saved a civilization, and of course, he has the ability to save us. This is what I firmly believe at this moment. But your plan cannot avoid the burning of war. Before the fighting god you believe in appears, many warriors will lose their lives in this battle. Ningjie let go of Annie, and his lowered forehead made it difficult to see his expression. I understand the consequences of this choice. No matter what others do, I will remember the name of every deceased. Annie walked quickly into the elevator, and when she looked back at Ningjie, Annie was in tears. The grand fighting tournament is about to begin, and the news of Earthlings challenging the Aral fighting god has become the focus of major television stations on Earth. In an instant, all platforms started to produce programs around this event, and the advertising airships in the sky displayed large advertisements. The imminent battle would take place at 6 o'clock in the evening, and the outskirts of the Sunrise City Arena were filled with numerous spectators, all just hoping to get a ticket to enter. These people, who were enjoying the carnival, had no understanding of the true meaning behind this fight. Only a large group of officials nervously engaged in endless debates, searching for strategies while hurling insults at each other. Annie, on the other hand, had the rare opportunity to represent Earth and would accompany Nana and Hamlet, the two distinguished guests, to watch the grand performance. One hour before the battle, the spectator seats in the arena were packed to capacity. Many parents even brought their children to watch. The arena, which could accommodate up to 300,000 people, had never been so lively before. Speaking of the Sunrise City Arena, it covered an area the size of eight football fields and had the appearance of an ancient Roman arena. It was made entirely of metal and was specifically built as a venue for mecha competitions. In the spacious rest area for mecha pilots, busy staff members were making final adjustments to the Zero One mecha, which was quietly parked on the side. Inside the workshop, Wu Nung, who was usually carefree, was unusually serious. Finally, when the simulator stopped running, Miller, dressed in a tight blue outfit resembling a motorcycle suit, crawled out from inside. Sweat had soaked his blonde hair, and exhaustion was written all over his face. How did it go? Wu Nang had already forgotten how many times he had asked this question. No good. Miller shook his head in frustration and sat down on a nearby chair, drinking water in large gulps. I did my best, but the best record I could achieve was only 3 minutes and 20 seconds. This is the data of Dante, the steel fighting god, specially lent to us by Queen Euphemia. Have you carefully considered every detail? Wu Nang was still hoping for a miracle. I understand how you feel, teacher Wu Nang, but that guy. He's really strong. Miller was reluctant to admit this. Even if his fighting god Mecha is only operating at 20% output, the speed is still terrifying. His attack moves change extremely quickly, and as soon as a flaw is exposed, it will immediately be met with a deadly blow. The difference in our Mechas is just as Ning Jie described. When I launched an attack with my Zero One, even if I hit him, his Mecha wouldn't even have a scratch, 
while the parts one attacked were already distorted and deformed. Should I try again? Forget it. You've simulated the battle over a hundred times since this afternoon. Your job now is to rest. Wu Nang sighed and walked up to Pat Miller's shoulder. Teacher, although it's embarrassing for me to say this, losing to Dante wouldn't be a shameful thing, right? Miller vaguely felt the urgent desire for victory from Annie and Wu Nang. Yes, it's not shameful. I'll go tune the mecha for you. You rest. With a faint smile, Wu Nang couldn't explain the crucial nature of victory or defeat. He also didn't know how far he could still tune the mecha at this point. The Zero One, a student's general purpose assault type mecha, was 25 meters tall and 10 meters wide. Its speed, strength, attack, and defense were all average. It was designed by Wu Nang, but today, Wu Nang felt ashamed to face his own creation. Back in the venue outside, the cheers of the audience rose and fell like waves, and the colorful electronic fireworks outside the arena intertwined various patterns in the sky. Amidst this vast cheering and fireworks, Annie accompanied Nana and Hamlet as they entered the Emperor-like VIP box. When they appeared, the cheers of the audience grew even louder, and Hamlet, truly like an emperor, waved his arms towards the crowd. Are you satisfied now? This isn't your bug star. Nana sat down with a displeased expression on her face, taking the seat on the right. The insect star is not interesting at all. Our subjects are just bugs that can only chirp, and all they think about is eating. Hamlet sat on the left side with a smug expression, and, representing Earth, sat between the two VIPs, feeling no satisfaction or pleasure, only an invisible sense of crisis that made every cell in her body tremble with fear. In the audience seats, due to their special relationship as classmates, the students of class 3 to 2 were lucky enough to be seated in the front row. They even held up electronic banners saying Miller, go for it. Unfortunately, the person Miller most wanted to cheer him on, Lingshan, was just staring blankly at the empty seat beside her. Where did Ning Jie go? Ling Shan asked in a low voice. Who knows, he disappeared as soon as we arrived on this alien planet, Xiaolian waved the white rabbit in her hand. Maybe he fell into the toilet. Xiaolian waved the black rabbit puppet in her hand, in the VIP box, and nervously looked at her watch and dialed Wu Neng's phone. How's the situation? Still too difficult. You're making a joke by having a kid with a maximum speed of only 70 per minute challenge a monster like fighting god. Currently, Miller can barely hold on for just over three minutes. Wu Neng complained anxiously on the other end of the phone. Even if he can't hold on, he must hold on. Remember not to put pressure on him. I'm just trying to relieve his pressure, to let him perform at his best. And reminded, this is not a matter of performance, but of us having a person challenge a god. Are you blaming me for not letting him compete? No, I understand. Your choice must be the most suitable choice, but sometimes, the most suitable choice is not necessarily the best choice. Oh. Just then, a scream came from behind Wu Neng. When he turned around, he saw Ning Jie standing by Miller's chair, holding a metal wrench in his hand. Miller had already fainted, with a big bump like a steamed bun on his head. Wu Neng. What happened? And also heard the scream. It's nothing, I accidentally stepped on my right foot with my left foot, it hurts. Wu Neng finished speaking a poor lie and hung up the phone. Do you need help here? Ning Jie threw away the wrench in his hand and walked towards Wu Neng. I have enough mechanics. Wu Nang smiled. But your mech pilot is unconscious now. Coincidentally, I can also pilot a mech. Ning Jie exaggeratedly smiled. How about it? Hire me. Didn't you hear An's arrangement? Disobeying her orders won't just result in copying textbooks as punishment. Her arrangement sounds really good, but she doesn't know that I prefer facing a vast enemy alone rather than stepping on others' corpses like a hero. Because in that state, I don't have to consider any problems, I just need to destroy everything I see. In an instant, Ning Jie's ferocious expression made Wu Nong shudder. You brat, hearing you speak so arrogantly, it feels like a special kind of comfort. Wu Neng couldn't restrain his joy any longer and hugged the arrogant Ning Jie. Dragging the shouting Ning Jie, Wu Nang walked to the position next to the No. Zero One mech, where a giant figure was hidden under a black oilcloth. Ning Jie, do you remember the mech I made for you? I remember. Didn't you say it was difficult to make? Unfortunately, I like high difficulty. Wu Neng excitedly approached and tore off the huge oilcloth, Nietzsche makeshift mech, Stellar, meet the fighting god. That day, Ning Jie met his second mech in his life, apart from the snake. It's been about 20 years since then, right? Since Wu Nang started his PhD at school, he began designing a series of new mechas. However, only the star standing in front of him made Wu Nang unsure whether to sigh or feel sad. Standing at about 25 meters tall and only 8 meters wide, the armor attached to its body was thinner and had a smaller coverage area compared to the light reconnaissance mechas. Looking up, one would think it was an unfinished work. 
The star's metal frame, the energy transport hoses, and the bearings at the joints were all the most vulnerable weak points, like a human without skin. The metal armor that slightly protected the chest, back, forearms, and shins had a white base with a red border. Wu Nang deliberately extended the rotating petal-like pattern from the red border, resembling a flower vase. Don't misunderstand, this is the completed state, Wu Nang said, hands behind his back, looking up. I am not a master craftsman of the Ten Gods clan, nor an alien technician. The knowledge I have learned can only allow me to greatly reduce the weight of the mecha in order to improve its reaction speed. By removing heavy armor, reducing the size of the bearings in the joint areas, and increasing the number of bearing transmissions, I have improved its agility. I haven't even installed an auxiliary operating system in this mecha to avoid conflicts with your fast operation and the computer. However, even so, the star can only reach a maximum hand speed of 390. Are you disappointed? After all, as you can see, it is so fragile that it can't withstand any attacks. As long as it doesn't get hit, it's fine, Jing Jie said casually, unabashedly taking off his clothes and putting on the same deep blue tight-fitting pilot suit as Miller. He walked up the stairs and sat in the cockpit of the star. How much time do I have to adapt to its operating system? After looking around the driver's seat, Jing Jie smiled because, due to the removal of the auxiliary system, more than 70 buttons had been added to the cockpit. Half an hour, Wu Neng looked at his watch. That's enough. I thought I only had 10 minutes? Jing Jie closed the hatch in front of the star's chest. The sealed environment instantly made his gaze sharp. When the bell for the competition rang, the unusually lively audience suddenly stopped cheering, and the viewers in front of all the televisions on earth held their breath. The silence made the sound of the raised gate exceptionally clear, and the clack-clack sound made people's hearts tremble. From the dark entrance on the right, heavy footsteps even caused the seats of the audience to tremble slightly. A silver mecha suddenly walked to the center of the arena. Under the countless surrounding lights, it shimmered with the soft light of forged silk. Is this, the steel fighting god? And in the VIP seat looked as if she had seen a snake in ice for the first time. The difference was that the silver mecha standing there was in a mobile state. What a perfect machine it was, standing at 28 meters tall with a shoulder width of 10 meters, and its proportions of hands, feet, and torso were particularly symmetrical. Unlike other mechas, the armor on the forearms and thighs of the steel fighting god was thicker and larger, so even with the armor covering its entire body, it did not affect its flexibility. The mighty steel fighting god had removed all its weapons, but no one felt any sense of safety. It seemed that the steel fighting god could destroy everything even with its bare hands. Aral, the 30,008th generation steel fighting god, Dante, greets the queen. Like a knight, the silver mecha bowed towards the direction where Nana was. The quiet audience erupted, even if they were the fighting gods of other countries, they were also excited. Didn't they agree to fight barehanded? Why does he still carry a knife handle behind his mecha? Because it was so conspicuous, and curiously asked. Don't you know? That's the macro martial system. As a fighting god, the macro martial system is a component that must be carried on its body. Even when a criminal is sentenced to the frozen prison, the macro martial system is still a part of them. Only then can it be considered a complete corpse, Hammett sneered. Annie suddenly couldn't sit still, her mind filled with sentences of being deceived echoing. Ning Jie really is a liar, everything he said except for his name was a lie. Before going back to recheck the snake, Annie could only sit here and observe the other god of war mech, Han Wu. It is said to be a hilt, the hilt is black, about the length of the god of war's forearm, and two fingers wide. If you insist on equipping it with a blade, the length should exceed the mech itself. I really want to see what it looks like when it's activated. Annie exclaimed. But if Hangu is activated, the Earth's mech won't last more than a second. Nana sighed. Before the bowing god of war could stand upright, the cheers from the audience became even more intense, to the point where it could be described as hoarse. Because from the dark entrance on the left, the mech representing Earth finally came out. The strange stellar mech immediately stunned a part of the people in the stands. Isn't that zero one? Who is the pilot? Ling Shan asked herself, and the person's face appeared in her mind, it's Ning. Only by covering her mouth with both hands in time did Ling Shan prevent herself from shouting out. Damn Wu Nang, what kind of plane is he trying to pull on me again? Annie angrily dialed the phone, hello, what is that ugly mech? Where's Miller? Sorry, I forgot to tell you, Miller fainted from exhaustion, so I temporarily hired a mech pilot. Wu Nang laughed foolishly on the phone. It's him, right? Annie suddenly calmed down. That's right, it's him. He said your plan isn't the best, he's used to fighting alone. Let's see if our god of war is as powerful as the legends say. Wu Nang hung up the phone with satisfaction. Wu Nang stood in front of the observation window, his hands crossed over his chest, trembling with excitement. Is this my opponent? 
Ding looked at the strange star approaching in confusion from inside the cockpit of the God of War, and the super clear screen even marked every weakness on the star. In the driver's seat of the star, Mingjia could no longer hear any other sounds, only the sound of his own long breaths. The simulation system is really great, it can train excellent soldiers without any loss, but the simulation system can never simulate the pressure of reality. Only in this kind of pressure, can Ningjie hear his own heartbeat and smile for being alive. I am Yalai. Shut up, I know who you are. Both Mets were speaking through the amplification system, and the audience immediately felt the arrogance of the Earth Mech pilot. And that voice still only shook a part of the people's hearts. This voice, where have I heard it before? Hamp thought. Is it really you? Ding trembled, unable to describe the feeling of boiling blood in his body. This was the excitement he had never experienced before, even using trembling hands to put on the old pilot-style glasses on his head. What do you say? We can't escape this battle. Are you here to tell fortunes or fight? Fifty meters away, the star actually took a fighting stance first. I advise you to go all out, otherwise you will die miserably. Defeat? The god of war swayed back and forth. What do you think you're piloting? Even 20% of the wolf is enough to tear you apart. Wolf, that is the name of the god of war, at this moment, it truly lives up to its name, pouncing on its prey with a daunting posture. The shaking of the audience seats became even stronger, all because the wolf mech that rushed to the front of the star suddenly stopped and squatted, the power bearings of its feet rapidly rotating, generating enough driving force to leap to a height of 50 meters. The airborne wolf was not done yet, its silver-white body rotated sideways with a more agile body than a human, and swung its right leg down like a whip made of steel. The attack seemed simple, but it flowed smoothly, completed in just zero. Five seconds. The audience in the entire venue stopped their heartbeat for half a second, and Annie understood what kind of operation Dante had accomplished in that half second. In that half second, his hand speed reached at least 650. However, in the same half second, the reaction of the star was relatively inconspicuous. It only slightly stepped back, and the leg that the wolf dropped almost hit the armor in front of its chest and landed on the metal surface. The heavy force even caused a circular pit to sink into the steel plate. The gust of wind blew the hair of the audience behind the star, sending a chill down their spines. That was close. Annie exclaimed, sweating for Ning Jia. Not close at all. This kind of evasion was calculated by him, Nana laughed. I never thought there would be such a powerful mecha pilot on earth. Hammett, supporting his head with one hand and without a frown, only grinned to show his displeasure. Let me teach you, Miss Annie. In that half second, your mecha pilot is slightly stronger than Dante. He first lured Dante to launch an attack and then evaded with the smallest movement at the most appropriate time. If the evasion is too fast, Dante's counterattack will catch up, and the game will be over. If the evasion is too slow, the kick will hit, and the game will be over. What's even more terrifying is that in that half second, your mecha pilot, with slow movements, consumed multiple times Dante's speed. If we consider their stamina equal, if they continue until the end, Dante will tire out first. Of course, as a fighting god, Dante can maintain this speed for at least 6 hours. If given a slightly relaxed opportunity, he can fight continuously for a week. Missed? Dante slowly retracted his mecha, no longer excited. No, the speed is still there, but the output power has decreased. If I output at 100%, even if you evade, the gust of wind is enough to tear you apart. The star, who had picked up its life, moved at a constant speed, circled behind the wolf, then retreated 50 meters away, assuming an unchanging posture. While Ning Jia waited, a communication request prompt appeared in the corner of the mecha screen. Do you still want to consume me? Right, your mecha is too fragile, unable to damage my reverse metal armor, so you chose to escape. What a correct choice, but why am I so angry? Inside the mecha, Dante tightly grasped his own face, tearing his skin without making a grimace, you are Aral's fighting god. Aral's national hero. Aral's strongest fighting god. You can die. You can be defeated, but you absolutely cannot escape. The silver wolf launched again, leaning forward almost parallel to the ground, moving so fast that it created a white halo in the air. It jumped in front of the star just like before, and its leg swung down like an iron whip. However, this time, Ning Jia couldn't jump back and could only dodge sideways faster. But it seemed that she was still too slow. The leg of the wolf's metal brushed against the armor in front of the star's chest, scraping off countless sparks, as if a laser blade had cut through. The wolf's right foot landed again, creating a larger crater than before. But it was far from over. Before retracting its mecha, the wolf rotated its body in a tilted posture and swung its left knee forward, attacking the star's head. Inevitable, Ning Jia could only raise both arms to block. After a thousand years, Ning Jia finally truly experienced the strength of a fighting god. The star, built with a strong steel structure, 
also retreated dozens of steps and slid 80 meters away. The system inside the star's mecha had already started to sound the alarm. Even though Ning Jia had tried to absorb most of the impact, the palm of her right hand, which directly received the attack, was still rotten, and small parts were falling off with a clattering sound. Judging from the strength alone, Ning Jia knew that the wolf in front of her had surpassed the level of the ice soul fighting god dragon. Dante, it seems we have some differences in our understanding, don't we? The communication screen is still connected, and Ning Jia smiled as he held the control lever. I have never admitted to being a fighting god. All the names were given to me by you. I cannot understand the dignity of being a fighting god, nor can I understand your anger. On the battlefield, I only think about two things. One, staying alive. Two, killing the enemy, as long as one is guaranteed. Unexpectedly, the star moved first and rushed towards the sturdy wolf. Without evading, Dante's defense was also an attack. He didn't retreat but turned around and kicked directly, like a thrusting spear. However, the star was not there to be pierced. Coordinating with Dante's leg strike, the star effortlessly leaped into the air and easily avoided the deadly attack. At the same time, the star had already arrived in front of the wolf. Since everything is already ruined, it doesn't matter. The star's right fist, swung by rotating his body, fiercely hit the wolf's head. Everyone saw the star's entire right arm explode and twist, with the ruptured energy conduit spraying red liquid into the sky, like the hot blood spilled by a warrior. As for the wolf, it was only shaken back two steps, and even the holographic image in Dante's cockpit did not shake in the slightest. Why did that idiot attack first? Annie dialed Wu Nang's phone again. Hey, did you tell him? As long as he lasts five minutes, he wins. Ha, huh? I forgot to tell him. It's too late. This kid really thinks he has to defeat the wolf to win. Wu Nang also panicked. Time passed in a slow motion mode, and the cheers from the audience and the stands became quieter and quieter until no one was shouting anymore. Everyone was staring at the two dueling figures in the arena. The originally set five minutes had long passed, but there were no signs of the wolf, covered in red liquid, or the star, covered in wounds, stopping. The star's right hand had lost its driving force and hung on the body like a cripple, dripping with red energy liquid. Its right eye had also ruptured, and a quarter of its head was shaved off when it dodged the wolf's straight kick. The chest armor was twisted like crumpled paper, leaking energy liquid all over, and sparks were splattering everywhere. Amazing! How can he still stand like this? Annie couldn't help but exclaim. He has dodged all the most deadly attacks, and even though his body is fragile, he has maximized his fighting power, Nana also marveled. What's even more terrifying is that he launched 30 attacks on the wolf with this fragile body, hitting the wolf's head every time with his right arm that was already rotten from the beginning. Looking at the universe, there probably aren't many people who can do such a thing, right? Hans mind conjured up an image of a person. It's already been 13 minutes. Our bet. Annie wanted to end it. Shu, the bet doesn't matter anymore. Let me continue watching this battle of gods, Ham's words already acknowledged Ning Jia's equal status with Dante. Give up. You've lost. In the video of the communication, Dante lowered his head, and even though he had one, there was no sign of joy on his face. Lost? No, I won't lose. Ning Jia smiled bitterly. From the day I stepped into the mecca, I knew I wouldn't lose. My loss is death. I'm still breathing, so I haven't lost yet. The mecha was too heavy, restricting Ning Jia's movements, so he used the star's left hand to tear off his right arm. He didn't need his head either, so Ning Jia grabbed his own head with one hand. Watching the scene of red energy liquid splattering, many audience members couldn't help but vomit. The broadcast on TV also displayed a warning banner and closed the channel. Without a head, he couldn't see anymore, but it didn't matter. Ning Jia had already torn off the chest armor, completely exposing the cockpit to the outside, and he stared at his opponent with his naked eyes. How about this? It's more spacious now. Let's continue. Ning Jie drove the incomplete star and rushed up again with a sneer. Monster. Dante's wolf also pounced. On the VIP stand, Hamid was stunned, but in an instant, he laughed again. It's really Ning Jie. That kind of reckless fighting style, probably only he can do it in the whole universe. Miss Annie. Do you know why Ning Jie is called the strongest warrior in Aral? Nana lowered her head at this moment. It's not because Ning Jie defeated the so-called strongest Ming Lang but because as long as he can still breathe and the enemy is still alive, he will keep fighting. Even without arms, legs, companions, loved ones, or pain, he can still fight. The intersection only lasted for an instant, faster than the initial half-second. The wolf stopped abruptly while running, and the spinning straight kick was more accurate, directly hitting the star's waist. But what he didn't expect was that the star, relieved of many burdens, became lighter. The star, leaping like a swallow, unexpectedly landed on the leg he kicked out. There was no more hiding, 
and Dante clearly saw Ning Jiasphere's smiling face on the holographic screen. Lie down, wolf. In the communication, Dante heard Ning Jia's soft and lullaby-like voice. The star leaped from the wolf's leg, flipped in the air, and landed vertically, with its merged feet stepping on the wolf's head. With a loud bang, the undefeated wolf fell on the earth. The holographic screen in front of Dante turned into flickering snowflakes. He knew that the final effect of Ning Jia's continuous attacks on his head had appeared. Even though the warrior mech was made of reverse metal all over its body, except for the eyes, which couldn't be made of it, the eyes that captured movements shattered under continuous close-range impacts. Even though Dante only needed a button at this moment, the backup camera could immediately restore the wolf's combat power, but Dante had no strength to touch that button anymore. Even with only 20% output power, the mighty steel warrior had no excuse to lose to the backward mech in the hands of others. At this moment, Dante finally understood that the strongest warrior was not the combination of Ning Jia and the snake, but Ning Jia himself. No matter what kind of mech Ning Jia was in, he was always the strongest warrior. Suddenly, Dante felt his body being dragged, and then the auxiliary system started to alarm loudly. The instructions made Dante panic and he regained his vision. On the clear screen, Ning Jia actually pulled out the huge black hilt behind the wolf. Ning Jia, what are you doing? That's my macro system. Dante shouted loudly through the amplification system. I know, just borrowing it. Inside the cockpit, Ning Jia frantically tapped on the keyboard. What is he doing? Annie couldn't understand. Erosion. Does he want to erode the wolf's macro system? Nana even stood up. It was impossible. These were the words Dante recalled in his mind. After all, his macro system's driving source was strength, while Ning Jia's driving source was anger, two completely different emotions. But what Dante still didn't expect was that humans would never have only one emotion. Even though Ning Jia's strength might not reach the level of three-dimensional liberation of the item in his hand, it was enough to be recognized as strong by the macro system. The sword handle waved by Ning Jia pointed directly at the VIP stand, and in an instant, a huge black long sword appeared out of thin air in front of the massive sword handle. Dignity, my dignity, you actually activated it in someone else's hands? Helplessly leaning on the driver's seat, Dante shed blue tears. The 30 meter long and 5 meter wide blade, half a meter thick, if converted into human size, was a giant weapon capable of cutting horses on the battlefield. The sharp edge of dignity pointed directly at Hamlet in the stands, so close that he could reach out and touch the cold weapon with a raised hand. Something's wrong. Evacuate. And dialed security, and the prepared soldiers rushed into the arena, starting a rapid evacuation of the audience. The chaotic scene became uncontrollable for a moment. Before leaving, Lingshan couldn't help but look back at the figure of the sword pointing at the high priest of the worm star. Miss N, let me tell you a little secret. Do you know why we originally had to freeze the real reason for Tsongjie? Hamlet laughed in front of the sword. Because Tsongjie is a madman of slaughter. In the dark universe, south of Pluto, a small earth monitoring ship wandered, searching for exploitable minerals. Captain, what is that? Suddenly, right beside this monitoring ship, flashes of white light appeared and countless giant warships instantly appeared through space jumps. They were called warships, but they looked more like terrifying moths with wingspans of kilometers, symbolically flapping their giant wings in the windless universe. On the back of each giant moth, a command bridge made of metal could faintly be seen, and the tail of each moth was like a warship's thruster, emitting white light. What on earth have we discovered? The captain's scalp tingled, not because of the enormity of these moths, but because this enormous fleet of moth warships formed an ocean that seemed boundless. Before the captain could react, a giant dragonfly with bat-like wings, 10 meters long, had already spotted them. The screams were drowned out by the sound of the ship exploding, and the vast fleet of worm stars headed straight for Earth, slowly advancing. At the same time, above the Earth, in the empty arena, Song Jie crawled out from the broken star. He raised his left arm along the star and walked straight to the VIP stand, leaping down. And when Song Jie completely detached from the Mecha and the Hangu system, the ferocious black giant sword instantly disappeared as if it had never appeared. You, you're an indestructible monster. Still sitting comfortably in his chair, Hamlet stared at the familiar man in front of him. The universe is so big, and yet you managed to float back home? I don't want to waste words with you, vermin. Leave Earth, and I'll give you a way out. Sanjia's face showed no expression, his hollow pupils looking at him as if he were looking at a lifeless object. He he, your words are interesting. Can I take it as you begging me to spare Earth? Hamlet laughed. No, I'm warning you. Song Jie leaned forward, his hands supporting the armrests of Hamlet's chair, getting closer to this monster with scales all over his face. At that moment, a soldier ran over from the entrance, nervously whispering a few words in Anne's ear. Anne's face instantly turned pale. 
Hamlet, your fleet has reached the Pluto region. What do you mean by this? And gritted her teeth. Don't you understand yet? We're hungry, and you are the main course. Hamlet explained casually, but his gaze turned to Nana on the side. Queen Aral, take your fighting gods and leave quickly. The reason my fleet didn't directly space jump to Earth was to wait for you to leave. Hamlet, this time, you will regret it. Nana had no more room to speak here. With a sense of understanding, the queen bowed to an and Songjie, then turned and left. The silent VIP stand was left with only one bewildered soldier, an angry An, and Songjie and Hamlet facing each other. But it doesn't matter, it's just to prevent such emergencies, so we sent enough troops to destroy three Earths. Now it seems that this decision was wise. Hamlet rejoiced sincerely. Regardless of the outcome, you can't go back. Ningjie suddenly moved aside, pulled out a pistol from the soldier's waist next to him, skillfully cocked the gun, and pointed it at Hamlet's head. Ningjie, don't. He still has value. We can use him as a hostage for negotiation. Annie quickly intervened. It's useless. He doesn't seem to have any intention of staying alive. Ningjie shook his head gently. You know me well. When I came, I didn't bring any means of return. You kill me, but in exchange for the destruction of your race, it's a profitable deal, and I really don't have the concept of life and death. Hamet remained calm under the barrel of the gun. Ningjie, do you really think I'm the same Hamet who judged you before? No, I'm not. In fact, the highest lifespan of every Hamet is no more than 10 years. But through evolution, we Hamets have acquired the ability to coexist with memories, coupled with a large number, which makes the population of the insect stars numerous, but there has never been a situation where the command is not in place. Actually, I don't know how many me there are in the entire universe. But the special ability to coexist with memories has imprinted your face, the face that awakened you, in the mind of every me. The battle plan of the incoming troops has already been rearranged, hasn't it? Looking back, I have to praise you, a battle god from a thousand years ago, still mighty after awakening. But do you think Earth will be as easily saved as Aral? I will show you, but you are destined not to see it. Ningjia pulled the trigger without hesitation. After a gunshot, Hamid died with a smile, and green blood splattered on Ningjia's face. Why did you kill him? Annie reproached, but when she looked at Ningjia's face turned towards her, fear made her close her mouth again. He's useless now, keeping him alive will only make him see more and make us more dangerous. Notify everyone, start evacuating the people. The war is about to begin. Ningjia's tone remained unchanged, and he casually put the pistol back in the soldier's waist. Evacuate? Where can we evacuate to? Their target is the entire earth. Annie said sadly and self-mockingly. Ningjie grabbed Annie's shoulders with both hands and roared with a grimace on his face stained with green blood. Are you scared out of your mind? Don't give me that expression that only the dead have. The war hasn't started yet, you're still alive, and being alive means you can resist. Will you fight with us? Annie's eyes became moist. No, I will stand in front of all of you. Ningjie's words hit Annie's already stopped heart like a hammer. Suddenly, the phone in Annie's arms rang, and after answering it, Annie remained silent for a few tens of seconds. When she hung up, Annie looked at Ningjie seriously. He wants to see you. Your leader? Ningjie was not in the mood to receive visitors now. No, the leader of Earth. Annie wiped away the tears that were about to fall from the corner of her eyes. Thirty minutes later, Annie personally drove and brought Ningjie, who was still wearing his driving suit, to the outskirts of Morning Light City. Different from the grandeur of the city, after crossing through a dense forest, Annie finally led Ningjie to see the earth composed of mud. This is a coastal cliff, where the green grass that submerged the ankle sways in the sea breeze. Occasionally, dandelion petals scattered and flew by like parachutes. And at the edge of the cliff, a small wooden cabin stood quietly. In front of the door, an old man sat in a wheelchair, gazing into the distance. Who could have imagined that such a peaceful scene would soon be no more? Go, he only wants to see you. Annie parked the car 30 meters away. Ningjie was about to get out of the car when Annie pulled him back. Here, wipe the blood off your face. She handed him a clean handkerchief. Thank you. Ningjie smiled faintly and accepted it. Annie was puzzled by this smile. It was hard to imagine that a young man who was only 19 years old, upon learning that a devastating war was imminent, could still smile so easily. What was even more terrifying was that when he pulled the trigger to end someone's life, it was as natural as breathing. Stepping on the slightly damp earth, Ningjie walked behind the old man in the wheelchair. I heard you wanted to see me? Ningjie was not polite. Mister. Ningjie, what do you see from here? The old man didn't even turn his head. Is it the city of Chingguang? Ningjie stood beside the old man and looked ahead, only to see the magnificent city of Chingguang towering over the sea. Mister. Ningjie, what do you hear from here? The old man smiled. The sound of the alarm. 
Ningjie's hearing was really good. Even though they were separated by thousands of meters, Ningjie could hear the evacuation alarm in the city. Do you want to know how I feel? The old man on the wheelchair sighed. I have seen the collapse of human civilization and heard the cries of humans on the verge of death. Don't worry, I won't let such a thing happen. Ningjie said calmly, and the old man smiled again. Mr. Ningjie, you cannot save humanity, at least you cannot save the hearts of humanity. Ningjie was a little confused and looked curiously at the old man beside him, only to realize that he was even older than he had imagined. He was thin, with white hair and no beard, but his face was deeply wrinkled with the marks of time, and his drooping eyelids made his eyes narrow into two lines. What do you mean? I'm sorry, I haven't introduced myself yet. My surname is Sean, you can call me Old Sean. In society, my position is the director of the Earth Science Research Institute. My side job is overseeing 90% of the Earth's economic groups. In an era without war, money has become the greatest power. That's why Annie and Wu call me head. Old Sean turned his wheelchair and faced Ningjie directly. Old Sean, you haven't answered my question, what do you mean? Ningjie continued to ask. Mr. Ningjie, in your opinion, is the crisis on Earth caused by the invasion of the bug star, right? But in my opinion, the crisis on Earth is the 200 years of peace. The wind was strong, and Old Sean coughed lightly. It's really hard to imagine. In the history of constant warfare, humans actually had 200 years of long-lasting peace. During these 200 years, we developed rapidly, everyone lived in peace and contentment, children could go to school without worries, and politicians could focus on gaining power. But it seems that no one remembers the fear of war anymore? The rise of numerous mecha academies is because parents see the military as a stable career, equating soldiers with ordinary civil servants. Recently, someone even suggested that the military is useless. Maybe I'm just getting old and can't keep up with the pace of this era anymore? You speak in circles, but I understand a little now. You mean that humans no longer have a fighting spirit? Ningjie gazed at the distant city. It's a sad fact. Looking back at the history of humans killing each other, our fangs were once so sharp. But today, peace has dulled our fangs, turning us from meat-eating beasts into grazing livestock. Even if it's not the bug star invading today, who can guarantee that tomorrow won't bring the bird star or the dog star? Mr. Ningjie, I understand the power you possess after witnessing your battle with Dante today. However, you can never escape your human nature. One day, your fangs will also accompany you in death as time passes. On that day, where should humanity go? The sea breeze blew over the cliff where only two people stood, bringing a slight chill. I understand one thing now, you don't want me to intervene. Ningjie lowered his head. At least until humanity regains its fangs, I don't want you to hinder our evolution. The old man sighed deeply and turned to look at the beautiful city in the sea. But do you know how many innocent people will die because of your decision? Ningjie trembled. 1,765,444 people. That's the total number of troops heading to space tomorrow to fight against the bug star. It represents 90% of Earth's cosmic power and 50% of the mecha core. The old man stated the most specific number. Do you know? I used to think I was the cruelest person in this universe. As long as I defined the creatures I fought against as enemies, I could end their lives without any emotion. But now, I have finally found someone even more cruel than me. You can calmly send your own compatriots to their deaths. Whether it was praise or mockery, Ningjie turned and walked away after saying this. Has Mr. Ningjie accepted my request? I sincerely request that you let us die. This is the path of the stars belonging to Earth. Perhaps we will sacrifice many, but only by regaining our fangs can this path continue. The old man bowed to Ningjie's back while sitting in his wheelchair. Die, go ahead and die according to your wishes. But you should know that both you and I will go to hell after death. Waving his hand towards the sky, this was Ningjie's farewell. Thank you, Lord of Battle. The old man smiled happily. On this night, the alarm sounded throughout the night, making it impossible to sleep. The alarms on the entire earth merged into one, spreading throughout the universe but not reaching people's hearts. The evacuation efforts by the military were not going smoothly and a large number of people protested. No one wanted to leave their homes, and no one wanted to leave their comfort. Even life could be forsaken as long as there was comfort. News media, resistance organizations, and unions all denounced the federal government, questioning where Earth's space fleet was and why they couldn't stop the enemy outside of Earth. And at dusk in the city of New Dawn on the New Day, the space fleet that had been criticized by the public began its orderly departure. 13,000 various types of spacecraft, 500,000 mechas, and a total of 1,760,000 soldiers were mobilized at once. The terrifying numbers instantly silenced the noisy crowd, 
and the evacuation efforts finally became smoother. It was also at this sunset that the spaceships flew into the sky like raindrops that Lingshan arrived at the platform of the academy again. Ningjie, you're really here. Without deliberately searching, Lingshan spotted the figure at the edge who was gazing at the fleet of warships. Such a grand formation, I haven't seen it in a long time. Ningjie sighed deeply. Is Miller alright? You gave him a big bump on his head. He's been looking for you like crazy all day. Lingshan walked lightly behind Ningjie and spoke with a smile, finding her boyfriend's embarrassment amusing. Actually, I'm surprised. Why didn't you go to the front lines with the space fleet? You're so strong. Are you surprised? Actually, I'm even more surprised. I used to be used to standing at the forefront, but now I have to stand behind many others. Although I understand that I must do so, I still can't get used to this position where I can watch others die. Suddenly, Ningjie turned around and tightly hugged the frail Lingshan, who began to convulse. Lingshan felt the warm liquid on her shoulder and, for some unknown reason, instinctively raised her arms and embraced the fighting god who was crying in her arms. I'm sorry, I can't protect them, even though I don't want anyone to die, Ningjie cried like a child, but Lingshan couldn't say anything, she didn't know how to comfort him, so she could only gently pat Ningjie's back as thousands of warships flew towards the sunset in the sky. When the golden sky was left with only white clouds, the Thunderbolt Mecha Academy also received the order to evacuate. The evacuation that Earth spoke of was actually evacuating the people to numerous underground shelters. They didn't have a truly safe place for the people to take refuge. Perhaps this is the path that humans must endure, the pain they must bear. No one knows how long this kind of hiding will take, just like the fleet heading to the universe, no one knows that they are going to their deaths. General Asod, 53 years old, a five-star general of the Earth Federation. He had studied abroad on the Aral Star for five years and was the most outstanding military strategist on Earth, renowned as the god of war. He excelled in defensive space battles and had an undefeated record of 100 simulated defensive battles. As the commander of the Mecha forces, he was idolized by thousands of Earth Mecha soldiers, seen as the Earth's fighting god, and his mighty standard assault Mecha, the tyrant. According to the plan, three days after departure, the Earth fleet would arrive one day ahead of the Bug Star fleet in the vast starry space between Saturn and Jupiter. The massive fleet of 13,000 ships had ample time to deploy their formations. Three kilometers in front of the defensive line, countless small high-explosive vacuum mines were set up. Based on the image data obtained from the monitoring ship, the Bug Star fleet turned out to be a group of insects that had evolved to navigate in space. But insects were still insects, lacking long-range attack capabilities. The basic tactic of the Bug Star was to use their swarm, which gave General Asod the confidence to set up this defensive line to exterminate the bugs. Moreover, after years of development, human monitoring systems had been deployed throughout the solar system. General Asod had complete control over every move of the bug Starfleet. However, his confidence did not infect the commander of the Mecha forces, Gao Ao. Accustomed to piloting Mecha in a suit and tie, when he learned of the number of bug star moth warships, he no longer had the relaxed expression he had at the banquet. A total of 23,000 giant moth warships, flapping their wings, were approaching. No one knew if they were fragile creatures or the most terrifying killers. Regardless of the speculation, what was bound to happen eventually happened. When the numerous fleets lined up and lit up their alert signal lights, everyone could already see, 10 kilometers away, the Bug Star fleet that had bypassed Saturn's rings. Although they had known the enemy's numbers for a long time, when they saw the huge red eyes of the moths, Gao Ao and the tyrant Mecha felt a chill down his spine. Spread the word, no warship is allowed to fire, I want them to come over, General Asod coldly ordered from the flagship. All Mecha on standby. No attacking allowed. Gao Ao shouted the order, and the nervousness had already engulfed the hearts of many before the enemy approached. Gao Ao finally understood what he had been worrying about all along. He saw that even his subordinates, who were usually competitive and ambitious, were trembling in their Mechas. They were afraid, an unprecedented fear engulfed their hearts, and Gao Ao's palms were also sweating. The giant moths of the Bug Star did not stop their advance, as if they hadn't even noticed the presence of the Earth fleet. At the moment they were five kilometers away, it was as if they had just realized it, and countless green dots detached from the abdomens of the many moths. After leaving the moth, the five million light spots suddenly spread open their fierce bone wings and the ten meter long dragonfly beast flew straight towards the Earth's fleet at a speed far exceeding the Earth's supersonic fighter jets. And when the bone-winged dragonfly collided with the vacuum mines that had been laid in ambush, it instantly formed a brilliant firewall in space. Fire. Fire all ships. Laser cannons. Missiles. All weapons that can be fired. Give me a shot. Assad roared. Fire. Gao Ao gave the same command. 
Before the explosion of the fire had extinguished, a massive fleet of 13,000 warships and 500,000 mechas fired across the vast expanse of space. Countless bright lines and flying missiles crossed the exploding vacuum minefield, triggering even larger explosions and heading straight towards the massive insect fleet. Due to the angle, Gaeo could only see the fire of their own attacks and the exploding vacuum minefield in front of them. As Assad had predicted, the insect stars did not have the ability to attack from a distance. The oversaturated attack lasted for half an hour, and the firewall in front of them burned for half an hour as well. It was not until all the compressed oxygen carried by the vacuum mines had burned out that the Earthfleet's gunfire stopped due to overheating. However, what they were greeted with was not a smile of victory, but a look of astonishment. How could this be? Assad was dumbfounded, seeing that the insect fleet was still slowly approaching. Many moth fleets did not die, only their bone-winged dragonflies in front of them were burned by the gunfire. Numerous bone-winged dragonflies, who were not afraid of death, blocked all the gunfire from the earth fleet with their bodies, not even uttering a single scream when they were burned to ashes. All mecha units, prepare for close combat. Among the overlords, Gao Ao lowered his head and operated the mecha to change the 30th magazine of the assault rifle. Charge. The bullets were loaded, and the pitch-black overlord rushed ahead of the insect fleet. Under the inspiration and command, the vast human mecha forces began a tragic charge, and from the abdomen of each giant moth, new green light spots emerged one after another. Suddenly, the five million bone-winged dragonflies seemed to multiply endlessly, rushing up like locusts with their fierce mouths wide open. The firepower of the human fleet assisted, but almost everyone understood that this battle had no suspense. While the fierce battle was still ongoing, inside one of the giant moth warships, on the back of a black moth with a body length of over 2,000 kilometers, another hamp was closing his eyes and savoring. Earth's food is really delicious. I want to taste it again right away, especially with the addition of Neji as an appetizer. Eating has become more interesting, hee hee. On the fourth day after the departure of the Earth fleet, the evacuation work on Earth was still ongoing. Underground shelters were filled with displaced citizens. Without exquisite decorations, without sofas, without private toilets, the citizens who were accustomed to comfort in the shelters gradually realized that a home does not always belong to oneself. Sadness filled the faces of the people, even though the shelters were spacious, each citizen only had enough space for a blanket. In the shelter of District 34 in Morning Light City, more than 200,000 citizens had already gathered, and Neji was one of them. For the past few days, he had been sitting in the corner of the shelter, watching the increasing number of citizens and their gradually saddened faces. Morning Light City, this unique floating city on the sea, even the shelters were deep underwater. Leaning against the cold metal wall, Neji could almost hear the sound of fish swimming outside. At noon on this day, the huge electronic screen in the shelter lit up, and a beautiful female anchor appeared on the TV. Usually, she was used to smiling while reporting the news. But only today, her eyes were already red from crying, holding back the tears that were about to burst. The female anchor tremblingly picked up the news script. Now, I will report the midday news to you. According to the information just received by our station, the space fleet that went on this expedition has encountered the invasion forces of the Bugstar. Although our military forces resisted stubbornly, in the end. In the end, the defense line was breached by the Bugstar. Out of 13,000 warships, only 102 survived, over 470,000 mechs were destroyed, and over 390,000 mech pilots died. Five-star general and commander-in-chief of the operation, General Assad, sacrificed himself, and the flagship was destroyed. Fortunately, Mech Commander Gao Ao is currently organizing the surviving troops to return and is expected to arrive on Earth the day after tomorrow at noon. The Bug Star forces are expected to arrive 72 hours later. As soon as the female anchor finished speaking, the screen switched directly to Annie. Citizens of Morning Light City, I am a scholar at the Earth Science Research Institute. I believe you have already received the bad news just now, but we don't have time to mourn. On behalf of the Earth Federation government, I appeal to retired soldiers under the age of 50 and mech pilots to quickly report to the federal government building. Although it is not a mandatory order, I hope you understand that we need your help to protect our homeland. Also, I call on senior students from mech academies to come and report. You will also become a force for Earth. This broadcast is now over. The TV screen disappeared and the expected scene of wailing and crying did not happen. The shelter was silent. Despair spread like a virus. No one mourned for the fallen comrades because they knew that in 72 hours, it could be their turn to die, and who would shed tears for them then? With a faint sigh, Ning Jie finally stood up in the corner. Millions of people had died, but Ning Jie smiled. Because he saw, among the grieving citizens, one after another figure stood up before him. There were middle-aged men with graying hair, 
mothers handing their babies to their husbands, and couples holding hands as they stood up. Each of these people had one thing in common, besides sadness, there was also hatred in their eyes, and their faces were tense, revealing sharp fangs. Shan Lao Tu, the fangs are starting to grow. Ning Jie walked with large strides, following the crowd towards the exit. As a senior student at the Thunderbolt Mech Academy, after reporting, Ning Jie and a group of young boys were transported to a military base near Morninglight. Here, he saw many classmates he hadn't seen for days, Miller, Lingshan, Xiulian, and Xiulian were all there. Ning Jie and they formed the same combat team, with Miller as the leader, equipped with a standard assault mech, responsible for command. Xiaolian and Xiaolian were heavy armor support mechs, responsible for firepower suppression. Lingshan was a light reconnaissance mech, responsible for battlefield information gathering. As for Ning Jie, Annie asked him if he was willing to join the regular army, but Ning Jie refused. After a fierce struggle with Wu Nang, he finally agreed to overnight to reproduce a stellar mech for Ning Jie and equip it with an anti-mech heavy sniper rifle, as the long-range killer of Miller's team. After the lights went out that night, the members of Miller's team gathered in Miller's dormitory, wrapped in thin blankets, and holding flashlights, they held a secret team meeting. I think calling it Miller's team is the most appropriate, after all, I am the leader and the strongest. The secret meeting was discussing the team name, and Miller complained, wanting to force it through. No way, just because you're the leader, we should call it by your name? Aren't we all soldiers of Earth? Shouldn't we call it Earth Team? Xiaolian, holding a white rabbit, was the first to object. And if we're going by strength, Alien defeated Dante, so we should call it by his name too. Xiaolian stood up for fairness. Forget it. I can't handle it. Actually, I'm weak. If Dante hadn't only used 20% of his power and deliberately let me win, I wouldn't have one either. Ningjie laughed foolishly, holding his head. Well, since you're being honest, I won't hold it against you for hitting my head. Miller smirked in satisfaction. What should we call ourselves? If we can't think of anything better, let's go with Mr. Rabbit's team. Xiaolian was the first to raise her hand. I agree. Xiaolian also raised her hand. I think. I think we should call ourselves Team Flame Soul? Finally, Lingshan weakly said. Ningjie was taken aback. I agree with Team Flame Soul. I can't bring myself to greet people as Mr. Rabbit's team leader, being a grown man. Miller quickly raised his hand. And you, alien? Are you going to be the cute Mr. Rabbit or the tasteless flame soul? Xiaolian glanced at Ningjie. Of course, I agree. Ningjie raised his hand amidst the four pairs of expectant eyes. Mr. Rabbit's team. Yeah, three votes to two. We won. The two adorable sisters cheered excitedly. Miller was so angry that he grabbed his hair, while Lingshan looked at Ningjie with a bewildered expression. Why? Don't you agree with Flame Soul? Aren't you the Flame Soul warrior? On the way back to the dormitory, Lingshan walked with Ningjie and couldn't help but ask curiously. Because Mr. Rabbit is cuter, don't girls like that? Just imagine, when we win, I can say I'm the sniper of Mr. Rabbit's team, cool and adorable, I'm sure to attract lots of beautiful girls. Ningjie fantasized, almost drooling. It doesn't matter what we're called. Actually, I'm more curious why you don't use the warrior mech. Your flame soul warrior mech should be somewhere in this city. Don't try to deceive me, I heard everything between you and Dante, your flame soul warrior mech is called Snake, right? Lingshan had no intention of letting Ningjie off the hook. So, women, apart from being cute when they act spoiled, are just annoying creatures. Walking on the wide base runway, Ningjie laughed, since you already know so much, let me tell you another secret. Actually, the snake can no longer fight. The so-called flame soul warrior is already dead. Lingshan stood still, looking at Ningjie's back, her emotions too complex to describe. The warrior is dead? As the first person on earth to know this news, Lingshan didn't know whether to be glad or despair. Glad that Ningjie was still alive, despair that he had lost his power. The next day at noon, the earth fleet that had escaped began to land, and most of the citizens had already taken refuge and couldn't see anything. Only those who remained on the ground to continue fighting witnessed this unforgettable scene. They said they had withdrawn 102 warships, but not a single one was intact, and most of the returning mechs were heavily damaged. One of the accompanying gows landed forcibly in the military base where Ningjie was. A large number of medical personnel quickly rushed into the burning hull, carrying out one injured person after another, as well as several bodies. Even during the rescue operation, explosions on the ship's hull continued to occur, making it very dangerous. The scene could no longer be described as chaotic. The members of Mr. Rabbit's team standing by the runway instantly understood that peace was no longer present, and the flames of war were approaching and burning. The battered overlord mech stumbled and fell on the runway, and Gao, 
who crawled out of the cockpit with great difficulty, immediately spotted Ningjie. Using the last of his strength to straighten his suit collar, Gao pushed aside the approaching medical personnel and walked up to Ningjie. Kid, why don't you have the fear that others should have on your face? Gao's voice was weak, but he remained standing upright. Because this is war, being a mech pilot means being destined to die on the battlefield. If you're afraid, you should hide in a shelter like a civilian. Ningjie's face didn't even show a hint of sympathy, his cold words awakening his companions beside him. Very well, then as a mech pilot, will you also die on the battlefield? Gao Ao tightly held onto Ningjie's shoulder with one hand. I won't die, because when I wake up, there will be enemies' corpses all around me. Ningjie smiled. I suddenly feel like working hard to go home, just to hear you say that. Gao Ao also smiled and laughed until he fainted. On that evening, the cries of many people echoed over the skies of Qingguang City, making it impossible to fall asleep. This was because the military sent a letter of condolence to the families of all fallen soldiers and posthumously honored each deceased as a martyr, promising that their names would be remembered in human history. The condition was that human history could continue. It was also on that evening that the Mr. Rabbit Squad finally received a level 1 combat order and quickly piloted their mechas to the city, establishing a defensive position at the Central Park. When the five of them arrived in a hurry, the construction team had already left. What remained was a so-called defensive position built on an artificial hill, along with a large pile of weapons and ammunition. The position covered an area of about 10,000 square meters, with walls made of steel plates erected on all sides. The walls were 30 meters high, and the inner perimeter was raised, allowing even a 25-meter tall mecha to peek out. There were no barriers above, and the surrounding area was open for kilometers. Once the battle started, it would be extremely unlikely to retreat if unable to resist. What was even more terrifying was that it was very possible that the initial attacks from above would wipe out the defensive position and the mechas inside all at once. No way. We're just defending this kind of position? What's the difference between leaving us here to die? Miller's hand holding the control lever was trembling. According to the map, the nearest defensive position is 8 kilometers away from here. If this position falls, reinforcements won't be able to arrive in time, Ling Shan checked the battle information. Earth's forces have been almost completely depleted in space, so there won't be any manpower available for reinforcements. Controlling the Hanshing, Ning Jie flipped into the defensive position like a coffin. The Mr. Rabbit Squad is the strongest. We don't need reinforcements. Xiao Lian's mecha charged into the defensive position, shouting, Wait for me, sister. Xiao Lian followed. Ling Shan, no matter what happens, I will protect you. Miller patted the shoulder of Ling Shan's mecha with his mecha. Okay, Ling Shan nodded, but she didn't want to tell Miller that at this moment, it wasn't him who made her feel safe, but Ning Jie. Speaking of Xiao Lian and Xiao Lian's heavily armored support mechas, they were also 25 meters tall, but their shoulder width reached 12 meters, making them the fat ones among the mechas. Their armor was the thickest, able to withstand attacks twice as powerful as those of regular assault mechas. They were equipped with heavy weapons inside all mechas, with the standard being a six-barreled 128mm caliber rotating machine gun. On the other hand, Ling Shan's light reconnaissance mecha was more like a woman among the mechas. With a height of 25 meters and a shoulder width of only 8 meters, its armor was the thinnest, and the highest standard it could use was a regular assault mecha's conventional assault rifle, with limited ammunition. The biggest advantage of light mechas was that they could be equipped with flight thrusters and crews at supersonic speeds in the sky. Most of the time, light reconnaissance mechas were equipped with two fully automatic 88mm caliber rapid-fire pistols. On this possibly the last night for humanity, in the Mr. Rabbit Squad, Ning Jiat and the other five fell asleep in their mechas while holding their weapons. In the underground laboratory of Qingguang City, Annie and Wu Nan walked to the frozen flame soul god for the last time, watching as the staff covered it with a black cloth. Wu Nan, do you think we will see the day it thaws? Annie sighed, I still haven't found the macro Wu system on it, and I'm really unwilling. There will be a chance, Wu Ning gently patted Annie's shoulder, after all, our god of war is still in this city, what is there to be afraid of? Right, Wu Nang, did you just pat my shoulder? Did you wash your hands after using the bathroom just now? Annie said coldly. In the earth calendar year 3057, in the middle of March, at noon, in the city of Qingguang, the weather was sunny, with a gentle breeze, perfect for outings, but not for the final battle of life and death. On the outskirts of Earth, spanning nearly half of the galaxy, the Bug Star fleet consisting of 23,000 giant moths finally arrived at their destination Earth. On the bridge of the moth warship, Hamt, covered in green snake scales, walked to the transparent window and raised his beast-like palm as if caressing the beautiful Earth outside the window. Spread the word, our feast begins. 
Leave nothing behind, eat until there's nothing left. This place will become the new breeding ground for the Bugstar, our new home. With hand sorter, millions of green dots detached from the moth's abdomen and rushed into the atmosphere. On the quiet streets, traffic lights changed color, but there were no students coming out even though it was already past the school's lunch break. At this moment, Earth seemed like a dead planet, quiet like a morning graveyard, at least in the eyes of the enemy. No matter how many humans were trembling in fear in crowded shelters around the world, the mecha troops hidden in various ground positions had already activated their mecha's various colored pupils. They looked up at the sky, watching as green beams of light fell slowly like raindrops. It was like a fireworks display that covered the entire sky. But now was definitely not a good time to make a wish. The stellar mecha half knelt in their positions, their metallic arms raised giant anti-mecha sniper rifles that were as long as their bodies. Inside the cockpit, the image in front of Ningjia instantly switched to a magnified sniper scope. What he saw was not a beautiful fireworks display, but the ugly faces of the bone-winged dragonflies at the forefront of each green beam of light. These disgusting bugs contracted their wings inside like forelimbs, allowing their bodies to glide through Earth's atmosphere like arrows, accelerating their descent to the maximum under the influence of Earth's gravity. The bone-winged dragonflies that were advancing towards Earth deliberately covered their entire bodies with disgusting green slime, so that the high temperature generated by friction had no effect on their green exoskeletons. Ningjie even saw them grinding their serrated fangs. Ningjie. Report the enemy's altitude. Quantity. Species. Miller gave orders like it was written in a textbook. Although only the stellar mecha were equipped with long-range scopes, looking at the dense green lines in the sky, Miller could also imagine the terrifying faces of the enemy. Distance altitude is 20,000 meters, still descending. Quantity. Do you really want to know? As for the species, they're all disgusting bugs. Inside the mecha, Ningjie calmly reported. It's too far. According to their speed, they will enter Ningjie's sniper range in 1 minute, enter Xiaolian Xiaolian's strafing range in 1 minute and 30 seconds, and enter Miller 01's firing range in 1 minute and 40 seconds. I'll go meet the enemy first. Wait for me to come back. Ling Shan, who couldn't wait, had already assumed a half-crouching takeoff posture in her mecha. But even after the engine started, Ling Shan's lightly armored reconnaissance mecha remained motionless on the ground. Surprised, Ling Shan turned her head and saw that Ningjie was holding up his sniper rifle with one hand and holding onto her thruster with the other. What are you doing? Ling Shan asked in confusion. Is it written in the textbook that your opponent will be bugs? If you want to live a little longer, absolutely do not fly off the ground today, and absolutely do not leave this position. While reprimanding Ling Shan, Ningjie saw in the other defense positions of Chengguang City, mechas with blue dots were flying into the sky. They were all light reconnaissance mechas like Ling Shan's, but no one would stop them from their suicidal actions. At the same time as they ascended, on the surface of the earth, hidden in various corners of the city, missile launchers fired simultaneously, dragging thick white smoke as tens of thousands of short to medium range surface to air missiles brushed past the mechs in the sky and quickly plunged into the green ocean. The shockwaves from the explosions blew down from the sky, and even the members of the Mr. Rabbit team stationed on the battlefield felt the slight vibrations of their mechs. The rolling clouds of fire merged together turning the entire sky red, and the tense mood of the light reconnaissance mechs in midair finally relaxed. But before they could relax enough to wipe away the cold sweat dripping from their foreheads, one after another green bone-winged dragonflies emerged from behind the rolling clouds of fire, all unfolding their menacing bat-like wings. The wind pressure generated by the high-frequency vibrations caused these monsters, which had just been speeding like meteors, to suddenly hover in midair. The human light reconnaissance mechs, which were supposed to be more agile than birds with their powerful propulsion, appeared as clumsy as humans in front of this group of insects. We've gone too far. We're beyond the range of ground support fire from our comrades. Go back. Go back. A mech pilot screamed in the cockpit, frantically operating the mech's machine guns, and the shell casings from the two lightweight fully automatic pistols rained down like droplets. A giant dragonfly that charged in front of him had its head shot into a honeycomb, and its green bodily fluids splattered onto his screen. But before the mech pilot could even show a hint of a victorious smile, Two more bone-winged dragonflies charged out from behind it, swinging their side like forelimbs and piercing through the armor in front of the light reconnaissance mech's chest. The bright red liquid sprayed from the mech, whether it was the mech's energy fluid or the mech pilot's blood, was unknown. When the mech lost power, a greedy swarm of bone-winged dragonflies immediately surrounded it, tearing open the mech and devouring the metal. Watching the tragic scene in the sky, Ling Shan and the mech convulsed. If it weren't for Ning Jie's interception, she would probably have been the one eaten. Thank you. Miller connected to Ningjie's cockpit through a private channel and said this sentence before immediately connecting to all the team members. Aim at the sky and shoot, 
regardless of whether it's effective or not. Cover our people's retreat. Miller's pristine white 01 mech was the first to raise the heavy rocket launcher and fired 16 needle-like missiles into the sky in one breath. Don't snatch. I want to shoot down the first one. Shaolian eagerly raised two rocket launchers in one breath. Wait for me, sister. Shaolian operated a heavily armored support mech in the same way. The surviving light reconnaissance mechs in the sky couldn't tell whether they were retreating or falling, rapidly approaching the ground. The artillery fire hindered the large group of pursuers behind them, but at the same time, it exposed the positions of all the defensive positions. The dragonflies moved their fly like huge compound eyes, without the need for language, and tens of thousands of insect beasts instantly divided up the attack areas, as if they had forgotten about the escaping light reconnaissance mechs and all began to dive again, rushing towards the various positions on the ground amidst the artillery fire. You delayed me for 30 seconds. You wasted my time. Ning Jia controlled the star, lightly pulling the trigger with his right index finger. The sniper rifle mounted on his shoulder shot out high-velocity armor-piercing rounds into the sky. The recoil from the buttstock was perfectly absorbed by Ning Jia's perfect posture, cushioned and dissipated in the shortest amount of time. The silver cartridge ejected from the barrel had just landed, bouncing twice, when in the sky, the head of a descending insect beast had already been shot through, and its green brain matter splattered onto the voice of a nearby comrade. Good. So accurate. Hit the target from 9,700 meters away? Inside the light reconnaissance mech, Ling Shan exclaimed as she watched the scene in front of her. Can an anti-mech sniper rifle shoot that far? Xiao Lian? Discarding the rocket launcher on her shoulder, Xiao Lian quickly raised two six-barreled Gatling guns, and the huge ammunition boxes, as big as a box, were strapped to her back. Of course it's impossible. This is within the Earth's sphere, where it's difficult to control factors such as gravity, high-altitude wind pressure, and changes in airflow. Although he's using high-speed penetrating bullets, after flying 8 kilometers, it's basically propelled by inertia. Xiao Lian imitated her sister's appearance and picked up the same heavy weapon. The fact proves that this guy is an alien. Xiao Lian's voice was drowned out by the sound of the engine starting as the machine gun rotated. The six-barreled Gatling gun, with a firing speed of 1,600 rounds per minute, was like a fire-breathing monster, shooting bullets that seemed to be burning into the sky. The bone-winged dragonfly that had just entered range was directly turned into a sieve by the barrage, without even a chance to cry out in pain. From a distance, it looked like green flowers blooming in the sky. Shaolian also joined her sister's barrage, with four continuously rotating machine guns covering the airspace of the position. Ten seconds later, Miller-01, who also held two assault rifles, joined the barrage. This was no longer a war that required aiming. As long as they kept pulling the trigger, changing magazines, and then continuing to pull the trigger, anyone could kill these despicable bugs. But they seemed endless, continuing to dive towards the ground. Defensive positions formed by students often couldn't withstand even one round of such dives. They lost their lives in a brutal way in what their families considered stable jobs. Of course, in the end, they would all become martyrs. On what could possibly be the largest monument in history, their tiny names would be found, just as the old man on the mountain had hoped. At this moment, in the cockpit, Ning Jia was still searching for gaps between the bugs, shooting at the ones in the rear. Every time he hit one, the formation of the diving bugs would slow down slightly. Because Ning Jia was killing the commanding units, they looked the same as ordinary bugs, but they always instinctively hit at the back. Not because they were afraid of death, but to ensure smooth command and overall control. What surprised Ning Jia was how quickly they changed command. Even if he killed one, a new commander would immediately take over in just a fraction of a second. The fierce battle was being fought in every city on earth. The limited human forces were scattered everywhere, using the smallest units to intercept the giant dragonflies in the sky. Although the number of bugs was terrifying, fortunately, there were also many humans. In addition to the main forces of the fleet and mechas, ancient human tanks, armored vehicles, anti-aircraft guns, missile launchers, submarines, and aircraft carriers were all put into use. For a while, the situation with the invading bugs was evenly matched. What puzzled people was, where did the remaining human space fleet go? Even if only 10% of the fleet remained, it still had more than a thousand ships, which was a considerable combat power. At the moment when Earth was surrounded by the bug swarm in the human command center deep underground on the moon, many soldiers watching the situation on Earth clenched their fists, revealing their anger. Among these people, there was one who completely ignored the suppressed emotions around him. He was lying on the huge space map display screen on the ground, placing black and white pieces in a pattern of intersecting lines. But looking at the pattern of the pieces, it wasn't Go, but a five-in-a-row game that children play. And the person lying on the 5-meter-by-5-meter five five screen was a child who was only about one. 
two meters tall, with dark skin and curly short hair, indicating his African heritage. But his deep blue eyes seem to have European blood? Your Excellency X, the battle between Earth and the Bug Swarm has been going on for nearly an hour. Shouldn't we take action? An old general with white hair walked to the edge of the screen and pleaded. What's the rush? We can only deploy a thousand medium-sized warships. Random actions, it's difficult for us to turn the tide. X played with the black piece in his hand, and with a snap, he sealed off a line of four white pieces. The black child smiled innocently. But if we continue, what's the use of having so many fleets if the earth is destroyed? The old man's face twisted, anger filling every wrinkle, perhaps because his family was on earth at the moment. Don't worry, the earth can still hold on for now, my pieces are on their way. X's smile disappeared after placing the black piece down, and he instantly took out a white piece from another box. Playing against oneself, this is how joy and sorrow transform each other. Back on the ground, the once beautiful morning light city was now shrouded in smoke and screams, with green fluids and the blood of mechas staining the earth. Even the sea was filled with the bodies of mutilated dragonflies, while the wreckage of mechas sank to the cold seabed. Explosions occurred throughout the city with the frequency of Chinese New Year firecrackers. In a fortified position on a bare hilltop, the five members of Mr. Rabbit's team fell silent. The only sounds transmitted through their communicators were their intense gasps and the uninterrupted gunfire. Around their position, the fallen bodies of dragonflies almost covered the lush lawn. The green blood that fell from the sky dyed all five mechas of various models a unified green. After replacing the 47th magazine, Ning Jiehang's shooting posture changed from aiming at the sky to a tilted aim. Bone-winged dragonflies pressed down on their heads, continuously diving and searching for defensive gaps. Speaking of this group of students from the Mecha Academy, their coordination was no less than that of a professional military team. Miller, Lingshan, Xiolian, and Xiolian were like each other's arms, always able to shoot down the targets they missed at the most crucial moments. Even if they missed again, at the last moment, Ning Jiehang would definitely bring it down. Gradually, Ning Jiehang became the strong backing and allowed the other team members to shoot more freely. In space, Hammett stood by the transparent glass window, his scales gradually tightening. A small insect-like creature with fly-like compound eyes timidly walked up behind the high priest. Your Excellency, the one-hour battle report has been compiled. The resistance on the Earth's surface is higher than we expected. Over 70% of the dragonfly beasts we deployed have been shot down, but the Earth's losses are still less than 20%. Even if we continue to deploy, it is estimated that it will not have much effect on the overall situation. Are you suggesting that we retreat? Looking at Hammett's face reflected in the window, the trembling insect delivering the report stammered. Your Excellency, that's not what I meant. I'm suggesting whether we should change our troops. Ground combat is the Black Scorpion's strong suit. With fly-like compound eyes, the insect delivering the report whispered. Since you know, why are you still standing here? Do you want to be my venting snack? Hammett exposed a mouthful of fangs. Yes. Yes. I'll go right away. The terrified insect quickly returned to the command post. After a while, tens of thousands of giant moth warships with flapping wings saw black dots detach from their abdomens and fall towards the earth. These black dots were not as numerous as the dragonfly beasts, but they were several times larger. Therefore, when they fell, they dragged out longer and more vivid red shadows, like huge black meteors. What is that? Miller shouted while shooting. You guys keep covering me. Ning Jiehang said, pointing his gun towards the sky. Through the scope, Ning Jiehang saw a drop-shaped black object. Its surface was covered with cross-shaped cracks, like a cut watermelon. Ning Jiehang had no more doubts, and immediately pulled the trigger. The sharp armor-piercing bullet accurately hit the center of the cross, completely piercing through it. Like a latch on a broken door, the originally compact black droplets instantly split into four pieces, revealing four ferocious monsters. They stood at a height of 20 meters, their black bodies covered in a hard shell. Their upper bodies, as rigid as humans, supported a huge fan-shaped head with four sharp fangs protruding from their mouths. Even the contours of muscles could be seen on their humanoid arms, but at the end of their arms, they still had mantis-like sickles, three meters long and full of serrations. Their lower bodies were the most peculiar, consisting of four opposing crab-like long legs, resembling a suspended tank. Unfortunately, they had no wings. The scattered four black scorpions fell not far from the position of Ning Jie, turning into minced meat. The scorpion shells exploded into fragments, flying everywhere, and the black blood, as dark as their bodies, contaminated the originally verdant grass. As for the other black droplets, they all safely landed around the position, forming impact craters one after another. After the last flying dragon beast was shot down, the city of Chenguang fell into three seconds of silence. 
After three seconds, one black droplet after another opened its hard shell, and all the soldiers watched as one black scorpion crawled out after another. What kind of monster is this? Miller exclaimed as he looked at the gathering black insects outside the position. Shoot! Keep shooting! Ning Jie shouted, raising his sniper rifle and pulling the trigger. A bullet pierced through the heads of two black scorpions. In an instant, the black scorpions screeched sharply like cicadas and rushed towards the defensive position like a black ocean. The awakened humans began their counterattack, firing their guns with even more intense firepower than before. These black scorpions, which were twice the size of the bone-winged dragonflies, had terrifying defensive capabilities. Their even stronger shells allowed them to continue charging even after being hit by several bullets. These insects, who knew no fear, continued to crawl forward using their forelimbs, even with three of their four legs severed. Shoot their heads. Shoot these bastards' heads. Miller roared, both of his assault rifles broken, and he quickly discarded 01 Mecha and picked up a shotgun to continue shooting. They're coming. They're coming. Ling Shan roared, throwing two grenades. Xiao Lian. I'll come help you right away. Xiao Lian switched to her fifth backpack magazine. Xiao Lian. Be careful. Xiao Lian directly mounted the machine gun on the steel plate of the defensive position. The balance of the Earth's war was suddenly disrupted by the arrival of the new species from the Bug Star. Gradually, one human position after another was swallowed up by the black scorpions. At the moment when it felt like the destruction of the Earth was about to happen, in the universe, X's pawns finally arrived. X's pawns were not battleships armed with cannons, but a fleet of mining ships that had arrived from Mars. With the top 10 mining capabilities in the universe, the total number of mining ships exceeded 300,000. Seeing this toothless tiger arrive, the bug star still put up a serious resistance. The bone-winged dragonflies, which had once destroyed 90% of the Earth's space fleet, once again pounced on the human fleet. However, this fleet, which was advancing at full speed, unexpectedly stopped its momentum 10 kilometers away from the enemy fleet. Countless white meteorites flew out of the front hatches opened by them. Under the effect of inertia, hundreds of thousands of meteorites, in a posture similar to artillery shells, collided with the bug star fleet. As a purely instinctive reaction, the green sea-like dragon beasts once again gathered together, forming a meat shield for defense. Strangely enough, as soon as the meteorites collided with the bodies of these dragon beasts, they instantly ignited into raging blue flames, burning these insects into pieces. Who could have imagined that these seemingly ordinary meteorites were actually a mixture of white phosphorus and pure oxygen, and even slight friction was enough to ignite a large fire? Some of the fire meteors that broke through the defense line directly collided with one giant moth battleship after another. The originally massive moth battleship suddenly burst into flames like a torch, and the flapping wings of the moth battleship rushed towards the Earth's atmosphere. It was destined to turn into ashes before landing. Seeing this scene, in the command room underground on the moon, the soldiers who were just lifeless suddenly cheered, and the worried old general was so excited that tears streamed down his face. Surprisingly, X, the black boy who created this feat, had a worried expression on his face as he held the black stones. What's next? Where should we go? Looking at the scene of hundreds of moth fleets burning outside the window, Hammett unexpectedly laughed, I never thought there would be intelligent commanders among the people of Earth. Unfortunately, this little trick is just a sideshow during a meal. When there is such a huge difference in power, strategy cannot make up for it. Counterattack. Counterattack with all our might. Counterattack the worm fleet with the moon as the center. Finally, X's black stones fell in the center, creating a charging situation. Orders were given, and the lifeless surface of the moon opened up one by one, revealing huge hatches hidden in volcanoes and craters. The missing human battleships quickly rose from within, and before the formation was deployed, they were already firing at the worm fleet with all their might. The mining carts that were originally used for mining were now equipped with missile launchers and rushed across the surface of the moon like tanks. The sudden ambush had an immediate effect, and the attack from the side caused the worm fleet to panic. Even the defensive bone-winged dragonflies couldn't raise their defensive nets in time. Seeing the human attacks destroying one giant moth battleship after another, X in the command room had no trace of joy on his young face. Our food is too arrogant. Inform them to let the bloodthirsty war god move, and no more slacking off. Hammett impatiently gave the order. Outside the blue earth's atmosphere, the metal bridge on the back of the giant black moth flagship began to shake. A cold cabin door opened from behind, and from the even darker cabin, a fully dark red mecha walked out with heavy steps. When it came into the sunlight, its 28-meter height made it look like a towering hill, and its fierce claw-like five fingers dragged a pitch-black staff as long as its body. Strictly speaking, no one knew how to define this strange machine. 
Even though its entire body was covered in reverse metal armor and it held the iconic symbol of the war god, under the sturdy helmet, its pupils were bloodshot, and one could even see the dark muscles between its dark red armor. It was like a medieval knight, completely wrapped in armor. I'm hungry. Is there anything to eat? Hunched over, the bloodthirsty war god supported itself on the bridge with one hand, and its scattered pupils looked at Hammett, who was smiling behind the window. Are you hungry? The insect race could communicate through neural waves, and Hammett smiled and pointed to the distant moon, where groups of bone-winged dragonflies were launching an assault on the human defense fleet. Your food has been prepared for a long time, and it's definitely plentiful. Thanks. With its fierce mouth wide open, the bloodthirsty war god swung the black staff onto its shoulder. Its body suddenly crouched, and with a powerful leap, it jumped towards the distant moon. The tremendous impact even caused the giant moth battleship to slide three meters to the side. With just one leap, this armored beast flew several kilometers away, and then several bone-winged dragonflies attached themselves to its back, becoming its propulsion. During the flight, dark red patterns appeared on the previously bare surface of the black staff on the bloodthirsty war god's shoulder, and a giant dark red iron hammer, wider than its shoulder, condensed at the head of the staff. This is the driving force of the bloodthirsty war god's grand martial system, fueled by its hunger deep within. Returning to the battlefield on earth, the once prosperous and beautiful city of Morninglight is no longer visible. Everywhere there are collapsed buildings and skyscrapers on the verge of collapse. The black scorpions swarm the ground like ants, and every position is under attack from the black insect horde. Some of the mech squads in certain areas have already become their food, but Mr. Rabbit's team is still holding on. Even though the green blood that was originally on their mechs has been covered by black, they continue to fire. The increased defense of the enemy can only be compensated by the accuracy of their shots. Fortunately, the guys who can stay here are all good marksmen. For a while, each of the five people defended their positions, keeping the ferocious monsters at least 80 meters away. No one knows how long this battle will last, but everyone understands that the ammunition can only support another hour of saturation fire at most. If there is no reinforcement or miracle, humanity's fate will be swallowed up just like their positions. It is at this critical moment that a voice comes through the communicator. Can anyone hear me? This is position 47. We're about to be overrun. Requesting support. Please. The intermittent communication only lasts for 5 seconds, then all that remains is static. Damn it, they're calling for support? We can't even hold on ourselves. Miller shouts angrily, sweating profusely inside his mech. That position is in front of the shelter in District 34. Jing suddenly stops shooting. There are over 200,000 civilians there. Jing, what are you planning to do? You can't save them. That position is 10 kilometers away from here, Ling Shan questions. If we don't even care about the life and death of civilians, why are we entangled with a disgusting bunch of bugs here? Don't forget the purpose of this battle, otherwise you'll end up like me. Hong Xing suddenly throws away his sniper rifle and replaces it with a 7-round shotgun and a box of ammunition. Without giving others a chance to stop him, Hong Xing flips over and leaps out of the position. The surrounding black scorpions scream with excitement, converging towards Hong Xing, seeing him as the food that has come to them. Hong Xing, although I don't know you well, I know you're strong, Jing strokes the control stick in Hong Xing's cockpit, then suddenly tightens his grip. Now, show me how strong you really are. After a moment's pause, Hong Xing's eyes flash red, and he charges towards the approaching black scorpion troops. Cover him. Miller shouts, turning around with two shotguns in hand. Don't help. I don't want to kill you, or die from your stray bullets. I can handle this alone. Jing speaks, while Hong Xing has already made contact with the first black scorpion. The ferocious black scorpion opens its arms, forcefully closing them like a thug embracing a girl, with sharp sickles in the front of its arms. But it misses, and in its astonishment, it doesn't even have time to search for the disappearing mech. In midair, Hong Xing, in an inverted position, pulls the trigger, and the shotgun blasts the black scorpion's head, leaving only half of it. He lands smoothly on the back of another black scorpion, not lingering in battle, desperately charging towards position 47 with the shotgun. The four teammates who were still shooting remain silent, watching Hong Xing's mech maneuver through hundreds of black scorpions on the secondary screen. The teachers had once said that the mech is another body for the mech pilot. Your fear is the mech's fear, your hesitation is the mech's hesitation. But even in the face of opponents that could easily swallow them ten times over, Hong Xing's movements are still smooth and natural, evading the enemy and advancing with the most reasonable maneuvers. This is not something a human can do, at least Miller, Ling Shan, Xiao Lian, and Xiao Lian don't think they can operate without fear like Jing. Fortress number 47, the distress call, is located above the main road. 
As an important stronghold for protecting the shelter, the military has arranged for 10 regular army mechs for defense, as well as a artillery defense consisting of 17 missile launch vehicles. But now, all that remains here is the sound of chewing. Hundreds of black scorpions have surrounded the 10 idle mechs, tearing open their armor and swallowing their hoses like snacks. The bright red energy liquid flows and spreads along the roadside ditch, like a red stream. The unfortunate creatures that couldn't squeeze in from the outside can only gnaw on missile vehicles, power poles, streetlights, cars, and anything made of metal. Among them, the most pitiful one has arrived at the entrance to the underground shelter. There is no metal here, only an entrance similar to a ramp leading to an underground parking lot. The curious black scorpion supported itself and peered inside. Before it could see anything clearly, there was a loud bang. Two of its four legs were severed, and it fell to the ground without support. Its head was pierced by a sharp dagger, and black blood flowed down the entrance ramp into the depths of the shelter. The sudden arrival of the star made all the black scorpions in front, who were eating, stop chewing and look over with their blood-red eyes. To them, what appeared in front of them was just another source of food. But the star, who was treated as food, easily pulled out the dagger from the black scorpion's head, swung it, and splattered blood on the ground, revealing a bit of the originally silver-white blade. Phew, these bugs here are really something else, disgusting enough to make people want to vomit. His brows lightly furrowed, and since awakening, Ning Jia was truly angry for the first time. The star stood at the entrance, holding a dagger in one hand and a shotgun in the other, like an invincible war god. The provocative behavior of the crude star stimulated the scorpions in front, and the swarm of black scorpions wielding sickles like locusts rushed forward. The star opened its arms, leaned forward, and charged. The foremost black scorpion opened its ferocious mouth, waving its sickle still covered in red energy liquid, and slashed towards the star's head. But just before contact, the star lightly jumped and somersaulted over the black scorpion's head, piercing its right eye with the sharp dagger. After dealing with one, the star fell directly into the swarm of black scorpions, and its body was almost instantly invisible. Lingshan, go help Ning Jia. In the constant gunfire at the stronghold, Miller suddenly shouted, Great Demon King, have you gone crazy? You hate aliens the most, yet you're letting your girlfriend help him? Shaolian mocked. Yes, I hate him, but I don't hate my compatriots who need saving. Ning Jia is right, mech pilots are destined to die on the battlefield, but civilians are innocent. Only Lingshan's mech can fly at high speeds here, at least. It's good to send some ammunition to that guy. I'll be back. Lingshan took two boxes of shotgun shells and ignited the thrusters on her back. Lingshan, don't die, come back alive. Miller lowered his head, gripping the control stick tightly. Hmm, I won't die. Lingshan's agile mech flew out of the stronghold, instantly accelerating and disappearing, leaving only a blue halo formed by the thrusters. The crude star, in Ning Jia's hands, was nothing more than a dagger and a shotgun, but it was like the scythe of the Grim Reaper. The rotating blade in the pitch black barrel always found the most cunning angles to stab or blast through one black scorpion after another's head, quickly turning around before their agonized screams and searching for new targets. Faced with enemies several times their number, the star's agile body always made the smallest movements, sidestepping, bending, leaning back, leaning forward, evading attacks from behind and on both sides. As for the enemies directly in front, Ning Jia had already ended their lives before their attacks could reach him. Ning Jia's thinking mode is very simple. No matter how many enemies he faces on the ground, he only needs to deal with the surrounding eight. The next thing to compete with is just physical strength. Unfortunately, Ning Jia has the most worthy capital to show off in this regard. Ning Jia, I've brought ammunition for you. Ling Shan lowered her height while hovering, shooting at the crawling creatures on the ground with a pistol in one hand, shouting loudly. Idiot. You're flying too low. Ning Jie roared angrily. In an instant of distraction, the armor on the back of the star armor was cut in half by a sneak attack from a black scorpion. Ling Shan didn't hear clearly. Suddenly, a ferocious black scorpion jumped up from the ground and instantly appeared in front of the light reconnaissance mech with its terrifying jumping ability like a flea. Facing the enemy so close for the first time, Ling Shan was stunned, and all the knowledge and coping methods she had learned disappeared in an instant. It's over. This was the only voice in Ling Shan's mind. On the ground, Ning Jie ignored the sickle blades attacking him and squatted half on the ground. His feet drove the bearings to operate at overload, resulting in terrifying speed and jumping ability. Before the scorpion sickle blade fell in midair, the star armor gently embraced Ling Shan's mech. However, besides giving people a sense of security, embracing couldn't resolve any danger. The pitch black scorpion sickle blade, which pierced through the steel body, also pierced through Ling Shan's mech just like piercing a candied hawthorn skewer. Ling Shan couldn't catch her breath because the sickle blade that pierced through even the steel was pressed against her shoulder. 
In this way, the two mechs tightly embraced each other, along with the scorpion whose blade couldn't be pulled out, fell into the swarm of insects below. Another greedy feast began, and the scorpions with wide open mouths pounced, fighting for every piece of fresh steel. Ling Shan, who thought you would be chewed to death along with the mech, was pulled out of the cockpit by a pair of metallic hands before that. Next time someone wants to kill you, make sure the enemy's weapon is not pointing directly at your cockpit. Mechs can fight without limbs, but without us, they're doomed. Crouching in front of the torn hatch, Ningjie reached out to her with a calm expression. Passing through countless pairs of sharp crab-like feet, Ningjie pulled Ling Shan to the entrance of the shelter. You go in first. Facing a group of scorpions feasting on the mech, Ningjie took out his phone. What are you going to do? Call for help? No one will come to save us. Ling Shan looked dazed. Ignoring the trembling Ling Shan, Ningjie dialed the phone number of the underground laboratory, and Annie answered the call. Still want to sleep? Ningjie's voice was filled with anger. What do you mean? I've been busy all along. The Earth's defense line is being torn apart, and the insect god of the bug star has even reached the battlefield on the moon. On the other end of the phone, Annie lowered her head. I'm not talking about you. I'm talking about another lazy person. I'll give you three minutes. If you can't make it, you will sleep forever. Ningjie impatiently hung up the call. Listening to the empty busy tone in her ears, Annie looked at the people in the office, even Wu Nung, who was the laziest, was frowning and commanding the evacuation of the researchers. Who else was slacking off? At this critical moment. Suddenly, Annie widened her eyes and rushed to Wu Nung, grabbing his collar. Tell me, is the snake system still connected to the main computer of the underground laboratory? What's wrong with you? Did a dog bite you? Didn't you say that we should always stay connected to the snake and let our supercomputer continuously decipher its program? Damn it! We've been deceived! Annie angrily let go of Wu Nang's collar and turned around to rush out. Wu Nang also abandoned his work and chased after her. Not long after, Annie and Wu Nang arrived in front of the tightly closed metal door again, and the two soldiers on duty saluted them impartially. Open the door quickly! Annie shouted fiercely. Before the soldiers could react, there was a sudden loud noise from behind the metal gate and the thick metal door was forcefully twisted and deformed. Through the cracked door, Annie could clearly see the huge block of ice stuck on top. Ignoring the dazed soldiers beside her, Annie squeezed through the small gap in the door. Wait for me. Wu Nang also followed suit, but his large size required a lot of effort. Standing again in the experimental field that haunted Annie's dreams, the thing that captivated her was nowhere to be seen. The ground was littered with shattered ice, releasing a chilling white smoke, and the walls around were severely damaged by the exploding ice. The oilcloth that was once used to cover the ice crystals was full of holes, like props used by magicians to perform magic, now lying flat on the floor. Annie grabbed a corner of the oilcloth and pulled with all her might, but it didn't budge until Wu Nang joined in and lifted it. However, all Annie and Wu Nang could see was a huge void in clear seawater. Are you kidding me? It actually shattered the ice crystal that is stronger than diamond? Wu Nang said in embarrassment. Wu Nang, connect the city's surveillance cameras, I want to see. See our own fighting god. Annie ran off like a madwoman again. The stars and the light reconnaissance mechs were almost completely consumed, and the greedy scorpions had already begun tearing apart the last remains. Why aren't we leaving yet? Ningjia asked softly, trembling beside Ling Shan. Because I am a mech pilot, a warrior. Warriors cannot hide in civilian shelters, Ling Shan's body trembled, but she still held onto her handgun. Do you know what a mech pilot's handgun is used for? Ningjie suddenly smiled, enemies that even the largest mechs cannot destroy, there's no need to expect a mech pilot's handgun to eliminate them. So, it's actually a tool for us to solve our own lives, to avoid falling into the hands of the enemy and enduring more pain. But you didn't bring it, did you? Ling Shan looked at Ningjie dressed in a tight-fitting pilot suit. Because I won't die. After sleeping for a thousand years, I finally returned home. I didn't wake up just to die. A consumed scorpion turned its head and discovered the petite Ningjie and Ling Shan. It opened its bloody mouth and let out a piercing scream as it charged towards them. Ling Shan trembled, but Ningjie, as if he had long forgotten fear, stood still and smiled. A gust of wind blew by. Boom! A deafening explosion tore through the metallic ground in front of Ningjie, and seawater gushed out like a fountain, reaching a height of 10 meters. In the white water curtain, a red metal arm grabbed the head of the charging black scorpion. Like a disgusting bug in a human's hand, the black scorpion struggled and screamed, attracting the attention of all its companions. What is that? Ling Shan asked in confusion. A snake that has been frozen with me for a thousand years. Didn't you say the fighting god was already dead? Yes, the fighting god is dead, but I am still alive. Ning Jie's mouth curled up into a sinister smile. 
At that moment, the red metal arm that was gripping the black scorpion's head suddenly tightened, and the massive head of the scorpion instantly exploded like a fruit, scattering fragments everywhere. The black blood splattered Ling Shan and Ning Jia. Ling Shan almost vomited, but Ning Jia closed his eyes, tilted his head back, and enjoyed the baptism of the black blood. Discarding the dead bug in his hand, the snake, supported by the arm covered in black blood, crawled out of the large hole like a child breaking out of a cocoon. The bright red armor burned like fire, shimmering under the sun with droplets of water, and the pitch black pupils were as terrifying as black holes. The fully enclosed metal body was a world apart from human mechs with just one glance. Squatting on the ground, the red flame soul fighting god roared like a wild beast. Its voice spread like spreading light, unstoppable, and spread throughout the entire city. All the soldiers in battle and the tearing scorpions froze at that moment. That kind of terrifying fear, whether it's humans or insects, is trembling. If you don't want to take refuge, come with me. Leading Ling Shan, Ning Jia walked towards the flame soul fighting god. From waking up until now, Ning Jia finally sat in the cockpit of the flame soul fighting god again. Curiosity mixed with a little fear, Ling Shan also climbed in. However, the cockpit was not spacious enough to accommodate two people, so Ling Shan had to sit on Ning Jia's lap, holding onto his neck tightly. The heavy cabin door closed from the outside, and in an instant, it became pitch black. The cockpit lit up, and the 360-degree surround display screen reflected the surrounding environment realistically. Every blade of grass and every tree seemed so clear that you could reach out and touch them. Of course, those black scorpions with their mouths wide open were also seen clearly. And surrounding the pilot's seat were hundreds of various control switches, like a nightmare encircling the cockpit of every mech pilot. You brat, it took you so long to wake me up. You have no conscience. Suddenly, a voice called out from the cockpit. What is that? Ling Shan was startled. It's just my talkative assistant program. Hey, what do you mean by talkative assistant program? I am the super handsome snake lord of the flame soul fighting god. From the screen in front of Ning Jia, a black object appeared and angrily shouted. It looks like a worm. Ling Shan said in confusion. He he, did you hear that? Worm lord, am I the only one who thinks that? Ning Jia laughed until his face twitched. TSK, another uncivilized earthling. How do you understand the magnificence of my snake lord? The snake disdainfully minimized the icon in the corner of the screen. Enough of the idle talk, snake, gather battlefield data. For now, I am only connected to the main computer of the underground laboratory in Morning Light City. Through monitoring calculations, there are about 200,000 black scorpion-type insect beasts, and the city's defenses won't last more than 30 minutes. Then in those 30 minutes, we'll take care of all of them. Ning Jia tightly gripped the control lever with both hands. Are you serious? Ling Shan widened her eyes as she hugged Ning Jia's neck. Hee <laughs> hee, Ling Shan, watching Ning Jia's battles up close like this is scarier than watching a horror movie. The snake smirked strangely. How do you know my name? Ling Shan's eyes widened even more. Not just your name, do you want to see a recording of yourself taking a bath? The snake's eyebrows wiggled lewdly in the corner of the screen. Shut up, don't disturb me. Ning Jia took a deep breath, and the massive flame soul fighting god took a step forward charging straight towards the trembling black scorpion beast horde. In space, the war on the surface of the moon was even more brutal than on Earth. It concentrated all the remaining warships of Earth. Although it seemed like a clever deployment, it became like abandoned pawns when the insect beasts arrived in overwhelming numbers, with only the option of fighting to the death. However, the situation of having no way out made the human forces forget their fear, and all the soldiers who were on the battlefield for the first time fought bravely like seasoned veterans. Unfortunately, in front of their opponents, bravery still only meant the fate of being slaughtered. Run! Full throttle! A four-wheeled combat vehicle raced on the surface of the moon, and the soldier operating the turret shouted, while the 30mm automatic grenade launcher in his hand continued to spew flames. The throttle is already pressed to the max. The driver shouted as he turned the steering wheel, crossing through the two burning vehicles. Left! The words of the gunner were cut off, as a pitch-black giant iron rod flew like a javelin, piercing through the unfortunate combat vehicle, turning the driver's body into a pile of flesh in an instant, just like squashing a bug, the massive bloodthirsty fighting god, with lazy steps, walked over and effortlessly grabbed the black rod on the ground, pulled it out, and chewed on it along with the crushed combat vehicle and the screaming gunner, as if eating skewers. The appetizer is over, time for the main course. With a gulp, the bloodthirsty fighting god leaned forward, the black rod held in its hand, and one end drooping on the surface of the moon. And in front of him, just one kilometer away, was the huge volcanic crater where the underground command post was located. Stop him. The commander roared on the front line. 
In an instant, numerous cannons aimed at the bloodthirsty war god, but before they could fire, the bloodthirsty war god had already taken a mad charge, resulting in a dark red storm that came straight at them, too fast for the naked eye to discern. All the tanks in its path were swept up, disintegrating in mid-air and torn into pieces. Even the large tank that was just commanding was twisted into the shape of an iron ball. When the annoying cry ceased, the bloodthirsty war god stood in the center of the volcanic crater, with twelve steel gates, each thirty meters thick, beneath its feet. He can't get in. Even an atomic bomb can't open this place. He can't get in. In the command center, the old general trembled and muttered to himself, cold sweat covering his spine, because the huge screen in front of him only showed the ferocious face of the bloodthirsty war god. X, with his dark, tender skin, said nothing, his hand gripping the black stone making a cracking sound. Open the can. The bloodthirsty war god grinned, gripping the staff with both hands and raising it high above his head. The surface of the black staff was instantly covered in crimson patterns, and a huge iron hammer appeared at the top. Boom! A thunderous roar shook the ground in the command center, causing everyone except X to fall to the ground. The screen also trembled for a while. When the picture returned, everyone was speechless, their mouths wide open. The first layer of gates that had given them a sense of security had already shattered into pieces, and the bloodthirsty war god stood on the surface of the second layer of gates, once again raising the iron hammer in the same posture. Everyone, it's been a pleasure working with you. Although it's only been two days, I am already satisfied. X let go of the small stone, and the black stone, now without its owner, fell onto the chessboard. The time for death had come, and fear was forgotten, leaving only the acceptance of the inevitable. But a turning point quietly arrived. The bloodthirsty war god, on the screen, suddenly put down the iron hammer when there was only one defense gate left, and looked up at the earth hanging high in the sky. Before long, several bone-winged bats grabbed onto his back, carrying the demon away from the moon. What's going on? Did he leave? Did we win? Inside the command center, the bewildered crowd looked at each other, questioning. No, he left because another more important battlefield is in crisis. The crisis that is enough to make the war god leave is our hope for survival. X suddenly sat down weakly on the chessboard with his feet. He suddenly realized that the black stone he had unintentionally dropped had actually helped the black stone, who had been forced into a dead end, to form a counterattack situation. Back on the ground, under the blue sky and white clouds, the fierce battle in Morning Light City continued. In the Central Park stronghold, in the hands of Shaolian's heavy mech, the two rotating Gatling guns finally fell silent, and the bright red muzzles of the six barrels stopped spinning, emitting a wisp of smoke. Shaolian, I'm out of bullets. What about you? Discarding the cumbersome gun barrels, Shaolian took out two pistols and continued firing. Just ran out. Xiao Lian smiled lightly, exhausted, and threw the firearms on the ground, taking out a handgun. Damn it! Why can't we kill them all? Inside the Zero One mech, holding a shotgun, Miller roared, shoot. Even if we die, we have to kill more of these bastards. But it seemed that God wanted them to die even more miserably. Without the suppression of heavy firepower, the Black Scorpion's advance became faster and faster, and behind them, more Black Scorpions surged forward like a tide. These monsters were clearly more eager than their predecessors, climbing over the bodies of their comrades to continue charging forward. Many unfortunate souls were impaled by the crab-like sharp legs of their own kind. Kill! Their main force is here. Three mechs in the stronghold simultaneously turned their gun barrels towards the direction of the Black Flood. Unfortunately, bullets could not stop the onslaught of the Black Scorpion Swarm, which engulfed the fortified position that had been held for 2 hours and 37 minutes. But after the flood of Black Scorpions passed, the three seemingly dead mechas pushed aside the collapsed fortifications on top of them. The members of Mr. Rabbit's team looked around in confusion, as the vast position was now only filled with the bodies of numerous black scorpions, silent as if the battle had already ended. What happened to them? Why didn't they kill us? Said Little Love, holding an empty pistol in her hand, bewildered. I don't know. The charge just now. It felt like they were running away. Miller furrowed his brow in confusion. I know what they were running from, said Xiao Lian, excitedly gripping the control stick in the cockpit. On the screen in front of her, dozens of black scorpions were slowly retreating in a defensive formation. And in their midst, a crimson, no, rather a pitch black mecha was slowly approaching. In the mecha's hands, it dragged the mutilated bodies of two black scorpions, leaving dark bloodstains on the ground as it walked. Suddenly, a roaring black scorpion couldn't restrain itself any longer and pounced on the mecha from behind. It opened its side-like arms, moving much faster than the average black scorpion, clearly an elite among them. But before it could swing its sides, its hands were firmly caught by the mecha as it turned around. The mecha stepped on the pitiful black scorpion's chest, seemingly weakly kicking it, 
but it forcefully ripped off the black scorpion's arms from their sockets. The screaming black scorpion fell to the ground, writhing in pain. Witnessing the fate of their comrade, the surrounding black scorpions retreated once again, but there were still two brave ones that flanked and attacked. The pitch black mecha calmly crossed its hands and swung them, and the black scorpion's severed arms and its hands flew out like javelins, piercing through the open mouths of the two attacking black scorpions, who fell to the ground unable to even scream. Hey, have you ever seen a mecha this powerful? Miller frantically searched through the data on Earth's mecha models but couldn't find any matching ones. How could Earth have someone so formidable in battle? Shaolian chuckled lightly. Is he fighting? It looks more like he's massacring, as if he's casually crushing bugs. Shaolian's body trembled involuntarily. Just as the pitch black mecha continued its brutal display, dozens of brand new pitch black seeds suddenly fell from the sky, and a surge of black scorpions emerged. They had no concept of fear towards the mecha and rushed towards it, their only command being tear him apart. In an instant, the body of the pitch black mecha was engulfed by the black scorpions. He's in trouble. Quick, go help him. Miller shouted. How can we help him? Throw rocks at those guys? Little Love raised her empty pistol. Run, let's move to another position while we still can. Shaolian discarded her pistol and drew the sword behind her. Are you scared? In the cockpit of the flame soul battle god, Ning Jia asked softly, because Ling Shan, who was tightly embraced by him, was trembling. Ling Shan didn't say anything, she just buried her head in Ning Jia's embrace. Hee hee, do you think she's afraid of those guys outside? The worm-like snake smirked on the screen. The little girl is just afraid of you. In the face of group tactics, you have always implemented the most brutal and ferocious ways to eliminate the enemy, spreading fear throughout their hearts, affecting their movements and fighting spirit. But fear is not exclusive to the enemy alone. You're quite talkative today. Our actions are too slow. At this rate, after saving the entire earth, people will be almost dead. It's time to bring out the new weapons, Ningjia's face instantly darkened like the night. On the battlefield, as the three mechas prepared to retreat while watching the surging black scorpion hill not far away, the earth suddenly trembled. From the black scorpion hill, a pitch black ice blade emerged, having pierced through countless black scorpions' bodies. The numerous climbing black scorpions scattered almost instantly, revealing the pitch black mecha that was being crushed underneath. What is that? Miller couldn't believe his eyes as he saw the majestic mecha extend too long, pitch black ice blades that were 10 meters long. Is the temperature dropping? Shaolian looked at the temperature gauge in the corner of the screen, and the value quickly dropped from 27 degrees, finally settling at minus 30 degrees. Luckily we're inside the mecha, otherwise we would have turned into popsicles. Shaolian looked at the bodies of the black scorpions beneath her feet, and the black blood that was originally left behind instantly turned into ice, even the grass became sharp ice cones that broke upon touch. In the underground laboratory of Morning Light City, Wu Nang sat down on his seat as he watched the scene on the screen. Is that also the power of the battle god? Instantly lowering the temperature within a radius of 10 kilometers, with the center point reaching minus 60. 34 degrees? That's impossible, that's not the power of the flame soul battle god, something must have happened during his dormant period, Annie frantically typed on the computer, inputting all the data. After a moment, the answer appeared. Facing the deduction results calculated by the main computer of the underground laboratory in just 10 seconds. Evolution. Annie sighed deeply. What is it? That's a mecha, how can it evolve? Wu Neng couldn't believe it. No, it's not the battle god mecha that's evolving, it's the biological reverse metal that makes up the mecha. We were all wrong. When we thought that reverse metal was just the strongest metal in the world, we overlooked its nature as a living organism. The calculations show that when reverse metal is placed in extreme environments for over a thousand years, it assimilates with the extreme environment to ensure its own survival. So, after being frozen for over a thousand years, the awakened flame soul battle god now possesses the power to create cold that rivals the giant ice crystal. Annie's body convulsed, without a hint of fear, she grinned ferociously. Water turns to ice, breath turns to frost. This is our new power, the evolved version of the flame soul battle god that surpasses all other battle gods in the universe. On the battlefield, the black blood that was originally attached to the surface of the flame soul battle god solidified, cracking and falling off with the battle god's movements, revealing its originally crimson armor. It's time to speed up the harvest. Ning Jia gently pushed the control lever, and the massive flame soul battle god dragged two pitch black ice blades and charged into the trembling swarm of black scorpions. The temperature of over minus 60 degrees was the temperature on the surface of Mars. Even the most tenacious insects would become stiff and have difficulty moving without any insulation. Just like standing still, the ice blades of the flame soul battle god easily severed their heads and cut open their chests as they ran. 
Fortunately, before they could feel any pain, their entire nervous system had already been frozen. So cold. In Ning Jie's arms, Ling Shan finally stopped trembling, but her limbs also stiffened. Although the cockpit had a temperature control system, the slight decrease in temperature caused by this chill was still noticeable. Hold on tight, it will be over soon. Ning Jia whispered in Ling Shan's ear, and the crimson battle god jumped into the air, spinning its body, waving its ice blades, and beheaded three black scorpions with a single slash. Being so close, Ling Shan finally heard the song that had always accompanied Ning Jia. The song came from the earring in Ning Jia's ear, and the voice was very soft and gentle, like a lullaby for a baby. And it was in this gentle lullaby that Ning Jia's battle god continued to charge and fight. The sense of fear and the bone chilling cold made the newly joined insect beasts also begin to retreat. But just as they turned to flee, a fiery red meteor fell from the sky at high speed. The flame soul battle god, which was still rampaging, abruptly stopped and leaped backward. With a loud bang, the ground on which it had just stood sank and cracked spread like a spider's web. Underneath the fallen object, a pitiful black scorpion had turned into mud. Hee hee, finally found the most delicious dish. Supporting a long black stick, the bloodthirsty warrior stood up, his entire body's reverse metal armor burning red and emitting blue smoke. Standing half a head taller than the flame soul warrior, he stood in front of Ning Jia, who held an ice blade. What is that? Looking at the monster on the screen, Ling Shan unconsciously held Ning Jia tighter. Ning Jia, run away. That guy's surface is reverse metal, and the weapon in his hand is also analyzed as Hangwu. He should be the bug star warrior. The snake's expression was serious, and for the first time, he made a serious suggestion. Ning Jia in the cockpit lowered his head slightly without saying a word. Raising the black stick in parallel, the bloodthirsty warrior pointed directly at the head of the flame soul warrior, his ferocious face full of doubt. Hey, I heard you've been frozen for a thousand years. Can you be sure you're still fresh? Try it and you'll know. Ning Jie grinned and pushed the control lever, and the flame soul warrior swung the ice blade to deflect the black stick in front of him. The rushing red body pounced on the arrogant monster in front of him, and the other ice blade aimed at the throat of the bloodthirsty warrior's armor. So lively, you must be very fresh. The bloodthirsty warrior just tilted his head lightly, and the deadly ice blade grazed the armor on his throat, splashing sparks but not harming him at all. The charging flame soul warrior also fell into the embrace of the bloodthirsty warrior, who opened his mouth without hesitation and bit into the flame soul warrior's shoulder. His fangs pierced through the reverse metal armor. The alarm immediately appeared on the screen in the cockpit, but Ning Jia didn't stop. The flame soul warrior forcibly supported the body of the bloodthirsty warrior and took a step forward. It was a brutal fight, like a fight between barbarians, and the bloodthirsty warrior was pushed into a building. The poor building collapsed, stirring up countless dust. From the dust, the red body of the flame soul warrior retreated, with dozens of neat tooth marks still remaining on his shoulder. The bloodthirsty warrior lay on the collapsed building, laughing excitedly, the taste of reverse metal is so delicious, I can't wait to chew you bit by bit in my mouth. Ling Shan, lying in Ning Jie's arms, was confused. It was clearly Ning Jie who controlled the warrior, but it didn't seem as powerful as when facing Dante last time. I told you to run away. The snake looked angrily at Ling Shan. It's all your fault, stupid girl. Staying here slowed down his control. It was supposed to be at least a 50-50 situation, but now he can only take a beating. You think you can go 50-50 with me? Ning Jie opened various switches. You, don't move around. It's going to be bumpy next. The bloodthirsty warrior swung the black stick and suddenly rushed out of the ruins. The dark red iron hammer instantly took shape and smashed towards the flame soul warrior. Inescapable, the flame soul warrior crossed his hands in front of his chest, and the black twin ice blades became his shield, taking the blow head on. Unfortunately, the moment of contact proved the terrifying power of Han Wu. The ice blades shattered, and even the powerful flame soul warrior was sent flying off the ground. Coincidentally, he crashed into the three observation mechas on the hill, and the four mechas twisted into a mess, in a sorry state. Damn it, why did you crash here? Couldn't you have gone somewhere else? Miller rubbed his head, almost dizzy. Quick, take Ling Shan away. The cabin door of the flame soul warrior opened after being released from its frozen state, and Ning Jia handed Ling Shan to the hands of Mecha No. Zero one. It's an alien. Xiao Lian exclaimed excitedly. Quick, move. That guy is coming again. Xiao Lian's every nerve was tense, pointing to the sky, and the bloodthirsty warrior, who was falling straight down with the iron hammer, was faster than the previous meteor. When everyone thought they were going to die, the flame soul warrior kneeling on the ground raised his arms and forcefully withstood Hong Wu's attack. A circle of shockwaves blew in all directions, shaking and uprooting all the trees in the park. 
Looking at the flame soul warrior, his supporting feet were deeply embedded in the ground, like nails driven into wood. Finally, I see the pilot. Are you trying to escape? The bloodthirsty warrior grinned at Ning Jie, still exerting force with the iron hammer in his hand. Watching Ling Shan being taken into the cockpit of the Zero One Mecha, Ning Jie wiped away the blood flowing from the corner of his mouth without saying a word. The door of the Dou Shen closed quickly. Finally, there was only one person left in the cockpit, and Ning Jie's cells all over his body seemed to have been activated. Serpent, full power output, ice seal state restart, we are going to start exterminating the bugs. Only to see the kneeling flame soul Doshin slightly rumbling all over his body, like an engine starting up. The wound on his shoulder instantly congealed into an ice crystal seal, but in just one second, the bloodthirsty Doshin, holding a hammer, was frozen into a huge ice sculpture. Taking advantage of the opportunity, Shaolian, Shaolian, and Miller quickly escaped from the battlefield that no longer belonged to them. Ling Shan, who was finally safe, felt a bit regretful, constantly looking at the distant flame soul. Boom! Bloodthirsty effortlessly shattered the surface of the ice crystal, do you think such tricks would work? While Bloodthirsty spoke, Flame Soul squatted by the clear lake in the park, as if washing his hands, he inserted both hands into the lake and when he pulled them out, two ice blades had reformed on them. But at this moment, the ice blades were translucent blue, only 4 meters long, thin and sharp. If the previous black blades were like big knives for beheading horses, what Ning Jia now possessed were two sharp daggers. Hunger and excitement stimulated the bloodthirsty Doshin to charge forward, swinging the hammer from bottom to top. Even the earth was torn apart by the hammer, and its unstoppable force was difficult to resist. However, the immovable flame soul only slightly turned sideways, and the deadly hammer passed by in front of him. Ning Jia, in a more relaxed posture, stabbed the ice blades in the gap of the bloodthirsty's shoulder armor. The pain distorted bloodthirsty's face, and it forcibly changed the trajectory of the hammer, sweeping past. Flame Soul easily leaped to the side. Black blood dripped down from Bloodthirsty's wound, and the arrogant Bloodthirsty could no longer laugh. Its pair of ferocious pupils stared firmly at the Flame Soul Doshin not far away. Bloodthirsty has lost. In the universe, on the bridge of the Black Moth flagship, watching the battle displayed on the screen, Han sighed regretfully, I wanted to let the rookies practice, but who knew they would encounter Flame Soul? If I had known, I would have brought more powerful Doshins. Injured Bloodthirsty slowly moved forward and reached the attackable distance of Hong Wu, immediately stopping and swinging the hammer to attack. But in the instant it raised its hand, Flame Soul's body turned into a red light and passed by it. Immediately, another wound appeared on Bloodthirsty's abdomen, and black blood gushed out, making it feel that its sturdy reverse metal armor was useless decoration. Can you even be considered a Doshin with something like you? Standing behind Bloodthirsty, Ning Jie sneered. A Doshin is the product of the perfect combination of the pilot and the mecha. But you, you're just a bug wearing armor. Your Hongwu can only achieve second-rate liberation. Don't laugh. I'm going to eat you. Angry, Bloodthirsty rushed forward without caring about the wounds on its body, swinging the hammer. Faster and more fierce than before, the hammer struck the ground again and again, not only shattering the ground, but also smashing the floating steel plates that made up the Morning Light City. The earth disintegrated, and the many steel plate cubes that made up the earth floated and undulated in the seawater, many of them even turned into huge floating boards on the sea surface, raising a curtain of water in the sky. Before the water curtain fell, the chill of flame soul froze them all into one mirror after another. And flame soul, like a ghost, stood in each mirror. Bastard, come out. Standing on a floating board, bloodthirsty Doshin roared angrily, swinging the hammer to shatter many ice mirrors around it. Like a ghost, Flame Soul silently stood behind it, suddenly embracing its body, and the cold ice blade directly cut open Bloodthirsty's throat. Bloodthirsty's massive body trembled and convulsed in Flame Soul's embrace, but Ning Jia, unmoved, cut the wound even deeper, causing the blood to flow out faster. When the Flame Soul unleashed its bloodlust, it was already dead, and the black blood stained the ice around the floating board black. The ice blade in its hand shattered, and the Flame Soul looked up at the sky, which would be another battlefield. Report on the condition of the earth. In the command center on the moon in space, X resumed the unfinished game of chess. Yes, over 40% of the earth defense force has been destroyed, 167 cities have fallen, and now the only relief from the invasion pressure is the city of Morning Light. The technician quickly read the data. The defense lines of Morning Light City are being rebuilt, and most of the black scorpions have retreated. After all, it is the capital of the Earth Federation, and Morning Light City has more elite forces for supply allocation. These are not the fundamental changes in the situation. Flame Soul Fighter. It seems that the old man has made a good move. X smiled and placed a white piece on the board. But the victory of one city cannot fundamentally reverse the situation. 
To win, we need more powerful moves. Jumping back from the floating board to stable ground, Nianjia and the cockpit connected to the underground laboratory's communication. Annie, are you there? Of course, I've been waiting for you, our fighter. Sitting in front of the computer, Annie smiled. My weapons were disarmed when they were frozen, so I can't move globally, and I can't save cities other than morning light. The only way is to quickly deal with the enemy fleet. Can you send me to space? Nianjia looked up at the sky. Earth's fleet has been deployed to the moon as a surprise force. I only have some ordinary light reconnaissance mech thrusters in my hands, so I can't break through the atmosphere. However, if you don't mind looking ugly, come to the underground laboratory. Maybe I still have something that can be useful to you. Annie quickly checked the computer data. I'll be there right away. Ninjia hung up the communication after speaking. Ten minutes later, the resistance fleet on the surface of the moon was almost exhausted, and there was no attack in space that posed a threat to the moth fleet. The large moth fleet once again opened its abdomen, and countless newly born green winged dragonflies flew out endlessly. Millions of invaders sharpened their fangs, waiting for the command to be given. High priest! Look! A bug with compound eyes exclaimed. On the enlarged screen in front of Hammett, a crack appeared in the ground of Morning Light City, revealing a giant primitive rocket. This antique, which was the initial spacecraft equipment for humans, has now become humanity's last hope, because the flame soul fighter is fixed on top of the rocket. Countdown begins. In the rocket launch room, the technician said solemnly, No need, we're running out of time. Wu Neng smiled and took off the technician's microphone on his head, directly pressing the launch button. Thick smoke spewed out from the bottom of the rocket, devouring the earth. The giant thrusters propelled the fighter straight into the sky. Everyone in Morning Light City saw the magnificent rocket take off and unconsciously looked up at it. Stop him. His trajectory is our flagship. The compound-eyed bug shouted, and outside the moth warship fleet, countless bone-winged bats flew towards the direction of the rocket. But before they could get close to the rocket, more attack missiles had already flown from the ground, blocking these attackers a hundred meters away. Protect the rocket at all costs. Annie shouted through the loudspeaker in the laboratory. All the mech tanks in Morning Light City forgot about the ongoing Black Scorpion Legion and fired missiles into the sky, even though their bodies were being swallowed by the Black Scorpions. The guys on the ground are really stupid. Clearly, these bugs can't harm the fighter at all, but they died to protect us. The snake said disdainfully, and the thruster behind the flame soul had disintegrated, leaving only the last section. They are not stupid, they are just protecting their hope. Ninja in the cockpit lowered his head, his voice becoming very soft. Finally, the last section of the rocket detached from the body of the flame soul god, and the missile rain from Earth came to an end. Numerous bone-winged dragonflies rushed towards the flame soul, which was deeply entrenched alone. A group of pests, dare to come and destroy my home? You've really made me angry. Get lost. Ning Jia contracted his body, and the armor on his right forearm instantly cracked open. The flame soul god drew out a five-meter-long, crimson hilt. The flame soul god's grandiose system activated, fueled by Ningjia's anger. A more vibrant red light sword emerged from the hilt, dazzling the world. With a simple swing of the sword, the approaching bone-winged dragonflies were burned to ashes, and the scorching heat made the insects retreat. Taking advantage of the inertia, the flame soul god landed on the back of the black moth battleship, gripping the crimson long sword with one hand, pointing it towards the bridge window, just like the day Ningjia pointed a gun at Hammett's head. This is your second chance. Go back to your planet and never set foot on Earth again. Ningjia's voice echoed inside the bridge. High priest. The temperature outside the window has reached 1000 degrees. The black moth is burning. The panicked compound eyes bug ran to Hammett, only to be impaled through the chest by Hammett's hand. The chaotic bridge instantly regained its composure. Flame soul god Ningjia, even though you were an emotion control device, you can still ignite your candle sky. It seems you really hate me, don't you? Hammett licked the fluid of his kind from his hand and slowly walked towards the window. You have 10 seconds to consider. The majestic flame soul stood firm. Ning Jie. You win this time, but next time I will come and kill you, eat your bones, and drink your blood. I will turn every person on earth into food for our bug star. Hammett leaned against the window, shouting ferociously. I'll take that as a refusal. The flame soul god's sword plunged straight into the bridge, igniting a massive explosion that engulfed the pitiful black moth. Instantly losing command, the vast swarm of bug star moth fleet descended into chaos. Many moths, retreating from each other, fell into Earth's atmosphere, their wings ablaze. The invaders on Earth also lost their fighting spirit at this moment, abandoning their numerical advantage and fleeing in panic. The Earth's mecha units, already in dire straits, as well as the ordinary human forces, 
looked at the foolish enemies in confusion and launched a counterattack against the Black Scorpion with a ratio of 1 to 300. Earth was saved, and the hero who saved it floated in the pitch black universe like cosmic dust. The blade of the candle sky had disappeared, and the battle was over. Ning Jia looked down at the blue earth, this is the home where I will live in the future. It feels really good. The flame soul raised his hand as if caressing the surface of the earth. We won. In the command room on the moon, the crowd cheered, regardless of whether they were old or young, everyone was screaming with excitement, embracing and shedding tears. We can go home. X smiled and dropped the chess piece in his hand. It took three months to clean up the bug beasts on earth, and the number of soldiers and civilians who died in this battle exceeded 200 million. One fourth of cities worldwide were severely destroyed, and the space fleet had a destruction rate of over 97%. It would take at least 10 years to recover to the pre-war level. However, this did not stop the joyous celebration of victory among the people. At dusk that day, all the invaders in the city of Qingguang had been annihilated, becoming a city on Earth with reduced military readiness. As the remaining fleet on the moon began to return, numerous civilians and soldiers gathered in front of the half-destroyed spaceport to welcome their heroes. Amidst the waves of cheers and salutes, X led the people from the moon command center down from the flagship. As the first representatives to welcome them, Annie and Wu stepped forward. I've heard a long time ago that the head organization gathered a group of geneticists to create the most intelligent human plan, and I never thought they actually succeeded. Holding X's hand, Annie looked at X without any gratitude. I suppose you're praising me. X squinted and smiled, but this victory is not mine, it's yours, Miss Annie. If it weren't for you releasing the flame soul god, our earth would have been destroyed. By the way, I found a treasure on the way back, and now I'm giving it to you. As X spoke, the flame soul god, as red as blood, walked out of the hatch of the warship behind him. Every step it took seemed to make the earth tremble, and the hearts of all humans beat with it. Amidst the hoarse cheers, the crowd desperately surged forward. If it weren't for the soldiers forming a human wall, the flame soul god would have been swallowed by the flood-like crowd. And Mr. Rabbit, the member of the duty team, stood not far away. Ling Shan enlarged the image of the flame soul on the screen, and she couldn't imagine that she had been in that mecca not long ago. The proud flame soul god came to Annie's side and knelt down, and from the open cockpit, Ning Jia leaped to the ground. Welcome home. Wu Nang was the first to step forward and tightly hugged Ning Jia's body. I have a task for you. All the weapon systems of the flame soul, except for the macro marshal, were deactivated during the trial. I need many new equipment, and I need you to help me design them. The specific design requirements will be sent to your computer later by the snake. In the arms of the muscular man, Ning Jia calmly spoke. You really know how to pretend, don't you? Just saved all of humanity, and you still look so serious. Be happy. Wu Nang grabbed Ning Jie's shoulder and laughed heartily. We haven't won, we're just temporarily alive. The Bug Star fleet will come again soon, and they will be more numerous, stronger, and more ferocious. How long can I hold on? Even I don't know. Ning Jie's serious expression scared Wu Nang. Are you kidding me? Don't tell me you have some terminal illness. Wu Nang hugged Ning Jie and laughed. No, it's not him who has the terminal illness, it's the flame soul god. Standing beside the flame soul god's body, Annie touched the armor of the flame soul god with a serious expression. And with a close look, she easily noticed the clear cracks on the armor. Our god of war is cracking. How is that possible? Wu Ning finally walked seriously to Annie's side and looked at the cracked armor. The reverse metal that makes up the flame soul has evolved. Now it has the ability to create extremely cold environments, using ice as a blade to freeze everything. Ning Jie slowly walked to the flame soul god, gently touching its armor as if caressing his own skin. Ironically, my macro marshal is driven by the anger in my heart, and the candle sky it creates is a blade that melts everything with ultra-high heat. Now, it is destroying the flame soul itself. The high temperature released by the liberation of the first dimensional has already caused the death of the reverse metal in the surface armor accustomed to extreme cold. If the second and third dimensions are liberated, the flame soul god may be killed by its own high heat. What's terrifying is, this kind of damage is irreversible. Annie, Wu Nang, and X were speechless, silently listening to the cheers of the crowd. Not long after, Annie, Wu Nang, and X's phones rang at the same time, and they all answered and hung up at the same time. Is your order the same as mine? X smiled. Ning Jia, let's go. The head wants to see us. Annie gently patted Ning Jia's back. I'm hungry, remember to have something to eat prepared. Ning Jia stretched lazily and walked towards the nearby car. I'll take care of the flame soul, I'll take good care of it. Wu Nang patted the mecha and gave Ning Jia a thumbs up. Where are they going? Not far away, Miller watched as Ning Jia got into the car. 
Who knows, maybe to receive medals. After all, the aliens did such a great job. Xiao Lian exclaimed excitedly, Sister, can we also get medals? Xiao Lian's eyes sparkled with hopeful anticipation. It doesn't seem like it. His expression is too serious, Ling Shan muttered to herself. The Mercedes-Benz car drove through the city of Chen Guang, where the streets were filled with the remnants of battle. Large garbage trucks were clearing away the bodies of insects and beasts, while rescue teams were searching for and rescuing survivors amidst the wreckage of their homes and mechs. Ning Jia was right, there was nothing for humans to be happy about. Our homeland had been destroyed to this extent, and any happiness we had left should be used to mourn the dead. The car arrived in front of a small wooden house on the edge of a cliff. The old man in the mountains was still gazing at the city of Chen Guang in the distance. Boss, we've arrived, Annie called out softly. Come in, I've prepared dinner. The old man in the mountains operated his electric wheelchair and went straight into the wooden house. Ning Jia followed closely behind, while X and Annie looked at each other in confusion before entering the house. They were confused because the old man in the mountains had never let anyone into his house before, and when they entered, there were already other guests inside. Sitting at the dining table was Gao Ao, dressed in a black suit, drinking fine red wine. You're here, took you long enough. Gao Ao raised his glass in a gesture of welcome. He still had bandages wrapped around his head, and the scent of mech energy transfer fluid emanated from his body, indicating that he had come here from the battlefield not long ago. No one said anything and they all sat down at the long dining table. Ningjia ate his food like a madman, devouring it as if he hadn't eaten in three days. Just by looking at him, the others lost their appetite. Do you want to eat yourself to death? Annie asked, supporting her face with one hand. No, he's just replenishing his physical strength to the maximum because he doesn't know when he'll have the chance to eat peacefully again in future battles, Gao Ao smiled as he drank his wine. As a warrior, his thinking is correct. I also agree with his viewpoint. The insect star will definitely come again, and they won't give us much time to rest and recover. X also started eating desperately. The victory of a battle cannot change the current crisis facing humanity. Therefore, we must find a breakthrough and make sure that the path of the Earth's stars is solid. The old man in the mountains sighed and lowered his head. There is a way to save us, Ning Jie said with his mouth full of food. Join the Starfall Alliance and become a member of the Alliance Planets. It's not that easy. We've been applying for 200 years, but all we've gotten is a pending result, Annie shrugged helplessly. The past is the past, things are different now. We have our own battle god, the Flame Soul Battle God. Our strength will be recognized by the Starfall Alliance. We may perish in the attacks of the Insect Star, but the Flame Soul Battle God will definitely survive. He will represent the souls of 6 billion people on Earth and launch revenge against the planets that once ignored the destruction of Earth. If we negotiate with this kind of determination, we have a chance of success. X said seriously. Just as I thought. I called you here to entrust this task to you, the old man in the mountains finally smiled and gently pressed the switch on his wheelchair. The previously calm living room suddenly began to sink. Along the long blast tunnel, they saw a huge underground spaceport. Docked at the port was a giant spaceship that had never appeared in human history before. Numerous workers were busy moving cargo onto the spaceship. The streamlined hull was 1,700 meters long, and the 12 parallel high-power thrusters could easily propel the ship to the speed of light. On the ship, there were over 100 ion cannons, 200 missile launch bays, and two mech launch gates, all displaying formidable offensive and defensive capabilities. Mr. Ning Jia, do you recognize this battleship? The old man in the mountains smiled as he looked at Ning Jia. Finally putting down the chopsticks, Ning Jia walked to the edge of the living room and carefully looked at the warship outside the glass cover. Although the appearance is slightly different, it can be considered as a flagship warship of the Aral Star Royal family. If I'm not mistaken, over 90% of the technology of this warship should be provided by Aral Star. You're right, this is indeed the strongest warship, Noah's Ark which Nana deployed thousands of Aral technicians 50 years ago to help us build, the old man nodded. If it had been present during the battle with the bug stars, the space fleet wouldn't have suffered such a devastating defeat. Ning Jia sat back at the dining table, but no longer ate so eagerly. But it's not enough to turn the tide of the war, X pondered, naming it Noah's Ark, I remember that it was mentioned in the Bible as the last hope to save living beings. X is right. Originally, our plan was to let Noah's Ark take the last humans away when Earth was destroyed. But now, the plan has changed. We can't give up our homeland. Noah's Ark will take our messengers to the headquarters of the Stellar Cataclysm. Whether it's a threat or flattery, we must make Earth join the Stellar Cataclysm. The old man spoke with conviction. Let us see it, because we will be on it, right? Annie felt no sense of honor, but rather worry in her eyes. 
Let me explain what's next, Gao Ao put down his wine glass and stood up. Everyone, the assignments have been made. X will be the captain of Noah's Ark, Annie will be the head of the technical group, and Wu Nung, who hasn't arrived yet, will be the head of the mechanical maintenance group. As for Ning Jia, he will be the captain of our Noah's Ark's mech escort team, and I will be the deputy captain. I won't do it, Ning Jia, who was full and satisfied, put his legs up on the table. I don't want to be any kind of leader. I can't be responsible for my comrades. I will try to fight alone. Actually, you don't need to be responsible for anyone. None of the mech pilots joining your escort team will expect your protection. We can all die on the battlefield. At any time. Gao Ao pleaded. Death is not an honor. I'm most afraid of you guys who embrace death. You face the enemy like a tide, bravely ending your own lives, thinking that if you can't complete the mission, at least you can die in peace, without caring about what happens to the living. If you want me to board this Noah's Ark, then let me be just an ordinary mech pilot, otherwise, forget it. Everyone looked at each other, no one spoke just waiting quietly for the living room to land. Dawn City was the fastest to recover from the war. On the third day after the war, no living bugs could be found here. The actor like Earth Federation leader announced on TV the victory of humanity and promised that no bugs would dare to attack Earth again. However, in private, the government confiscated all the space warships and mech factories worldwide and worked day and night to produce new forces. On the fifth day after the war, Dawn City had returned to normal order. Even though everyone's faces still showed sadness for the loss of loved ones, they all lived, worked, studied, and breathed as they did before. The students of Thunderbolt Mech Academy returned to school, but only one-third of the original students came back. Where the rest went, no student mentioned again. However, undoubtedly, Thunderbolt Mech Academy became the liveliest place after the war. Not only did a large number of young people enroll, but people from all walks of life also eagerly awaited Ning Jie's appearance. The government kept Ning Jie's true identity confidential, only publicly announcing that he was a top student of Thunderbolt Mech Academy, a rare mech genius in hundreds of years, and the flame soul fighting god was also the first god class mech produced by Earth itself. However, this is enough for people to worship and admire heroes. Look at these guys, like crazy people, gathering here every day. Driving a luxurious hover car, Miller drove Ling Shan into the gate of the academy. Outside the gate, a crowd of people held flowers and gifts crowded in front of the iron railing. Maybe they just want to see the hero. Ling Shan whispered. Hero? Hey, do they know what our hero looks like now? Miller sneered contemptuously. Arriving at the classroom of class 3 to 2, there was no sign of reduction here, but it was even more crowded than before. It was because Ning Jia was surrounded by beautiful female students from various classes, sitting on a small hill made of gifts, and Ning Jia laughed heartily with arms around them. Ning Jia, let me kiss you. Ning Jia, do you like my figure? I'm 36F. Get lost, I'm the real bamboo shoot type. Ning Jia, I want to marry you. Marry me. Many crazy girls shouted. So annoying, it's like this every day, there's no way to study. Xiao Lian sat on the podium in frustration. Unfair, we are all members of Mr. Rabbit's team, why is he the only one being worshipped? Xiao Lian complained, hugging her sister's arm. Although I am grateful that this guy saved the earth, he is too arrogant. Miller said coldly with a frown. Forget it, he deserves it. Ling Shan helplessly sat next to Miller. The class was too lively, to the point that the bell for class rang, and the girls surrounding Ning Jie didn't even hear it. It wasn't until Annie walked to the front of the podium and slammed the lecture notes on the desk that all the girls stopped playing and left class 3 to 2 through the back door in a dejected manner. Finally, it became quiet, and Ling Shan was able to return to her seat next to Ning Jie. She glanced at Ning Jie, who was wiping the lipstick marks off his face with a piece of cloth. Ning Jie. Is that? Ling Shan suddenly blushed and exclaimed. This? Ning Jia hadn't reacted yet when another girl ran back from the back door and snatched the cloth from Ning Jia's hand. Hey! That's my lace underwear! The girl blushed and ran away. Many boys in the class turned their heads and couldn't help but have nosebleeds, looking at Ning Jia with admiration or envy. All right, children, that's enough. Annie started the switch with a stern face, and the front and back doors of class 3 to 2 automatically closed and locked. The students couldn't help but swallow their saliva, feeling a sense of foreboding. Today is my first day back to teach you after resuming classes. As you all know, after the war, I have a lot of work to do, so I came late. Before we start class, I hope everyone can observe a minute of silence for our deceased classmates. Annie's voice was soft, and with her notes, all the students closed their eyes, and some tears flowed down their faces. But only Ning Jia widened his eyes and watched Annie's performance on the stage. One minute is up, everyone, congratulations, you are still alive and can pray for others.
but it doesn't mean you can always be so lucky. Annie stood with her hands on her hips on the podium, speaking firmly, our comfortable life is gone. The president of the Earth Federation said that the bug stars will never attack again, do you believe it? The students below remained silent. Very good, it seems that you still have some brains, your lives are not completely in the hands of others. Annie opened the lecture notes satisfactorily, since you understand, now I will tell you a secret plan of the government. We have built the most powerful warship on Earth, and we will have new weapons and new power. However, due to the severe loss of mecha pilots on Earth, the warship is severely lacking in mecha pilots. As those who have survived the bug stars attack, you are already worthy warriors. So as long as you sign up, you have the opportunity to become a mecha pilot on this brand new warship and navigate through space. Now, who wants to sign up? As soon as Annie finished speaking, countless arms shot up in the air, everyone refusing to back down like fierce tigers, as if they had forgotten the fear of death. A bunch of idiots, Ningjie muttered, slumping on the table. Aren't you signing up? Ling Shan asked Ningjie, surprised. Sign up my ass, I'm already a mecha pilot on the warship. Annie, that woman, has come up with another trick. Ningjie gritted his teeth in frustration. Now, I will announce the list of members who will become part of the warship escort team, Annie said with a wicked smile. Miller, the assault trooper. Xiao Lian and Xiao Lian, the heavy cover hands. Ling Shan, the light reconnaissance scout. Ningjie, the sniper. That's it for now. Did you hear that? Ningjie, we can fight together again, Ling Shan exclaimed excitedly, pushing Ningjie's shoulder. Yeah, yeah, she deliberately found a group of burdens that I can't ignore. She wants to drag me down alive. Ningjie stood up, shaken by Ling Shan's excitement, his face as if he had stepped on shit. Hey, you guys who are lucky to be chosen, do you know where we're going? It's the K-1 planet. Do you know what K-1 planet is? It's the headquarters of the starry sky Sorrow, a whole light year away from Earth, a distant universe that humans have never been to. What do you think we'll encounter on the way? The insect star's ambush fleet? The bloodthirsty interstellar pirates? The ion storms of black holes? Please, I can think of at least a hundred ways for us to go and never come back. So what? No matter where we go, no matter what for, we are Earth's mecha pilots, and we will definitely complete all difficult tasks. Tell them, what are we? Miller shouted with enthusiasm. Warriors! 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 The classmates shouted as if they had taken stimulants. A bunch of idiots, I don't feel like going to class with you. Remember to tell the girls who come looking for me that I'm on the rooftop. Ningjie yawned and walked to the back door. Annie didn't stop him and opened the door for him. With Ningjie, the pessimist, gone, the following classes were filled with enthusiasm. Everyone actively discussed space combat tactics and various solutions to crises. In their discussions, humans seemed invincible in the universe, and only Ling Shan understood Ningjie's worries and kindness. At noon, carrying the lunch she had prepared early in the morning, Ling Shan nervously arrived at the rooftop again. Pushing open the door, Ningjie was lying on the rooftop floor, basking in the sun. If you want my autograph, wait a moment, I haven't woken up yet, Ningjie lazily said. If it's for inviting you to eat, do I also need to wait? Ling Shan shyly raised the lunchbox. Of course, that takes priority. Sit down, ha! Huh? Ningjie jumped up excitedly, snatching the lunchbox from Ling Shan without hesitation and eating it. I really don't understand, what kind of person are you? Sitting on the bench facing Ningjie, Ling Shan looked at him with confusion. Am I that complicated? Ningjie chewed on a big shrimp. Hmm. Ling Shan nodded seriously. Sometimes, you're just a simple pervert. Sometimes, you're like a cruel butcher. Sometimes, you're a hero who protects others. So I'm that complicated? Then who is your meal for, the pervert, the butcher, or the hero? Ningjie smiled foolishly with rice grains in his mouth. It's for the Ningjie who saved me. Thank you. If it weren't for you, I might be dead by now. Ling Shan's eyes were filled with tears. Please don't cry, I'm most afraid of women's tears. Because when a beauty cries, she's no longer beautiful. Ningjie nervously waved his hand. Hmm, I won't cry. Ling Shan smiled and held back her tears. By the way, when I was in your arms, I heard a song coming from your earring. The singing is beautiful, who is singing? When it comes to singing, Ningjie's face darkened, but after a moment, he smiled foolishly and said, It's nothing, actually just a friend who recorded a song for me. Because I used to get angry a lot, she hoped that the song could suppress my bad temper. And she succeeded, until now, I can't get too angry anymore. Is that friend of yours a girl? Ling Shan's gaze looked elsewhere, her voice becoming soft. Yes, a girl, a girl that I can't forget even now. After finishing eating, Ningjie stretched his arms and lay down on the warm floor. Ling Shan, promise me one thing, okay? What thing? Ling Shan was taken aback. 
Never try to save me or help me again. Ningjia's calm words struck Lingshan's heart like a hammer. Okay. Lingshan could only silently nod. On the tenth day after the Great War, Noah's Ark was born. When this huge new warship leaped out of the underground harbor, all humans were stunned. The Noah's Ark, as white as clouds and made of steel, brought shock and a sense of security to humanity. Men, women, and children flocked to the streets to witness the splendor of Noah's Ark. Unfortunately, Ningjie did not come. He and Wu Nang arrived at a secret military base in the outskirts. The flame soul warrior, who had been separated for ten days, knelt on the runway of the base, its red armor and majestic appearance resembling a warrior about to go to the battlefield. In front of it were various new equipment. Take a look, I have armed the flame soul warrior to the teeth. Wu Nang proudly showed his work to Ningjie. The upgraded version of the 12-barrel Gatling gun, capable of firing 3,200 rounds per minute, equipped with 30,000 high-explosive ammunition, a weapon that can single-handedly destroy a warship. Too heavy, Ningjia sneered. Too heavy? Then how about this? The upgraded version of the assault rifle, with a magazine capacity of 50 rounds, can be equipped with various types of bullets, with a maximum range of 3 kilometers. Too ugly. Ugly? Then how about this? The 100mm grenade launcher, with 32 rounds, can fire at high speed, guaranteeing that after one round, all living creatures within a kilometer will be wiped out. Too indiscriminate. Big brother, what do you like then? I don't understand. Wu Nang grabbed his head in frustration. What is this? Ningjie suddenly stopped in front of a pile of weapons. Do you like this? Wu Nang pointed at a 10 meter long, pure white metal longsword. This is something I made up. I remember it's called the Close Combat Cutter. It was originally designed for mechas to cut through flagship class melee weapons, so the blade is equipped with 3,600 tiny artificial diamond saw teeth. When activated, it can cut through objects like an electric saw. But later in actual combat, it was found that holding such a thing, it's as difficult as reaching the sky to get close to a warship. This is it, I like it, make a few more. Oh, by the way, have you finished making the thrusters I asked you to make? Ning Jie licked his lips excitedly. Of course, but even now I can't believe that thing was made by me. Wu Nang wiped the cold sweat from his forehead. Ten minutes later, the runway of the base was empty, leaving only the towering flame soul warrior and the giant thruster hanging behind it. Ning Jie, can you hear me? On the control tower, Wu Nang spoke into the intercom. Very clear, go ahead. Ning Jie, sitting inside the flame soul warrior, was adjusting the instruments. Are you sure you want to test this thruster? You know, I installed four engines used by space probes on it. Even within the Earth's orbit, it can break the sound barrier in 10 seconds and reach three times the speed of sound in 15 seconds. At this speed, there is no one who can operate a mecha perfectly, I don't want to send you crashing into a big tree. Wu Nang warned. Don't worry, this is already slow enough. Ning Jie smiled and pushed the engine to its limit. In the blink of an eye, the blazing soul on the runway disappeared, only leaving a faint trace of its high-speed flight captured by satellites. Like a bird soaring freely in the sky, Ningjie mercilessly pushed his own limits. Performing difficult maneuvers such as sudden stops, turns, reversals, and spins at three times the speed of sound. An ordinary person would have fainted and vomited long ago, but Ningjie continued to fly for half an hour before landing. Worried, Wu Nang personally greeted him, Oh my god, are you okay? My precious engine. The speed is barely enough, but the maneuverability is not sufficient. I suggest adding two more thrusters to help with the turns. Three days should be enough, right? Ning Jie replied, rubbing his neck. There's not that much time. We're leaving tomorrow. If we're going to do it, we have to complete it on the Noah's Ark. You crazy person, Wu Neng said, caressing the engine with concern. Tomorrow, we're leaving? Ning Jie turned his head and looked towards the distant Noah's Ark. On the eleventh day after the battle with the insect fleet, the city of Qingguan was decorated with lights and filled with the sound of drums and gongs as people celebrated. The government had announced that the Noah's Ark warship would set sail today to sign the agreement to join the Starfall. Only a few people, including Ning Jie, knew that it was still just a pipe dream. Dressed in a blue mecha uniform and sitting in a military hover jeep, Ning Jie, yawning, was brought to the spaceport. But there were others who arrived earlier, and Gao Ao, dressed in a black suit, was giving a speech to the members of the Noah's Ark guard. Ning Jie, you're late, Gao Ao turned around and smiled. There's nothing I can do. They knew I was leaving so a group of girls dragged me to the bar to drink until now. I haven't even woken up yet. Ning Jie walked down from the car, grabbing his head. But when he saw the crowd gathered, he immediately woke up. Hey, is this really all the members of the guard? Ning Jie exclaimed angrily, because the only people standing in front of Gao Ao were Lingshan, Miller, Xiaolian, and Xiaolian. 
What are you shouting about? Earth is thriving now, and many areas still haven't been cleared of bugs. We're just going to sign a document, and we have enough people for that, Miller said, patting his chest. Forget it, with or without you, it's all the same. Let's go on board. I'm exhausted, Ning Jie sighed and took the lead towards the Noah's Ark. At this moment, inside the bridge, the crew members were nervously conducting the final checks before departure. X was not sitting in the captain's seat, but instead was lying on the huge screen in the center of the bridge, playing a game of black and white chess. Hey, do we really have to listen to this guy's arrangements? He looks like an 11 or 12 year old kid, Wu Nang whispered to Annie. Don't underestimate him. I've looked up X's information. He's a child created by the old man using the world's best genetic modification. He's considered the evolution of humanity. His IQ is over 320, which is equal to the sum of your and my brains combined, Annie said, crossing her arms and watching X's game. Really? Is he that smart? I wonder if he can guess the winning numbers for the lottery. Wu Neng took out a pen and paper. Go to hell, idiot. Annie punched Wu Nung in the face. It wasn't until the afternoon that the staff at the spaceport hurriedly evacuated the many people waiting outside. After the countdown of 54,321 ended with a steady rhythm, the Noah's Ark took off, its massive thrusters freeing it from the Earth's gravity and disappearing from view. Miller and the others, who were experiencing space for the first time, excitedly looked out the window at the vast universe, while Ningjia quietly slept on the bed. For him, the most important thing now was to rest as much as possible because he didn't know how long the upcoming battle would last. Thruster output normal, no adverse reactions in any compartments, the driver reported formulaically from the bridge. Very well, now begin cruising at 30 times the speed of light, target, planet K1, initiate. X calmly placed a black piece in the center of the chessboard. Cruising at 30 times the speed of light, initiated, the driver pushed the thrusters to the extreme. In an instant, the Noah's Ark in space twisted and disappeared in front of them. At this moment, they were unaware that a fierce parliament was taking place on their destination planet, K1. In the massive parliament hall, Euphina, Hammett, and the other three permanent judges sat in a circular formation at the center of the venue, with 216 representatives from the fallen member planets of the starry sky of morning sitting quietly behind them. Hammett, you must explain, Nana's questioning broke the dead silence. What explanation? My dear, I don't understand, Hammett sneered with a forked tongue. Since your worm star joined the starry sky of morning, all the planets that applied to join the starry sky of morning have been swallowed by the worm star. Your greed has caused the extinction of many creatures in the universe, and now you want to lay your hands on Earth. Shouldn't you give us an explanation? Nana's face was serious. The explanation is that we really get hungry easily. We'll die if we don't eat. And your stupid laws only allow me to eat food from backward planets, which is really troublesome. Why don't we just withdraw from the starry sky of morning and eat all of you? Hammett's words frightened the many planets present, and they began to discuss nervously. Do you think Aral will be afraid? I hope you put us at the top of your menu, I guarantee I'll knock your teeth out. Nana rarely showed a fierce expression. Enough, stop arguing. Don't forget your identities, the chief judge, an old man, reprimanded, and everyone closed their mouths, even Hammett didn't dare to act recklessly. Looking closely at this old man, his whole body was covered in cracked bark, and his head was covered with numerous leaves, like a talking tree. And in front of him, the nameplate showed that he was the oldest planet in the universe, the elder of the Prajna star. The two judges of the starry sky of morning, arguing endlessly over a backward little planet, is it necessary to harm everyone's harmony? The elder sighed. Of course it's necessary, because that planet is the homeland of the flame soul warrior god, the home of our Aral star's benefactor, Nana didn't back down. Although Aral star was known for its peace and justice in the starry sky of morning, it still had to fight for its rights. But with just a simple sentence, the representatives began to discuss among themselves. And not only that, let me tell you the latest news. The guy we sealed has awakened, and he's as powerful as before. The fleet I sent to have dinner was destroyed by him, and he killed me twice. Now that I think about it, my teeth still hurt. Hammett clenched his fist. So what? The rules of the starry sky of morning state that the reawakened Ningjie is a free man, he can do whatever he likes. And at this moment, he has become Earth's fighting force. I think everyone needs to take Earth's existence seriously. Continuing to categorize it as an uncivilized backward planet allows the worm star to destroy it without restraint, and we are all accomplices. How many planets want to experience the anger of the flame soul warrior god? I think you all need to seriously consider it. He is on his way here, and soon you will see the awakened flame soul warrior god. After saying the last sentence, Nana stood up and left the venue. The representatives began to discuss among themselves again. 
Has the flame soul warrior god awakened on his own planet? Is everything really fate? The elder sighed. Fate? It only counts if you can make it here. With a forehead covered in snake scales, Hamid grinned evilly. At the same time, in the vast universe far away from K1, hundreds of giant moth warships surrounded a star the size of Earth. From the abdomen of a black giant moth in the center, countless tiny black insects suddenly fell. These black insects, resembling ants, madly dug into the surface of the star, heading towards its core. However, half an hour later, the calm star suddenly exploded, scattering countless fragments in all directions. Ten minutes later, the exploded star turned into a massive black hole, distorting space and devouring all the surrounding debris. Hee hee, Jing, come quickly. I'm ready for you in hell, Hammett shouted hoarsely from the bridge of the black moth. Cruising at thirty times the speed of light is not something worth boasting about in the vast universe, considering the vast distances of tens of light years. More advanced planets have had cruising speeds measured in light years and space jump technology using advanced ion decomposition transmission for thousands of years. However, this is the maximum limit of the engine system upgrade that Earth obtained from Aral Star within the limits of the stellar tragedy. It allows for cruising at 30 times the speed of light and can reach K1 in 12. 167 days. Originally, with humanity's own technological level, the highest they could achieve was cruising at speeds close to the speed of light, which would take a whole year to reach the stellar tragedy. And during this time, the bug star would have devoured the Earth, leaving only the crust. The Noah's Ark has a total of 1080 crew members, including Jing. Regardless of their positions, they all hope to safely pass these 12. 167 days, successfully complete the signed agreement, and protect their homeland. Unfortunately, sometimes things never develop in the direction you expect. On the third day after the Noah's Ark set sail, a loud alarm suddenly sounded in the quiet bridge. The radar monitor turned nervously, with a cold sweat on his face, and said, Captain, there's something black ahead. A black hole. Driver, issue a level 2 alert. Everyone, emergency lockdown. Exit cruise mode in 2 minutes. X dropped the chess piece and quickly rushed to the captain's seat, securing himself in place. Radar, how much time do we have? 3 and a half minutes. The radar monitor was almost in tears. We followed the latest interstellar map provided by a Rall star to plot our cruise route. There were no black holes on this route before. I know, it's not your fault. Someone just doesn't welcome us. X tightly gripped the handrail. The level 2 alert on the warship was almost at the level of abandoning ship and fleeing. After a few seconds of confusion, the entire crew quickly secured themselves to the nearest ship structure. Even with internal buffering systems, the damage to the human body from emergency exit from lightspeed cruising is much more terrifying than a car suddenly stopping on a highway. But in the instant the alarm sounded, Jing, who had been sleeping in the hangar, leaped up from the missile container and charged directly towards the flame soul battle god mech kneeling beside him. X, how much longer until we exit cruise mode? Jing connected to the bridge's communication from within the flame soul battle god. Countdown, 30 seconds. A new black hole has appeared in front of us. It must be the bug star's welcome party. X looked at the location of the incoming signal. You're in the launch bay? That's too reckless. If we launch you in this state, there are only two outcomes, either you'll be instantly torn to pieces by the high-speed inertia, or in just a fraction of a second of deviation, we'll be separated by half the solar system's distance. I know, that's why you have to launch me with perfect timing, down to the second. The snake has already calculated that the location of the Noah's Ark after exiting the cruise is within the gravitational field of the black hole. The reverse power of the warship is not enough to escape the black hole, so the main thruster needs to be activated. The ship's body needs to rotate 180 degrees and must be completed within 15 seconds to escape. Otherwise, we will all die in the black hole. Jingjies skillfully operates various switches. The turning force of the Noah's Ark is not that good, especially under this gravitational force. It takes at least 18 seconds to complete. X accurately narrates the data like a computer. I'll help you with the remaining 3 seconds. Jingjie has already stepped onto the catapult. It seems that you understand this warship just like me. It's rare to see a mech pilot who does their homework seriously. X smiles on his young face. 30 seconds have passed, and the 1,700 meter long warship instantly exits the cruise at 30 times the speed of light. The view outside the window, which was like a line segment, has turned into a stable world of intertwined stars and darkness. Although every crew member has maximally secured themselves to the ship's body, this sudden stop still makes them feel like their souls are about to be thrown out of their bodies. Some crew members have broken ribs, and some even vomit a large amount of blood. However, they should be grateful for the excellent buffering system of the Noah's Ark, otherwise, in that moment of stopping, 
they would have turned into minced meat and wouldn't have had time to enjoy this kind of pain. But at the moment of exiting, the forward launch gate of the warship opens, and a 200-meter-long runway illuminated by lights appears. Under the effect of the ion catapult, the flame soul god is instantly ejected. Strangely, the flame soul god didn't use the posture specified in the manual. Instead, it squatted halfway on the catapult. When the crimson body was ejected, one of its palms even rubbed against the ground, creating a circle of sparks. Is that Jingjie? Lingshan, who is fixed on the restaurant floor, shouts through the floor-to-ceiling window. No, it's the black hole. Miller, who was beside her, is stunned. Accelerate! Accelerate! Accelerate and turn around! Full power to the starboard bow thruster, full power to the port stern thruster. X shouts from the bridge. The flame soul god, accompanied by flames, grabs the handrail next to the right runway the moment the catapult is released. Under the effect of inertia, the entire body swings into the air, performs a big spin, and slams into the starboard bow with a loud bang, leaving two foot-shaped dents on the armor formed by the warship. It's starting. Jing Jie pushes the lever of the thruster to the limit. Behind him, the improved thruster by Wu Nang emits a dazzling white flame, and with the propulsion force of the warship itself, the massive ship begins to rotate. The black hole, the most terrifying invisible killer in space travel, with its terrifying gravity that can even swallow light, leaves only the fate of destruction for proud gods and massive fleets. The ultra-high frequency change in the navigation state causes the Noah's Ark to emit a squeaking sound, as if it is about to be torn apart. Everyone holds their breath. Around the black hole, numerous shattered stellar meteorites are being sucked into the dark abyss. You overestimate human thrusters and underestimate the gravity of the black hole. We can't shorten the three-second limit. The snake shouts in the corner of the flame soul god screen. Our position is not the best for propulsion. Jingjie suddenly releases the handrail next to the runway and slides down another 15 meters, supporting the thruster behind the armored body with both hands and increasing the energy output again. The rotation speed of the Noah's Ark accelerates, but under that terrifying gravity, the entire body of the Noah's Ark starts to tremble violently. The ship's automatic isolation walls are lowered, and all the glass windows are closed. No one knows how close they are to death. This may be the longest 15 seconds in the world. In the moment when the booster behind the flame soul god exploded, he used his last bit of strength to push the warship. The ship finally formed a vertical angle with the huge black hole behind it. The main engine started, causing the massive hull to break free from gravity and propel in the opposite direction. However, in this propulsion, Ning Jie's mecha detached from the ship. For him, who was at the forefront of the black hole, this was the distance between life and death. Idiot, you're practically seeking death, Snake thought he had figured out his pilot in the past years, but only after their reunion after a thousand years did he realize that he was still a madman that he couldn't understand. Is it so terrible to disappear into a black hole with me? Ning Jie sighed as he leaned against his seat. No one will mourn for you because you're a stupid fool, Snake sneered, sticking out his tongue. But just then, a black hand suddenly grabbed his arm, and at the same time, a communication window opened. Hey, at least tie yourself with a safety rope before coming out. Do you really want to die? Hi Ao, dressed in a black suit, frowned, while his overlord Mecha hooked its foot onto the handrail beside the runway and grabbed him with one hand. If I had the time, I would definitely have a meal first before coming. The overlord pulled Ning Jie's Mecha back onto the runway and walked into the hangar. It was only then that he noticed Annie and Wu Nang were already there. Are you all gathered here so neatly just to invite me for a meal? Ning Jie laughed as he jumped down from the flame soul. Are you really a crazy person who doesn't value their life? Don't you know how important you are to us? Annie coldly approached, grabbing Ning Jie by the collar. How many times do I have to tell you for you to understand? Every one of us here can die, but only you must stay alive. Our top priority during the 12-day journey is not just to arrive at K1 alive, but to ensure that you make it there alive. At that place, the power of a Rall Star and your own combat strength will guarantee your survival. As long as you're alive, Earth will have the greatest leverage to enter the tragedy of the stars. I said a long time ago that I'm not used to watching others fight from behind, especially watching others die. Ning Jie did not appreciate it. Wu Nang, starting today, the flame soul fighting god will withdraw from level 1 combat readiness, lock it in the hangar, and the cabin door cannot be opened without my command. Annie let go of Ning Jie's collar and turned to walk towards the corridor. Our fighting god is not allowed to be on the priority deployment list. Annie is really angry, don't provoke her anymore. We need to attend the combat meeting called X now, let's go to the conference room, Wu Nang whispered to Ning Jie. However, 10 minutes later, the Noah's Ark had successfully escaped more than 60% of the black hole's gravitational pull, 
and it was estimated that it would be able to break free in another 15 minutes and enter the realm of free navigation. At the same time, in the bright conference room, X sat at the head, with Wu Nang, Annie, Gaio, and Ning Jie sitting or standing beside him. After reading the current situation briefing displayed on the electronic screen on the table, everyone's brows, except for Ning Jie, were furrowed almost to the point of breaking. The bug star has created black hole blockades along the route to K1 planet, but there is still one route that allows for cruising at 30 times the speed of light. Currently, there are two hypotheses. 1. The bug star hasn't had time to seal off this route, so we have a slim chance. 2. This is deliberately left as a shortcut to hell for us, and we will encounter a huge bug star fleet at the end. I won't be foolish enough to believe the first hypothesis, Wu Nang sighed. Is there a way to bypass these black hole routes and start cruising from a new intersection point? Gao Ao pondered. Theoretically, this is the most correct choice, but it will increase our travel time in space, estimated to extend to a three-month journey cycle. We have enough reserves, but the longer the time, the more dangerous the situation for Earth and us. You must understand that at this moment in space, we cannot expect assistance from Earth, and a Rall star cannot provide help either, Annie worriedly said. Actually, there is another way to go, without the bug star, without the black holes, but I don't know if you dare to take it, Ning Jie said, clasping his hands behind his head. Before departure, a Rall star provided me with an interstellar navigation map, which I have studied for a long time. I have memorized the names of over 1,000 stars along the way, but I really don't know if there is another route, X enlarged the three-dimensional interstellar map on the desktop. Our current location, about one light hour to the east, will encounter a layer of fragmented meteorites. Once we pass through it, we will soon enter the interstellar ion galaxy belt, which leads directly to the star system where K1 planet is located. Ning Jie operated the interstellar map, marking the direction he mentioned, but the image only showed the meteorite layer, and the part beyond that was a blank area. Tell me, have you been to that place? X guessed something, as far as I know, all your interstellar travel experience comes from the counterattack war with the Aral Star Royal family 1000 years ago. If you have been to such a place, the interstellar map provided by Aral Star should not have omitted the blank area, right? Unless that place is not allowed to appear on the interstellar map. Captain, you are very smart, you guessed it right, Ning Jie smiled, that's right, the space behind the meteorite layer in the Ion Galaxy Belt is called the Lost Paradise. Don't interpret it literally, because it is a gathering place for interstellar pirates who roam the universe, interstellar fugitives from various countries. In the universe, over 50% of illegal transactions take place there, and there are also many extreme criminals like me who should be sentenced to cryogenic imprisonment living there year-round. In a sense, the Lost Paradise may be more dangerous than the Hongmen Banquet set up by the Bug Star. The conference room fell into silence under Ning Jie's introduction. The Lost Paradise is located behind a layer of meteorites, surrounded by the Ion Galaxy Belt, forming the most natural barrier and serving as a paradise for interstellar fugitives and pirates. The history of existence has lasted for thousands of years, always belonging to a lawless and chaotic world. Over 50% of illegal transactions in the entire universe are completed here making it the largest black market trading post in the universe. Here, you can even buy combat mechs made of reverse metal, provided you have enough money. Due to the difficulty of subduing such a region, large fleets cannot even venture into it. In addition, the number and strength of the enemies are unknown, making the task of subduing them too great. That's why the Stellar Tragedy has tacitly accepted their existence. However, the Stellar Tragedy clearly stipulates that no member state is allowed to enter the star domain or engage in any trade or contact with these fugitives, in order to maintain the reputation of the Stellar Tragedy. Therefore, the Aral royal family from a thousand years ago did indeed come to this star domain to escape the siege of the rebels at that time, but this is a part that absolutely cannot be known to the outside world. According to our administrative model, we will have a democratic vote on the direction of advance. Should we forcefully break through the Worm Star's remaining passage? Or should we traverse the complex and dangerous asteroid layer and deal with the lawless interstellar criminals? The voting begins now. X raised his little hand and said, Those in favor of breaking through the Worm Star's remaining passage, please raise your hand. Annie immediately raised her hand without hesitation, I am in favor of breaking through forcefully. After all, the most foreseeable thing on this route is the Worm Star fleet. The Noah's Ark has combat capabilities far superior to the Earth fleet, with 30 times the speed of light cruising ability. Even in the face of the Worm Sea, as long as we find a breakthrough point, we can escape smoothly. As for that lost paradise that isn't even on the interstellar map provided by the Aral, let alone the fact that penetrating the asteroid layer itself is an extremely dangerous act, we would also have to deal with the most notorious criminals in the galaxy, with the possibility of being plundered at any time. 
Of course, the most dangerous thing is that in order to reach the K-1 planet, we must pass through the free ion star river? Although I specialized in humanoid mechanical weapons when I was studying, it doesn't mean I'm an idiot without basic physics knowledge. The free ion star river is a natural electromagnetic cloud formed by a large number of cosmic charged particles gathering together, which naturally shields all signal sources, including external communication. It does not harm the human body alone, but it has 100% destructive power against electronic items. Whether it's a huge warship like ours or a mighty combat mech, as long as it touches even a tiny bit, these electromagnetic clouds will rapidly infiltrate like piranhas, destroying all electronic devices including the engine system, and this kind of destruction cannot be repaired without entering a spaceport. In a situation where we cannot contact the outside world, we will continue to float in space. When you think we will die from hunger and depletion of supplies, you are wrong. Because after the electromagnetic storm, our oxygen supply system has long been destroyed, so we will actually die from suffocation, a kind of death where it is said that people claw at their own faces before dying. That's so scary? Wu Neng fearfully raised his hand. Friend, death by suffocation is indeed terrifying, but the reason the lost paradise is called a paradise is because it has the largest entertainment city in the entire universe, with countless alien beauties. Most importantly, in order to optimize their bloodlines, they are all willing to mate with strong aliens like you. Perhaps we will all die in the end, but you are likely to die comfortably. Ning Jia patted Wu Nang's shoulder and smiled lasciviously. I strongly support going to the lost paradise. Although there are risks, it is the most sensible choice at the moment, Wu Nang said seriously. You perverted wolf, do you even know what integrity is? Annie trembled with anger. Integrity? I only know what chastity is, Wu Nang drooled. The voting result is three votes to two votes. We will go to the lost paradise, X said with a smile, putting down his hand, not feeling discouraged by the rejection of his decision. Leaving the meeting room, Wu Ning suddenly stopped his good friend Go Ao and asked curiously, Hey, why do you also agree to go to the lost paradise? It's not like you to be interested in anything other than Mecca and beautiful women, right? Do you want to know the reason? It's simple, because the path that Guy chose will definitely keep him alive. Gao Ao looked at the figure of Ning Jia head and said, To be honest, I can't imagine how he would die. Even if I didn't reach out to pull in just now, his eyes seemed to tell me that even if he fell into a black hole, he would have the ability to climb out alive. You look at men's eyes so carefully. Wu Nang frowned and stepped back, saying, You dead buddy, stay away from me. This is not a bromance, it's a mecha pilot's intuition. Gao Ao laughed. When only X and Annie were left in the meeting room, Annie couldn't help but look at her little captain. Why vote? You're the captain, you have the right to decide where we go. Why do you care about those guys' opinions? Actually, I'm considering your wishes. Personally, I also prefer to go to the lost paradise. After all, if Ning Jie can point out this unknown route, it means he has been there before and survived. From a probability standpoint, I hope for a successful journey. Storming the bug Starfleet? Leave it to the next braver captain. X smiled. The route was revised, abandoning all the interstellar navigation charts provided by the Aral Star. The massive Noah's Ark battleship headed east at a constant speed. In this vast universe, it set off for the lost paradise. When Ning Jia returned to his own rest cabin, he found that Ling Shan had been waiting at the cabin door. In the long, white corridor, it was hard not to notice this girl in a pilot's uniform. Do you have something to tell me? Ning Jia stood in front of Ling Shan. Actually, there's nothing. Ling Shan nervously looked to the side, her shoulders trembling slightly, her eyes still filled with tears. You cried, why? Ning Jia asked curiously. Because. I thought you were dead. When I saw you, you had already been launched out of the ship. As soon as the alarm was lifted, I ran to the hangar, but I didn't see the flame soul god. I thought you. At this point, Ling Shan wiped away the tears from the corners of her eyes and revealed a bright smile. It's good that you're okay. I know you're strong and not so easily killed. Ling Shan, it's okay to cry now, but when you get into the mecha, when you enter the battlefield, don't cry. Ning Jia gently raised his finger and slowly wiped away the tears from Ling Shan's eyes. Mecha pilots shouldn't cry because tears will blur your vision, making it difficult to accurately lock onto targets. Your movements will become sluggish, and then you will realize that tears cannot bring the dead back to life, they will only turn the living into the dead. After finishing his words, Ning Jia opened the door behind Ling Shan and entered his own room, leaving Ling Shan standing dumbfounded at her own doorstep. Unnoticed by anyone, at the end of this corridor, Miller stood with his arms crossed, staying in the corner. Meanwhile, in the only black hole-free section of the route, the welcome banquet constructed by hand had far exceeded the imagination of any living being. 
20,000 Bug Star Moth battleships were dispatched, and ground reinforcement troops and rear supply lines were established on the uninhabited stars nearby. The bugs filled the space of the entire route like stars, and the gaps between the battleships were filled with green bone-winged dragonflies. Not to mention the gaps for breaking through, even a fly would find it difficult to fly through such a dense interception net. Ning Jia had already killed Ham twice, and he didn't want to experience that unpleasant feeling for the third time. So in addition to the astonishing number of interception fleets, he also brought a special fighting god. Risa, do you like the dual stage I arranged for you and Ning Jie? Over 20,000 warships, a total of 100 million various types of bug spectators. Although they don't know how to cheer, they will definitely ensure that your opponent does not suddenly escape from your stage. Standing at the transparent observation window, Hamid enthusiastically introduced his masterpiece to the man beside him. The man standing beside him was the same height as Hammett, with a naked, dark upper body full of bulging veins, and most notably, he actually had four strong arms, but unfortunately they were all handcuffed together at the moment. Actually, you didn't need to lock me up at all. My planet became your bug's colony 50 years ago. My family, my friends, they are all in your hands. Besides being your dog, I can't find any other way to survive. Risa smiled faintly. The mighty four-armed fighting god of Raymond Star, speaking such heartfelt words, really moves me. Unfortunately, the memories of the time you killed me are still here. Hammett tapped his own head. Raymond Star is universally recognized as the best producer of mecha pilots in the universe. You are all hot stars in the mercenary market. With your natural forearms, operating mechas is like the arrival of a fighting god. Especially you, Risa, hailed as the forearmed fighting god, not only resisted the invasion forces of my bug star for 15 years, but also led guerrilla forces to entangle with us for 35 years after we occupied your planet, and even killed me once. It took the power to destroy a planet and capture you with more than three fighting god mechas. How could I just let you be my dog? I want to make a deal with you. A deal? Risa raised an eyebrow, looking at the bug beside him in surprise. Yes, a deal. As you know, the flame soul fighting god awakened a thousand years ago and is now accompanying his so-called family to the K-1 planet, trying to join the Starfall. With the relationship between Earth and Aral Star, that damn woman from Aral has used all her connections to try to get Earth to join. We won't sit idly by and let Earth join, because in the past 1,500 years, no planet has ever escaped the hunting and capture of my bug star to join the Starfall. If they succeed, it will release the message that the bug star is weakening, and no one understands the meaning of survival of the fittest better than us. So, I want to make a deal with you. As long as you can kill Ning Jie for me, destroy their warships, I can give you back the freedom of Raymond Star and never set foot on your land again. Are you telling the truth? Risa's lifeless eyes instantly filled with spirit. Deception is human nature, but bugs never lie. Hammett grinned. The stars, once the dream of so many Earth humans, in the era when astronauts were hailed as heroes, every rocket launch would receive countless cheers. In the stories we hear, the universe means getting close to the bright stars, searching for the footsteps of the coward and the weaver girl in the vast galaxy, toasting with Chang'e on the moon, and if you're lucky, you might even encounter the adventures of immortality. But in reality, when you are truly in the boundless starry sky, you can't feel such a magnificent world at all. The pitch-black universe constantly fills you with loneliness and fear, until it drives you to mental breakdown or even madness. Only by enduring these thoughts can you become a qualified interstellar crew member. And when you reach this level, you will no longer have any naive romantic fantasies. The universe, for you, is just a dangerous forest. Only by being extremely vigilant can you have a chance to return home alive. After experiencing the encounter with the black hole, the crew of the Noah's Ark gradually understood this truth. So when the warship reached the outer layer of the asteroid belt, the pilots slowly stopped the warship's engines. Captain, we have reached the designated area, the navigator reported with a worried expression and switched the surveillance footage to the big screen. But you better take a look. Everyone took a sharp breath when they saw the asteroid belt ahead, because what appeared in front of them was a huge asteroid belt with a width exceeding half of the solar system. The asteroids inside were as small as grains of sand, while the larger ones were like half of a moon. Some were round like spheres, while others had sharp edges like files. They were all floating in a weightless state, and even a slight impact could trigger a butterfly effect that would affect the entire asteroid belt. The width of the asteroid belt exceeded 5 kilometers, and if you were in this space, you would definitely not want to touch even a grain-sized asteroid. Scan the asteroid belt. Are there any gaps big enough for us to pass through? X looked at the screen in front of him and asked as a matter of routine. Impossible. Even the smallest reconnaissance ship can only penetrate up to 300 meters along a gap, and that's only possible with perfect operation. 
Once you touch any asteroid, the entire asteroid belt will experience unpredictable compression, and we will be crushed inside, the computer estimator warned. If we use the full firepower of the ship to forcefully bombard, the gunner suggested. It's useless. The more attacks, the greater the changes. Unless we can penetrate with a single attack, it's impossible to predict the movement direction of the asteroids. Even if we exhaust all our ammunition here, we may not be able to create a passage, X rejected the gunner's suggestion. Use linear directional explosions. With a length of 5 kilometers, we can use only 10 nuclear mines, placed in a straight line at half kilometer intervals. Instantaneous and uniform explosions can create a passage wide enough for the Noah's Ark to pass through. However, this passage can only be maintained for a maximum of 30 seconds. This is the only way I know for a large warship to enter the lost paradise, said Ning Jia, who had appeared next to the open hatch without anyone noticing. Indeed, but the nuclear mines must be placed manually, and the gaps between the asteroids are not enough for mechs to penetrate, X turned to look at Ning Jia. Stop pretending. You know what I'm going to say. No need for mechs, just use spacesuits and simple jetpacks to enter the asteroid belt, Ning Jia calmly said, causing cold sweat to break out on the heads of all the crew members. The concept of a human entering the asteroid belt is completely different from a warship entering it. Faced with the movement of the asteroids, the warship still has outer armor and armed ammunition for self-defense, but a human body facing the asteroids is destined to be crushed to death. The slightest deviation could result in death in this nameless starry region. Obviously, you have already figured it out. How many people do you need? X said calmly. Two. One is me, and the other is to help me carry something. The nuclear mines are too big, I can't carry all ten by myself. You can choose the personnel yourself but it must be voluntary. You can't force anyone. After all, to ordinary people, this is no different from sending them to their deaths. Even if they die, it has to be their own choice, X gave Ning Jia the greatest authority. Don't worry, I will only look for damn people, Ning Jia said and left the bridge. However, just a few minutes later, in the preparation cabin belonging to the mecha division, Ning Jia stood in front of the electronic screen, calibrating the entry route of the meteorite layer. Sitting below were all the mecha pilots, Dou Ao, Ling Shan, Miller, as well as Xiao Lian and Xiao Lian. Basically, it's like this. Enter from point A13, exit from point B64, with a straight line distance of 5 kilometers. However, our travel length should reach about 8 kilometers, with 10 nuclear mines placed along the way. Considering the oxygen supply in the spacesuits, we must complete the above tasks within 2 hours, in order to create a straight passage for the Noah's Ark. If we fail to detonate within the specified time, we definitely won't have enough oxygen to return to the ship. And if we provoke the movement of the meteorites and cause them to collide with each other, my suggestion is to immediately take out our own pistols and give ourselves a shot to the head. The process of being crushed to death is far longer and more painful than that. Ning Jia took a deep breath. A very bold plan. If Annie were here, she would definitely call you crazy. But I admire your courage. After all, not every mecha pilot is willing to abandon their mecha and complete the mission in space with their own bodies. Gao Ao applauded lightly. Thank you for your praise. You overestimate me. Actually, I'm terrified as well. If there was another route that wouldn't collide with the alien fleet, I wouldn't do this. Ning Jia nodded in gratitude towards Gao Ao. Now, I need a volunteer to accompany me into the meteorite layer to complete the mine placement. First of all, I need someone slim enough, proficient in flying techniques, and believes that they can come back alive with me. If you don't consider the slim aspect, I'm willing to participate, Gao Ao raised his hand. Bad aliens, we won't go looking for death. Xiao Lian and Xiao Lian stuck out their tongues and made faces together. I should meet your requirements. Ling Shan slowly raised her hand, although her arm was trembling slightly. She was scared, there was no reason not to be scared, right? After all, the combat plan proposed by Ning Jia had less than a 1% chance of success, and there was no difference between that and suicide. No, you must stay on the ship. I'll go, Miller forcefully pressed down Ling Shan's arm and stood up in front of Ning Jia. You probably need someone to help you carry the nuclear mines. That thing is as heavy as a manhole cover, and women can't carry it. Choose me. Although weight can be considered in zero gravity with the help of thrusters, even if you're alone, you're still brave, Ning Jia smiled naturally. Miller. I'm the pilot of the lightweight reconnaissance mecha. I should be more suitable for flying than you, Ling Shan said in confusion. Even if I have to die, I won't let you die with other men. If I come back alive. If we come back alive to Earth, marry me. Miller placed a platinum ring into Ling Shan's hand. The sudden proposal made Xiao Lian and Xiao Lian hiss in disapproval, while Ling Shan was completely stunned. She didn't know how to react to her lover's proposal. 
When Miller tightly hugged her, her gaze turned to Ningjia not far away. Perhaps she hoped to see a hint of severity in Ningjia's expression, or as the song goes, you turn around, your fists clenched. Unfortunately, Ningjia just stood there quietly, watching everything unfold. X, you must be crazy. You actually approved Ningjia's dangerous operation. You must immediately retract the order and let our combat god stay obediently on the ship. After learning about Ningjia's plan, she angrily ran to the bridge to question him, forgetting about the chain of command and only feeling anger in her head. But when she entered the bridge, she couldn't say a word, because an image magnified on the bridge's full screen has consumed all of her language abilities. This is the holographic image of the intercepted fleet, tens of thousands of warships, even when filmed from several kilometers away, are densely packed like flies filling the screen. There are also countless smaller insect beasts, as well as supply bases on nearby stars, which are no longer worth mentioning. What? Is this? Annie slowly walked to X's side. Just now, the contact officer from Yalai Star transmitted the panoramic view of the insect interception fleet through a secret channel. 20,000 Moth-class warships, an army of over a hundred million insect beasts. With such a scale, it is enough to engulf the Earth's entire military twice over, but they are only trying to intercept us. X stepped down from the command seat, holding a black and white stone in his hand, and placed it on the electronic display screen on the floor, starting his own game with himself. The contact officer from Yalai Star made it very clear to us not to forcefully break through the fleet of the Insect Star, because there is information indicating that the power prepared by the Insect Star is far from being as simple as it appears on the surface. They have already placed numerous insect beasts in the core of nearby stars. As long as they see that we cannot be stopped from advancing, they will immediately trigger a stellar explosion, creating a new black hole from which we cannot escape. And they have also deployed real fighting god mechas to counter our flame soul mechas. At this moment, we have no way to retreat. Did you already know all of this? Annie looked at X, who was playing on the ground like a child. So that's why you agreed to Ningjia's crazy plan and made so many crazy decisions. Come on, although my genes have given me extraordinary intelligence, it doesn't mean I'm a prophetic god. I simply chose to believe in Ningjia's choices. He started interstellar travel earlier than any of us and understands how terrifying this universe is better than any of us. I believe that he, who woke up after a thousand years, wouldn't be so eager to die. So I believe that the guidance he gives us will be a way to survive, at least in his eyes, it is the path with the greatest chance of survival. X placed a white stone on the chessboard with a snap, officially symbolizing the white stone breaking out of the encirclement of the black stones. In the hangar of the Noah's Ark, a group of staff members were equipping Miller and Ningjia. They were used to using various cranes and forklifts to change and maintain mechas, but they weren't used to arming a mecha pilot without a mecha. You're really crazy. Annie just forbade you from using mechas, and you went out alone to fight desperately. Now I finally understand why others wanted to freeze you, because as long as you can move your fingers, you can cause trouble. Wu Neng personally organized Ningjia's equipment. You think too highly of me. Isn't this just so that we can enjoy interstellar strip shows? Ningjia said with a lascivious smile. I'm not the kind of person who lets friends die just to watch a strip show. Wu Neng said seriously. Are we friends? Ningjie also asked seriously. Of course, friends who can talk about dirty things together, friends who can drink together. Wu Nong put the pistol into Ningjie's holster. I didn't prepare bullets for you, so don't expect to shoot yourself in the head for relief if you're about to die. Come back alive. When we get to the lost paradise, I'll treat you to a drink. Ningjie showed a genuine smile for the first time. Ningjie and Miller boarded a small reconnaissance ship together. Ling Shan, who watched them enter the launch cabin, didn't say anything. She held the ring that Miller gave her in her hand, but her gaze was fixed on Ningjie. So, she didn't say goodbye to anyone, just silently watched. Reconnaissance ship 01 is in position, requesting launch, repeat, requesting launch. Miller skillfully activated various instruments. Launch approved. In X's conversation, a small detection boat, as light as a feather, shot out of the pitch black universe and arrived outside the asteroid layer in just five minutes. Let's get to work, said Ningjie as he fastened his oxygen mask. He opened the glass cabin door and grabbed the handle next to the boat, taking out two backpack-like fixed nuclear mines from the trunk. These mines had a blast radius of 600 meters and the high explosive nuclear energy they produced was enough to create a passage with a diameter of 500 meters, similar to a small nuclear bomb. The size of the mines was just like the iron cover of a sewer, worn on the back like a turtle shell. The small jetpack had four nozzles that opened up like spider legs, protruding from the corners of the shell. Hey, fasten this, Ningjia pulled out a safety rope from his waist and handed the other end to Miller. What for? I don't need your help, Miller sneered. It's not for help, it's a necessary safety measure. 
If my equipment fails, at least you can use this to pull me back. Don't think I'm a fearless monster. In this weightless darkness, I'm just as scared as you are. Ningjia directly fastened the lock onto Miller's belt and smiled. Let's go, we're a mech team without mechs. Who cares about you? Miller activated his jetpack and flew towards the gap in the asteroid layer, just a hundred meters away. Before departure, Ningjia had already marked the ten asteroids to install the nuclear mines. They were almost perfectly horizontal, so that they could form a straight passage at the moment of explosion, allowing the warship to pass through. However, in order to accurately reach these ten asteroids, the technique of manipulating the backpack was extremely demanding for Ningjia and the others. Every jet, every angle adjustment had to be precise, otherwise, they would either have to take a longer detour to return to the marked asteroids, or trigger a disturbance in the asteroids, turning them into minced meat. Although Miller activated his jetpack first, it was Ningjia who guided them once they reached the outer layer of the asteroid. He entered the crack first and advanced along the predetermined route with incredible accuracy. However, Miller, who was less than two meters away, saw Ningjia's actions up close for the first time. It had to be admitted that Ningjia was truly outstanding. Even without any auxiliary systems, he could accurately perform precise maneuvers, apply force, and hover. Faced with these asteroids that could take their lives at any moment, Ningjia's delicate maneuvers were like dancing in the gaps. In just 20 minutes, he had already installed three nuclear mines. Miller was grateful for the help of the safety rope, which allowed him to observe Ningjia's actions up close and have enough time to imitate his movements to complete various dangerous maneuvers. You did well. Few mech pilots can handle a jetpack as well as you do, Ningjia praised as he placed the fourth mine. Not as good as you. I'm just imitating your actions. Although I, Miller, am arrogant, I'm not someone who can't accept defeat. You're stronger than me, at least in terms of combat. I can't compare to you now. When I saw you controlling that worn-out mech and fighting against Dural's steel god, I understood that you are a monster born for battle. With such power, on earth, you can have everything you want. However, that doesn't mean I will just hand over the woman I love to you. Miller stood on a nearby asteroid, took out his pistol, and aimed at Ningjia's head. Even at a mere two meters away, he could hit the target even with his eyes closed. Getting shot in space, even if it just grazed the spacesuit, could directly take the life of the strongest god of war. If I were you, I wouldn't shoot here. We are already two kilometers deep into the meteor layer, almost at the center. Even if the bullet passes through my head, it will still have enough force. At a 45 degree angle to the right side of my brain, there is a meteor the size of a human body. Your bullet is enough to push it and cause a chain reaction. In four seconds, you will be hit by a meteor coming from behind during the meteor disturbance. That meteor is very sharp and will pierce your liver. Your position is really not good because you won't die in the first impact. Floating in space, you will continue to endure three to four more impacts until the meteor in front of you at the six o'clock direction hits your head and you stop breathing. Jing calmly recited more precise data than computer simulations while still setting up the detonation device. Why do you know all this? Aren't you afraid? Miller's sweat slid down his forehead under the oxygen mask. The abilities you praised, the ability to deduce meteor impact changes, these abilities that amaze you, are not something I wish to have. Many times, I just wish to be an ordinary human being. Even if I can't operate a mech, I can still have a happy life, right? Jing glanced slightly at Miller and said, Honestly, I am afraid, more afraid of death than anyone else. That's why I keep fighting, keep pulling the trigger to kill others. Killing all the way, even in the end, I am still afraid. But fear no longer affects my actions when I cut someone's throat. Later, I realized that I had become the same as the thing I feared. What kind of monster are you? Miller's hand trembled. A monster who kills constantly because of fear of death. Jing smiled with narrowed eyes and said, If you want to kill me, I suggest waiting until we get out before shooting. That way, at least you can survive. Are you playing with me? I want to kill you, and you want me to survive? Miller roared. Come on, there are no bullets in my pistol. I would choose a more favorable environment to play with you. Although I have killed many people, my hands have never been stained with the blood of earthlings. It's a rare record, and I just want to keep it. Jing stood up after finishing speaking, put away your gun. I'm going to activate the jetpack. You won't be able to keep up with my movements with just one hand. You. Miller trembled, whether from fear or anger, but when Jing grasped the control lever with both hands, he was forced to put away his gun and continue forward along the gap, following Jing's movements. May I ask, why do you have to kill me? Although we had some conflicts in school, it shouldn't escalate to the point of shooting me in the head, right? Jing asked while leading the way. Because of Lingshan. Her attitude towards you has become increasingly strange. I dated her for two years, but the way she looks at you is much gentler than how she looks at me. 
Miller gritted his teeth, itching to bite someone, for a woman, that's a good enough reason. I used to be like you, killing many people for a woman. I thought it would make her happy because only by killing all the way could I fulfill her dream of going home. But when she lay in my arms, covered in blood, her only request to me was not to show my ferocious appearance anymore, not to live a life soaked in blood. Find an ordinary woman, live an ordinary life, and then die ordinarily. That's when I realized that she wasn't happy when I killed for her. She was even sad for me. Jing flew with his back facing Miller, so Miller couldn't see Jing's expression. Is this your way of begging for mercy? Miller sneered. Interpret it however you want. I rarely talk about my past with people. You are the first person I've opened up to since waking up. Jing smiled. You. Suddenly, Miller, who wanted to say something, made a mistake in his operation. The jet nozzle on the right side released for an extra zero. Five seconds, causing his body to collide with a sharp meteorite resembling a dagger. He widened his eyes, and in the moment of impact, his body suddenly slid sideways. A clear scratch was left on his glass visor by the sharp meteorite. Being pulled by the rope, he fell directly into the arms of Ningjie, narrowly escaping disaster. Thank. Thank you. Miller, whose breathing had not yet calmed down, didn't know what to say. You're welcome. This angle is just right. Ningjie smiled and pressed Miller's chin with Miller's own gun. Not many people have experienced the feeling of having a gun pressed against their chin. The cold muzzle, through the thin spacesuit, pressed against the jawbone, making it deeper if you even tried to speak, making you realize that you are close to death. Do you dare to shoot? You will also die in the meteorite anomaly. Miller's back was already sweaty, but he still forced himself to remain calm. That's why the angle is crucial. Shooting from below, the bullet will penetrate through your head and hit the thickest part of the helmet on top. Of course, the impact of the bullet will still go through, but above our heads is a huge meteorite like a building. The buffered bullet will quietly land on top of it without causing a chain reaction. Ningjie is just that terrifying. You can't see his movements of looking around, but he has already memorized everything around him in his mind. Go ahead, I, Miller, am not a coward who fears death. Miller gritted his teeth. I'm not interested in taking your life. I just want to tell you, never point a gun at your teammate, because he might be the one who saves you in the next battle. The universe is too complex, there are far more bad people than good people, it's important to recognize who is the enemy and who is the friend. Ningjie engaged the safety of the pistol, reinserted the firearm into its holster, and slowly backed away. I can't figure you out anymore. When you were killing those bugs, you were like a butcher, so why are you so merciful towards me, who wants to kill you? Miller was puzzled. You don't want to kill me, maybe even you are not sure about this. It's more because your woman might have fallen for me, which caused your anger. Although I don't have much experience in love, I think life is so long, we can't rely on killing our love rivals to obtain everlasting love, right? Where I come from, there is a saying, when your father dies, your mother remarries, everyone looks out for themselves. Let things take their natural course. Ningjie had already flown towards the fifth meteorite. Miller controlled his jetpack and followed Ningjie's movements. He had received elite education since birth, whether it was theoretical knowledge or expensive private tutoring for Mecca, he received the best education. However, no one had ever helped him understand that killing cannot save lost love, like Ningjie did with such intense stimulation of life and death. Making your loved one happy is not achieved through constant killing. Miller couldn't imagine why Ningjie, who was only one year older than him, had more persuasive power in his words than those experienced elders. His words were plain, but each one was imprinted on your heart like the truth. What Miller could be sure of was that Ningjie was a person with many stories and secrets. Such a person would not be easily deceived by girls, but could easily deceive them. The road ahead became increasingly difficult and full of dangers, which could be seen from Ningjie's silence. Because the entire layer of meteorites presented a spherical layout, the outer meteorites were relatively loosely arranged, but as you went further inside, the gaps between the meteorites became smaller. Large meteorites were rare, but smaller ones became extremely dangerous. After leaving the fifth meteorite, Ningjie and Miller's movements slowed down several times. Sometimes they would spend several minutes bypassing a meteorite the size of a fist, and sometimes they had to wait for their bodies to float for several minutes in order to select a flat surface to install the landmines. The oxygen supply index was constantly decreasing, and Miller suggested holding their breath to save oxygen, but Ningjie directly vetoed it. The reason was that lack of oxygen would lead to operational errors, and errors meant they would die more miserably. Because they were in a special state of electronic interference in the meteorite layer, they couldn't contact the outside world at all. Ningjie and X had agreed that when the explosion occurred, the Noah's Ark would quickly penetrate through. However, there was a fatal flaw in this plan. 
Finally, 30 seconds before the oxygen supply was exhausted, Ningjia pulled Miller through a small crack in the meteorite. All 10 nuclear landmines were installed, and they completed an almost impossible task. We did it. Miller was so exhausted that he felt controlling the jetpack was even more tiring than piloting a mech. No, we only successfully helped the Noah's Ark come over. Next, we have to figure out how to survive. Ningjia pulled Miller to his side again and firmly tied him back to back with a safety rope. What are you doing? While resisting, Miller realized that Ningjia had already flipped the control lever of his jetpack in front of him. Sorry, I forgot to tell you one thing when we came out. When it detonates, we have to face the direct impact of the meteorite, and it's in the open space of the universe. I can't complete this operation with just the four jet nozzles, so I need someone to cooperate. That's the real reason I need a partner. Ningjia floated in space, only 100 meters away from the quiet meteorite layer. You mean, we have to face the impact like a meteor shower? Miller finally understood. That's about it. During the explosion, the acceleration of the meteorite will increase to hundreds of kilometers per hour, right? Roughly estimating, there are probably more than 300 meteorites that can directly harm us, and the explosion will likely break the meteorites into smaller pieces, doubling their quantity. Ningjia smiled. Are you crazy? How can anyone survive in this state? How could you come up with such a plan? Let me go. Miller finally understood what true fear was. Don't move, if you want to survive. Ningjia shouted in a low voice, shocking the nervous Miller behind him. His hands hovered around four control levers, with only eight buttons, much simpler than the simplest mech. Through the glass visor, he faced the quiet meteorite in front of him, and his breathing became calm. At the moment the oxygen indicator reached zero, Ningjia pressed the detonator of the nuclear landmine. At the same time, the ten exploding fire clouds formed a straight line, pushing the quiet meteorite layer frantically in all directions. At the same time, the rolling fire clouds brought thousands of fragmented meteorites. These stones, which were quiet just now, instantly turned into a meteor shower like cannonballs, enough to directly turn the most sturdy warship into a cork. Of course, the Noah's Ark was not afraid of these rocks. With over 100 ion cannons and 200 missile launchers, it would not show any mercy towards these rocks that had left the meteorite layer. Miller was fortunate that the impact was facing away from the incoming meteorite group, because the heated meteorites hit by the nuclear landmine came in groups like fireballs, and the heat wave alone roasted you as if you were about to be cooked. But under the care of these fireballs, Ningjia skillfully operated the four control levers, dodging one meteorite after another with the two bodies swaying left and right. The propulsion force of the jet backpack is different from traditional firepower assistance, and the speed of deployment and retraction is somewhat slow. Therefore, Ningjia absolutely cannot react to the situation as it happens. It is necessary to estimate a route at least 100 meters away and start evasive actions when it is 50 meters away. This is never a skill that can be taught by schools or tutors. Only those who have experienced dangerous situations can comprehend this skill. However, as Ningjia himself said, operating in a state of oxygen deprivation for a longer period of time can have an impact on the brain and fingers. After dodging the last small meteorite, this impact finally deviated. In the gradually dissipating fire, a huge meteorite with a diameter of 50 meters accelerated towards them. This stone was the one that Ming Jia had just held against Miller's head with the muzzle of his gun. Now it had become the weapon that would end their lives. It seems that I miscalculated. Ning Jia released the control lever at his waist and faced the incoming meteorite. Oxygen deprivation made him think for a moment, then he smiled and said, I didn't miscalculate. The huge meteorite split neatly in half from the middle and flew past Ning Jia and Miller, heading towards the distant universe. The black tyrant mech appeared once again in front of Ning Jia, and behind this black mech, the massive Noah's Ark pierced through the layer of meteorites and entered the lost paradise. When you left, you only told me to help when you were in trouble, but you didn't specifically say what kind of trouble it was, Kao Ao said through the communication channel. Even I didn't know what kind of trouble I would encounter, but it doesn't matter, you know when to help. Can you take me back quickly? My brain has been deprived of oxygen for more than two minutes and is close to shock, Ning Jia's voice became softer. The oxygen supply system of the spacesuit used a circulation method, and Ning Jia was now breathing air with a purity of up to 80% carbon dioxide. It was no longer something an ordinary person could do to maintain this state and perform various evasive maneuvers. As for Miller behind him, he had already fallen into a coma a minute ago. Finally, they returned to the beloved Noah's Ark. This cold iron coffin had never fascinated Ningjia like this before. With the help of medical personnel, Ningjia was immediately sent to the independent care electronic bed in the medical room. It was like a device from a science fiction movie, with a large glass cover. 
As long as a person lay inside and breathed for a while, it could cure various diseases. This was because the circulating air inside contained tens of thousands of nanobots, which could enter the bloodstream with each breath and reach the damaged areas for fundamental repairs. Unfortunately, extensive bodily injuries such as severed limbs could not be regenerated. Otherwise, it would be a magical healing device. Of course, this was also a product of 100% or all technology. Ning Jie was left with only his underwear, lying comfortably on the bed, and even found an electronic version of Playboy magazine. During the treatment period, external personnel were not allowed to enter, but of course, there were a few privileged people on this warship. Do you insist on going through the rest of the journey in this way? And, wearing a white coat, stood in front of the bed and tapped on the glass cover. Is this not a normal way of saying thank you? Ning Jie smiled. Do you think that saving us all by penetrating the layer of meteorites is enough? Then please handle these troubles that are coming next together. It's not too late for me to thank you then. And took out an electronic screen from behind, showing the radar signal of the Noah's Ark. Not far away, more than 50 spaceships were heading towards them. Do you want to hear their message content? Before Ning Jie could respond, and had already pressed the play button. They are soldiers of the Starry Sky Tragedy, kill, if they are merchant ships, leave the ship but not the people, if they are on the same path, show the flag. Interstellar pirates are a group of people who were born in sync with cosmic civilization. They are unwilling to live a conventional life and use force to plunder others in order to obtain enormous wealth. Unlike traditional pirates, who often take hostages for ransom, interstellar pirates rarely engage in long-term trade with any planets. They only raid merchant ships for a short period of time, selling women as slaves and using men with good taste to make canned meat products, while those who are not desirable are killed and thrown into space. They are formidable fighters, interstellar refugees without nationality, living a life of bloodshed, treating death as a game. One must think twice before engaging in battle with these desperados, as the price you pay will far exceed your imagination. They are the pioneers of interstellar guerrilla warfare, with the ability to assess the situation surpassing even some regular planetary armies. Of course, there are also rules among them, such as the prohibition of plundering by other pirate groups as long as the pirate flag is raised, regardless of the size of the pirate group. This is one of the principles that ensures the long-term survival of interstellar pirates in the face of the relentless pursuit and interception in the starry sky. Truly, it is said that those who share the same roots should not fight each other so fiercely. However, of course, there are exceptions, as even in a harmonious society, stories of big fish eating small fish occasionally occur. Of course, you must be secretive enough not to be known by your peers, even if you are known by your peers. You must also have enough strength to make others pretend not to know. Because once a pirate group that engages in black-on-black -black activities is exposed, there will be no more communication of information or trade of goods with them by their peers. Pirates who violate the rules will ultimately be isolated and die. However, all these so-called rules are meaningless in the face of the pirate fleet that is currently heading towards the Noah's Ark. Obviously, Ning Jie and his companions are not lucky, as they have encountered the Mad Shark Pirate Group, a group that suddenly appeared in space 20 years ago. They are well-equipped and numerous, daring to plunder both merchant ships and official ships in the starry sky. From the ships they plunder, you cannot find any survivors, and after each raid, the words Mad Shark was here written in blood can be found on the bridge of the plundered ship. Their captain is named Mad Shark and comes from the distant Greenwater Star, a planet that is less than zero. 1% land and has a salt content in its water exceeding 10%. This invader, which almost eats anything, is not interested in the Greenwater Star. Legend has it that Mad Shark was the second prince of the Greenwater Star Emperor, but he angered the Emperor by brutally assaulting his own sister, leading to a death sentence. Unexpectedly, Mad Shark successfully escaped from prison almost single-handedly and hijacked a warship to begin his interstellar escape. Almost everyone who has seen him describes him as vile, embodying the epitome of despicable and shameless behavior. Whether it is a starship or a stranded lifeboat, any prey he sets his sights on rarely survives, and black-on-black -black activities are common. It is said that one time, the Mad Shark pirate group unintentionally swallowed the cargo of the South Tyrant pirate group, which was once dominant in the region. Out of anger and humiliation, the South Tyrant invited Mad Shark to a decisive battle in an uninhabited area. However, in the end, the fleet of Mad Shark did not show up, but instead, a joint fleet of the Starfall Alliance suddenly attacked. It is a pity that the South Tyrant pirate group, which had been painstakingly built over decades and possessed a fleet of over 60 intermediate warships, met its end in bitterness. From this, it can be seen that besides being despicable and shameless, Mad Shark also has a relatively sharp mind. He adapts to the situation, manipulates others, and is skilled in using others as tools. 
The explosive entry of Ning Jie into the lost paradise by blasting through the meteor layer was too conspicuous, directly attracting the attention of the mad shark pirate group, who had just returned from a raid. A single ship displayed on the radar is the most desired prey for pirates. Although the warehouse is almost full, who would worry about eating too much? After all, this is the border area of the lost paradise of appetite, and the Noah's Ark has taken a non-conventional route, without any obstructing spectators. It is almost the best place to take action. Faced with so much good news, the mad shark naturally reversed the fleet's course and directly surrounded them. But when they saw the full picture of the Noah's Ark on their screens, they felt a bit uneasy. The Noah's Ark is 1,700 meters long and has reached the level of a large flagship battleship. Although its appearance does not match any known model in the database, it has the charm of the royal warships of the Aral Star. What is strange is that a battleship of this level actually appeared alone on the border of the Lost Paradise, which is quite puzzling. You cannot determine its intentions or identity. If it represents the Aral Star attacking the Lost Paradise as a forward scout, the Mad Shark naturally does not want to be the first shark to eat the crab. Of course, if it flies the pirate flag or a non-official ship signal, the Mad Shark is willing to take a bite. After all, such a beautiful warship would enhance the strength of the pirate fleet if it were their own flagship. All crew members, level 2 combat readiness, return to your positions as quickly as possible, mech pilots equip themselves with space combat gear, be ready to attack at any time. X issued the command to every unit through the broadcast. The crew, who seemed to be accustomed to the tension, completed the orders even faster than during training. Ling Shan and others, wearing pilot suits, sat in the mechs and stood in front of the launch bay, waiting. In front of them was the pitch black tyrant mech. Xiao Lian and Xiao Lian occupied another launch bay. The battle could erupt at any moment, and with a battle ratio of 1 to 50, the opening battle of the Noah's Ark was destined to be extraordinary. Missile launchers are fully loaded and ready to launch. Ion cannons are fully charged, ready to lock onto the enemy flagship and fire at any time. Ship radar is connected to the mech's computer, attack instructions and specific combat tactics have been transmitted, ready to launch at any time. Outer level 3 compartments and level 2 compartments, fire isolation bulkheads have been lowered, crew members have evacuated, can withstand impact. Repair teams are in position, ready for emergency maintenance of the warship. The bridge, with up to 30 people, worked at their respective positions, reporting the movements of each department with incredible precision. The actual battle had already begun here before the firing started. While everyone was busy, Annie, with an expressionless face, came to the bridge and stood next to the command seat. Is there any surprising gift? X specially approved Annie to bring radar data to find Ning Jia. It was not just a simple visit. That guy said that his brain had been deprived of oxygen for a while and he is not fit for battle now. He refuses to get up from the nursing bed, but he sent me a holographic image through a snake, asking me to display it on the electronic flagpole. He only said that this is the flag of a pirate warship he had dealt with over a thousand years ago. He doesn't care about the specifics of negotiating with the other party. Annie handed the memory card to X. Please think carefully. When you fly this flag, we will have no connection with Earth anymore. Interstellar pirates are outcasts, even if we die here, Earth cannot accept our remains. What's the point of having remains when we're dead? X smiled and inserted the memory card. A few seconds later, a hexagonal bull skull pattern appeared on a pristine white armor next to the bow of the Noah's Ark, and a pirate flag with a black background and white skull was raised on the electronic flagpole above the bridge, looking particularly fierce from a distance. Boss, they're showing their flag. A crew member with a rat-like face nervously approached the captain. Are they allies? Great, I thought it was a new warship from Aral. Now we can eat without worrying about fish bones. On the captain's command seat, there sat a muscular man wearing only swim trunks, with a rough, sandpaper-like tan all over his body. What was most terrifying was his shark-like head, supported by a strange apparatus on his shoulders, holding a large glass cylinder filled with green liquid. As he spoke, white bubbles continuously rolled out from under the gills on his neck. Boss, there's a problem with that flag. I think. The crew member with a mouse-like face looked troubled. Can't you hear my orders clearly? Or is your mouse brain not evolved enough to think? The mad shark suddenly grabbed the crew member by the neck, forcing his face against the glass of his own fish tank, revealing hundreds of sharp, triangular teeth. On my ship, only I can think. Anything else that can think will become food and canned goods. Which one do you want to be? Boss. They're flying the flag of the hexagonal demon bull. The eyes of the crew member with the mouse-like face were about to pop out, as he spat out these words from between his two front teeth. The dreamlike notes caused the mad shark to release his grip, and the crew member with the mouse-like face fell to the ground, coughing with renewed vigor. The hexagonal demon bull. 
The most legendary pirate in interstellar space, it is said that during its heyday, they had enough pirate ships to conquer a planet. Each generation of captains was a notorious interstellar criminal, heavily rewarded by the starry sky tragedy. The mad shark muttered to himself, unable to suppress a sinister smile. Unfortunately, these are all stories from decades ago. Communications officer, send a communication request over. Captain, a communication signal is coming from the other side, should we answer? The communications officer of the Noah's Ark turned back. Of course, answer it, but wait a moment. X said, stepping down from the command seat and making a pleased gesture towards Annie beside him. What are you doing? Annie frowned slightly. Of course, I want you to negotiate with the other party. Diplomacy is your strong suit, after all, you were in charge of the first contact between Earth and the Bug Star, even though the result was unpleasant, you handled the process very well. X maintained the gesture of, please. Don't be modest, I'm too small, easily underestimated. If we go to war because of that, we'll be really unlucky. After weighing the pros and cons, smart people wouldn't waste their breath. Annie sighed and sat in the captain's seat. As the screen lit up, her eyes took on a proud and arrogant look. Are you the captain of the hexagonal demon bull pirate group? The mad shark in the glass cylinder asked with a sinister smile. Yes, I am. What do you want to say? Don't block our way. Annie's arrogance stemmed from Ningjie telling her that this pirate flag was a very powerful symbol. Is that so? Congratulations, just now, that sentence has already condemned you to death. The hexagonal demon bull's flag does indeed sound impressive. With a pirate group history spanning 1,300 years, they have become legendary. However, just 60 years ago, the planet they were hiding on was suddenly attacked by the bug star. Not a single survivor, the group was wiped out long ago. The bragging is over, idiot. The mad shark smirked and pulled his thumb across his throat. The asteroid layer behind them exploded, and within just one minute, it was filled again with new asteroids, forming a solid wall, cutting off all escape routes. The Noah's Ark was only 5 kilometers away from 50 pirate warships arranged in a semicircular formation. The launch doors of each warship were open, and faintly visible were the crimson pupils of mechas hidden inside, ready to launch at any moment. Trying to break through without the support of relevant interstellar maps was already extremely dangerous, especially when the opponents were a group of ruthless interstellar pirates who were exceptionally familiar with this star region. The situation was even more perilous. From the size of their warships, although more than half of them are small gunboat warships, the rest are medium-sized or larger battleships, especially the flagship of the Mad Shark Pirate Group, which is 1,200 meters long and resembles a giant shark. The ship's hull is wrapped in a layer of pale fishbone shield, like the remains of a fierce beast sailing through the universe. Annie faced the grinning mad shark without speaking or showing any expression, but in her heart, she cursed Khan's ancestors for 18 generations. Looking back, she blamed herself for being foolish. The information provided by this guy, frozen for 1,000 years, was completely inaccurate. Well, consider it a reward for daring to deceive me. You have 30 minutes. All crew members board the lifeboats and leave. I will spare your lives. The mad shark waved his hand. Is your brain full of shit? Or can't you understand what I'm saying? I said, we are the hexagonal demon bull pirate group. If you want to fight, then fight. Stop talking nonsense. We have survived the pursuit of the bug star. Do you think your small, rotten ship can devour us? If you're not afraid of breaking your teeth, then come. Annie slammed the table in front of her and stood up. Our flag represents our lives. Whether you believe it or not, I dare to raise it now and dare to fly it through the universe. Little girl, you talk big, but unfortunately, your big brother Mad Shark is not easily intimidated. Dominating the universe? It's not about fierceness, it's about strength, understand? The Mad Shark gave a signal to the rat-faced person next to him, and immediately the rat-faced person understood and gave the order. Dozens of mechs flew out of the warships in an instant. From ancient-style mechs to heavily armed mechs armed to the teeth, the pirate mech force was like an exhibition full of interesting things, where you could experience mechanical products from different cultural backgrounds and understand the people and stories of that planet. But at this moment, they were about to perform a naked massacre. At this moment, on a small screen next to the arrogant face of the mad shark, suddenly lit up, showing the calm face of Conch sitting in the mech cockpit. His lips moved as if he was saying something silently. Annie, who didn't understand lip reading, seemed to understand Conch's words. He was saying, Go ahead and be reckless. I will turn all your arrogance into reality. Did you just talk to me about strength? Annie's face suddenly turned into a devilish smile. Launch bay number one has been activated without authorization. But isn't the tyrant inside? The communicator shouted, but it was already too late. The ejected flame soul god, holding a melee cutting machine in one hand, 
didn't even have time to remove the oilcloth that covered it. How swift he was, like a lion pouncing on its prey. Damn, he went out too fast. He didn't even equip the thrusters. Wu roared in the hangar, but unfortunately, not many people could hear him. Oomph, a mech dares to come out. Let me handle it. The ace mech among the mad shark pirates in the front raised the heavy caliber machine gun in his hand and continuously sprayed tons of fire onto the steel plate of the flame soul god, sparking various splashes of fire, instantly tearing the oilcloth to shreds. But it couldn't stop his advance. What the hell? So tough? The ace mech was angry amidst his panic, and arrogant amidst his anger. Suddenly, he dropped the useless heavy firearms in his hand and pulled out the battle axe behind him, rushing towards the oncoming flame soul god. Suddenly, under the oilcloth, a cold light flashed, accompanied by the roar of the chainsaw. The arm of the ace mech holding the battle axe was completely severed. The speed of the attack made the enemy gasp in shock. Before the other companions could approach, the flame soul god grabbed the neck of the ace mech and bounded in front of him like a hostage. Captain Mad Shark, right? Annie spoke suddenly when the other party fell silent, sorry, my subordinate is just so rude. He hates it when people delay our drinking and feasting time. Someone like him, I have a whole ship full of them. I don't think you'd like to see them coming out of the launch pod. Now get out of my way, or else. Before Annie could finish her sentence, a scream of agony came through the communication, and the fiery spirit holding the hostage suddenly thrust its fully powered cutting blade into the abdomen of the shark king ace mech from behind. The blade, adorned with diamonds, passed by the cockpit with incredible precision, only grazing the driver's arm, instantly turning it into a pulp. First the right hand. Nianjia's cold voice echoed in the bridges of the two flagship vessels. Everyone just watched silently as the figure under the oilcloth pulled out the blade, shifted it slightly to the left, and activated the engine again, thrusting the chainsaw blade in, causing another scream of agony. Next is the left hand. Nianjia's calmness was like that of a child counting in kindergarten. But behind this calmness was a ferocity that even made Annie's spine tingle. Hold on, brother, just a greeting, no need to be so ruthless. The shark finally spoke. 1. I'm not your brother. 2. I haven't been ruthless yet. Ninja pushed the hostage in front of him and, as the driver celebrated his narrow escape, swiftly swung his sword, cleanly cutting the mech and its pilot in half, the explosion creating a burst of flames that illuminated the icy face of the fiery spirit under the oilcloth, tearing apart the tattered cloth on the fiery spirit's body, exposing the crimson metal reverse composition body to everyone's eyes. That luster. A mech made of reverse metal? Is it the battle god? The shark's body structure left him without sweat glands, otherwise his back would surely be soaked in sweat by now. The propulsion backpack that was subsequently launched automatically docked and installed itself on the battle god's back, and the fiery spirit battle god, wielding a sword with one hand, stood like a javelin in front of the Noah's Ark. A long time ago, I heard that the last generation captain of the hexagonal demon bull pirate group once saved a craftsman from the Ten God Artisan clan. To repay the captain, the craftsman built a battle god mech for the hexagonal demon bull pirate group. This made the hexagonal demon bull the only pirate group in the universe with an exclusive battle god mech. It seems you are truly survivors. Shark King, I apologize for disturbing you. When we arrive at the Van Tian city in the lost paradise, I will have the honor of meeting you all and invite you to have a drink before bidding farewell. The Shark King bid farewell with clasped hands, and the 50 pirate ships, with their mechs in disarray, turned around and left at a speed much faster than when they came to scavenge. Congratulations, you've won without fighting, and your performance was really good. X applauded lightly. Nian Jie, you bastard. Come back and explain everything you know to me. Annie, however, felt no joy in victory and cursed loudly at Nian Jie on the screen. Back in the hangar, the level 2 combat readiness had been lifted. Looking at Nian Jie, who was only wearing a patient's striped shirt as he walked off the frame, it was hard to imagine that just a few minutes ago, he had brutally killed an enemy mech pilot. After killing someone, Nianjie remained as calm as ever, like a sentry returning from a patrol, but the reception staff, including Lingshan, looked at him with strange eyes. When Nianjie walked past her, she seemed somewhat timid, wanting to say something but not knowing what to say. As soon as Nianjie returned, he was immediately taken to a separate interrogation room and reported to Annie and Captain X all the secrets of the lost paradise that he knew. Just by looking at Annie's wide-eyed expression, Nianjie knew that if he didn't spill something, Annie would strangle him by the neck. And so, the first piece of intelligence about the Lost Paradise gradually came to light. The so-called Lost Paradise refers to a huge meteorite the size of a moon, which has been transformed into a massive underground city called Fantian City. It is divided into three main districts. The first is the Trading District, which hosts the largest black market auction in the universe and the largest slave trade. Anything from interstellar spacecraft to canned socks can be found here, 
and buyers can exchange them for reasonable rewards. The second is the entertainment district, where pirates and interstellar refugees can truly experience the meaning of paradise. There are fountains spraying wine and delicious food made from precious ingredients that you can't even imagine. Of course, the three-breasted prostitutes are more common than those in Hollywood movies. In the casino, you can enjoy the thrill of gambling like a millionaire, as long as you have the courage to become a pauper one day. The third is the living district, where even the most ruthless interstellar pirates, the most notorious criminals, and the gang leaders who dominate the area all hope to have a private space to rest after their exhausting days. Therefore, the living district provides the most luxurious, private, and secure living environment in the universe. The value of every inch of land here cannot be described as anything less than extravagant. Many interstellar refugees consider living here as their lifelong goal. Some corrupt planetary politicians have also purchased their own gardens here and stored their dirty money in private accounts at Fantian Bank, ensuring the security of their accounts even if the planet is destroyed. This is the lost paradise, a star region that the universe has selectively forgotten. After the Noah's Ark was relieved, it continued to move forward steadily. They couldn't use lightspeed cruising here, although they had broken through the meteorite layer, the lost paradise still belonged to the meteorite-type star region, which means that a large number of scattered meteorites still floated around. If you look closely, you will see that these meteorites are equipped with surveillance cameras and navigational lights. Starting from slightly deviating from the border, you will fall into the monitoring range of the lost paradise. This is mainly for defending against external invasions and controlling the affairs that occur within the lost paradise, which plays a very active role in maintaining regional stability. The Noah's Ark is following the meteorite-guided route towards Fantian City. However, after a few hours, a huge elliptical-shaped meteorite appeared in front of everyone. This irregular meteorite, the size of a moon, is covered with various electronic devices and metal plates, like a rock swallowed by technology. Small meteorites around this huge meteorite form a navigational light trail, guiding the passage of ships to the interstellar port. You can't imagine how lively and magnificent a small Fantian city is. In its hundreds of interstellar ports, various types of ships come and go in an endless stream, making it as busy as a toll station on a highway during a festival. Look at the various turrets and mech launch bays on the surface of the meteorite, as well as the hundreds of meteorite fortresses equipped with directional cannons and mech launch bay doors around it. The defense power of Fantian City can even rival several interstellar fleets, making it a group of armed outlaws. The Noah's Ark was designated to enter interstellar port No. 02, which is a dedicated port for large ships. The huge Noah's Ark cannot maintain a low profile. Its massive hull, the design resembling the Aral Royal flagship, and the emblem of the disappeared hexagonal demon bull for 60 years instantly became the focus of discussion in Fantian City. This is not a good thing, after all, in the dark world, the rule is that the more low-key you are, the longer you can survive. Before disembarking, the detailed work has already been clearly assigned. Annie, Miller, and a small team of security personnel will go to the trading area to look for supplies that can be purchased, including ammunition, food, and even researchable mech technology. X, Gyoao, Shaolian, and Shaolian will be responsible for staying on the warship and handling emergencies. As for Ning Jia, he plans to go to the entertainment area alone to gather relevant information and find a navigator who can navigate the free-floating star river belt. This is the key for them to successfully bypass the encirclement of the bug stars and go to the K-1 planet. Even Ning Jia himself does not know how to cross this deadly electromagnetic cloud region. Legend has it that a subversive change occurs in the free-floating star river belt every hundred years, and it is only possible to find navigable channels in that star river belt under the guidance of a professional navigator. With such sufficient reasons, Ning Jia can carry a large amount of money to wander the streets full of sex, drugs, and wine. Obviously, this is a very unwise choice. Therefore, Annie specially assigned Wu Neng and Ling Shan to follow Ning Jia. In name, they assist in intelligence work, but in reality, they restrict their reckless behavior. Originally, Annie planned to go with them, but when she thought about being able to witness the largest black market trading market in the universe and have unrestricted access to alien high-tech technology, she hesitated again. So she assigned a girl to these two big wolves to prevent them from going to unhealthy places, but Annie underestimated the shamelessness of these two people too much. At the entrance of the landing cabin, Annie's procurement team had already counted the personnel and the goods they carried. Miller, who had changed into casual clothes, was checking his firearms on the side, and Ling Shan quietly walked behind him. Are you okay? Can you go on the mission? Ling Shan greeted him as usual. It's okay, I've been lying down for a few hours. I heard that Ning Jia, that pervert, can go out and kill people after lying down for a few minutes. Monsters are just monsters. 
Miller smiled and turned around, looking at Ling Shan's appearance, he was shocked. He saw that Ling Shan's originally ear-length straight hair was tied into a neat little braid, wearing a men's black suit with a white shirt, which wrapped up her originally exquisite figure. At this moment, she looked like a fair and thin beautiful man, with a bit of Jia Baoyu's feminine charm. Why do you dress like this? It was the first time Miller had seen Ling Shan like this. Captain Wu and Ning Jie said they were going to deal with some extraordinary people and go to some dangerous places. It's not appropriate for a girl to dress like a girl, so they let me dress as a man. When Ling Shan spoke, she took out Miller's ring from her pocket, looking a bit embarrassed. Miller, I think. Give me back the ring. I was just joking with you, don't take it seriously. Miller laughed and snatched the ring from Ling Shan's hand, stuffing it into his own pocket. Ling Shan, I remember when I saw you for the first time at the opening ceremony of the Thunderbolt Mech Academy, when I was giving a speech as the representative of the new students, I told myself that you were mine. No one knows that I pursued you for half a year before you reluctantly agreed to date me, and no one would believe that after dating for two and a half years, we only reached the level of a kiss, and it was because I forced it as a gift for my 18th birthday. I always thought I could give you the greatest happiness in the world, and you should feel happy and content as you are. But later, I was educated by a self-righteous guy and realized that I seemed to have been forcing your feelings for me all along. I only knew how to give you what I thought was right, but I never really cared about your feelings. Possessiveness made me ridiculous and hurt you. So, from now on, I want to learn to wait, to wait for your feelings for me to rise to the point where you are willing to watch me kneel in front of you and propose, and only then will I personally put this ring on your ring finger. Ling Shan was at a loss when faced with Miller's sudden confession, even more so than when he had put the ring in her hand last time. After all, Ling Shan had never seen someone as reasonable and understanding as Miller before. You seem to have suddenly matured? Ling Shan awkwardly laughed, and at that moment, the convoy nearby was ready to depart. Is that so? I hope I can become the man who is worth your love before you fall in love with someone else. Wait for me, I will grow. I'll go first. Miller walked forward, gently kissed Ling Shan's forehead, smiled, and ran towards the convoy, Annie's purchasing army set off. The builder of Fan Tian City can be called the most powerful parasite in history. The entire interior of the meteorite that makes up Fan Tian City has been completely hollowed out, like a walnut shell without a core. The meteorite is made of pure mysterious iron, which is recognized as the second strongest metal or apart from reverse metal. It is quite difficult to refine or shape, let alone completely hollow it out from the inside like Fantion City. It can be said to be one of the seven wonders projects in the universe. In the three internal zones of Fantion City, the buildings are completed in a circular pattern, tightly attached to the rock walls. The entire meteorite is equipped with a perfect gravity system, so when you stand on the street and look up at the sky, you don't see fluffy clouds, but rather a microcosmic view of another city like a mirror. In this world, it is impossible to install the floating systems that are commonly seen in Morning Light City, so people here are more accustomed to using traditional wheeled vehicles or even animal-drawn vehicles. Until half an hour after Annie's convoy set off, Wu Neng and Ning Jia, both wearing suits, finally walked out of the dark passage. Both of them had their hair styled with hair wax, and their shiny leather shoes could be used as mirrors. Especially with their old-fashioned frog-shaped glasses, they didn't look like good people at all. Finally, it's our turn to take the stage, Ning Jie smirked. Fine wine, beautiful women, delicious food, we won't miss any of them, oh why? Wu Nong shouted. Wu Nong drove a military jeep with an open top and headed straight to the main branch of Fan Tian Bank according to Ning Jie's arrangement. Because according to the rules here, although bartering is allowed in the trading area, special Fan Tian coins must be used in the entertainment and living areas, which can be exchanged in more than 1,700 banks throughout the city. Ning Jie prepared a whole trunk of gold, weighing up to two tons. That's right, even in the universe, gold is recognized as a rare metal, and the gold reserves on Earth should be considered at a medium level in the universe. With the support of the military, plus the reputation of saving the Earth, the gold, platinum, and rare ores on the Noah's Ark are enough to satisfy a group of corrupt individuals. Ning Jie smiled and accompanied the staff into the bank. In just 20 minutes, he walked out with two transparent crystal VIP cards in his hand. With up to 20 million Fantian coins, it is almost impossible to buy an apartment in the living area, but it is more than enough for two idiots to enjoy themselves for a few days. Along the way, Ling Shan sat obediently in the back seat, looking at the buildings with different styles along the road, as well as various strange aliens. Those creatures that can only be seen in science fiction movies are now suddenly appearing in front of her. Especially when you look at them, they also look at you with the same curious eyes, as if in their eyes, you with two hands and two feet are the monsters. How many different kinds of aliens are there here? Ling Shan sighed to herself. No one has ever counted the number. 
There are far more creatures in the universe than you can imagine. Apart from the different races of the 216 member planets of the Stellar Tragedy, there are also many strange civilizations in the universe. Some have developed the ability to travel through space like us, while others are still in the form of single-celled organisms. Ning Jia suddenly interjected. So many different lives coming together to communicate, it's really spectacular, Ling Shan exclaimed. Do you know how many different life forms, cultures, and languages there are in the entire universe? But we all have one thing in common, do you know what it is? Ning Jie turned around and smiled, that is, we were all born into this dark world without our consent, everything is just for the sake of survival. The entertainment district of Fantian City, a man's paradise and a woman's gentle town. Here, whether you're a gambler or a foodie, a pervert or an addict, you can find your own paradise. As a traditional project, the most basic temptation here is biological mating, and naturally, it is one of the most popular destinations. And as such a place, Chinching located in the Red Skull District is considered the most high-end place for buying sex. It's expensive here, expensive enough to bury the stars. How many heroes and nobles in the universe, when they look back on their youth, the name Chinching will come to mind. A famous poet in the universe once wrote, If you're just here for simple mating, then don't come, if your soul is dirty, then don't meet. If you're an atheist, when the jade-like skin touches your chest, you will marvel at the gift of God. I would exchange 10 years of life for 10 days in Chinching. Ah, indescribable. Is it a nonsensical poem? You can't expect extraterrestrial civilizations to have the same neat penmanship as Earth, can you? Just like an English song that sounds so pleasant, when you translate it into Chinese lyrics, it feels as mundane and boring as an ant's gossip. Anyway, when Ning Jia determined the first information collection point, the name Chinching naturally came to mind, after all, if you only look at pure looks, whether it's a small shop or a big hotel, it's hard to tell the difference, there is no standardized beauty ranking in mainstream aesthetics. But temperament is a standard that anyone with eyes can distinguish, speech, behavior, connotation, education, and culture can distinguish who is a commoner and who is a phoenix. Xinxing only raises phoenixes, that's its loud and clear signature, and the high price can keep those who only know how to eat commoners out, that's why it's so expensive here. Is that place really as good as you say? Wu Nong, who was driving, listened to Ning Jie's introduction with a skeptical look. You should know that he is also an expert in nightclubs, he has been with hundreds of women, not easily fooled, just like you can't believe the cover photo of an AV. I'm not exaggerating, see for yourself when we get there. Ning Jia smiled, and ahead, an alien made entirely of grey rocks waved its giant arms, signaling them to pull over. The three-meter-tall rock man, wearing a doorman's vest with a small hat, looked somewhat funny but also particularly frightening. The vehicle parked neatly in front of the red carpet, Ling Shan, who had never been to a nightclub before, turned her head to look and unconsciously swallowed her saliva, straightened her tie, and told herself that it was just a mission. As for Wu Nang, he was completely stunned. In front of him was a 19-step white rock staircase, on top of which was a magnificent rock palace like a Greek temple, except that it made Wu Nang and Ning Jia, who were of normal height, look like tiny fairies in a fairy tale. You should know that just the stone pillars supporting the entrance of Qingqing are enough to hold 50 Wu Nang's hand in hand and the entire palace covers an area large enough to build a military base with four runways. Such a place is meant to serve tens of thousands of people, but Chinching probably has no more than 1,000 people a day. Let's go, I'll take you to experience what a cosmic paradise is like. Ningjie smiled and already held Lingshan by his side, but when Lingshan started to go up, Ningjie stopped her. We're talking about a paradise, do we still need to climb stairs ourselves? As Ningjie spoke, dozens of red little balls suddenly emerged from the resin-like carpet beneath their feet. These balls grew hands and feet, and they lifted Ningjie and Lingshan up. Lingshan was frightened and trembled for a moment. However, soon these little guys started to push them up along the carpet. Are these robots? Lingshan was amazed by the miracle happening beneath her feet, feeling like a giant piece of food being carried by ants. No, they are also aliens, belonging to a race from the primitive planet. They may be small in size, but they are incredibly strong. The service staff and the entire sunken star are aliens from different planets, without any advanced machinery. Because the sunken star always emphasizes that services provided by machines lack emotions, and this place is a top-class club that sells emotions, naturally it does not allow guests to face cold machines with their money. Ningjie had been here a thousand years ago. It was also at this time that Wu Nang, looking at the huge rock-like doorman, doubtfully threw the car keys to him, saying, Hey, with your size, can you fit into the driver's seat? If you break the car, you'll have to compensate me. The rock-like man bowed to Wu Nang and walked expressionlessly to the side of the jeep. Suddenly, he lifted the entire car, walking towards the garage as if carrying a plate of fruit. Wu Nang was stunned. After all, 
That large jeep weighed at least two tons. The staff here are amazing. If a few of them like this came to the Noah's Ark, we wouldn't even need cranes anymore, and the loading efficiency would increase by 50%. Wu Nang excitedly rushed to Ningjia's side, accidentally kicking layer after layer of little red balls trying to protect his feet. Only when he stopped, the new little red balls lifted him up, sending him upwards at the same frequency as Ningjia. Granite people. If you go to the trading area with Annie, you can easily find them in the slave market. Among slaves, they are a very good breed because they have simple minds, possess strength but never know how to resist. As long as they have an approved owner and are given enough food and water, they will fight or work until death. However, their price is also extremely high. With the 20 million Vantian coins we exchanged, we can only buy two of them. Really? Two tons of gold can only buy two? Wu Neng turned his head back in horror. Just at the entrance of the sunken star, there were already 100 of these doormen standing, equivalent to 100 tons of gold displayed at the entrance. Now Wu Nang understood why Ning Jie dared to say that the sunken star was the best nightclub. Ning Jie, we're here to gather information, not to find prostitutes. Professor Annie instructed us not to mess around. Ling Shan looked at the opening doors and reminded him. I know, I know. Men gather information from places like this. Many multi-millionaires have achieved their enormous wealth in the embrace of prostitutes. Ning Jie's sly expression was not convincing at all. Let's go, let's go. Wu Nang pushed Ning Jie and Ling Shan directly inside from behind. How should I describe the scene inside the sunken star? Perhaps when you see everything, the first word that comes to mind is service. The classical velvet curtains, the classical jade sculptures, the valuable paintings as decorations, and the warm, slightly dim orange chandeliers make you forget that this is a place where money is obtained by selling one's body. After Ning Jie walked in, a doll-like girl in a tight dress walked up. Her 140 centimeters long legs, without an ounce of excess fat, made Wu Neng's mouth water. However, this woman had four seductive pupils, which made Wu Neng's scalp tingle. Damn, how do I approach her? The concept of four breasts and four eyes is completely different. Wu Nang whispered nervously to Ning Jie. What are you afraid of? Drink a few more glasses later, get drunk, and just pretend to see double. Ning Jie chuckled. Sir, welcome to Qingxing. Do you have a reservation or a familiar lady? Although the four-eyed girl's words were translated into earth language by nanobots, the sweetness of her voice remained intact. No reservation. Is the blue crystal suite still available? Ningjia asked. So you're a distinguished guest. The blue crystal suite is still available. I will arrange it for you now. Please follow me. The four-eyed girl smiled and walked forward along the soft sofa. Lingshan curiously asked Ningjia, what is blue crystal? Why did the waitress's expression change when you mentioned it? The suites here are named after cosmic minerals, and the variety of minerals reflects the variety of rooms. Blue crystal is one of the rarest of the ten cosmic minerals. It is different from the roughness of black iron and the power of reverse metal. Blue crystal represents ultimate luxury, so it is also the most expensive private room in the entire Qingqing. The room rate for one night is about 5 million Vantian coins, but that was the price a thousand years ago. I don't know if there has been inflation now. Ningjie's concern was not unfounded. When he sat on the soft sofa in the blue crystal suite, the price tag on the coffee table indicated that it was now 10 million Vantian coins per night, fortunately within his affordable range. Please wait, because you are a distinguished guest chosen for the blue crystal suite, our boss lady will personally serve you. The four-eyed girl respectfully exited the private room, leaving Wu Nang, who was spraying air freshener, Ning Jie, who was resting with his eyes closed, and Ling Shan, who was exploring the surroundings. She was a girl full of curiosity about luxury especially curious about the most luxurious nightclub in the universe. But what ultimately caught her attention was a smooth floor-to-ceiling glass window on the right side of the private room. Ning Jie, do you know what the stage below is? Ling Shan exclaimed. Outside that glass, in the center below, there was a glowing white stage. What was even more magical was that there were countless windows like this one outside the glass, some with curtains drawn, some in frosted mode, and some completely open, allowing others to see the scenes inside the private rooms. I really don't know about this. In my time, this design didn't exist. To make so many guests with their minds occupied forget about the meatballs they were needing and enjoy the performance, to be honest, I'm quite looking forward to it. Ning Jie walked to Ling Shan's side. What is the happiest moment for a gentleman? I remember a movie once said it's when you're waiting for a lady, your heart is full of anticipation, imagining what she looks like, thinking about what position to use, and how long you can last. And everything ends naturally when the door adorned with crystal carvings is pushed open. Twisting her snake-like lower body, the scales wriggling, a tall and beautiful woman entered the room. She was only wearing a bikini top made of scales, her hair was pinned up with a hairpin, 
and she held a black veil folding fan in her delicate jade hand, covering half of her face, leaving only a pair of captivating almond eyes staring at the men. Occasionally, through the black veil, one could see the flickering tongue of the snake woman, carrying a seductive scent. Dear guests, sorry for the wait. Nice to meet you all. I am Jian Yang, the new owner of Qingqing for only 10 years. I hope you will come here often to support us, bring some elegance to Qingqing, and let me enjoy the fortune of having distinguished guests. Tonight's drinks are on the house, consider it a gift from me to the esteemed guests as a token of our meeting. Jian Yang gracefully approached the sofa, folding her fan and revealing a smiling face that made Ling Shan couldn't help but sigh in admiration, so beautiful. It seems that only a true snake woman can possess such breathtaking beauty. Wu Neng couldn't help but lean towards Ning Jian and exclaimed, Today, I finally saw a real snake waist. Earthlings can never have such a beautiful figure in their lifetime. Speaking of which, you praise others' waist, but your eyes are always fixed on their chests, Ning Jia retorted, pulling Jian Yang's hand and pulling her to sit in his embrace. Jian Yang chuckled lightly, naturally wrapping her arms around his neck, while her long snake tail draped over Wu Neng's body, gently swaying. You have quite the strength in your hands, guest. Jian Yang whispered in Ning Jia's ear. Not just in my hands, but also in my waist. Would you like to try? Ning Jia looked at the beauty in his arms with a lustful gaze, seemingly not minding her snake-like lower body. No, 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 Jian Yang is already old and no longer as beautiful. If we talk about age, I'm already 83 this year, far from being a young girl. In terms of seniority, you might even have to call me sister, Jian Yang declined. Ha ha, comparing ages with me? In terms of seniority, you might have to call me great-grandfather, so you're not at a disadvantage, Ning Jia laughed, releasing the beauty in his embrace. Jian Yang turned around, her snake tail straightened, and once again stood before everyone. As the great-grandfather instructed, I will arrange for the top granddaughters of Chen Cheng to serve the great-grandfathers. May I ask the three of you what unique preferences you have? Whether it's furry or non-furry, for breasts or eight, from giant sisters of five meters to thumb-sized girls of five centimeters. Humans, animals, dogs, insects, you can choose freely, Jian Yang introduced with a bow. Suddenly, she turned again and sat on the armrest of Ling Shan's sofa like a gust of wind, whispering in her ear, We not only have girls here, but also plenty of men. Do you prefer delicate and handsome scholars or muscular strong men? By the way, women enjoy an 80% discount here. No, thank you, Ling Shan instinctively moved away, afraid of snakes. Let's go for something without fur, normal looking girls like us. Wu Neng's hair stood on end as he listened. As you wish, ladies, let our esteemed guests choose, see if you have any luck, Jian Yang said, walking to the door like a gust of wind and opening it. One by one, beauties with different styles and swaying waists walked in. Their waists swayed like professional models, giving the esteemed guests ample time to appreciate. The thirty or so beauties lined up in front of the sofa, giving you an idea of the size of the blue crystal private room, which could easily host a basketball game. There were beauties with butterfly wings, green fairy-like figures with lotus leaf skirts, and women with burning cold fire for hair. Each one was different and unique in style, but all were stunningly beautiful, as if participating in an interstellar beauty pageant, and the guests were the judges. However, among these beauties, there was one that caught Wu Nang's eye instantly, drawing him closer. Compared to the exotic beauties around her, she didn't have much appeal, after all, she looked like a large blue pudding lying on the ground, with a transparent body and no hands, feet, or head, lacking any beauty. Boss, what is this thing? Is this considered a beauty? Wu Nan laughed. Lan Yu, the guest is not pleased, show the esteemed guest what you can do, Jian Yang called out from the side. Suddenly, I saw that blob of blue pudding shake twice, and a beautiful face emerged from the top. The shrinking pudding created a perfect naked body with a 36F figure. This blue transparent beauty whispered two sentences in Wu Neng's ear and pulled him directly into the restroom of the private room. Within ten seconds, there were screams coming from inside, but it was Wu Neng shouting. Damn, it's so cold. How can you play like this? It can even transform. Yes, right there. Aha. Uh -huh. Three minutes later, Wu Neng, still unsatisfied, walked out hand in hand with Blue Moon. Boss, I choose her. Wu Neng tightly hugged Blue Moon's neck, as if he was going to marry her. All right. Blue Moon is yours tonight. And what about you? Have you found someone you like? Jian Yang turned her head and looked at Ning Jia. Choose whatever you want, keep them all, I want them all. Ning Jia took out two crystal cards from his pocket and threw them on the coffee table. Take the cards and spend them as you please. If they're not used up tonight, consider it as extra bonus for everyone. A distinguished guest is a distinguished guest. Your generosity is extraordinary. Girls, what are you waiting for? Go! Jian Yang picked up the cards, tucked them into her bosom, and waved her hand. 
The remaining 29 beauties rushed towards Ningjia and Lingshan like singing birds, and for a while, kisses filled the air. But soon, Ningjia was overwhelmed by the ocean of beauties. Thank God, I'm still alive. A hand reached out from the sea of beauties, and Ningjia shouted from within. On the other side of the Van Tian city, there was another person enjoying pleasure. Lady Annie, this is the titanium hollow bullet. Although it's not particularly effective against metallic enemies, it is a highly toxic bullet against biological enemies. Even if it just grazes the skin, it can ensure the destruction of the central nervous system of the entire body in just 0.5 seconds, causing organ failure and certain death. Many captains are accustomed to buying these titanium hollow bullets to defend against biological fleets like the bug stars. However, due to limited production, the price. The alien, with a body like an octopus, held an electronic pen in one tentacle and a small computer in the other, introducing his products to Annie as they walked. He faced the owner of this luxurious military market in the Van Tian city, the cunning octopus, Paul. Paul's military market was known for its wide range of goods, high quality, and black market prices. Pirates and merchants who knew their stuff would never buy from him, only newcomers to the Van Tian city and fools with their heads in the clouds would visit his self-proclaimed most luxurious military market in the Van Tian city. However, Annie didn't care about the price at all. Wearing a white coat, she wandered through the factory showcasing various high-tech products, her cheeks blushing with the happiness of a first date. Stop talking nonsense, Mr. Paul. How many of these bullets do you have right now? Annie turned her head to the side. About 10 million bullets for mechs and 3,000 titanium hollow missiles. Paul's eyes were almost golden in color. I'll take them all. I won't pay you back, but you have to deliver them. My convoy is already full. As Annie spoke, outside the military market, the six trucks she brought were almost bursting with goods. The security soldiers who were originally responsible for protection had now become movers, panting like dogs. Looking at Annie's achievements in just one hour, from the new type of sealed screws to the entire core engine of an alien mech, the result was the same for anything she set her eyes on, loaded onto the truck. Team leader Annie, we have less than half of the gold we brought with us. You should consider the price. A guard who was following Annie nervously reminded her in her ear. You know, they brought a whole 40 tons of gold, equivalent to 4 billion Vantian coins. But in just one hour, half of it was spent. And is definitely a super shopaholic with her spending speed. Already used half? No problem, there are plenty of these things in the hangar. They're just piles of shiny stones. Our boss at home doesn't need these things at all, but they can be exchanged for the products of true interstellar high-tech wisdom from various civilizations. As long as we bring these things back, the technological level of the entire planet can make a qualitative leap. Also, think about it, if we join the Starfall, we are strictly forbidden to appear in places like this. Now is our rare opportunity, of course, we have to buy a lot. And patted Miller's shoulder and when she turned her head, the huge merchandise displayed in front of her once again caught her eye. It was a backpack supporting a mecha aircraft, with two long and two short narrow wings extending from the four corners. The metal of the entire flight propulsion device was covered in dust, as if it had just been picked up from the battlefield. What's the story behind this thing? And curiously asked. Well, in principle, this is an antique. You also know your stuff, to be honest, this propulsion device is already 1000 years old. It's called Blackwing and it's a masterpiece crafted by a mecha master. It can accelerate from 0 to 6 times the speed of sound in just 2 seconds, with 6 sets of 18 propulsion outlets, and when paired with the wind wings, it has extremely stable flight capabilities even within the planet's gravity field. But you know, in those days, any craftsman with a bit of fame scoffed at auxiliary systems, believing that only manual control could unleash the full power of their weapons. So this backpack propulsion device cannot use auxiliary systems, it requires a mecha expert with a minimum hand speed of 500 to operate. Paul explained with a hint of frustration. No problem, wrap it up for me. Coincidentally, I know a bastard like that. And smiled. In the spacious blue crystal compartment, dazzling lights flickered, the hottest hi-fi music in the universe played in surround sound, and on several huge tables reminiscent of the Last Supper, all kinds of exquisite delicacies were placed. From lobsters the size of pigs to matsutake mushrooms the size of chickens, various aromas intertwined to create the most tempting flavors in the universe. And the wine was like free natural water, hundreds of bottles of various colors of wine were opened and placed on the coffee table. Some were crystal clear like amber gemstones, and some emitted a soft fluorescent color in the dim light. The most impressive was the universe's special brew series, where the three-headed snake in the large wine bottle would twist back and forth, as if it were alive. Sir, come on, you just drank with Xiao Hong, you haven't drunk with me yet? Come, come, let's finish this glass. 
The charming lady leaned against Ningjia's chest and placed the still smoking glass of wine in front of Ningjia's eyes. Surrounded by more than ten beautiful women, he couldn't even take the glass. Who are you? I don't even know anymore? Ningjia's eyes were so drunk that he could barely keep them open. Before he could finish his sentence, he was already forced to drink the wine. I love you, Lan Yu, I really love you. My childhood was unhappy, my mother died early, and I like maternal love, you know? Lan Yu, don't leave me, I want to marry you, I promise to treat you well. Wu Nan lay on Lan Yu's transparent blue gel, licking her thighs like a child. Who could imagine that it tasted sweeter than jelly? Do you know how bad they are? They forced me to wear men's clothing just to come to the nightclub to find a lady. They've lost all sense of conscience, even bringing a girl to a nightclub. They said it was to gather intelligence, but all I saw was them leering at the sister's chests. Poor me, I'm still a virgin, and I've been dragged to a place like this to drink and have fun. What did I do wrong? Is God punishing me like this? Ling Shan's tie was nowhere to be found. She didn't drink much, but once she got drunk, she would cry, tears streaming down her face. Her sisters beside her would help wipe her tears and comfort her, which was quite touching. Shen Xing, this is a place where you can get whatever you want. It satisfies not only your physical needs but also your soul, taking away your troubles from your body and filling you with happiness and satisfaction, things that money cannot provide. Thousands of years ago, Ning Jie already knew about the magic of this place. However, over the past thousand years, some subtle changes have occurred here. It seems that they have found another way to quickly fill the emptiness in your heart. Who is knocking on my window? Who is playing the piano strings? That forgotten time gradually rises in my heart. Suddenly, the music in the entire private room stopped, and the flashing laser lights went out. Many beautiful women detached themselves from the guests and stood aside, while the glass curtain wall on one side of the private room slowly opened. The song floated out of the window, making even the most intoxicated drunkard's heart tremble involuntarily. Who could possess such a beautiful voice? It was as if a real angel was playing the harp and descending slowly to earth. Ning Jia, Wu Nan, and Ling Shan rushed to the window as if their souls were summoned, leaning over to look down. In the originally empty white stage at the bottom, stood a woman wearing a white bikini, holding a microphone in her hands, singing a moving song without accompaniment. Who is knocking on my window? Who is playing the piano strings? The joyful scene in my memory slowly emerges in my mind. The gently falling drizzle keeps hitting my window. Only I, who remain silent, occasionally reminisce about the past. This song is so beautiful, this voice is so beautiful. It feels familiar, yet it seems like I've never heard it before. Ling Shan leaned comfortably against the window sill, listening to the melody. This is an earth song, but it's an old song from over a thousand years ago. It was sung by a Chinese singer at that time. I heard it a long time ago, but it has been a thousand years since I last heard it. Ning Jia looked up and saw that all the guests of Qin Xing were gathered around their window as if enchanted, listening to the singer's voice. Some private rooms didn't even have hostesses inside. It seemed that they came to spend a fortune tonight just to wait for this captivating melody to play. Who is she? Ning Jie waved his hand and called a hostess over to ask. It seems like it's been a while since you last came to Van Tian City, but Alice is now a sensation in the lost paradise. The hostess chuckled. She suddenly appeared in Van Tian City five years ago and started her singing career. Anyone who has heard her sing, whether they are men or women, becomes infatuated as if under a spell. Some musicians say her voice is a gift from God, while others say she is a devil, leading people to hell with her voice. Regardless of which one, she is now the number one singer in our Chen Xing. Every day, she chooses an old song from a planet to perform. Today, it seems like the planet she is singing about is called Earth, an undeveloped planet. I heard that the most famous things on that planet are a massive mining fleet and the greatest fighting god in her all, the flame soul fighting god. It seems like we're really lucky today. Ning Jia leaned back on the windowsill and watched the beautiful performance below. Alice had pure white skin like jade. With her human-like appearance, she was as beautiful as a budding flower. On top of her golden curly hair, two triangular-shaped cat ears with white fluff grew, and a white cat tail followed her melody, gently swaying. Hey, do you know which planet she is from? How can you sing so beautifully? Wu bumped into Ning Jie, and tears fell from his own eyes. Unfortunately, I really can't say. Although I have seen many aliens in the past, I have never seen a planet person with cat ears and a cat tail. Either she is a species from a newly born planet, or she is a descendant of interstellar refugees from a planet that has already perished, sighed Ning Jie. Alice sang five old songs from Earth in a row, from forgotten time to the most romantic thing, from late autumn to a cloud made of rain in the wind, and ended with daytime doesn't understand the darkness of night. The wonderful singing left people wanting more. 
When the French windows closed again, Ningjia sat back on the sofa, and the three of them felt as if their souls had been cleansed. Call Jianyang for me, Ningjie waved his hand and said to a lady. In just a few minutes, Jianyang, with her snake-like body, walked in swaying a black lace fan. What can I do for you, esteemed guest? If I haven't served you well, would you like me to bring a new batch? Jianyang came directly in front of Ningjie, sat on the coffee table, and deliberately placed her snake-like lower body gently rubbing against Ningjie's thigh. That's not necessary. I just heard some good songs earlier and was deeply moved. I would like to invite Miss Alice to have a drink. Is that possible? Ningjie said with a drunken and hazy look. Esteemed guest, isn't that a bit inappropriate? Our Alice has been in Xinxing for five years, but she has never been to a private room or had a drink with anyone. Alice is too stubborn and insists on selling her art, not her body, Jian Yang said with some difficulty. Is that so? It seems that tonight will be a disappointing night for me. It's just a drink, not selling her body. I like Miss Alice's singing voice, but I don't necessarily think she would sound just as wonderful in bed. After understanding my meaning, could you please ask her and let me know if she is willing to have a drink with me? Ningjie confidently raised his cup, his gentle yet assertive demeanor making it difficult for Jian Yang to refuse. It was rare for Jian Yang to show an expression that was difficult to handle. All right, since you have such refined taste, I will go and ask for you. If I can't make it happen for you, I will come back and drink three cups as a way to apologize, Jian Yang said, getting up and leaving. Laughter and joy once again filled the room, and the three, who had just sobered up a bit, were immersed in the wine jar once again. It was unknown how long had passed when Jian Yang pushed open the tightly closed private room door with a casual gesture. Alice, who had been singing hundreds of meters away just now, walked in wearing crystal high heels like Cinderella. The other ladies sensibly lowered the volume of the music in the private room and gradually moved away from Ningjie, making room for Alice. With a shallow smile on her dimples, Alice sat next to Ningjie, looking somewhat unnatural. Just as Jian Yang had said, this was her first time entering a private room and interacting with a customer. In the past, she was like the stars in the sky, untouchable to the customers. Hello, esteemed guest. My name is Alice. I heard that you like my singing. Thank you so much for your support. Here, let me toast to you, Alice said with official words, but her childishness made her completely unaccustomed to this. She clumsily picked up two glasses from the table, handed one to Ningjie, and placed the other in front of herself. Where are you from? Ningjie asked, taking the glass. Meow meow star. That's what my mother told me. I have never seen my home planet because it had already perished thousands of years before I was born. Since then, my people have become interstellar refugees, drifting and dying. By the time I grew up, there were no more people of my kind around me. Perhaps I am the last meow meow star person? Alice's smile was so sweet. Perhaps this is one of the conditions that can help you achieve your own success. When you are the only meow meow star singer in the world, you are destined to attract more attention. Jingjie lightly clinked his glass with Alice's. The praises from esteemed guests are so empowering. Clearly, my lonely life is seen by you as a unique talent. Is it too sad? Alice laughed. Talent is talent, whether it brings sadness or joy. Jingjie poured the contents of his glass down his throat. The accounts have been settled. The total is 4 billion and 30,000 Vantian coins. We can save the 3,000. Let's consider ourselves friends. Paul tapped his calculator with his eight claws and quickly reported the total. Not enough. It's simply not enough. Annie looked at her shopping list. Although she had already bought over 400 items, she still felt an emptiness in her heart. Let my convoy take the things back first, and then have my ordered goods delivered. I will have my convoy bring new gold over. By then, you can accompany me to see if there are any good items related to warships. Annie had already given her instructions, and they only left Miller and ten soldiers behind. The rest of them accompanied the convoy to transport the supplies back to Noah's Ark at Spaceport 02. Sir, why don't you come with me to the office and take a rest? You've been shopping for almost three hours. I'm sure you're a bit hungry. Let me order some authentic dishes for you to fill your stomach before we continue our tour in shopping. Paul warmly suggested. All right, Miller, let's go. Annie, being persuaded, realized that she was indeed a bit hungry. The staff also arranged for the remaining 10 soldiers to have their meals in the cafeteria. Everyone knew that with Annie's crazy buying power, even if it took another three hours, they might not be able to finish their work. So, eating was something that had to be taken seriously. Following Paul's winding path, they bypassed the military market. Paul's office was in a separate building behind. When Paul warmly pushed open the door to his office, the food and drinks were already prepared, filling up a large table. However, it seemed that it wasn't prepared for them. A burly naked man was sitting at the dining table, 
casually picking up a plate of food and opening the lid of the water tank above his head, pouring the entire plate of food into it. The shark head in the water tank took a deep breath, and all the delicacies flowed directly into its mouth. It chewed them into pieces and swallowed them. You're here too late. I was almost dying of waiting, captain of the hexagonal demon bull pirate crew. The mad shark turned around and grinned. Miller instinctively reached for the pistol in his pocket, but before he could take it out, several rat-faced pirates suddenly rushed out from the aisle, pointing their strange guns at his waist. It seems like you're all together? I never thought that octopus and shark were seafood. Annie glared at the octopus Paul beside her, while Paul smirked and stepped aside, making a pleased gesture. Whether it was a feast or a dangerous situation, Annie had no choice but to be pushed into it. She sat down in the seat opposite the mad shark. Captain, you look even more beautiful than what I saw on the communication video. Come, let me toast you. The mad shark was in a good mood and personally poured two glasses of wine, handing one to Annie. Sorry, I don't drink. Annie refused outright. You better drink it, or my hand might get a little sour. The mad shark maintained his posture of offering the wine, and his black pupils sent shivers down people's spines. The atmosphere became tense. Miller wanted to struggle, but he was tightly restrained by the two rat-faced pirates. After a moment of hesitation, Annie picked up the glass and poured the spicy liquid down her throat, causing tears to flow. Impressive drinking capacity. The mad shark poured his own wine into the water tank above his head and drank it all. I like a captain who knows the current situation. Honor and reputation mean nothing. When the enemy is stronger than me, I'll even eat shit if I have to. That's the law of the universe. Those who don't understand are fools, and they have either turned into skeletons or will soon become skeletons. If you want to kill me, you can do it when I step into this military market. Keeping me alive until now, you don't just want to force me to eat shit, do you? Honestly, Annie was very scared, almost scared enough to wet her pants, but her face remained calm because she knew that was the primary condition for her to live longer. Ah, uh, Captain, you're joking. I'm not that cruel. I invited you here just to do business with you. The Mad Shark grinned in the water tank. Business? Do we have anything that Captain Mad Shark finds valuable? Annie asked in confusion. Of course we do. The entire Fantion city can only produce something that makes me drool, and that's you, Captain Annie. The mad shark took out a glass tablet from behind and threw it in front of Annie. The screen displayed none other than the flame soul battle god mech, but it wasn't in the same state as during the battle. In the image, the flame soul battle god held a giant crimson sword, covered in bloodstains that were still evaporating, and the mech was surrounded by numerous alii symbols. I want your flame soul battle god, both the battle god and the mech pilot. Let's talk about the price. The mad shark's words were interrupted as Annie suddenly picked up the tall glass on the table and smashed it, transforming it into a dagger. Unfortunately, she wasn't fast enough. The mad shark suddenly jumped up and pressed her arm and neck firmly against the sofa cushion. Captain, there's no need to be so agitated. We're just talking business. No need to commit suicide, right? The mad shark seemed startled by Annie's actions. Listen, I can negotiate any deal with you, even if you ask me to eat shit. As long as the conditions are right, I can do it. But the flame soul battle god must never fall into anyone else's hands. I can die, but the battle god cannot be lost. Annie spoke her belief, word by word. Do you know the first thing I learned after becoming an interstellar pirate? It's that there's nothing in this universe that can't be bought or sold. Whether it's lives or love, as long as the price is right, a deal can be made. Let me be frank with you, with your abilities, you won't be able to protect the flame soul battle god properly. You won't even survive to reach planet K1. The interception forces deployed by the Bug Star are enough to destroy a small galaxy. They even brought a four-armed battle god who has made a name for himself in the universe. As soon as you leave the Lost Paradise, the bugs will end your lives and take the flame soul battle god. The mad shark's smile disappeared as he tried to reassure Annie. How do you know all this? Annie asked in astonishment. Come on, as long as you have money, you can buy any information here. Even the flame soul battle god, which disappeared for a thousand years, only took me three minutes to find his image data. You're not really the hexagonal demon bull pirate group, you're Earth's visiting warship. The mad shark released Annie's wrist and sat back in his seat. Of course, I can find out your destination, and so can others. Luckily, I saw the image of the flame soul battle god earlier, so I understood all this a bit earlier. Soon, news of you in Fantion City will leak out, and the bug star won't let you go. The only way to save you now is to use the bait tactic. I can send some of my crew members to sacrifice themselves and attract the bug star's attention while you, your crew, and the battle god board my ship. We will escort you to planet K1. The safety factor is much higher than that of your single battleship. 
However, this also means that I will bear the risk of being wiped out. There is no such thing as a free lunch. So, I want your fighting god. Of course, I don't mean to force him, after all, he is the flame soul fighting god. If he is willing to join my pirate group, I would be happy. If not, you can pay me in gold for the escort. What do you think of my proposal? The muscles on the shark's face were not enough to make much expression, but at this moment, Crazy Shark seemed to be the most sincere. Are you serious? Annie asked in confusion. Of course, the credit of pirates can guarantee long-term survival. Now, inform your fighting god to come and discuss the details of our cooperation, including whether he is willing to join us. No coercion. Crazy Shark opened his arms. Although Annie was puzzled, she took out her personal communicator. One cup, two cups, three cups. Alice's transformation from shy and reserved to drinking heartily was so natural. She not only accompanied Ning Jia in tasting the wine, but also brought Ling Shan and Wu Neng to drink together. The maidservants beside them poured various wines one after another, and their wine glasses never seemed to be empty. The way they drank deep water bombs and the way they mixed more than a dozen kinds of wines together was a torture for their stomachs. Ling Shan was knocked out after just two cups of deep water bombs, and he lay on the sofa on one side, hugging a cushion and falling asleep. Wu Nang managed to hold on after four cups of the full course banquet, but when he raised his glass again, he slipped under the table with a burp and passed out while vomiting. Ning Jia was the most powerful. He had already finished off more than ten bottles of strong liquor, and he was still able to drink with Alice as if they were old friends. Hey, aren't you supposed to be a non-drinker? Why do you have such a high alcohol tolerance? Ning Jia put his arm around Alice's shoulder and swayed unsteadily. Not being a drinker doesn't mean I can't drink, right? By the way, dear guest, you also have a good alcohol tolerance. I guess even in this sinking star, you can rank in the top 10. Are you a pirate? Alice asked with a blushing face. A pirate? Have you ever seen such a handsome pirate like me? Ning Jia hiccuped and said, Let me tell you, I am a mech pilot, engaged in the profession of killing. But I did meet some amazing pirates before. When they drank, they used bowls as big as water tanks. Two bowls could knock me out. But even if they were drunk and piloting mechs, they couldn't beat me. Later, they lost to me and made a promise that as long as I needed it, I could use their flag, even if it was a thousand years later, the promise would still be valid. Dear guest, it seems like you've had too much to drink. Here, have another drink. Alice turned around and took a blue drink from Jiang Yang's hand, handing it to Ning Jia. Cheers! Ning Jia drank it all in one go, and without saying a word, he fell on the sofa as if he were dead, unable to get up again. Flame soul fighting god. You've had too much to drink. The smile on Alice's face disappeared in an instant, and she put the unfinished blue drink aside. He truly deserves the title of the former captain of the hexagonal demon bull pirate group, known as the Wine Immortal. The drinking method he arranged for him would have caused a normal person to have a perforated stomach long ago, but he insisted that we use the blue elves, which are used to anesthetize large creatures, to get him drunk. What kind of monster is he? Jian Yang approached, twisting her snake-like body. Alice's face was still slightly flushed, but her mind was clear. She opened her mouth, and a coin-sized beetle crawled out from the back of her tongue. The beetle flew out of her mouth and flapped its wings twice before falling onto the coffee table, dead drunk. Even a thousand cups can't get the bug drunk. If the blue elves can't knock him out, I won't be able to handle it if he keeps drinking. Alice struggled to stand up, swaying a bit, and Jian Yang immediately supported her. Lady Alice, what should we do now? This guy has been confirmed to be the flame soul fighting god Ning Jia who caused chaos in the universe a thousand years ago. Their purpose of travel has also been confirmed. Originally, he dared to use the flag of our hexagonal demon bull pirate group, which is a heinous crime. But just now, he also mentioned that this was a promise given to him by our ancestors. Jian Yang hesitated. The hexagonal demon bull no longer exists, only a small spark remains of us. We have been hiding our identities, barely surviving, selling our bodies to make it to this day, which is not easy. But this bastard boldly displays our flag, causing the long-forgotten hexagonal demon bull to reappear in the world. It will only attract the attention of our enemies and disrupt our plan for revival. It's truly despicable. Alice gazed at Ning Jia, who was unconscious on the sofa. Are you suggesting we kill him? Jian Yang speculated, while the 30 misses by her side had already taken out various weapons from different corners of the box, ranging from rocket launchers to poison needles and daggers. Killing him like this would be a bit of a waste. The flame soul fighting god is considered a prominent figure in the universe, and perhaps he will be useful to us in the future. Let's lock him up in the dungeon and let him sober up, Alice ordered simply, leaving all the mess to the servants. As she turned to leave, a ringing phone suddenly came from Ning Jie's pocket. 
What was even more bizarre was that Ning Jia, who should have been unconscious, sat up and took out the communicator to answer the call. Hello. On the other end of the phone was in, in Paul the Octopus's office, facing the smiling mad shark. After the call connected, Annie took a deep breath and said, Don't look for me. I've been kidnapped. Don't leave the flame soul battle god. Before Annie could finish her sentence, a loud slap sent her phone flying far away. Damn it, I wasted so much effort. I really hate smart women. The mad shark glared at Annie and walked over to pick up the phone that had been knocked away. The captain already told you the details, right? The mad shark said through the glass tank. Very clear. What do you want? Ransom? Or something else? Ning Jia asked calmly. What I want, you probably won't give me even if you're alive. To put it simply, I must have the flame soul battle god mech. If you can offer a price, we can negotiate. If you can't, there's no need to continue talking. The mad shark was straightforward at this point. Since you want me to make an offer, then I'll give you one. If you now send Annie and our people back home, I'll pretend this call never happened. If you refuse, I will personally turn you into shark fin soup and drink it all up, understand? Ningjia leaned back on the sofa, his face cold. The threat of the flame soul battle god is so scary. The mad shark pretended to be coquettish and suddenly became tough again. Listen carefully, do you really think you're the flame soul battle god of a all star? You're just a lonely mech pilot on a desolate planet. You have no backing anymore. In the Fantian city, you have to bow to the tiger and crawl to the dragon. Killing you is much simpler than you imagine. It seems you don't understand the situation. I never rely on others to kill. Backgrounds are not within my consideration. Also, this is not a threat, I'm just informing you that you're about to die, Ning Jie said and hung up the phone. Sitting on the sofa, he looked at the ladies holding weapons in the room, surprisingly not surprised. Alice, on the other hand, was a bit stunned, as she had never encountered such a situation before. The atmosphere in the room was awkward, and everyone didn't know what to say or do. Can you pour me a glass of water? I feel a bit dizzy, Ning Jie smiled at Alice beside him. Kill him. Jun Yang suddenly flicked open a sharp dagger from her umbrella, but before she could approach, Alice blocked it. Alice then sat next to Ning Jia and poured a glass of water as he requested, handing it to him. Thank you. Ning Jia wasn't worried about being poisoned and gulped it all down. The blue elf burns my throat. Next time, you should dilute it more with water. Drinking it like this can kill a person. Are you also immune to alcohol? Alice asked in confusion. I won't let disgusting bugs crawl on my taste buds. I'll vomit. Ning Jia frowned. If you're wondering why I don't get drunk, I can only say that the effects of a thousand years of freezing are good. Long periods of freezing have destroyed my pain nerves and slowed down my metabolism. I drank a lot before with Captain Joshian on the wine immortal ship for three days and three nights, so my body and nerves have adapted to the heavy alcohol. Alcohol can't affect my thinking, at least not today, a thousand years later. What exactly do you want to do? You should have noticed something was wrong before calling me up. Why didn't you leave the danger in time and wait for us to reveal our fangs? Alice couldn't understand the most special battle god in the universe. Because I came to gather information. You're too normal, and as a result, you can't find anything. It seems you are survivors of the hexagonal demon bull pirate group, which makes it even better. To put it simply, my ship and I want to pass through the free Ion Star River and go straight to the K1 planet. I need a navigator to guide me, and you should be able to help me, Ning Jia confidently looked at Alice. You're either crazy or you don't understand the current situation in the free starry galaxy. Let me tell you, the starry galaxy has tightened to the point where there are no safe routes anymore. The entire lost paradise, at least for the past 60 years, no one has successfully crossed the starry galaxy. Everyone who goes in dies. Understand? Jian Yang sneered. I've already told you what I need to do. I hope you can help. Let me know how much money you need. Also, my two friends have had too much to drink. Can you take care of them? They're not fit for the dungeon. Just give them a room to sober up. Now, I have something more important to attend to. I'll come back to you once I'm done. Ning Jie didn't even listen to Jianyan's explanation. He stood up, adjusted his suit, and walked towards the door. Hey, do you understand human language? We're not your subordinates, nor your friends. Why should we do things for you? Jian Yang had never received such instructions before. Since her true identity had been exposed, she no longer pretended to be a gentle and kind boss. The crime of drugging me, the crime of trying to harm me, the crime of betraying the promises of our predecessors. These are enough for me to kill each and every one of you. But today, I'm having a good time. Overall, I don't really like killing beautiful women, so it's best if you help me get things done. Otherwise, there won't be a place called Chinching in the universe anymore. Ningjia smiled as he turned around, his smile so cold. 
You probably don't like seeing me angry, because coincidentally, my Hangu system, the driving force behind Zhu Tian, is my anger. After finishing his words, Ning Jie turned and left, not worried at all that his companions would be harmed, and no one dared to stop him. Wait. Suddenly, Alice picked up a lady's coat nearby and walked up to him. The current Fantian city is not the same as it was a thousand years ago. There has been a significant shift in power here. I can say a few words in this Fantian city. If you want to save your friend, take me with you. It will be helpful. Lady Alice, you can't. Jian Yang and a group of people nervously tried to stop her. Do you know what I'm going to do? Ning Jie became interested. It shouldn't be something like begging for mercy, right? Alice smiled and took the initiative to hold Ning Jie's arm, leaning against him like a lover. Are you prone to fainting? Ning Jie asked curiously. As long as it's blood of a known color red, orange, blue, green, cyan, black, or purple, it's fine. Alice smiled charmingly. Then come with me, my lady Alice. Ning Jie confidently led Alice out of the private room. At the same time, a change occurred at the No. 02 Universe Port. When the convoy returning with supplies and the delivery personnel from the military market arrived, the port sounded an alarm and urgently closed the passage connecting to the city, as well as the gate to the universe. The official explanation received by the Noah's Ark was that an abnormal parasitic alien virus had been detected in the spaceport. To prevent infection within the city, the airlock was urgently closed, restricting the crew from disembarking. A comprehensive disinfection and inspection would be carried out before it could be reopened. It was estimated to take two to three days, and they hoped for the understanding of the entire port. Ironically, in the No. 02 Universe port, which was specifically designed to accommodate supersized spacecraft, only the Noah's Ark was currently docked. Captain, what do we do now? We can't contact the Annie group or the Ningjie group outside. The communications officer said helplessly. Looks like someone wants to plot against us. X placed a black piece on the chessboard. X's worst fear had come true, someone with ulterior motives. It was like a lion flaunting its power, earning respect, while a show-off pig would only be seen as food. As the first step of the Earth's journey into the stars, it is clear that Ningjie will become a very powerful guide for them. However, Ningjie also has a drawback, which is the difference in height between where he stands and the Earth itself. He cannot deliberately lower his height to think about problems. It's like a rich person who is used to eating lobster and abalone, they can't go back to the days of eating only three liang of rice porridge. That kind of thing only happens in TV dramas and aspiring novels. So, what X needs to do is to try not to let the entire battleship become a burden for Ningjie and to catch up with his pace as much as possible. However, this does not mean that they can truly reach the level of a fighting god in the eyes of others. Simply put, if this is a battleship that truly belongs to the Aral Star Royal family, then the Worm Star would never dare to appear in its interception path. On the other hand, the relatively weak Earth battleship, as well as its crew members, are easily targeted, devoured, and even annihilated by others. This is the law of the universe, and it is a fact that cannot be changed by Ningjie alone. X quickly gave the order, and the standby Gao Ao and Shaolian Shaolian entered their mechas and prepared to launch at any time. All the crew members immediately cancelled their rest and stood ready at their posts. The secret charging of the ion cannons was completed, and the missile bays were opened. X's principle is that they can die, but they cannot become a burden that hinders the fighting god. If there are crew members who do not have this determination, they can enter the escape pods themselves. Once the battle begins, they will be prioritized for launch and return to Earth. The communication signal is blocked, we can't contact the battleship. Ningjie sat in the co-pilot seat, trying to contact the Noah's Ark, but couldn't get through. It seems that the shark gang dares to play kidnapping in Fantian City because they have some background. Closing the communication in the spaceport is a big deal, ordinary officials cannot give such an order. Alice led Ningjie to the underground garage of Chinching. only the district chief has the power to do so. District chief? What position is that? I remember that in the past, the only ones who ruled Fantian City were the Lord's family. Ningjia has really been away for too long. The Lord's family was overthrown by the city residents 500 years ago. The imperial system is obviously not suitable for the increasingly diversified development of Fantian City. Under the opposition of the business tycoons and the nobles in the living area, the Lord's family was forced to give up power and let the city be governed by the elected city residents. In order to achieve a balance of power, the management organization of Fantian City was divided into three parts, the living area chief, the entertainment area chief, and the trading area chief. The most powerful is the living area chief, who is always led by the descendants of the former lord's family. Even in elections, they have enough funds and connections to support their consecutive elections. The most mobilizing is the entertainment area chief, 
who was the most popular leader among the floating population in Fantian City. In the vast territory of Fantian City, where the floating population accounts for 80%, this is a force that cannot be ignored. And the most powerful is the trading area chief, who controls almost all the trade in Fantian City. If you want to do business and make a living in Fantian City, without his approval, even if you starve to death, you won't be able to sell your goods. Although the current trading area chief never admits it, there are already rumors that he is the behind-the-scenes boss of the famous multinational mecha manufacturing group, Nine Heavens. It is said that he spent a lot of money and personnel to campaign for the position of trading area chief in order to bypass the interstellar trade laws of the Starry Sky tragedy and smuggle the military weapons and mechas they produce to the greatest extent possible. It has to be said that since he was elected, the combat power of the surrounding interstellar pirates has made a qualitative leap. Alice briefly introduced the power structure of Fantian City at present. Which district chief do you think is behind the shark pirates? Ningjie asked curiously. From the details you just told me and the location of the kidnapping, it seems that the trade district chief is involved. Otherwise, even if the mad shark is bold, as a pirate leader of only medium to slightly higher level, he wouldn't dare to kidnap within the boundaries of the Fantian city. Moreover, he knows that his opponent is you, the flame soul fighting god, and he still dares to demand a ransom. Alice spoke as she arrived at the underground garage. She pressed the unlock key, and a sports car with dim lights flashed a few times. Alice tossed the keys to Ningjie, as it is customary for men to drive. Ningjie caught the keys and without hesitation, tossed them back to Alice. I don't know how to drive, Ningjie said resolutely. Are you joking? The mighty flame soul fighting god, who can handle even the huge mechs, can't drive? Alice couldn't help but laugh. Come on, when I left Earth, I was only 16 years old. Later, I fought alongside the Royal Alea for three years in a protracted war, and then I was frozen for 1,000 years in the stellar tragedy. Where would I have gotten a driver's license? Ningjia resolutely sat in the passenger seat. You're really lucky. I've never been a driver for anyone before, you're the first, Alice sighed helplessly and started her distinctively angular white sports car. As it emerged from the garage onto the road, it attracted a lot of attention, not only because it was a limited edition supercar, but also because of the beautiful person sitting inside. Of course, Ningjie was a forgotten character. What do you want to do now? Alice asked, tilting her head slightly. My friends are missing in the trade district. Can you find out where they are? Ningjie asked. Of course, here, with just one phone call, I can do a lot of things. But do you really want me to help? Alice had something else to say. What do you mean? Didn't you just say you could help? Ningjie was confused, scratching the back of his head. Yes, I can help you, but once I do, you won't be a special man to me anymore. You'll just be a scoundrel who needs someone else's help to act tough. In principle, I'd rather just be a spectator, quietly watching you fulfill your promises to others. Alice's gaze became somewhat distant. I don't understand. What do you want from me? I don't seem to have anything that would interest you, right? Ningjie was puzzled. You're too modest. At least just now, when you coldly mentioned taking someone's life, I felt something stir in me. When they reached an intersection and the car came to a temporary stop, Alice turned her head to look at Ningjie. Her cat-like, ethereal eyes seemed to see through his soul. I haven't felt that way in many years. Since that man died, living for me has been only about fulfilling the mission of reviving the hexagonal bull pirate crew. Whether you believe it or not, although I can drive, I am actually a mech pilot, the dream fighting god of the hexagonal bull Alice. I believe it, because when you toasted for the first time, I saw the subtle deformation of the bones in your palm. The mech you control should have more than 400 buttons, with more on the right side than the left. You're used to gripping the control lever with your right hand, starting from the deformation of the bones in your wrist. You like to go full throttle, so you must have a speed-oriented mech. You're one of the most troublesome opponents I've encountered, Ningjie also saw through the other's soul. It's refreshing to talk to a colleague like this. To put it simply, my dream fighting god was a mech specially tailored for me. The driving force behind its grand system is love. Alice started the car and drove forward. Ironically, as someone who has lost the ability to love, I feel so guilty when I see my dream fighting god again. Are you interested in hearing your story? We still have a long way to go to the trade district, so let's use it to break the awkward atmosphere. Ningjie supported his face with one hand, already assuming the posture of a listener. This is not a very long story, and the story is also very simple. The last generation captain of the hexagonal demon bull pirate group was named Jack. Before he died, he didn't know that he was the last captain. Jack was a captain with lofty ideals, different from the past captains who only sought to drink and eat meat, and enjoyed a carefree life of enmity and revenge. 
He always longed to settle down and find a land where the total number of the hexagonal demon bull pirate group, which had already exceeded 100,000 people at that time, could live in peace. In his search, Jack found a planet and also encountered Alice, who was sitting next to her parents' corpses, surviving by chewing on insects. Alice was only nine years old at that time, which was like a newborn baby for the Meow Meow people who could live up to 300 years. Jack adopted her as his goddaughter and established a settlement fortress and stronghold on this planet that was once occupied by refugees. He started cultivating vegetation and crops, raising livestock, and began mining and trading goods. A pirate who no longer robs is like a vegetarian tiger, always making people want to touch its butt, but even if it starts to eat vegetables, the tiger's fangs are not fake. At that time, the strength of the hexagonal demon bull began to defeat a group of provocateurs who came to challenge, and the first one was Alice, who had grown up. Yes, she was the most talented mecha engineer in the hexagonal demon bull, and even if she operated with one hand, she could defeat the flagship of the enemy. Jack wanted a stable home, and he achieved it. The next thing to do was to think of a way to defend it. Jack found a master craftsman who had promised to help him build the god of war mecha and built a dreamlike god of war for Alice, who was only 20 years old at the time, hoping to use the god of war to defend the integrity of the family. Because the driving force of the god of war's hangwu system is love, Jack always forced Alice to go on dates and introduced various men to her. He insisted that she go on a date with any man who had a little bit of looks. Alice, who had always been like a tomboy and hung out with a group of bearded pirates, didn't like it at all. She always said, I love you, Godfather, and I love all the members. My love is enough to drive my hangwu and become the armed force that protects you all. But, that's not love. When the fleet of the bug stars invaded, Alice realized that she didn't love everything he said, or this level of love was not what the dreamlike god of war expected. She could only keep her hangwu at the lowest level of liberation and couldn't resist the invasion of the bug stars at all. Before Jack died, he entrusted Alice with the final task of taking many women, children, and infants away, promising her that when she truly understood love, she would revive the hexagonal demon bull and raise the glorious pirate flag again. Vaguely remembering the endless black rain that fell from the sky, tears naturally slid down Alice's delicate face. Kneeling on the beloved yellow soil, Alice tightly hugged Captain Jack, who had lost both feet. Hundreds of black scorpions were devouring Captain Jack's mecha beside them. I'm sorry, I shouldn't have been so willful, I shouldn't have been so proud. I should have participated in the blind dates you arranged and found a man to love. I always thought I was the strongest, I love you, and I love everyone, I thought this would be enough to make me the strongest god of war. But, I think I don't love you enough. Alice's tears fell on Jack's face like raindrops, but this bearded captain smiled in despair. Don't blame yourself, love is not something you can control. It's not anger, not frustration, not indifference, not optimism. Love is the most uncontrollable emotion, but love is also the most powerful force. One day you will meet the man who knows what love is. When your power is unleashed, you will gain immense strength. At that time, you can rebuild the hexagonal demon bull and complete my unfinished work, establishing a true home for the refugees. Promise me, take the women and children and leave, quietly gather strength. Jack raised his palm, wiping away the tears from Alice's eyes, and from that moment on, his hand never let go. The downfall of the hexagonal demon bull pirate crew almost caused a sensation in the entire universe. This pirate crew, whose history could rival that of a small planet, had always been a legend in the universe. Their massive fleet and chivalrous style were exemplary in the pirate world. Many interstellar refugees were willing to join their fleet, and the hexagonal demon bull almost never turned away visitors, as long as they were not completely evil, they would be helped and tolerated. Many members of the Starry Sky tragedy, even if their ships were hijacked by them, were not willing to cause trouble for them, because they only plundered goods and did not harm people, nor did they destroy ships. In some high-risk star regions of interstellar pirates, some ship owners would actively contact the hexagonal demon bull pirate ship for escort, as long as they gave them 30% of the goods, they could safely pass through. However, only the demons of the worm star would completely disregard any feelings and devour their planets and their tribes. Alice, who was in exile, and a small spacecraft were drifting in the universe. Alice was 22 years old that year. She took over the position of captain of the hexagonal demon bull pirate crew, but her first order was to let this flag be forgotten in the river of time. They relied on the accumulated wealth of the hexagonal demon bull to purchase the operating rights of the sinking star. Alice began to sing here and has been waiting here. Do you know what I did during these 60 years of exile? Alice's smile carried an unknown sadness. I slept with at least 60 men who were called heroes, served as the mistress of more than 10 nobles, met poets, literary giants, musicians, and even the most notorious rogues. I never stopped trying to get to know more men, 
trying to love each and every one of them, but it wasn't until five years ago, when I woke up from a man's bed for the last time, that I realized that in the past 55 years, I had only been changing one unfamiliar face after another. I didn't love any of them. They never touched my heartstrings for a moment. Their humanity was filled with all kinds of vices and flaws, and I couldn't love them. So, I returned to the sinking star and started singing every night, no longer actively seeking men, turning myself into a work of art, waiting for the person I love to appear. Honestly, waiting is really painful. For a while, I almost forgot why I was waiting. You have lived a fulfilling 60 years, unlike me, who slept for a thousand years and woke up to find that everything had changed. Jing Jie looked out the window. You already know my story, so what do you think? Are you interested in being my boyfriend? Alice straightforwardly invited, love in the universe often comes so straightforward and fierce, leaving you with no way to refuse. Not interested, you would make me feel inferior. Jing Jie sighed, by the way, you're already 82 this year, and you don't even have a single wrinkle at the corner of your eyes. You could live to be 300 or 400 years old. We earthlings have short lives. Even if we live to be 100, we're already as old as tree bark. If I see you, still beautiful and charming, die of old age, I won't be able to rest in peace. Why? Alice was puzzled, this was a difference in values. Because you will definitely go find other men, won't that be giving me a cuckold? Jing Jie said righteously. What's a cuckold? You're already dead, how can I give you a hat? Alice wondered. Forget it, this is a cultural difference. Simply put, I am indeed interested in beautiful women. If you want to sleep with me, I am always available. But it would be difficult for me to love you. Besides, love itself is a one-sided thing. If you have to make someone love you in order for you to love them, that's called transaction, not love. Ning Jia tried to explain, but he didn't know that his words hit Alice like a thunderbolt. Alice turned her head and looked at Ning Jia, Love, is it necessary for you to love me in order for me to love you? Can't a person create love on their own? Love is not about mating. It doesn't require two people to complete it. If you love someone, no matter where they are, love can become your strength. Even if they have passed away, even if they don't love you, this kind of strength is something that no one can take away. Your love will only be deeply rooted in your heart, becoming a part of you. Ning Jie's gaze was filled with a sense of desolation, as if he was recalling the past. You said it so well, wait a moment, let me record it, and then you can say it again. Alice took out a voice recorder. Ning Jie was speechless. Not long after, Ning Jie's communicator rang again, and the display showed Annie's name. After answering the call, the voice on the other end was still as if submerged in water. My dear Lord Doshin, you should have noticed by now that you can't contact your own warship, the signal cannot be connected, and even your Doshin cannot be remotely activated. Now you are like a knight without armor, even if you are fierce, you can only be fish food. I'll give you a chance to survive. Come to the warehouse near Trade Zone Road 03, and after I immobilize you for a while, I will unload the flame soul Doshin from your warship, and then I can ensure your safety and that of your captain. The mad shark laughed sinisterly. Wait for me. Ning Jia coldly hung up the phone. After the supercar arrived at the trade zone, Ning Jia asked to stop the car. He walked along the crowded flea market, where various vendors were proudly selling their goods. They were all flea market traders who couldn't afford the expensive rent of a large-scale military market like Octopus Pauls. So they gathered in the narrow back streets, forming a densely packed flea market. Most of the items sold here were second-hand goods, as well as individual weapons and many genuine antiques, but only those who knew their worth could find them. The prices here also fluctuated greatly. The price of the same item could vary several times. Something that one person considered precious could be sold as junk in another corner of the market. Do you really have to come to a place like this to buy stuff? Alice struggled to keep up with Ning Jia, handing him a crystal card. This is the card you have left from your excessive consumption on Sunken Star, probably around 5 million. You should thank Jian Yang for her generosity. If it weren't for her treating you to drinks, you would have nothing left. If I remember correctly, all transactions in the large-scale market in the trade zone are recorded to ensure that the wrong goods don't end up in the wrong hands. However, this flea market is an exception. These are all tax evasion geniuses who find ways to evade taxes on the goods they sell. If you buy a rocket here, it might only be recorded as a screw. If what you suspect is true and someone from above is meddling, this caution is necessary. Ning Jie walked through the crowd, admitting that the flea market a thousand years later had grown even larger, and the crowd had become even more diverse. In addition to armed forces, there were even lazy mercenaries sitting in corners, wearing price tags and displaying their professions. From mech pilots to laborers stoking boilers on warships, there were all kinds of people. After searching for a while, Ning Jie finally found a storefront in the corner, located in the basement. 
It was an antique shop called Good Goods, and the old-fashioned decoration seemed to have remained unchanged for a thousand years. Here it is. Ningjia pushed open the shop door and walked in. The Good Goods antique shop was not as beautiful as its name described, but it was indeed difficult to find the so-called Good Goods at first glance in the 20-square-meter store. The old shelves on both sides were filled with various old but clean little trinkets. It was like a microcosm exhibition hall, where you could find the Era from Earth, as well as teacups from the Arai Star, unhatched insect eggs from the Worm Star, and all the little trinkets you have or haven't seen before could find a place to stay here. Welcome! If you like something, feel free to choose. The price is negotiable. Behind the counter in the corner of the shop, a moment old barkman spoke. Bodhisattva? Alice was surprised because she had never seen the Bodhisattva race in the city of Vantian, the home planet of the chief elder of the Starry Skies funeral. It should be noted that the Bodhisattva race was the most reluctant to move among the aliens. Almost all born Bodhisattvas liked to stay in one place and enjoy a peaceful life. Bodhisattvas who were willing to travel between stars could easily gain power. Their lifespan was also quite terrifying. They could live for tens of thousands of years with almost no accidents, which was just a blink of an eye for them. Old friend, don't you recognize me? Ningjia stepped forward. The shopkeeper slowly walked out from behind the counter, as slow as a snail. It took a long time for him to come under the light and see Ningjia's smiling face clearly. So it's you, kid? There's no reason. I remember the last time you came should have been hundreds of years ago. You shouldn't be able to live that long, right? Why haven't you aged at all? Oops, could it be that I'm getting old and confused? Did you just come yesterday? The shopkeeper furrowed his brow, which was full of bark, and his hands made of branches touched his forehead. Uncle Chow, you didn't remember wrong. I haven't been here for over a thousand years. As you said, I should have died long ago, but unfortunately, I was frozen and just woke up not long ago. Originally, I was going to K1 planet with my friend this time, but we encountered some trouble, so I came here to take a break. Who knew that someone would tie up my friend? You know, I hate being threatened. I originally wanted to just flatten Van Tian like that. But then I thought, that won't do. Your old shop is still here in this city, which made me hesitate. I came here specifically to ask you for a small favor. Ningjie explained his intentions in the most concise way. You brat, if you need help, just ask for it. You make it sound like I owe you a favor. It's been a thousand years, and your twisted logic is still the same. Speak up, what do you want? The shopkeeper, called Uncle Chow, took a pair of reading glasses from his chest and hung them on the branch-formed bridge of his nose. First of all, I have to declare that the trading area is strictly controlled now. Except for large-scale auctions, selling mechas directly is not allowed anywhere. And it is also forbidden to have mechas on the streets in the city. Damn it, Vantian City has been organized by a group of politicians. It doesn't look like a bandit's nest anymore. If it continues to be so lifeless for another two years, I might as well pack up and go back to Bodhisattva. Uncle Chiao pressed a button behind the shelf next to him, and a steel plate immediately rose from the floor, blocking the entire door. The closed sign outside the door also lit up. At the same time, the old wooden floor opened on both sides, revealing a passage made of rocks. Follow me. Uncle Chiao picked up an oil lamp next to him and walked down the stone path. How do you know about this place? Alice asked curiously. When I came last time, the flame soul fighting god was broken by me and needed a replacement part. I almost went through the entire trading area of Van Tian City. Later, I met your captain, who was known as the Whiny Mortal. After a round of drinking, he told me to try my luck in this place. Ning Jie explained, tilting his head. Then I said I didn't have it, I never trade with aliens I've never met before, I swear I made it clear to him, but he stayed in my shop for three days and three nights without leaving. He didn't eat, drink, or speak just sat in the corner staring at you. He actually wanted to compare his mental strength with me, a Prajna alien. Mr. Chow took over the conversation. No reason? Prajna aliens can stand in one place for years without moving. How could he surpass you in mental strength? Alice couldn't understand. Yes, we can stand for years without eating or drinking, just like real trees. But this guy can go without eating or drinking, but he needs to take a dump. Every time he finishes, he puts it in a plastic bag and leaves it on the side. I couldn't stand it when I saw those bags piling up in my shop. Mr. Xiao recalled this and couldn't help but get angry. Don't hold a grudge, Grandpa. Didn't I compensate you later? Ning Jie patted Mr. Xiao's shoulder without caring, and Alice couldn't help but laugh. Along the ancient stone stairs, when they didn't know how many meters deep underground they were, the exit appeared without any warning. Mr. Xiao put the oil lamp aside and struggled to pull down a scissor knife from the wall, and the power was turned on. 
In front of everyone, in the endless darkness, dozens of lights lit up, illuminating a huge underground warehouse. The walls made of rocks were as high as 50 meters, supporting the entire spacious area. The warehouse was over 3 kilometers in width and length, with thousands of shelves filled with various goods that would put 10 Walmarts to shame. And the variety of parts here is enough for you to assemble the largest battleship in the entire universe. Even rare minerals like reverse metal are abundant here. In fact, if you really plan to buy something in Fantheon City, as long as it's not the fighting god mech itself, you will definitely find what you want in Mr. Xiao's underground warehouse. Mr. Xiao's business model is very strange. He has an interest in collecting parts, just like dragons like to collect gems. Although dragons can't wear jewelry at all, just looking at these shiny things makes them happy. So Mr. Xiao doesn't like to sell his treasures very much. For him, every screw here is extremely precious. In the entire universe, there are no more than 100 people who have seen this underground warehouse, and the number of people who have actually bought something from Mr. Xiao's warehouse is less than 60. Even so, Mr. Xiao is still not short of money to spend because to ensure long-lasting friendships, these 100 people automatically send a large sum of money to Mr. Xiao's store every year, regardless of whether they buy anything or not. The purpose of this is ridiculous, just to remind the elderly Mr. Xiao not to forget their friendship. And once they need to buy something from here, Mr. Xiao never quotes a price, he just lets his friends give whatever they want, whether it's more or less, it doesn't really matter. Mr. Xiao is grateful for everyone's support over the years and has never thought of extorting anyone. He also understands that friends who come to his underground warehouse to get things usually have a genuine need. But strangely enough, for many years, none of the friends who came here ever paid less than twice the market price. Because many of the things they need are priceless. Money is not important at all for those who befriend Mr. Xiao, and that's how this unwritten rule came about. However, Mr. Xiao encountered a scumbag friend for the first time in his life, and that was Ning Jia. He came here to exchange a broken part of the flame soul fighting god for a new one, and when it came time to pay, he searched his whole body and only took out a coin and threw it at Mr. Xiao. At first, Uncle Xiao looked at this shiny coin with some surprise, thinking it was a metal he had never seen before. He saw the carvings on it and the unfamiliar symbols, and it was likely an antique from a lost civilization. But after the final appraisal, it turned out that this thing was just made of the most common steel core with nickel plating. The parts that Ningjia took away, on the other hand, were made of pure reverse metal. Not to mention the high cost of craftsmanship, just the 2 kilograms of reverse metal alone could be sold for a staggering price. But Ningjia was deceived by a 1 yuan coin from Earth. It's really a life with such a damaging friend who can deceive you for eternity. Uncle, this time I won't deceive you. Here's the money first, the VIP card from Vantian Bank, worth over 5 million? That's all I have right now. Ningjia blushed as Uncle Chao told his story, and he directly took out the crystal card and stuffed it into Uncle Chao's pocket. Alice, who was following along, was already laughing hysterically at the story. Who would have thought that the flame soul fighting god, who was so famous in the universe, had actually experienced so many embarrassing things in the past? He had been a scoundrel and a rogue, lacking some of the cold-bloodedness of a killer but gaining some of the realism of life. Tell me, what do you want? I can't sell the Mets, I don't want my treasure trove to be exposed and investigated by others. Uncle Chiao declared first, so he couldn't take away the mech kneeling on one knee to the right of the warehouse. And the value of each of these treasures far exceeded the card that Ningjia had just stuffed into his pocket. I haven't seen my friend, so I don't dare to go in and bomb everything with the mech. I need something small that can turn the tide. Recommend me a few. In fact, Ningjia couldn't come up with specific names. I roughly understand, let me help you find them. But since you said it's about turning the tide, it means that the situation is actually in someone else's hands. Are you really sure you want to do this? For me, the most helpless thing in life is when your former friends no longer contact you. At this time, you know that you have lost another friend. Among your batch of friends, there are only two left who are still alive, and you are the third. So, I don't want you to die so miserably. Whether it's the fighting god or a hero, it's just a virtual name called out by others. Only you know how fragile you are, one shot can kill you, one stab can finish you off, and there is no room for falsehood. Uncle Chiao said as he rummaged through a pile of things. Are you serious? Do you want to face those bloodthirsty pirates alone? They want your fighting god mech, obviously they're not very interested in you as a mech pilot. Alice asked softly, what is a fighting god mech to the so-called fighting god? A unique weapon? Or a capital to show off? We sit in the cockpit of a few square meters, facing hundreds of buttons, pressing them at a speed that ordinary people can't imagine, easily deciding the life and death of others, 
watching the enemies being defeated one by one on the screen. Are we really that powerful? Ningjia's question was something Alice had never considered. Your question is too profound, I can't answer it. Alice shrugged helplessly. Actually, I think the fighting god is just a manifestation of ourselves, just like the Hangu system, turning our emotions into power. So, if we lose that strength and confidence after leaving the mech, then we don't deserve to sit in the fighting god mech. I suggest that fighting god mech pilots should personally kill some enemies, feel the blood splashing on their faces, and experience the taste of stopping someone's heartbeat. Only then can we build a truly powerful inner self. You must have killed a lot of people yourself. Alice speculated about Ningjia's past. To be honest, if I were to classify that bastard Hammond as a bug, I still haven't personally killed anyone up to now. Or, to put it another way, there was once a person, and I tried to kill him, but in the end, I failed. Every time Ningjia thinks of him, the red earring, the emotional controller in his ear, stings. Highway 03, in the trading zone, is now the border of the living zone. To ensure a peaceful life in the living zone, a large open space has been left in the middle. It is strictly forbidden to build markets on this border, and it can only be used as a warehouse for storing goods. When Alice's sports car stopped outside the warehouse area, Ningjia had just woken up from his sleep. He didn't bring anything with him and got out of the car as soon as he opened the door. The only difference from when he came out of Uncle Chiao's underground warehouse was the addition of a silver ring around his neck. Let's go, don't wait for me, Ningjia said to Alice. Just wait for 10 minutes and then we'll go. You're an interesting man, I want to wait a bit, Alice said, turning off the engine. Suit yourself, Ningjia didn't look back and walked towards the nearby warehouse. Just as he was halfway there, several big men quickly rushed out from behind a container, each holding a weapon, mostly single soldiers against Mecha. It seemed like they were prepared for Ningjia to come in a Mecha. However, when they saw Ningjia empty-handed, they were first surprised, then their faces filled with joy. Yes, what could be more pleasing than seeing a Mecha pilot outside of their Mecha? especially when he is your enemy. A rat-faced pirate searched Ningjia's whole body and found no firearms or weapons. Then a group of people escorted Ningjia to the largest warehouse. The double-layered alloy door of the 50-meter warehouse slowly opened, revealing a dark gap, and Ningjia was escorted inside. Is the feeling of excitement just going to disappear again? In the distance, Alice sighed softly as she leaned against the driver's seat. This warehouse was not as big as Uncle Chow's underground treasure trove, but it was still the size of a football field. Dozens of bright hanging lamps hung from the tall steel beams, forming overlapping circles of light on the ground. And on the background of these bright lights on the steel beams, you could vaguely see the shadows of several snipers. Of course, the most menacing were the eight brand new humanoid mechas squatting in the corner of this large warehouse. Their shiny armor hadn't even been painted or numbered yet. They were obviously new arrivals. From the layout of the armor and the length of their limbs, they should be expensive top quality goods. However, all these things only made Ningjie glance at them briefly. What truly attracted him was in, sitting on a metal chair in the center of the warehouse. Her eyes were closed, as if she were asleep, but she was actually unconscious from the drugs. Standing beside her was Captain Crazy Shark, with hundreds of triangular sharp teeth. As for Miller and the other accompanying soldiers, they had all been disarmed and tied up like dumplings, and the pirates guarding them held heavy anti-mecha ion cannons that were two, five meters long. With just a pull of the trigger, they could turn the dozen or so people in front of them into a cloud of smoke. Welcome, seeing you come alone like this, to be honest, I'm quite surprised. The welcome party I specially prepared for you has lost its effect. Unfortunately, I still wanted to see the legendary flame soul dual god mecha pilot and see what you're capable of without the dual god mecha, Crazy Shark said, opening his arms and walking forward. I'm here, release them, Ningjia said coldly, without any emotion in his words. Are you teaching me how to do things? Crazy Shark's face turned dark like a water tank. No, I'm ordering you. Follow my instructions before you can't speak with that big mouth of yours. If you do, you'll live. Ning Jia looked calm, without a hint of joking. You're really funny, Shark couldn't help but laugh. Dozens of his subordinates followed suit, laughing loudly. The laughter echoed in the large warehouse, sending shivers down people's spines. But suddenly, Shark stopped laughing and threw a punch, hitting Ning Jia square in the stomach. The small human was sent flying tumbling several times on the ground before coming to a stop. Ning Jie tried to stand up, but failed several times. On the last attempt, he even vomited a mouthful of dark blood, splattering it on the floor. I've been eating too well lately, my reactions have slowed down, Ning Jie wiped the blood from the corner of his mouth and stood up again. At this moment, everything happening in the warehouse was being transmitted to another person through a camera. He quietly watched Ning Jie's cold smile and caressed his pet, a Persian cat with four ears. You brat, you're either an idiot or crazy. 
Can't you see the situation clearly? You can't protect the flame soul battle god. I want the backdoor password. Tell me, and I'll let you live, shark approached Ningjia. What is the backdoor password? Ningjia played it smart and backed away. Don't play dumb with me. All battle gods have a backdoor password to ensure that the mecha can still be used after the pilot's accidental death. It allows others to format the mecha system and delete the previous pilot's personal information, ensuring continued use, Shark didn't like Ningjia pretending to be ignorant. I've been alive for so long, and this is the first time I've heard of such a thing. When I get back, I'll definitely set one up, Ningjia continued to retreat until his hands touched the cold foot of a mecha. How long do you think you can retreat? Shark sneered. There's no more room to retreat, no need to retreat anymore, Ningjia said as his collar was grabbed by Shark, and he was thrown into the air like a sandbag, crashing heavily onto the hard cement floor. Ningjia, lying on his back, convulsed naturally, feeling the pain but not showing it. I don't have time to play games with you, either give me the backdoor password or die. Choose one, Shark walked to Ningjia's side, squatting down and grabbing his hair, as if picking a dead chicken in a market. Do you think, you've won? Ningjia smiled with blood all over his face. You think you're doing things for the powerful and influential backstage, whether it's kidnapping or killing, it doesn't matter. Are those eight brand new mechas the down payment for your reward? It's ridiculous that you think you can get the final payment, say more, and you'll die faster, Shark sneered, not caring at all. They say sharks have small brains, as dumb as pigs. The flame soul battle god is the battle god of Aral Star, representing the glory of the planet. How could it allow itself to fall into the hands of outsiders? The moment you accepted the battle god, you were already targeted by a raw star. Is your backstage powerful enough to dare to offend the level of the judge of the starry sky sorrow? So, you self-righteous guy, will be packaged like a gift and sent to Queen Aral. Of course, you will have your tendons severed during the arrest, rendering you unable to write, your vocal cords cut, rendering you unable to speak, your eyes gouged out, rendering you unable to see, and your eardrums punctured, rendering you unable to hear. But that's not safe enough, so a strong poison will be injected into your brain, causing brain death. That way, it will be much safer, impossible. Shark said this, but his heart was already wavering. His pure black pupils were searching, proving that he was thinking, and thinkers are most prone to making mistakes. When he felt the grip on his hair loosen slightly, Ningjia suddenly used both hands to support himself and headbutt Shark's fishbowl breathing mask. This tempered glass water tank, which could withstand a certain amount of force, unfortunately shattered when it was struck by the desperate attack of Ningjia, even cracking his own forehead. The shattered fragments of the water tank scattered like tiny crystals. The shark, deprived of the seawater it was immersed in, thrashed its gills like a drowning person, but it couldn't get any oxygen. It fell to the ground in agony, and the subordinates by its side surrounded it, while the snipers also aimed their guns. Unfortunately, no one noticed that a thin metal plate the size of a fingernail had been attached to the foot of the mecha that Ningjia had just touched. The party has begun. Ningjia stood up and pressed the silver collar on his neck. Two green indicator lights lit up on the ordinary collar. Ningjia waved his arm upwards, and the silver mecha that had been parked on the side also swung its arm upwards, causing the steel beams supporting the roof to become chaotic. The four snipers screamed and fell along with a steel beam. The quiet warehouse instantly became chaotic. In the moment when the pirate guarding soldier turned his head, Miller jumped and knocked the pirate to the ground. Over a dozen soldiers who had been waiting to attack rushed forward. Although their hands were tied behind their backs, they were still terrifying even when suppressed. Ningjie. Miller pulled out a dagger from the pirate's shoe, cut the rope on Ningjie's body, and shouted towards Ningjie, who was standing in the center of the warehouse. Steel frames fell like sharp swords, some of them piercing the ground less than half a meter away from him. Take Annie and go. Today's party is not suitable for children. Ningjia smiled. Miller's duty was to protect Annie, and without him giving orders, Miller had already stepped forward and carried Annie on his back, running towards the back door. Where do you think you're going? A mecha stepped forward, intending to stop them, but suddenly a five-meter-long eye beam flew straight towards it, hitting the side of the mecha's head. The beam was not sharp enough to penetrate the armor, but the powerful force caused the mecha to fly sideways, crashing through the not-so-thick wall of the warehouse. Damn it! Lao San, you're fucking crazy. The mecha pilot, who was sitting in the cockpit and was almost knocked unconscious, cursed angrily. The silver mecha that had thrown the steel beam lowered its hand. Big brother, it wasn't me. The mecha's operating system has completely malfunctioned. Damn virus. The mecha pilot inside the silver mecha frantically pounded various buttons, but it couldn't elicit any corresponding response from the mecha. All right, are you ready to die? Ningjia wiped the blood from the corner of his mouth with a cold smile. 
Strangely, the silver mecha also wiped the corner of its mouth with the same motion. The treasure that Grandpa Chow found for Ning Jia was called the Termite Simulation Controller. Its inventor was a super hacker who was said to have been imprisoned shortly after inventing the Termite Simulation Controller. So there were only two sets of termites left in the world, one set was kept as evidence in the evidence room of the planet they were on, and the other set fell into Grandpa Chow's hands. The working principle of the termites was simple. By using a thin microcomputer sticker, it could quickly decipher the operating systems of most mechas in the universe, rendering all buttons in the cockpit useless and completely removing the control of the mecha from the mecha pilot. Then, the control would be taken over by the person wearing the control collar, allowing the infected mecha to simulate the actions of the wearer 100% and complete specific combat tasks. If this great invention were mass-produced, it could completely change the course of the war. Ironically, its inventor was imprisoned for running a pornographic website. Perhaps only Grandpa Chow truly understood the value of this invention. What do we do now? Shouted a companion in the mecha. Who cares how he did it? Let's tear apart this infected mecha first. The mecha that had been knocked down on the ground got up, and the other seven mechas around it were not idle either. They all pounced on it. Ning Jia took a deep breath and suddenly sprinted sideways. Although he only ran three meters, it was enough to reach the nearest black mecha in sync. Brother, don't blame me, said the mecha pilot of the black mecha, but he pulled out a huge melee axe from behind and swung it horizontally, cutting a huge gash even in the adjacent warehouse wall. However, the silver mecha charging forward did not slow down at all and rushed into close proximity with the black mecha. As if planned, it grabbed the wrist of the black mecha's swinging axe, not giving the opponent any chance to react. The silver mecha directly headbutt the black mecha's head, resulting in a fierce impact that shattered the silver mecha's head while completely detaching the black mecha's head from its body, sending it flying. With the loss of visual feed, the silver mecha nonchalantly drew a tactical dagger from behind. The mecha pilot inside the black mecha panicked as if facing imminent death and quickly opened the cockpit, preparing to escape. However, when a clear image appeared before his eyes, all the mecha pilot saw was the sharp blade thrusting straight towards him. The sound of a short, continuous scream abruptly ended as Ning Jia acted swiftly. 1. Ning Jia on the ground made a slashing motion, while the silver mecha brought out a splatter of flesh from the abdomen of the black mecha. Another black mecha lunged forward, raising its rapid-fire machine gun. The deafening sound of gunfire and the dazzling flames could blind your eyes. But shortly after the gunshots, the black mecha crashed through the warehouse and flew out, with the mecha pilot inside already dead from the damage. Get out of the way! The mecha pilot pushed aside the debris on his body and stood up again. However, the first and last thing he saw was the parallel flying axe, which precisely cleaved into his waist. The axe bit into the cockpit, and the black mecha's powerless knees knelt on the ground. You wouldn't want the author to describe the appearance of the mecha pilot at this moment. It's all your fault, killing you will do. A red mecha, being smarter, aimed its pistol at Ning Jia on the ground. In that instant, Ning Jia knelt in his direction, and behind him, the silver mecha also knelt down, taking three scorching bullets with its metallic arm. You have a bit of a brain, but those with brains are usually the priority targets for killing. Ning Jia charged forward again. With his companions, including Miller, coming to the entrance of the factory area, they eerily discovered the supercar and Alice standing there excitedly. Don't panic, it's basically safe here. Ning Jia will take care of the rest for you, Alice said to the newcomers. Who are you? Miller, carrying Annie, asked warily. Me? If Ning Jia survives today, I will become his lover, Alice smiled. At the same time, one after another, mechas crashed through the outer wall of the huge warehouse. All these originally brand new mechas had fatal injuries in the cockpit area, some torn apart as if bitten by beasts, and some directly pierced by steel beams. One mecha was even blasted into pieces by a cannon. The last one still alive was the captain of the Jejia team, who was also the first to shout. His mecha had its feet's axle severed, rendering it disabled and only able to crawl slowly on the ground. At this moment, a battered and almost falling apart silver mecha stepped out from the hole in the warehouse wall. This mech, which should have been scrapped long ago, stands like a monster, with enough wounds to kill someone ten times over, but all attacks on its main drive shaft were evaded. Yes, this monster synchronized by Ningjia still walked out with a bloodstained tactical dagger in hand. Hero, spare me. I'm just a small soldier following orders, please let me go. Ningjia's mech grabbed the right foot of the crawling mech and forcefully pulled him back in front. He easily straddled the disabled mech's waist and swung the tactical dagger left and right creating a flash of light in the air. The disabled mech's hands, devoid of kinetic energy, fell to the ground, and Ningjia accurately severed the mech's arm drive belt. 
Now, the broken silver mech lightly held the dagger and slid it slowly along the body towards the mech's abdomen. No, I can't resist anymore. Spare me. The mech pilot howled like a madman on his knees. Ningjia, kneeling on the ground, remained silent, imitating the action of eating oysters. He inserted the dagger into the gap in the cockpit armor and exerted force. The entire armor popped open like a jewelry box. A typical mech has two layers of armor protecting the cockpit, consisting of heavy upper armor and hard inner armor. For the protection of the pilot, even the worst mech invests heavily in cockpit defense. Because as long as the mech pilot is alive, the mech still possesses a certain combat capability, even without limbs. To completely destroy a mech's combat capability, the best way is to destroy its cockpit and the mech pilot. It's like the human heart. Ningjia skillfully opened the double-layered armor and saw the terrified mech pilot inside. Don't kill me. I didn't participate in kidnapping your friend. We have no grudges. Please don't kill me. The mech pilot shouted while frantically pulling on his safety belt. He was so panicked that he couldn't even find the buckle of the safety belt. It's not about grudges, it's just a habit. Ningjia said calmly, punching the ground. The imitation silver mech was punched directly into the cockpit. If you were closer, you could even see blood splattering. Some soldiers felt nauseous and almost vomited. Even Miller looked at everything Ningjia did with an unpleasant expression and asked in confusion, why does he have to do it this way? Because he doesn't want to deal with the same enemy from both sides. If he destroys the mech, the mech pilot can launch another attack by changing the shell. A mech pilot who has fought him once will be familiar with his movements, even accustomed to them, and it will increase the chance of killing him. A true warrior must eliminate his enemies more efficiently, so killing the mech pilot is the only way to achieve this. Without this level of determination, he cannot be called a true warrior. Alice, also a warrior, explains softly. Just when they thought everything was over, a gust of wind swept through, knocking down all the people on the ground, and the wind pierced through the cockpit of the silver mech, creating a hole the size of a truck's head. The poor mech pilot inside didn't need to worry about whether he was still alive. The powerful wind lifted the entire silver mech off the ground, and the already dilapidated mech disintegrated into scattered parts. After a few seconds, the deafening sound of gunfire was heard in the distance. Such power? A large caliber anti-mech sniper rifle? The military has banned these bullets. Damn piercing rounds. Alice, standing upright on the car, frowned and looked towards the starting point of the trajectory. The shooting position was more than 10 kilometers away from here, and it was difficult to see the appearance of the mech being fired with the naked eye, only that it was as white as a cloud. At the same time as the shooting, dozens of armored vehicles and hundreds of soldiers wearing individual armor rushed in from all directions of the factory area. They were like small mechs, holding machine guns with chainsaw bayonets. Get down! Get down! The command with electronic tremors, along with dozens of dark gun muzzles, was the best explanation. Miller and the others had to obediently lie down on the ground. As for Alice, she just showed her identification, and those armored soldiers didn't dare to approach her at all. The armored soldiers of the battalion immediately surrounded Ningjie. A captain walked forward with a gun and said in a cold electronic voice, Get down! Do you want to try again? Ningjie lightly touched the captain's leg with his palm and a new film was attached to his leg. The metal collar under Ningjia's neck lit up two green lights again. Suddenly, the electronic display screen of the armored captain turned into a snowflake, and his metal shell moved on its own under the drive of hydraulic bearings. Hey! What's going on? Help! My armor is out of control. Cut off my power. The armored captain roared, but there was no one available to listen to what he said. Because the tall two-meter-tall individual armored captain was aiming his large-caliber assault rifle at the heads of his comrades, dozens of armored soldiers formed a circle, surrounding Ningjie and the mutinous armored captain in the center. The scene was chaotic, and a group of nervous soldiers shouted in various electronic tones to get down. But Ningjie always maintained the posture of aiming with an empty hand and a gun, while the armored captain beside him actually pointed his gun at his own team members. Just as the situation was about to erupt, Ningjie suddenly put his hands behind his head and lay down on the floor without resisting. In the distance, the mech sniper responsible for sniping had a smile of satisfaction on his face. Because just now, he had simply adjusted the muzzle of the mech a few millimeters downward, aimed at the ground where Ningjie was, and as long as Ningjie made the slightest resistance, the mech sniper would not hesitate to pull the trigger and completely eliminate him from the ground. As for those soldiers surrounding him, they would all become Ningjie's funeral objects. It was impossible to detect the subtle changes in the enemy's muzzle with the naked eye from such a distance. The only explanation was the intuition of killing intent, which was the legendary sixth sense, the instinctive reaction of organisms to danger. 
However, as species evolved, the more civilized the life form, the more diluted this biological instinct became. To maintain his sixth sense as sensitive as a wild beast, Ningjia had become like a humanoid wild beast. The next thing was much easier. The soldiers approached and handcuffed Ningjia from behind, lifting him up from the ground but not crushing him. After a short time, a black luxury car, extended to a length of 10 meters, stopped next to Alice's sports car. A respectful servant approached, opened the car door, and a thin figure walked out from inside. He was wearing a black silk cloak. The newcomer was about 180 centimeters tall, weighing no more than 100 pounds, with two pointed ears resembling bats and white skin as thin as paper. He was holding a four-eared Persian cat in his arms, and when he smiled, his sharp canine teeth were exposed like a vampire. Isn't this the famous Alice from the Chinching family? Long time no see, how have you been? The newcomer looked at Alice and politely greeted her. Mayor Dracula is a busy man. How can he have time to waste in our dusty place? We, these performing women, can only make a living. Alice chuckled and changed the subject. District Chief, these people are my friends, I don't know about you. I advise you not to speak, you know that you are just a performer. Although you belong to the entertainment district, don't forget where you stand. Shut up, and you can leave here alive. Dracula's smile disappeared in an instant, and his icy gaze sent shivers down people's spines. Holding his cat, Dracula walked towards the center of the encirclement. The crisp sound of his leather shoes silenced the surrounding noise. Even the busiest soldiers immediately stood at attention and saluted Dracula. This is power, even though these soldiers could easily take your life with a flick of their fingers, you can make them fear you and not dare to show any resistance. Ning Jie, Lord of the Flame Soul Battler from the Aral Star, the legendary mecha pilot in the brilliant galaxy. Dracula stood in front of Ning Jie, his red pupils trembling with excitement. When I was young, I was a mecha enthusiast, but unfortunately, my natural constitution gave me claustrophobia. Whenever I stay in a small, enclosed space, I feel anxious and short of breath. So, I have always admired those heroes who can sit in the cockpit and roam the universe. You are my idol, you know? Come here, my good grandson, let go of your grandpa, and I'll give you an autograph. Ning Jie smiled with blood on his face. Idols can be humorous. Dracula said, handing his Persian cat to a nearby soldier and taking the soldier's assault rifle. He aimed the butt of the rifle at Ning Jie's head and fired, blood splattering backward, even landing on Dracula's face. The already injured wound immediately started bleeding profusely, dripping onto the ground from Ning Jie's chin. Unfortunately, I don't like jokes. Gathering for a fight, trading unregistered goods, damaging the public warehouse and the factory area, murder, and insulting the district chief. You have violated several laws and regulations of the Fantian city. Even if I kill you now, I will only be described as an excellent district chief protecting Fantian city. You dare not, otherwise you wouldn't be using that pig-brained mad shark. Ning Jie smiled and spat out a mouthful of blood. You're right, you're very clever. Dracula threw the firearm aside, picked up his cat again, and gently stroked it. Indeed, I dare not kill you, especially knowing that just mentioning your name makes the Aral people as excited as if they were injected with chicken blood. But you should know that the privileged will never keep just one dog. According to convention, I will send you to the detention center of the security department to await processing. There are no single cells there, but many interstellar felons and hooligans are held. If you are played to death, we can only express our regrets. And the warship you are on, along with the cargo on it, will resist in violation of regulations after learning of your death. To ensure the safety of Fantian City, it will be sunk and explode, scattering debris in the starry domain of the Lost Paradise. After searching, we have not found any remains of the Flame Soul Battler. However, with a serious and responsible attitude, the search will continue. Even if we find a small piece, we will pack it and return it to the Aral Star. Good, very good. It seems that today, even if I don't want to die, I must die. But please remember, since stepping into the universe, there have been millions of people who want me dead. In the end, there are only a few who can still talk to me while alive. Ning Jie threatened coldly. You truly deserve to be the idol I admire, always filled with a chilling intent to kill. Please rest assured, after you die, I will send you back to Earth for burial. Dracula spoke, leaning close to Ning Jie's ear and whispering, but I will keep your heart as a part of my collection. Satisfied, Dracula turned and walked away, two soldiers dragging Ning Jie's arm behind him like a corpse. However, as they reached the entrance of the factory area, Dracula's good mood was naturally gone, because a white classic car was parked here. A gentleman with a cane stood beside Alice, talking to her. As for the Earth soldiers and Miller who were supposed to escort the prisoner's car, they have now been released from handcuffs and boarded the waiting medical vehicle. Annie was being taken care of by a group of doctors, 
receiving an injection of a drug to wake her up from unconsciousness. Dracula, you didn't even inform me about such a big arrest operation. Your ability to act independently is getting stronger. A gentleman in a white suit walked confidently in front of Dracula, carefully examining the man who was educating Dracula with a commanding tone. He had a slender body like a cheetah, with a real cheetah's head, even the spots on his face were exactly the same. Just this beast-like face, no one in the city of Fantheon would not recognize him, because he is the legitimate heir of the former lord's family, Kate. Although under the joint pressure of the big shots, the former lord's family handed over the political power of Fantheon City and began to implement a three-district election system. However, the influence of the lord's family in Fantheon City is still unquestionable, especially the contemporary Kate, who is considered the elite among elites. Not only did he graduate from a famous interstellar academy, he is also proficient in mech driving, skilled in martial arts, knowledgeable in art, has taste, and is even the district governor of the residential area. He has almost everything that can make every woman fall for him. However, he also has his own weakness. Alice told me that her friend has fallen into your hands and hopes that you can hand him over. Kate rarely used a negotiating tone. What if I say no? Dracula replied coldly. You have arrested Alice's friend with a bunch of charges, I suppose you want to go through the normal judicial process. Do you need me to contact the Fantheon Arbitration Committee? We can have a trial within an hour. Kate took out his phone. No need, 7 out of 10 of those old guys are servants of your noble lord's family. It's meaningless to play this kind of process, I don't have that much time. Since you came to me for someone today, fine, I'll give you face. But let me remind you, as the big brother, don't spend all your time fawning over a little Biausi from a nightclub, you're tarnishing the face of the lord's family. Before Dracula finished speaking, a cold light flashed in front of him, a slender long sword drawn from the cane was already pressing against his throat. The heavily armed soldiers nervously aimed their guns to protect their leader, but in an instant, all the armor on these soldiers lit up with red aurora dots, all of them emitted from infrared sights from various corners of the nearby buildings. Judging from the terrifying number, each mech soldier had at least three guns aimed at their heads, hearts, and wrists. The dots on the group of mech soldiers closest to Kate were enough to turn them into hornet nests in an instant. Listen carefully, blood-sucking monster. What we value now is freedom of speech, so it's okay if you insult me, I'm very open-minded. But if I hear even half a word insulting Alice from your mouth, half a word, I will personally cut off your tongue and stuff it down your throat, do you understand? Kate said clearly, word by word, in Dracula's ear. There will come a day when Fantheon will no longer be under your control. When that day comes, beg me, I can let you live. Dracula smiled. You won't live to see that day. Nurse, save him. Kate retracted the long sword in parallel and the nurse carrying the stretcher immediately stepped forward and took the bloodied Ning Jie from the hands of the armored soldiers. Sir, lie down. The nurse carefully placed Ning Jie on the stretcher, but Ning Jie's eyes were still fixed on the nurse's chest. Sir, please don't touch my chest. You're injured. You'll fall off the stretcher. The nurse, carrying the stretcher, exclaimed in frustration. Pity her, her hands were unable to stop Ning Jie's clutches. Don't mind, don't mind. In our culture, we express gratitude by grabbing the chest. I am thanking you, Ning Jie said, bloodstained saliva dripping from the corner of his mouth. No matter how much Dracula wanted Ning Jie dead, because only his death would allow the next step of capturing the flame soul god. But he had to give face to Kate, not only because Kate was the legitimate heir of the former lord's family, but also because Kate, as the district chief of the living area, controlled the peripheral defense of the entire Fantheon city. To ensure the stable trade of pirates and the privacy and security of some dignitaries, there were over 100,000 troops stationed in the peripheral defense of Fantheon City throughout the year. As for the number of warships and mechas, apart from the authorities, even district chiefs like Dracula had no idea. With the same military power as Kate, she could easily make you disappear into the dark universe within minutes of leaving Fantheon City. Dracula was not a fool, especially when facing a madman whose emotions clouded his judgment and who held military power. He had no choice but to back down. Groups of armored soldiers had to sit back in the armored vehicles they came in and leave in embarrassment. Dracula also got into a lengthened sedan and left. When Kate saw Ning Jia, who was pinching the nurse's chest, being taken away in an ambulance, she returned to Alice's side and sighed softly, Is this your new lover? Ning Jia, the flame soul god who once shook the universe a thousand years ago. If I hadn't seen him, I would have thought he was a good choice. But now it seems that this guy is no different from a rogue on the street. Kate, didn't we agree? After we broke up, no matter who I find, you can't criticize. That's the premise for us to remain friends, Alice smiled, leaning against the car door. Break up? That's what you said. I never agreed. 
To me, we just had a little disagreement, like any quarreling lovers. You are the only one in my heart. When you've had enough, I will come and marry you as my official wife. Kate's words were full of confidence. Think whatever you want. I can only tell you that I don't love you, and you can never become the primal power in my heart. Alice got into the sports car. But thank you this time. If you hadn't come, I don't know how bad things would have gotten. You're welcome. For you, no matter where or when in this universe, whenever you need me, I will be there, even if it means dying for you. I am willing, Kate said, but by the time he finished speaking, the listener had already revved the engine and sped away. Alice was always like this, when it came to men she lost interest in, she wouldn't waste too much time looking at them. Kate became friends with Alice because of his own infatuation and good manners. Fantion Hospital was perhaps the best treatment facility in the universe. It had channels to introduce the most advanced treatment equipment from across the universe. Many doctors were retired military doctors who were tired of the life of pirates and settled down here. There were also some crazy doctors who were wanted throughout the interstellar space for conducting human experiments, but generally, their medical skills were excellent. Most importantly, they could anticipate all kinds of patients here, serving various aliens that were as numerous as the hairs on a cow. Whatever strange diseases or injuries you encountered, the rich experience accumulated over many years made Fantion Hospital the best comprehensive medical institution. What was most worth boasting about was that many VIPs from the Starry Sky Catastrophe came here incognito to treat various illnesses. When Ning Jia woke up again, he was lying in a well-decorated single patient room, with various monitoring medical equipment beeping in the room. His head was wrapped up like a dumpling, and his bare upper body was covered in wires. When he turned his head, he saw Alice sitting next to him, looking at Ning Jia's electronic medical record. Why did I faint? How long was I unconscious? Ning Jia frowned, unable to piece together the fragments of his memory. You've been asleep for six hours. The doctor said that after you got into the ambulance, you touched the nurse's chest and refused to let go, insisting that it was a gesture of thanks. The doctor gave you a sedative shot, but you were resistant to it. They had to give you three shots, and finally used a powerful anesthesia used to deal with the gray rock people to knock you out. Alice smiled and put the electronic medical record aside, picked up a bowl of millet porridge and blew on it. The examination showed that you had lost more than a quarter of your blood, and most people would have gone into shock or experienced muscle spasms and hallucinations in this situation. But you were still conscious and even made advances towards the nurse. You're truly a strange creature. Don't praise me like that, I'll get proud. By the way, where are my friends? Ning Jie sat up and leaned against the headboard. They all checked out fine. Spaceport no. Two has already opened, so they went back to the warship first. They should come to see you later. Here, have some porridge to warm your stomach. Okay. Ning Jie was happy to have a beautiful woman serving him, but little did he know that Alice took a mouthful of hot porridge and fed it into her own mouth, then leaned forward, hugged Ning Jie's head with one hand, and fed it to him mouth to mouth. This was the first time Ning Jie had eaten porridge like this, and his Adam's apple bobbed up and down. Just then, the door of the ward opened sideways, and Ling Shan, holding a lunchbox and smiling, walked in. Ning. Jie. Ling Shan hadn't finished speaking when she saw the scene in front of her and was completely stunned. I'm. Sorry. Ling Shan didn't know what to say, so she put the lunchbox on the cabinet and turned to leave. Did you do it on purpose? It wasn't until he swallowed the last grain of rice that Ning Jie gently pushed Alice away and asked. Of course, do you think I have big ears for nothing? I heard her footsteps as soon as she came upstairs. Alice admitted without hiding anything. Why did you do that? You know that this kind of young girl can't possibly interest me. Ning Jie was puzzled. No matter what you say, I can't let any female animal who has feelings for you become my competitor. At least during the period when I'm interested in you, I have to ensure my dominant position. If necessary, I will kill all the female animals around you. Alice's smile was still sweet, but her words carried an undeniable air of dominance. I mean, why did Ling Shan run out strangely? It turns out that a spring drama is being staged here. Can you please close the door next time? And, feeling refreshed, walked in wearing a familiar white coat. If she had a stethoscope around her neck, she would look just like a doctor doing rounds. Miss and seems to be fine now. Is everything arranged on the warship? Alice sat by Ning Jie's bedside and showed no intention of leaving. Miss Alice, I truly appreciate your help. Without you, we probably wouldn't have had the opportunity to have this conversation. But now I have some private matters to discuss with Ning Jie, I don't know if you can, and expressed her gratitude and politely asked. If it makes you feel more at ease for me to leave, then I will. Unfortunately, we cat people have excellent hearing. Even if I go to the first floor, I can still hear. It won't be a problem. 
Alice smiled and touched her triangular ears. Go ahead and talk, Alice won't betray us. Ningjie's calmness stems from Alice's understanding of himself. He will not let those who betray him live. Okay, to put it simply, Annie sat down by Ningjie's bed and lowered her voice. I brought the flame soul god into the city. Are you kidding? Won't the inspectors check you? Alice was shocked. Kate seems to have a lot of power in Fantian City. I heard that the reopening of the No. 2 spaceport was his personal order. The armored truck carrying the mecha was just a gift for Kate. The inspectors didn't dare to touch the cargo container at all, Annie said proudly. Woman, I asked my friend to save you, but that doesn't mean you can shamelessly act recklessly. You know that if something goes wrong, Kate will also be held responsible. Alice glared angrily. She hated the cunning of the woman in front of her, even though such people generally live longer in space. I'm sorry, Miss Alice. We bear the burden of six billion lives. Ning Jie is our biggest asset. For the survival of the flame soul god, every one of us who comes out can die, but Ning Jie must never make the same mistake again. So, I have something to tell you. Annie took a deep breath and looked at Ning Jie. Next time, no matter which one of us encounters danger, please treat us as if we are already dead. Don't interfere in our dangers and cause harm to yourself. I have already announced this belief to everyone. The dentist has drilled holes in the teeth of every crew member and placed cyanide capsules inside. Once anyone is kidnapped and used to threaten you, we will bite and relieve your worries immediately. Annie pulled the corners of her mouth and revealed her molars, where a white capsule was indeed placed. Why do you have to do this? Ning Jiai sighed. From the moment we set off, our lives no longer belong to us. Without such a spirit of sacrifice, the starry journey of the earth can never go far. Annie's unwavering belief amazed Alice. As Annie said, the journey of any advanced civilization in the universe is paved with blood and corpses. Only by having numerous lives willing to sacrifice for others can their planet surpass other civilizations and become a powerful existence that cannot be violated. Only in this way can they ensure the peace and happiness of their descendants for generations to come. This is a direct contact communicator for you to communicate with the snake. You must carry it with you even when you go to the bathroom. Once needed, you must ensure your own survival to the maximum extent. Annie said, handing a small communicator the size of a quail egg to Ningjie. As for your search for the navigator, how is it going? It's in progress. Ningjie looked at Alice by the bed. Back in his own huge mansion, Dracula's face never showed any expression. His followers followed respectfully behind him, not daring to make a sound. Sir, it's time for dinner. The butler gathered the courage to speak softly behind Dracula. Dracula didn't say a word and walked directly into the dining room. There, a naked girl of only 13 or 14 years old was handcuffed, blindfolded, and with a ball gag in her mouth, lying on the dining table. She couldn't see anything, but she could hear the footsteps nearby, trembling with fear. Get out! Dracula roared lowly, and the more than 10 servants who were ready to serve Dracula's meal hurriedly left the spacious dining room. Dracula didn't like to close the door because he had claustrophobia, but he was in a bad mood and hated being disturbed. The many servants huddled outside the door, clinging to the walls, afraid to make a sound, for fear of being seen by the master. The four-eared Persian cat was thrown to the ground, and Dracula untied the cloak around his neck and approached, opening his mouth to reveal his gleaming white fangs. He crazily bit into the girl's neck. Although a ball was stuffed in the girl's mouth to prevent her from screaming, her painful screams and cries still echoed throughout the restaurant and the corridor outside, sending shivers down people's spines. At this moment, a figure wrapped in white bandages like a mummy walked up to the butler. Is the master dining? The mummy asked. It's Mr. Gu Xuan. Do you have something to discuss with the master? The master is in a bad mood today. The butler whispered. Just as the butler spoke, a scream came from the restaurant, followed by silence. Let him in if it's Gu Xuan. Dracula roared in the restaurant. Without delay, Gu Xuan walked into the restaurant and knelt on one knee in front of Dracula. The carpet beneath his feet was stained with hot blood. Obviously, Dracula was in a very bad mood today. What should have been a simple bite on the neck turned into a horrifying act of torturing food. On the dining table, the little girl lay in a blood-stained plate, covered in hundreds of bite marks all over her body, almost turning her into a sieve. Some parts of her body had even been torn apart, with blood splattered everywhere. Even Dracula's clothes had turned into a bloody mess, a sight too gruesome to bear. Two servants quickly came in and took away the plate that was too horrifying to look at. Although the strong smell of blood still lingered in the spacious restaurant, only Dracula and Gushuan remained. According to your orders, we have investigated and found out that Ningjie is currently staying at Fantian Hospital, with Alice always by her side. Annie and their female mecha pilot have just rushed to the hospital. Interestingly, a large transport truck left Port No. 
too not long ago, labeled as Lady Kate's cargo, so no one dared to inspect it. It is suspected to be transporting the God of War Mecca. It is currently parked in the public freight yard. If needed, we can send troops to inspect it at any time, or let my withered vine destroy it from a distance. Gu Xuan calmly reported. He was the Mecca pilot who had killed Ningxia's silver Mecca from 10 kilometers away, and he was Dracula's most trusted assassin. Just keep an eye on it for now and arrange some manpower for surveillance. Don't damage the flame soul god of war, it's the collectible I want the most. Of course, the ice soul god of war dragon, which is the most famous in Aral, is also the god of war I want the most. Alright, you can go now. Dracula rubbed his temples. Yes, sir. Gushuan turned and left, his knees already stained with blood, but he didn't mind. Dracula changed into clean clothes and made his way to the secret communication room underground in the mansion. It was about the size of half a football field, with only a sofa in the center and a huge electronic screen. He dialed a number that hadn't been contacted for a long time through an encrypted channel. The beeping sound echoed in the large underground room and was answered after at least half a minute. The electronic screen displayed the fierce face of Hammett, covered in snake scales. Dracula, although I gave you this number, it doesn't mean we are friends and you can call me casually. I'm busy right now, hunting. If you can't give me a surprise, you will regret disturbing my mood. Hammett said impatiently. Great High Priest of the Wormstar, your fleet's recent actions in space have been eye-catching, and your entanglement with Ningjie is well known. Are you waiting for the Earth's warships? But do you think the waiting time is a bit too long? Dracula spoke with utmost humility. It seems you do have a surprise for me. Hammett's eyes flickered like a snake, and he immediately understood. A wicked smile appeared on the corner of his mouth. Do you have news about Ningjie? Not just news, he is currently in the Fantian city of the Lost Paradise. My people have been monitoring them, but for now, I can't make a move. Kate and this guy are involved, and they are suppressing me from taking action. Of course, I also have to consider the relationship between Arale and him. It's not convenient for me to directly intervene. You know, perhaps you disdain Arale, but we traitors are terrifying to the point of death. Dracula's tone became more and more playful. A despicable person like you is just being melodramatic. Say what you want. Hammett sneered. Then I thank Lord Hammett for his grace. I am not lacking in money, but I have been collecting classic mechas as a lifelong ambition. After the matter is done, Ningjie will be yours, but the flame soul god of war will be mine. Dracula smirked. No problem, I can get as many god of war mechas as I want. Since you can't make a move, I will personally take care of the guy who dares to pull the trigger on my forehead. But the route is a bit far, it will probably take me three days to arrive. You must ensure that he is still there when my fleet arrives. Hammett said, suddenly bringing his face close to the screen and speaking in a gloomy tone, if he has already left by the time I arrive, then you can expect to accompany your lost paradise to become dinner for my bugs, understand? Lord, you must not bring your fleet here, the defense system of the lost paradise is one of the best in the universe, there may be unexpected changes. Dracula was really scared. What are you afraid of? I can afford to lose a fleet. I heard that Kate completely controls the outer defense of the Fantian city. Haven't you always wanted to rule the three districts? Consider it a gift from me, along with wiping out the city lord's family. Hammett didn't care at all, and in just a few words, it seemed that he had already decided the fate of a refugee nation that had existed in the universe for countless years. In that case, there is no problem. I will await your arrival, lord. Dracula bowed and saluted satisfactorily, and the electronic screen closed at this moment. Ningjie, you truly are a gift from heaven. Dracula sighed. In the universe, the massive bug star fleet began to move, the huge moth warships turned their bows, and countless bone-winged dragonflies headed towards the Fantian city. Back in the quiet sickroom, Ningjie stared at Alice sitting on the bed, as if waiting for something. How do you think I can help you? Alice scooped up a spoonful of porridge and started eating, her fair long legs swinging by the bed. In terms of being well-informed, Xinxing is one of the best in the Fantian city. There aren't many interstellar refugees who dare to wander in the interstellar galaxy, but as long as they dare to, they must be well-known figures. Such characters wouldn't miss out on having fun and bragging in Chinching, so I believe you can help. This was the reason Ningjie went to Chinching as soon as possible. It sounds reasonable, but I don't know why I should help you. Remember, you are the one who disrupted our plans. And we can't really call ourselves friends, can we? Helping you this time is already giving you face, and you keep making demands one after another, not fair. Alice teased like a lover teasing her boyfriend. What do you want? Money? Or something else? Or maybe there's someone you don't like, and I can take care of him for you. This was a payment method that Ningjie was good at. Miss Alice, if you can really help us, the whole earth will remember your kindness. 
When we successfully enter the Starfall, we will definitely repay you. Annie also pleaded on the side. Money? That's something Alice doesn't care about. As for the repayment of becoming the Starfall planet? Thanks, but no thanks. Looking back, the hexagonal demon bull did help the fleeing Arai royal family, but when we were destroyed by the bug star, I didn't see Arai's fleet helping us. So whether to report or not, it's all just a way to deceive people. Alice said indifferently. So what do you want? Ningjia asked hesitantly. It's now 1158 in Fantian City. Spend a day dating me, in every way you know, make me happy, let me experience what love is, and I'll help you find a navigator. Alice looked at Ning Jia on the sickbed with big eyes and a smile. Okay, I promise you, Annie said eagerly. Come on, I don't want you to sell yourself. You agreed so readily, Ning Jia said, twitching his mouth and looking at Annie beside him. Damn, aren't you a pervert? It's rare to have such a beautiful girl willing to go on a date with you, and you're still being picky. Are you crazy? After scolding Ning Jia with disdain, Annie looked at Alice again and said, Miss Alice, how do you like to play? Whips, wax dripping, riding a wooden donkey. As long as she's alive when we're done, anything goes? Riding a wooden donkey? What is that? Alice asked in confusion. You definitely don't want to know. Ning Jia said, looking like he wanted to cry but had no tears. What price would be enough for you to betray the only god of war on the planet? The answer is, of course, the right price. Annie sold Ning Jia, and the deal was reached in just two seconds. As a special dating fund, Annie also privately gave Ning Jia a Fantian bank card. After checking the balance, it was only 500 yuan, which would be enough for two people to watch two movies in Fantian City. You're really stingy. You want the horse to run, but you don't want to feed it. At least add a zero. This price isn't even enough to rent a room in a third-rate hotel in Fantian. Ning Jia's hand holding the card was trembling. Didn't you just want to go on a date? Who told you to rent a room? The price for going to bed and accompanying a conversation is different, don't you know? If you have the need to go to bed, don't just ask for a navigator, have her introduce us directly to Kate online. I'll notify some earth merchants to open shops in Fantian and sell resources. The prices of some scarce minerals here are 20% higher than our regular market. And once we open up sales here, it will be easier for us to directly purchase the latest technological products from the universe, quickly improving the technological level of our earth. Annie's eyes sparkled as she spoke. By the way, didn't you want to join the Starfall in the Sky? The Starfall in the Sky strictly prohibits members from colluding with criminal dens like Fantian City. Ning Jie was sweating coldly. Humph, there are different methods for different situations. When needed, Earth can produce a batch of refugee merchants who deny their planetary origins to help us with everything. Our ancestors have left us a lot of valuable experience in playing these deceitful games, so you don't need to worry about it at all. Annie patted Ning Jie's shoulder. By the way, the hopes of Earth and its people are entrusted to you. I'll give you one week. That's too long. The bug star won't wait for us like idiots like 2B. Alice said one day, and that's our limit. Annie, notify the fleet to prepare. Once we have the navigator, we'll leave. Ning Jie said as he got off the sickbed and put on a casual jacket. X has been working on this, but it will take at least a day and a half. Annie looked at the time, the clock had just passed 12 o'clock. Why? Ning Jie asked, puzzled. There's an annual Fantian Festival auction the day after tomorrow at noon. I heard there will be a lot of good stuff. You know, the flame soul god of war has been frozen for a thousand years and has fatal defects. The Hangu system is no longer used. The equipment we provided on Earth obviously can't withstand your godlike speed. So in addition to finding some treasures for later research, I also want to quickly use alien weapons to strengthen the flame soul god of war and restore its true combat power. Annie had already found out. Do whatever you want, just don't forget your mission. Ning Jie finished speaking and walked in front of Alice. And you, my friend, how do you want to talk? I'm ready. Sorry, I'm not ready. It's early in the morning, and it's my sleeping time. Come to Chinching at 9 o'clock in the morning, and remember not to be late. Alice playfully ignored Ning Jie and left the ward. Since you said so, I'll go back first. I need to prepare some gold and exchange it for currency at the Fantian Bank tomorrow. Annie also quickly ran away. These crazy women. Ning Jie, who was dressed neatly, was stood up, and it was early in the morning. Even though Fantian City was known as the city that never sleeps, most people were still asleep at this time. The most important thing was that Ning Jie was experiencing the side effects of the anesthetic needle. Once he woke up, his spirit would become extremely excited, and he would no longer feel sleepy. Helplessly, he left the ward with a card worth 500 yuan. Suddenly, he found that the disappeared Lingshan was sitting in the corridor outside the ward. Why are you still here? 
Didn't you accompany Annie back to sleep? Ning Jie sat next to Ling Shan. In the dimly lit hospital corridor, only the green light of emergency lights decorated the aisle. I was specially assigned to stay here to protect you. I was even allowed to carry a gun. Ling Shan opened her coat, revealing a black pistol in the holster under her armpit, but what Ning Jie saw was the chest wrapped in a tight fitting suit. How humorous, sending a woman to protect me. Ning Jie laughed out loud. So, my personal female bodyguard, do you want to take a break? No need, the sobering soup and chinching is too strong. It makes me feel like I've had a shot of adrenaline. Thinking back to the scene in Chinching, Ling Shan frowned and almost vomited because the sobering soup, the size of a basin, was thick and sticky like oil, with eyeballs and other unidentified objects floating in it. Ling Shan suspected that she was scared awake in the end. Since you can't sleep either, let's do something that can make each other happy. Ning Jie suddenly grabbed Ling Shan's shoulder, his eyes flashing with silver light. What do you want to do? Ling Shan swallowed her saliva. Fifteen minutes later, Ling Shan parked the convertible car at the entrance of the hospital, and Ning Jie swaggered out and sat in the passenger seat. I'll drive for you and take you out for a ride. Is this something that can make each other happy? I'm not happy at all. Ling Shan sighed and muttered softly. Don't mind, don't mind. I have a huge sum of money with me. Now I'll take you to a good place for supper. Ning Jie shook the card with 500 yuan in his hand. The vehicle drove on the quiet streets of Fantian City. The central lighting core here had been turned off, and the street lights along the way had been turned on. If you look up, the street lights on the other side of the sky look like stars, and the cars driving with their headlights on are like slow-moving meteors crossing the sky, making you feel the urge to make a wish. Ning Jie, are you and Alice lovers? Bored during the drive, Ling Shan couldn't help but ask softly. No. Ning Jie answered without hesitation. But you kissed each other? Ling Shan had evidence. We have kissed. Does that count as being a couple? Ning Jie chuckled. That was a forced kiss. It doesn't count. Ling Shan emphasized. But I'm the same, aren't I? Ning Jie said helplessly. Boys like you always attract the most beautiful girls to come close to you. Whether it's Queen Nana or Alice, when facing you, girls are like moths to a flame, unable to control themselves. Ling Shan sighed. You are also a beauty and you are doing well in controlling yourself, aren't you? I won't fall in love with you, or rather, I don't know how to love someone at all. My life is a series of passive choices. Love is such an active thing, and I can't do it. Ling Shan's gaze looked into the distance of the street. My parents are both teachers, but they teach regular subjects like language and math, not piloting mechs. Their whole lives were spent teaching children how to become good kids. So before I was even born, they had already planned out my life. What brand of formula to feed me? what kind of elementary school to attend, what talents to develop. The reason I became a light reconnaissance mech pilot is because the treatment for flying mech pilots is better than regular in heavy armor, and there are flight subsidies for every mission. From childhood to adulthood, I never had any opinions of my own because there was never a place where I needed to make decisions. What about love? Ning Jie asked curiously. I did tell my parents that Miller was pursuing me. They put a lot of effort into investigating Miller's background, and in the end, they approved of us being in a relationship. And Miller has been really good to me, so I agreed. Ling Shan spoke casually. In my life, nothing unpredictable has ever happened, except for you. When you sat next to me with that lecherous look and put your hand on my thigh, I was completely at a loss. You never consider the confusion you bring to others, and you never take people into account. Even when Miller and the others beat you up, you still don't know how to restrain yourself. Sometimes I think you're a clueless fool, but when you get into the mech, your expression completely changes. You give people a sense of security that even an army can't match. I think you're a very strange person. Consider me a small chess piece that fell into your lake, even if it stirs up ripples, I would be honored. Ning Jia laughed. Stop the car, we're here. Ling Shan parked by the roadside. This place was located at the border between the entertainment district and the trading district. A long street illuminated by bright lights became the most distinct dividing line, and on both sides of this street were old buildings that were only one or two stories tall. Just like the development patterns of all urban areas in the universe, the more border areas were, the less attention they received. The more central areas would undergo renovations twice a year, which was considered normal. Therefore, the small street at the intersection of two districts maintained its original appearance from thousands of years ago. However, among many regular customers in Fantian City, this relatively unknown street was very famous. It was called Gourmet Street. This name was translated from Earth's language, and people from different planets would use the most delicious creatures or mythical characters from their own planets to replace the name of this street. So for Ning Jie and Ling Shan, this place was Gourmet Street, 
a street that stretched over 40 kilometers, with over 4,000 registered shops and tens of thousands of unregistered roadside stalls. The consumption here was probably the cheapest in all of Fantian City. Even if you only had a few Fantian coins, you could definitely find food that would make you stuffed. Imagine this, perhaps two planets that were thousands of light years apart, their food could be separated by just one stall here. Many lower class pirate fish refugees liked to linger here, from breakfast to late night snacks. The stalls here operated alternately, ensuring that there was always fresh and hot food available. Gourmet Street, a paradise for food lovers. The widest part was only 3 meters, and the narrowest part was just enough for a person to squeeze through. The meandering street formed a curved and ravaged arc, like a galaxy leading to paradise in the already deep night of Fantian City. It was impossible to drive into this location, only walking. Are you sure we should eat here? Ling Shan was pulled in by Ning Jia. The bustling crowd around them consisted of various strange-looking aliens, some towering and powerful like humanoid tanks, others so small that you could accidentally step on them. When it comes to food, the taste of the hundreds of different delicacies in the air here is considered heavenly by some extraterrestrials, but it may make you feel nauseous. Being in the universe makes it impossible to truly understand one's own insignificance. The so-called feelings are actually just imagined. Only by being in this gluttonous street, where the five senses construct a complete perceptual world, can you understand that you are not the only creature in the universe? Each strange-looking alien represents a completely different cultural background as well as different dietary habits and historical stories. Those who gather here are travelers walking a difficult path in the stars. No matter how far they go, they will eventually die on the journey. Asking how long the journey is is like asking how big the universe is. No one has ever seen the boundaries of the universe, and no civilization has ever reached the end of the journey. Even the longest life has an end, but even if you die, there will still be your compatriots, your descendants, continuing on. Lingshan is not a picky eater. As long as it's not onions, she can eat almost anything. But the food here, can it even be considered food? Do you want a bowl of thick soup? It smells good. Ningjia pointed to a big pot emitting steam on the street and said, to be honest, it smells good, a bit like Earth's clay pot pork rib soup, just black in color. Is it tasty? Lingshan bent down and asked in doubt, when suddenly an ugly fish-like creature jumped out of the pot, almost biting Lingshan's nose, scaring her into leaning against Ningjia's arms. Friends, would you like a bowl of hot tiger fish spicy soup? It's free if it's not delicious. An ugly alien boss came out and greeted them. What kind of soup is this? Your fish are still alive. Lingshan exclaimed angrily. Of course they're alive. Tiger fish can swim in magma. It takes 10 years for a tiger fish to develop its flavor, and after 20 years, it becomes even more delicious. This is a well-known brand. This tiger fish has been simmering for 30 years. The taste released from the fish scales is just right. Come, try a bowl. The boss strongly recommended. Thanks, but we're not used to eating live things. Lingshan wiped the cold sweat from her forehead and walked away with Ningjie, who made a helpless expression to the boss. As they walked, they continued to be picky. This damn gluttonous street didn't have any food that wouldn't scare you. Not to mention the ingredients that were still twitching, even the cooked food looked ugly, as if it had been exposed to nuclear radiation. According to Ningjie, the uglier the ingredient, the better it tasted. For example, there was a kind of swallowing frog here. They lived in extremely harsh environments, and every time they laid eggs and hatched, the parents would eat the ugliest offspring. One reason was that the ugly offspring were at a disadvantage in future competition and mating, and the other reason was that the ugly taste was actually better. Finally, after walking for 30 minutes, Lingshan finally found a shop that sold more decent ingredients. The shop was small, with only three square tables set up on the street, and two of them were empty. Business seemed to be bad. This was probably because the things they sold were too beautiful. The white, tofu-like ingredients were placed next to the stall, smooth and delicate, without the fragrance of soy products, but with a hint of fishy smell, presumably made from fish or similar ingredients. However, it didn't look repulsive. Let's eat this. Lingshan finally found something she could eat and sat down at an empty table. Are you sure you want to eat this? Ningjie looked hesitant. Come on, what kind of things have we encountered on this journey? We can't eat any of them. This at least resembles something we can eat. I don't want to change. Lingshan took out the chopsticks like utensils. Boss, one bowl, please. Ningjie sat across from Lingshan. Aren't you going to eat? Lingshan was puzzled. I'm not hungry, you go ahead and eat. Ningjie crossed his hands and leaned on the table, looking at Lingshan. I mean, do you like your current life? What do you mean? Lingshan didn't understand. Listening to others' arrangements for everything, including love, are you happy? I don't know. 
It seems like I've never been passionate about anything. My parents' arrangements for me have never been wrong. They have more experience than me, they have eaten more salt than I have eaten rice. They won't harm me, so I think the life they arranged for me should be the best choice. Lingshan tilted her head inside. The best choice is not necessarily the choice you want the most. In the era I lived in, all the children were studying hard because of the pressure to find employment. Parents wanted their children to study the most needed professions. But after four years of university, you find that the most needed industries suddenly become flooded with talent, and salaries are reduced to a pittance. Can you guess why? It's because parents chose the professions that were in demand for their children. Ningjiai sighed. Have you ever had a past where someone made choices for you? Lingshan asked curiously. No. I am an orphan, a child who grew up in an orphanage. I don't know who my parents are. The only choice they made for me was to leave me in front of a relatively good orphanage and gave me the name Ningjie. I think for them, abandoning me was the best choice, right? Life in the orphanage wasn't as bad as I imagined. We had our own classrooms, our own library, a large enough lawn, and toys sent from all over. The only thing missing was that we never had parents come to pick us up after school. The only place we could go was within a 107. For meter radius, where there was a brick wall with iron railings surrounding it. Ningjie smiled. I'm sorry. Lingshan apologized for touching Ningjie's pain. Why are you apologizing? It's not like you abandoned me. If anyone should apologize, it should be me. If it weren't for my appearance, maybe you wouldn't feel anything wrong with a life arranged by others, and you would easily find happiness. Ningjie spoke as the white tofu soup that Lingshan ordered was brought to the table. Looking at the clear tofu soup, with a faint fresh aroma, it seemed like Lingshan's choice was the right one. You really won't eat? Then I'll start. Lingshan smiled and started eating. This bowl of tofu, whether it was the texture or the taste, was beyond words. It was hard to understand why the business couldn't compete with those soup restaurants that also sold fish baths. Did I tell you that Miller took back the engagement ring? Lingshan said while eating. Since he went out with you, he has changed completely. He suddenly became mature. If it weren't for his maturity, maybe I would have made a choice for my own life for the first time, which is to reject him. Why don't you want to accept? Aren't you in a relationship? Ningjie laughed. I don't know why either. If I tell my parents about this, they would be happy and want me to agree. But there has always been a voice in my head telling me that if I agree, my dreams will be completely over. Lingshan sighed softly. What is your dream? I want to continue soaring in the blue sky, piloting mechas, visiting every galaxy in the universe, seeing different suns, becoming an interstellar backpacker. Of course, I will bring a lot of instant noodles. I can't get used to those mutated fish, but if there's tofu like this to eat, it's fine too. Lingshan wouldn't tell Ningjie that this dream originated from the rooftop simulation flight that Ningjie took her on. It was also the first time Lingshan discovered the joy of piloting mechas and flying. Everyone must pay a price for their choices. Have you thought it through? Ningjie asked calmly. I think I will encounter many dangers, but I believe that on this journey, I will also learn many things, including the ability to protect myself. I am ready. Lingshan took a deep breath and nodded. No, I mean, the fact that you decided to continue eating this tofu. Actually, this thing is called Thousand Worms Never Die. It is made from the eggs of over 1,000 types of insects from various planets. It is listed as one of the top 10 exotic foods in the universe. Compared to it, those soups with fish bathing in them are nothing. Your courage truly impresses me. Ningjie wiped the cold sweat off his forehead and realized that all the aliens passing behind them were looking at the beautiful girl eating Thousand Worms Never Die with strange eyes. Put. Ling Shan trembled all over and suddenly turned her head to vomit uncontrollably. She almost vomited out her intestines and stomach. Ning Jia, you jerk. You didn't tell me. Ling Shan angrily shouted with tears in her eyes. It's not that I didn't tell you, I was just curious about the taste of this thing too. Ning Jia smirked. Suddenly, Ling Shan grabbed a piece of tofu and stuffed it into Ning Jia's mouth. Now you know, right? Looking at Ning Jia choking on the side, Ling Shan, with tears in her eyes, couldn't help but laugh. You little brat. Daring to trick me. Take this. Ning Jie grabbed a piece of tofu and threw it at Ling Shan. The two of them started a snowball fight with white worm egg chunks. The aliens nearby couldn't help but feel embarrassed. These aliens are so weird. They have such strange tastes. They continued playing until 3 in the morning. Ling Shan finally took Ning Jie and got into the car to go back to the hospital. Their clothes were all dirty, covered in white worm egg paste, as if they had been mated by worms during their mating season. As a result, even when they walked through the crowded gluttonous street, the road next to them was unusually empty, and no one dared to approach them. We've arrived, get off the car. Ling Shan parked the car at the entrance of the hospital. 
What are you going to do now? Ning Jia casually asked. I'm going back to the warship to take a shower, change clothes, and then come over. Captain Annie ordered me to protect you closely and complete tomorrow's mission. Ling Shan calmly said. Do you know what my mission is for tomorrow? Ning Jia, sitting in the passenger seat, looked at the girl next to him who didn't understand anything. I'm not sure. Captain Annie said it's a crucial mission that concerns our survival, and your safety needs to be properly protected. Before the mission, I was even asked to write a farewell letter. Ling Shan's lips trembled a bit. Was she scared? Ignorant girl, let me tell you what I'm going to do tomorrow. Ning Jia suddenly leaned over and hugged Ling Shan's head from behind, and his thin lips kissed her. Ling Shan widened her pupils nervously. This wasn't the first time he forcefully kissed her, but unlike the last time when she was panicked, Ling Shan surprisingly didn't resist more strongly. She didn't even close her teeth, allowing that slippery tongue to invade her mouth. This kiss lasted for a long time. It felt like a long time had passed before Ning Jia retreated to his own position. You! Ling Shan blushed, raised her hand to slap Ning Jia, but her hand was suspended in midair and couldn't come down. Damn it, you hid the poison so well, my tongue almost broke. Ning Jia casually spat out a small white capsule from his mouth. It was the cyanide poison that Annie forced every crew member to install on their molars. My capsule? Ling Shan nervously touched her own face and used her tongue to explore, but there was nothing there anymore. If someone asks you where the poison went, just say I took it off. No one will blame you. Ning Jia said, throwing the pill far away, disappearing into the night streets. Why did you do that? Annie said, we cannot be a burden to you because you will be the crucial step in saving the earth. We cannot hold you back. I also willingly took this pill. Ling Shan's eyes were filled with confusion. No one should die for another person. No life is more important or ranked higher than another. When death comes, our fear, regrets, and sadness are all equal. Don't sacrifice your life for anyone, and don't easily give up your own life. We only live once, but we will be dead for a long time, you know? Ning Jie said as he got out of the car and walked towards the hospital building. Go back and rest. I don't need bodyguards, nor do I need a third wheel. Watching Ning Jie's departing figure, Ling Shan seemed to understand why Miller would change so much just by accompanying Ning Jie on one mission. This man had a completely different understanding of values and perspectives from what they had learned. He was like a book filled with experiences, from which you could learn knowledge that you couldn't imagine. However, between the lines of this book, there was a faint sadness, as if every word he wrote came at the cost of blood and tears. In the early morning, when the artificial lighting system of Fantian City was activated, it was like a bright sun suddenly rising in this circular world. All the streetlights went out in that moment, and the transition from night to day took only zero, one seconds. But it told all the sleeping people that a new day had begun, and they were lucky to have lived another day. Only in a world like Fantian City, intertwined with interstellar refugees, criminals, and pirates, could you understand how fortunate it was to live one more day? Even the greatest interstellar pirate would have a day when their head would be separated from their body. It was an industry with an average lifespan of no more than 30 years, making all interstellar pirates know that when you earn money, you had to spend it immediately because once you left Fantian City, you might never come back. Speaking of which, this place was a paradise for criminals, but the order of the entire city could even rival the top 10 civilized cities in the universe. Firstly, because those who truly traveled through the stars knew that the vastness of the universe was not a place where one could easily become a king. Being kind and friendly allowed one to live longer. The idiots who made enemies everywhere might end up being betrayed by the most inconspicuous lackeys and be killed by the tragedy of the starry sky. Secondly, the three regions' security forces in Fantian City were all contracted mercenaries who received bonuses based on their performance. You had no idea how much they looked forward to someone causing trouble or fighting, just like traffic police officers at the end of the year hoping to find illegally parked cars. Of course, as a gathering of the most savage people, they also had an inexhaustible amount of energy that needed an outlet, so the underground fighting market here was exceptionally developed. Want to fight? No problem, come and sign up. Not only could you release your excess energy, but occasionally you could also earn a considerable amount of money, gain the respect of the audience, and win prestige, and even a substantial prize. However, when signing up, you must pay attention to the type of competition because many competitions ended with one side's death. But to be honest, the concept of love, which was too beautiful, didn't fit well with this city. For the surplus of male creatures, love and not loving were just about having or not having a relationship. So, there were basically no parks, cinemas, shopping malls, or places to enjoy beautiful scenery where you could fall in love. Alice presented Ning Jie with a condition that could be called a difficult problem. Sir, do you really want to have a relationship with that earthling? 
Although he was once the god of war on Alea Star and has some reputation in the universe, he now represents the earth that is being targeted by the Worm Star. The route he wants to take is extremely dangerous, even more perilous than those pirates outside. Jiang Yang stood by Alice's dressing table with her snake-like body coiled, expressing her concerns and advice. It's okay. According to his explanation of love to me, if I truly fall in love with him, no matter what happens to him, this love will never fade away. I will always remember it, and this love will become my strength, helping me accomplish the great task of reviving the hexagonal demon bull. Alice said as she drew her eyebrows in front of the dressing mirror, but that guy looks dangerous. He has already offended the district chief Dracula in the trading area. I'm worried about your safety. I was thinking of arranging a sister companion for you. Jian Yang always thinks ahead. No need. Dracula knows about my relationship with Kate, so he won't dare to touch me easily. Don't worry, when I come back, I will bring you a gift. Alice got up and left. Today, she wore a wide-shouldered white sweater and a knee-length skirt that hugged her fair skin. She carried a small leather bag in her hand. When she walked out of the Qinzhong gate on time, Ningjie had been waiting there, but strangely, he didn't drive or use any flying vehicles. He was riding a strange vehicle made up of two wheels, a chain, foot pedals, and a metal frame. What kind of strange transportation is this? Where is the engine? Alice walked up to Ningjie. I am the engine of this vehicle. This thing is called a bicycle, a product from my time or even earlier. When I woke up, this kind of thing no longer existed on earth. But it's quite simple to make. This morning, I specially went to Uncle Chiao's underground warehouse and made it with tools in a few minutes. Speaking of which, Uncle Chiao is quite extravagant. I told him to make it lighter and sturdier, but he used titanium aluminum alloy for the materials. The whole bike weighs only 2 kilograms, and it's sturdy enough to crash into a truck directly. Ningjie couldn't help but sigh that even the most primitive device could make a leap in quality with the support of advanced technology. This bike is really interesting, but it only has one seat. How can you take me? Alice laughed. Come, my supreme Miss Alice, come into my arms. Ningjie stepped aside, giving up the front bar of the bicycle. Alice swore that she had used hundreds of different means of transportation in the universe, but none of them were as uncomfortable as this bicycle. Sitting on the cylindrical iron rod for a while made her bottom hurt badly, and you had to sit sideways, twisting your body and holding onto the handlebars so as not to fall off. The whole body twisted like a twist, and her waist was sore. But this was the closest she had ever been to a driver in any means of transportation. Her back was only touching Ningjia's chest, so close that she could even feel each other's heartbeat. When Ningjia wanted to speak, every word sounded like a whisper in her ear, gently nourishing her heart. Have you ever used this bike to carry other female animals before? Alice smiled and looked ahead. No chance. You're the first one. By the way, this is the only type of vehicle I can drive among all the vehicles. Ningjia shrugged helplessly. I hope this isn't a lie to make me happy, because I'm really happy because of your words. Alice smiled and leaned back, pressing her back tighter against Ningjie. By the way, where do you want to go? I don't have much money, as you know. Basically, it's only enough to treat you to something on the gourmet street. Ningjie sighed. Don't worry, if I want to find a man who can impress me with money, I won't choose you. There are plenty of rich people who want to pursue me. What I want from you is something they can't give me. Alice turned her head slightly. Are you talking about extraordinary skills in bed? Ningjie's words clearly differed from what Alice wanted. Seeing you act dumb like this is really cute. I think I've fallen in love with you. Alice patted Ningjie's cheek lightly. Walking along the Chinching nightclub, through the fireworks alley, you can see many prostitutes yawning as they walk out of the pink storefronts. And if you go around the fireworks alley and continue straight to the left, you will find a row of cheap bars, where many drunks sit by the roadside, lying in their own vomit. And when you make your way to the street of the casino, every morning you will come across a group of debtors who have been stripped naked and thrown down from the casino platform, hanging upside down. Of course, these are just the low-level debtors. Occasionally, you can also see some debtors who have been skinned hanging upside down. In the laws of Fantian City, protecting the interests of creditors is the highest priority. Debts must be repaid, whether in cash or with one's own life. Along the way, Mingjie asked Alice several times where they were going and what they were going to do. But Alice always smiled and replied, we're almost there. She guided the way like a human GPS, enjoying the thrill brought by this novel bicycle. When it comes to piloting mechas, Ningjie can fight for dozens of hours without rest, his strength approaching that of a monster. But the leg muscles used to ride a bicycle are completely different, and after just one hour of exhaustion, Ningjie feels like he's about to die, sticking out his tongue. Hey, where do you want to go? Ningjie was almost in tears. It's all because of this bicycle, it's too slow. 
If we were in a car, we would have arrived in about 20 minutes, and my butt wouldn't hurt. Alice complained about Ningjie instead. Hey, do you think I'm a horse? I'm just a human. It's already good that I can reach a speed of about 30 kilometers per hour. Ningjie said frustratedly, We're here, we're here. Stop sticking out your tongue, your saliva is almost on my shoulder. Alice quickly jumped off the bike. Ningjie pounded his sore legs and looked up at the nearby building. It was a huge dome complex, about the size of a football field, but it was a towering tower that reached over 500 meters in height. At the entrance to the tower-like building, there was a constant stream of people coming and going. It seemed to be even busier than a supermarket. And on the sign in front of this giant tower were four words, Primeval Century. What is this? How come I've never seen it before in Fantian City? Ningjia couldn't remember ever seeing such a complex of buildings in Fantian City. Of course you haven't seen it. Primeval Century is an online mecha simulation game that only appeared 200 years ago. It has a coverage rate of 90% and at its peak, the number of online players exceeded 100 billion. In the Starry Sky Tragedy, many planets use this game as a platform for training mecha pilots to fight together and simulate battles. It's very popular. Especially the ranking of mecha pilots in Primeval Century almost reflects the true strength of each mecha pilot in the universe. It is said that more than half of the gods of combat in the universe have established their own accounts in this game, some using their real identities directly, while others are hidden masters. As a platform for communication and sparring, Primeval Century is currently the hottest game terminal in the universe. Alice introduced with a smile. Really? Did you bring me here just to play a game with you? Ningjie asked in confusion. This is not an ordinary game. Today, Primeval Century is holding the most crucial battle, and I want you to help. Alice pulled Ningjie into the Primeval Century building. In the long history of the universe, countless online games have appeared on various planets, but due to the distance between planets and signal transmission issues, interplanetary online gaming has always been a technical challenge. It was not until the establishment of the advanced zero-delay signal jump network that the idea of synchronous online gaming throughout the universe became a reality. Suddenly, the establishment of a massive interstellar gaming conglomerate launched the first ever universe-wide online mecha battle game, The Age of Chaos, which appeared in major population-dense areas of the universe with lightning speed. The game uses a brainwave signal transmission system to temporarily suspend the conscious mind of living beings, guiding their deep consciousness into the game server, directly replacing the game signals with various forms of brainwave activity, replacing the human senses and the world system. This sensation is like an out-of-body experience, entering another world. The Age of Chaos is divided into three factions, Polar Night, Polar Day, and Fairyland. Polar Night and Polar Day are in opposition, ready to fight at any moment, with each side having its own strengths. As for Fairyland, it is a neutral faction specifically designed for players who prefer peaceful gameplay, completing dungeons, and chatting. In principle, as long as you purchase the client device for The Age of Chaos, you can connect to the game server anywhere you want. However, the price of this equipment is so high in the universe that it can be measured by a luxury car. More than 80% of the Age of Chaos players choose to go to various game centers around the world and pay a reasonable fee for terminal connection. Alice is clearly a loyal player of this game. When she walked through the gate, a dedicated service robot led the way. In this place, where an average floor has 500 players connected, Alice has her own exclusive room, showing how luxurious it is. As she sat in the glass elevator going up, Ningjia looked out the window and saw various aliens lying on beds made of silicone gel on each floor. They wore huge metal helmets on their heads, and hundreds of cables of various colors connected to metal transmitters under the silicone beds. Various lights flashed rhythmically along the cables, like headlights of cars speeding on a highway. Alice, are you sure we have to choose a place like this for our date? Why can't we just go shopping like ordinary people, watch a horror movie, or find a secluded spot by a river for a kiss? Ningjia had never tried out-of-body experiences, and as an old-fashioned person, he believed that piloting mechas in a sober state was the safest. I'd been to almost all the places in Fantian City that are playable. When I was dating Kate, this place was filled with memories of me and others. I just want to do something with you that no one else has done before. That is, take you to my room and play the Age of Chaos together. Besides, today is an important day. The Age of Chaos holds a large-scale national war every month. My faction, Polar Knight, has been losing to Polar Day 4 over 60 natural months. This time, Polar Knight has used the most extensive propaganda campaign, spanning over 100 days, to contact all the mecha experts in Polar Knight and form the largest assault force. Such a big event cannot be missed. As Alice spoke, the elevator had already reached the 200th floor. The layout here was different from the open layout below. 
it used the layout of hotel rooms. Alice's room was at the end of the corridor. The furnishings in the room were simple, with two beds made of blue silicone gel and silver metal bases, like two comfortable sofas facing the floor-to-ceiling windows. From this height, you could see half of Fantian City's street view. A small robot that had been following them quickly ran around the long room, opening various switches and adjusting the temperature and humidity in the room. It even brewed two cups of fragrant tea. This robot would stay in the room to take care of the players who entered the game server, regularly injecting them with nutrients to ensure that their bodies would not have any problems due to prolonged hunger. Exclusive robots can even help with excretion issues, more professional than the medical care robots that specifically care for vegetative patients in hospitals. Is it too much for me to accompany you to participate in the national war as soon as I arrive? Besides, I am not familiar with the driving system of the mecha inside. As soon as I come out, I will be cannon fodder at level 1. If I am killed by someone in the first place, don't be surprised. Ning Jia sat on a soft silicone mattress, and the robot was installing various brain patches for him. Don't worry, there is no level system in the world of the Age of Chaos, and it is not true that the longer you play, the more powerful you become. It completely refers to the control ability of the mecha masters in the real world. That is to say, even a rookie without talent, no matter how long they practice inside, they are still rookies. But the fighting gods, even if they just entered, can dominate the world. In the Age of Chaos, you can freely equip your mecha with game coins. The auction house has all the equipment you want, and the boss of the hangar can provide you with any mecha body you want. You can customize the cockpit, so there is no need to familiarize yourself with the operation. Of course, the first thing you need to do is create an account and a virtual character. Once this character is created, it will be bound to your nervous system, which means you can only use one account for your entire life. Don't think that the Age of Chaos is just a casual game. It is the battlefield of the entire universe of Mecha Masters, and the intensity of the battles is beyond your imagination. Alice sat on the bed next to him. It's up to you. Anyway, today I am yours, so you can play however you want. But don't forget what you promised me. Ningjia completely lay on the bed, and a huge metal helmet automatically pressed down, covering his entire head like a hairdressing instrument. Hey, listen, after creating the character, don't run around randomly. Wait for me at the spawn point. Oh, by the way, what do you want to be called? Alice asked on the side. My former country is called China, so I'll be called China Rabbit. Ning Jie said, and the system had already started. A tunnel composed of bright lights appeared in front of him, and his body became light at this moment. After today, I believe no one will forget this name, right? Alice smiled and also lay on the bed, entering the connection state. If we were to select 10 sensational events in the universe during Ning Jia's 1,000-year sleep, the birth of the Age of Chaos would definitely be on the list. It was a product developed by a small game company on a planet so small that it could be ignored in the tragedy of the starry sky. They seemed to have received unimaginable funding overnight, and the network architecture was completed within a few months. Just the advertising costs of promoting the Age of Chaos were enough to buy more than 10 planets, not to mention the astronomical figures for the establishment of the Age of Chaos game centers in major population-dense areas of the universe in the following years. However, after five years of operation, the wealth of the epic interstellar gaming group, which operates the Age of Chaos, has accumulated to an unimaginable level. After operating for 100 years, they even bought their own planet, and the entire company became a member of the tragedy of the starry sky. This was an unimaginable merger, and even the name of the planet was changed to Epic. The contact officer at the headquarters of the Tragedy of the Starry Sky is the vice president of the Epic Group. Today, 200 years later, there is still only one game that can be played synchronously throughout the universe, and it is not because other game developers have died or they don't love money. It is simply because no other group in the universe has the same massive financial support as Epic to establish a game market, and any competing game that is born will be bought and merged by the Epic Company and then kept in the backup development database, never to be released. They have the financial power to monopolize the entire universe's online gaming market, and the excellence of the Age of Chaos is enough to attract billions of players, who no longer play any other games. The Age of Chaos adopts a flat world built on an open platform architecture, where the most popular profession is the Mecha Master. Of course, if you don't like driving robots around and causing chaos, you can also become a captain or a soldier of various professions, and have another life in this vast nation. The game system uses direct simulation through brainwaves, ensuring a 100% realistic experience, including death. You can see your own blood flowing, know the expression when you take your last breath. When you experience a slightly different death, 
after receiving the punishment from the death system, you will resurrect and appear at the respawn point, experiencing the pleasure of dying and coming back to life. Because of the vastness and realism of the Age of Chaos, some planets even use it to train the military's ability to coordinate and cooperate in combat, as well as tactical coordination. They can freely engage in mobile battles with large forces, gaining more experience and improvements, without losing the lives of any soldiers. Nian Jia crossed a long tunnel of light and arrived in a classical blue brick stone room. The room was only dimly lit by torches on the walls. In the center of the room stood a huge classical dressing mirror. Nian Jia walked up to the mirror, revealing his naked body. The mirror had various data selection windows that could be directly touched and modified. This included name, country, face shape, physique, and even gender. Nian Jia naturally chose the country of Polar Night and entered Dismantle Rabbit as the name. Luckily, there were no duplicate names, so the registration was successful. When modifying his appearance, Nian Jia didn't deliberately create a handsome and tall character. He just changed his head a bit and turned it into a giant cartoon rabbit head with two long ears. The pair of round red eyes blinked like Christmas lights. So cool. Nian Jia pressed the confirmation button on the mirror and touched his head. It had become a furry white rabbit head, but the lower half of his body remained human and was covered in mosaic patterns. Damn, where did my little buddy go? Nian Jia frustratedly touched his mosaic area, unable to find his lifelong companion. What he didn't know was that although the Age of Chaos completely simulates a flat world and allows players to create their own characters, in order to prevent the game from becoming a decadent world of perverted friends, it automatically formats the character's reproductive organs. This is also a key part that allows minors to enter the game. Frustrated, Nian Jia put on the only red underwear on the nearby hangar, pushed open the tightly closed door of the stone room, and was instantly engulfed by the dazzling light. In the nearly 35 degree temperature, every pore on his naked skin opened up. After a slight squint, the world in front of Nian Jia became vaguely clear. It was a huge, huge, huge city, unimaginably large. Even the vast city of Fantian couldn't compare to it. It seemed to expand endlessly on the surface, with roads paved with grey-blue bricks, and castles and buildings everywhere, resembling medieval European architecture on Earth. The sky of the city was shrouded in thick smoke emitted from countless chimneys, as if it was about to rain at any moment. Bright, scorching hot lava flowed in the surrounding rivers of the city, which was the reason for the city's high temperature. This dark city was one of the main cities of Polar Night Iron Furnace Giant City. Coming out from the birthplace of newcomers and crossing a huge steel bridge, when Jingjia stepped into the city, Alice was already standing there waiting for him. Alice's appearance hadn't changed at all, and even without any rest, she still looked stunning. However, her pair of white cat ears had been replaced with black ones, and her tail behind her was also black. She was wearing a tight purple driving suit on her exquisite body, giving her the appearance of a mecha pilot for the first time. You look so cute with fur on your face. Alice excitedly touched Jingjie's rabbit head. Miss, can you not flirt with me in public? Jingjie looked at the strange gazes of the people around them and felt uncomfortable. What is flirting? Is it delicious? I won't talk to you about it. Alice let go of Jingjie's rabbit head, and a trade request window immediately appeared in front of Jingjie. Accept. Jingjie lightly tapped the window and immediately received a call. The trade window was filled with 160 slots, all packed with various equipment, and the trade amount displayed was 10 million gold coins. Such a huge sum of money was almost equivalent to an ordinary player playing day and night for two years to achieve. But Jingjie had been in the game for less than 30 seconds. Why are you giving me so much money? Do you really think I'm a gigolo? Jingjie said, but still clicked the confirm trade button. I don't have time to talk nonsense with you. We have to report to the assembly point in half an hour. Did you see the NPC warehouse manager over there? Go to him and open your own mecha warehouse, directly upgrade it to the maximum level using gold coins. You have half an hour to equip your mecha. In the warehouse, you can directly view the equipment auction of the Polar Knight and choose what you want. If you don't have enough money, send me a private message, and I'll mail it to you. Now I'm going to greet a few team leaders and let you join the team for coordinated combat. Alice, wearing the driving suit, was particularly excited. Do you really believe that I can help you? Jingjie didn't know where Alice's confidence came from. Actually, it's not about believing or not. We have been losing for 60 natural months in a row. We can't expect a few new mecha pilots to turn the tide. The national war in the primordial century is a huge system, involving battles between several interstellar fleets. But I still invited you because I suddenly realized that I really enjoy seeing you control the mecha. It makes my heart beat faster. So, do your favorite thing and I'll be happy. Alice smiled happily. If you want to watch, go ahead, 
Just remember to stay away from me. Jing Jie touched his own rabbit ears and walked towards the warehouse manager. After creating a new warehouse, all he had to do was open the door behind the manager to enter another space of his own mecha warehouse. The maximized warehouse could accommodate more than 10 mechas and hundreds of different types of equipment. The so-called mecha didn't have the strongest equipment system. Depending on the different battlefield and tasks, it was common to match different equipment systems. However, true experts didn't like this large-scale changing of equipment. They would continuously strengthen their ace mecha, and their equipment would tend to be more singular and simplified, relying solely on their skills to adapt to the ever-changing battlefield environment. When Jingjie opened his backpack, which was filled by Alice, there were a total of three mecha bodies. Because Jingjie's preferences were unknown, these three were light, standard, and heavy mechas respectively. All three belonged to the S-Class in their respective series. Each one had a high price in the auction house. Jingjie chose the standard mecha. When he clicked on the release button, the standard mecha knelt in front of Jingjie. The originally dull gray body rhythmically emitted a gloss, transforming into a shiny black body like lacquer. This is the third mecha in Ningjie's life, and it is the only one that does not actually exist, but is created as virtual data. Its name is Phoenix Breaker. The introduction shows a height of 25 meters, with armor thickness slightly thinner than regular mechas, but made of special alloy. It even has a magnetic energy shield system, providing additional defense against energy-based weapons. Therefore, its defense is higher than regular mechas, but it also has better agility. Preliminary assessment suggests it can handle operations with a hand speed of 600. Overall, its performance is comparable to the flame soul god Snake. Based on simulated data, it is believed that there must also exist simulated mechas in the primordial century that can truly reach or even surpass the god-level mechas. 